duelists, welcome to the 250th Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live from London. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with all of you. My name is Ed Templer. I'm going to be your host for this coverage. But before we get started with our coverage of YCS London, Mr. Ishida, the Vice President of Konami Digital Entertainment in Europe, has a few announcements for our duelists. Good morning, duelists. On behalf of Konami Digital Entertainment, we would like to welcome you to the 250th Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series event here at the Excel in London. I'm happy to reveal we have sold 3,600 tickets for this weekend, which makes this event record-breaking European YCS event. We would like to thank our partners and the volunteers who help make these events such an incredible occasion. But none of this would be possible without you, the jurists. We wish you the best luck of during this tournament. And we'd like to thank for your passionate support for Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game. Thank you. I will now pass you over to our head judge for the event. Thank you very much, Mr. Ishida. So right now, for all of you guys at home, we have a little bit of a welcome video whilst Mr. Ishida speaks to our duelists. This is your coverage team for the 250th YCS here in London. Let's introduce your commentators. Sebastian Lemka and Leonard Koenig. Tom Payne and Nadia Mazzoni. Alberto Marazzi and Marcello Barbary. Ed Templar. This is your coverage team for the 250th YCS here in London. Don't go anywhere, we've got loads of amazing content coming your way. <laughs> A very warm welcome from our side as well to the 250th YCS here live from London. And I think we are going to have the biggest event we had so far in European YCS history. So a very warm welcome from our side as well, as I said. And we have planned something special. As you can already see, we're not only two of us in the casting booth. Leonard and I, we are joined by Tom this time. Very warm welcome. I'm Thanks for joining us. Here. I am very special. Thank you. <laughs> you, you are, are for sure. You are for sure. Special. Yeah, indeed. And we have a super amazing tournament coming up. What are you looking for the most to this weekend? I gotta say the diversity in decks. We have so many amazing players who are piloting different decks. Some of my favorite decks as well. I mean, we, you will hear about this in our content for the breaks. Yeah. So uh, not a lot to say there. But uh, what are you? I agree. Like it's a real like breath of fresh air from the last format. I mean, it's a different type of format, right? But the last format, obviously, we had Tier Elements being the best deck by a by a big margin. Absolutely. Uh, but now we've got lots of different decks. For which sure. Is great. But you know what I'm looking forward the most to? What we're going to see in round number one. As I've heard, our players are ready. So let's go over to Ed and the players for round one and see what they are bringing here. Thank you very much, Basti. Let's waste no time getting straight into our first round here at YCS London. My two duelists I have for the first feature match are Guillaume Del Montford, who is here with his first YCS and is straight into the feature match in his first duel. And also the winner of YCS London 2019, Pascal Kim. This is going to be a very exciting first duel for this tournament. Gentlemen, we're going to do a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. So which of you would like to roll the dice first? We hand over to the previous YCS London champion. So Pascal's rolled a four, and Guillaume has rolled a six. So who's going to go first? You're going to go second, you're going to go first. So Pascal is going to be going first. So I'm going to hand you guys straight back over to your wonderful commentary trio who are going to be taking this away. Basti, Tom, Leo, take it away for our first round of YCS London. 
Thank you, Ed. You are wonderful as well. <laughs> so, we are going to see something really interesting because the dice roll was lost by Pascal, but yeah. yes, he's going to start the game. Yeah. I have an idea. Maybe Dilem remembers the 2019 final of Pascal <laughs> Kim, where he was bringing Sky Strikers, and Sky Strikers is known to be a going second deck, so he was like, I will let him start just in case he's still bringing the Sky Striker <laughs> Daggy. <laughs> he's also got a few cards in his deck that are dedicated for going second. Yeah, like, so. maybe it's just his general approach, just going second. And I mean, it's his first YCS, so the pressure is on him here for sure. But he has nothing to lose, let's be honest, because Pascal Kim here is as a reigning and defending YCS London champion. So he's the one that has to perform on here. Exactly. And this is a, like tough for Guillaume. Like, he's, this is his first YCS and he gets to be in a feature match, which is very exciting and, you know, can be quite nerve-wracking. But honestly, players. it's quite a nice thing for remembering later on, right? Oh, you go to your yeah, first yeah. race, yes, and then sure. you sit down in the featured match area. And um, yeah, I think we are going to see a deck that may be pretty popular this weekend. We are going to see a deck that for sure is featuring an engine that is very popular at the moment. And uh, Pascal is bringing us that engine here indeed. But I would say, let's see that engine in action. Let's see how round one of YCS London, the 250 YCS is going to turn out. Let's go over to the table and let's check out what the players are doing here. So we are getting right into the action. Pascal Kim on the Runic deck, but a specific one. He is not only playing Runic Sprite, he is also playing Runic Life Twin Sprite. Ooh, yeah. Quite a lot going on. Yeah, exactly. He's bringing three engines into his main deck. So um, honestly, there's not that much space for non-engine cards because you are playing three engines and that takes up a lot of space, but still he has managed to put in a couple. Oh, and we are seeing the starting hand of Guillaume, and he is actually opening Book of Eclipse oh, and evenly wow. matched. And that is a pretty strong combo against sprite strategies, but Pascal's hand is amazing as well. He is opening with the Leela, and that's not that much you that's want. That's all you can yeah, ask for, right? <laughs> Has like, he got oh. any, any sprite cards to go with it? I mean, that worst case brings you into your sprite engine because you could go into Gigantic with those two here if you would like to, but that would somehow um, rule you out of your life twin engine a little bit then. So let's see where he's going because at the moment he has no access to his sprite engine just yet. So that's the thing with those decks where you have multiple engines. Sometimes you're only going to draw into one of them or two of them and then you just don't get access to the third and then you're missing out on the crucial part of it. But, but there we see the no. next engine. And that is more than enough to access all of the engines. You can summon yep. the Hugin, search for the Runic Fountain and then after that overlay with the Leela to go into a gigantic special summon of the blue, the jet, you are safe from Nibiru, then you can just safely go for something else and you have access to the Leela Kizikil engine after that. So yeah, great upside for running Sprite in this event because Nibiru is a card that a lot yeah. of people are thinking about and if you just have a card which you want to summon, Gigantic Sprite, naturally giving you protection from Nibiru, that, that's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, and it naturally will be summon number four to to play around that Nibiru, especially when your opponent let you start, right? Yeah. When, you, when your opponent is going second, you expect him to play cards like Nibiru, and uh, there's no Nibiru in this opening hand, but still it's better to play around the Nibiru here by summoning Gigantic, and it's going to resolve. And Basti, you said earlier, there's not a, a, not a lot of space for non-engine cards. However, there's also not a lot of space for engine cards in the extra deck. We were seeing only one Gigantic sprite. Wow, you're right. I just saw that in the list as well. That is very uncommon because I saw in modern sprite builds that people tend to up the numbers of yeah. gigantic sprites again. They were uh, playing triple gigantic sprite, and uh, they not do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. Ooh, there comes the jet. But also, there's something pretty interesting in Guillaume's hand because he has the evenly, which is an incredible breaker of fields, you know. But. <laughs> He doesn't have anything to play with. Yeah, you couldn't even tell what deck he's bringing, but it is branded, as you can already see on the screen. And I mean, one branded fusion for turn can solve a lot of issues yeah. there, let's be honest. And there's a uh, 101 ways to get to branded fusion. Indeed, in just right? Aluba does it as well, for sure. Which he's also only running two of. Interesting decision there, for sure. 
I think that's one of the best ways to get to your brand infusion. But let's see. Like, there is triple tactic talents, which is also good, because probably you're just going to use the Book of Eclipse in main phase. Your opponent has no choice really but to negate it with Carrot. That also makes your talents live. So I think we could see a really, really impressive turn by Gilem when he resolves that evenly matched then as well. Oh, now we're going for IP in the extra monster zone, and I think that now we're going to see the Kizi Kiel, and then we are going for this incredibly funny combo where you go for Kizi Kiel, special summon another Leela, go for Leela, special summon back the Kizi Kiel, draw, and then go <laughs> yeah, for another yeah. Kizi Kiel. <laughs> it, is a, it is a strange looking combo if you've not seen it before. So obviously you only get the effect of the live twin monsters if they're summoned while you control the other live twin monster. That's the uh, evil twin monster. Evil twin. Yes. I'm going exactly. go <laughs> to get Evil here, twin, but. live twin, <laughs> skill, Leela, yeah. But so you get the one draw, and then you set up to special summon to get a card structure in your Does opponent's Does Pascal turn. even have another runic card? I think it's really... Oh, yeah. He, no, he does have... Oh, oh yeah, there's Slumber the in his hand. Yeah. Oh, there's okay. Slumber's in his hand, yeah. I'll let him draw three cards, I believe he's activated. He, he did, did he discard a runic for the cost of Hugin earlier in the turn? So there should be two in the grave, and then the Slumber. That should, would be huge should make if three. it would be the draw three. So, and now we are probably going to see, finally, for Pascal as well, what his opponent is on, because he, he Runic gets, Slumber is making your opponent banish three. Okay, it's only, only a draw two. two, but still, we have to banish three cards there for Julem. We, 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 can't, we, we are already resolving the Runic Fountain, but we haven't even resolved the Runic Slumber yet, because that is uh, necessarily part of the effect to banish three cards there for the Runic Slumber. Hopefully our judge will catch that in a moment. It might actually be a benefit for Julem, because he gets... Yeah, yeah because he he's not giving away anything. A, well, no, but... Getting oh, he to could banish cards, he could banish Tri Brigade Mercuria, he could banish uh, the Despian Tragedy. For sure, yeah. There comes Sunny Snitch now. Okay, I think, yeah, our, our judges have picked up on it that Runic Slumber actually is uh, resolving there. Yeah, I mean, Runic Slumber is not in the graveyard anymore, but for <laughs> sure. I was just checking. <laughs> No, I didn't use Runic Slumber. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not going to be... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. But of course, all of the Runic effects, when they are resolving their usual effect, they are going to banish cards. So, this is an Ash Blossom, this is another <laughs> Ash Blossom, and then this Fusion Deployment. So, the last card gives it away here. Pascal now finally knows what he's up against. He does know that Fusion Deployment can only be branded, pretty much. Or it could be something very, very strange. <laughs> indeed, it could be. Indeed, it could be. VW XYZ. If okay. you are the deck master that can build that deck for this tournament, go ahead, It my could friend. summon a Gate Guardian Watch monster, me try. You know, it could summon uh, an ABC. True. <laughs> I mean, there could be anything, for sure. I think, if you're Gillum, you're happy to see those banishes, because you don't want to see Ash in this situation. Oh, there's Branded Loss. And I mean, let's be honest, if we can draw into Branded Fusion, that Branded Loss is insanely strong. On the other hand, do we even negate here with Carrot? I, because I it would be the only card. Yeah, Karen, it too. Yeah. It would be the only card that gets booked. Uh, what you want to do here is, I think, actually, oh well, you have the IP to get rid of the Leela on the field, which is just an extra body at this point. But I think you can just. Oh, he is negating it though. Oh, he is negating it. Okay, then to to get the to get the Leela into the graveyard. And though. then he can on resolve immediately tribute it back to get another draw. I'm That's interested probably. in that, because it does play into Triple Tactics talent. The thing is, IP is always going to make you play into the Triple Tactic talents, right? That's because true. You're but you, always going to resolve might, the IP. I mean, currently, it would force Guillaume to do something else yeah. to trigger, you know, to force out the oh, IP. Oh, but there comes a call by the Grave by Gilem. Oh. So that will deny the draw one there. Oh, and also, Lila doesn't target. He, I know oh. he, he pointed to the Kizikiel, but... Uh, but is there? You can just summon oh, out that the. That comes frost, yeah. Would you rather frost. have? You'd rather have the frost in the graveyard, though. Well, I suppose yes. you can link it off for IP, so it doesn't doesn't yeah. matter. Also, you had to summon something. You have to summon something, yeah. But I was wondering if it was an upside or a downside getting to summon the Kizikil Frost. And now, what do you do first? Go, you, do you go for uh, the Triple Tactic Talents first, or do you do go for Battle Phase and Evilly Matched first? Uh, in my head, I think Talents. I don't see a reason to... Probably, right? That no. makes you plan your turn yeah, a because, little bit further. You know, you, you could use the Talents in Main Phase 1 and then the Evenly Matched in, yeah, in yeah, the Battle Phase if you still want to. I don't know if you need to go for Evenly Matched, because the outcome of the board will be the exact same. So there is no Probably. real follow-up in this situation. Except Look, for I mean, the IP, and this one will. Do you think? Come down uh, do you think the fact that Pascal is uh, linking off now means that we, we announced said the battle phase? Battle phase, for phase sure, yeah, for that. Sure. Oh, but look, we Ooh. were wondering about that. Nightmare Griffin actually is in the extra deck of Pascal, and is now also in the first game of his tournament, uh, hitting the field. And that's a card we haven't seen that much in sprite builds, but now it is featured here in his list, and it's pretty interesting because that makes it hard for GLM to actually. Um, use monster effects because he has to get into that extra monster zone there. 
Well, fortunately, there is an extra monster zone right above the yeah, <laughs> Lickrif. It is, but generously provided. also we resolved it to draw a card. There comes evenly matched now in the battle phase, and we set that starter there with the Griffin. So that's another card we have to banish now. Or is it maybe the only card we keep? What do you keep? Do you keep the fountain? Probably. Yeah, we yeah, have to keep fountain. You're right. Fountain. We, we probably have to keep the fountain. There are still cards to be drawn, <laughs> but uh, there's something that I would call oh, it. Oh, okay. okay. We're getting okay. rid of the fountain. I see. Maybe I see. he values the Griffin's uh, sort of probably. passive effect enough. I mean, he can't activate Aluba if he special summons it, right? Exactly. That's true. But the thing is, if your opponent has branded fusion, he can instantly get into the yeah. extra monster zone. Oh, and there's Talons, and it's probably. Does he want to take here? I mean, he has no sure, play. There's, if he no, takes. there's no use for taking yeah. it. Yeah. So. Do we see Branded Fusion branded here? Branded Opening, and that is oh, not the card you don't want to have. So that was very heads up by Pascal there. But I think you could just summon the Fallen of Albus. I think that Griffin only is it only prevents no, is it only special summon monsters. monsters? Right? If it's only special, special summon monsters, monsters yeah. But then I, you can also just... Oh no, oh, he special the Alubert. He could have searched he for Alubert and normal did it better as well. That yeah. works just as well. Oh yeah, that is actually true. And he could have also gone for Fallen of Albus and take away the Griffin to summon out the Mirror J Dragon. Yep. But this is this is not going to work out. Yeah. Now he will Maybe have to. Oh, he out. even discarded the Albus. This is not looking bright here for Gilem. That plan didn't go as he planned, so it goes back <laughs> over to Pascal. Pascal just nods his hand while his opponent is setting two cards and passing it right over to him. And now Pascal drew a lot of cards in the process of his first turn, so he is well equipped to get back into this game even though he just got evenly matched for four cards. Do you think the Griffin, maybe Pascal, thought the Runic cards didn't draw enough by themselves? He just thought maybe I'll draw even more cards <laughs> with the, uh, the co-linked Griffin? Probably, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm safe because I'm in main phase two, so all of the cards in my hand are already enough, so maybe the Griffin is just preventing him a little bit more, so I think it was a heads-up play by him. It was pretty smart, not gonna lie. If you, as long as you've got the second fountain in your deck to search out. Yeah, indeed, indeed. What I was gonna say earlier is that the downside of the deck is that you are going to draw into so many cards that don't really help you with your fountain after your board is already developed. You have, you have a monster on board still, and now you have the Life Twins, in the hand, or, or he also still has a Sunny Snitch. He had to discard the Kizikil, which was okay then, but uh, yeah. this deck gives you a lot of draw power, and as soon as you develop a board... Oh, we're passing, passing it over! Back. So Pascal just did not have all the cards he needed, apparently. And now there is the chance... No, wait, is there something to Special Summon of Branded Banishment? I don't think there is, right? He has Fallen of Albus in the graveyard. But does Branded Banishment work with I've Fallen of Albus? No, it's one no. Despia monster oh, oh, oh. or one level 8 or higher fusion monster, so that does not work for the moment. So that's just another set card being at the back row of Gilam. No, you, you, yeah, you have to banish... Oh, I see. So yeah, you can't use the Fallen of Albaz in the graveyard. Yep. Oh, oh but there's <laughs> Runic tip, I think, for turn for Pascal Akeem. That's a huge pickup for him there. Yeah. Would you compare Runic tip to Sky Striker Engage? It is pretty <laughs> similar, not gonna lie, that maybe is the He's modern been... day Sky Striker Engage. Yeah, right. I wanna say eventually it lets you draw more cards. Yeah, I was gonna say it does basically draw one because you get the other runic card which will then be shuffled back with the with it's that basically itself the engage into engage into engage just in one card already. <laughs> just for comparison, I'm going to bring the card up. <laughs> it has to happen. It's the signature card of Pascal, of course, the card that he won YC's lot in 2019 with. And now we're going into battle phase, so Pascal. Just, of course, not using any runic cards before the battle phase because he wants to get rid of that Aluber first. But the thing is, now the Brennan Banishment yeah. is live as there is Aluber in the graveyard. Pascal is like, yep, that's fine. And what are we even fusion summoning into here? We go with the Aluber and the Nightmare Griffin. That just gives us immediate access to... Is it Albion or Lubalion we're going to summon out no, here? They need Fallen of Albus. You need Fallen of Albus. Oh, you're those. right. So, so it just be Kuridus, the... right? Probably Kuridus. <laughs> I think the Despia extra deck monsters do get points for being the hardest to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> for sure they do. For sure they do. Yeah, but it is Despian Kuridus and it is being summoned in the extra monster zone. Pascal quickly picks it up again. And I mean, all the runic cards aren't really known to have like big attack points, so I don't know whether Despian Kuridus is really the card you need versus that deck necessarily. Does he have, it might be just his only target. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. He only had that option there for that particular moment. It is mildly annoying to get rid of, right? Because if you destroy it, then your opponent gets to summon a branded monster from the deck. Uh, Fallen of Albas specifically, yeah. Oh, is it, fall, is it a Fallen of Albas monster? But did he just do that? Randomly, like, did he just oh, you can activate for banishment at some point? And because now I just see Pascal going for plays. 
Yeah, I think just after uh, the Nightmare Griffin ran over the Alubur, he was like, yeah, I now have Alubur in the graveyard, so my bread and banishment can be activated, and that's what he just did there right away in battle phase. I can play a card, let me play a card. Yeah, I mean, he didn't get to play that many so far, so that's fair. <laughs> the Nightmare Griffin, he, he didn't like it. Absolutely not. <laughs> after and what it did to why. his Alubur. <laughs> yep, so there comes Runic Tip now. I mean, you can't play Guillaume, right? He just wants to participate in this, and I can just fully understand that. So we are searching for Freezing Curses. This time we are banishing one card, and it is Fallen of Albas. And honestly, banishing Fallen of Albas versus Branded Despia is so, so good, because they need that in the deck to resolve Branded Fusion. I was going to ask, is that his second? Or I think that two yeah. or three. He does run. Uh, he does run free, and I think okay. that is the correct choice at the moment. Yeah. At the moment, you gotta play free because Kashira is banishing cards face down from your deck. Runic is banishing cards from your deck as well. So you gotta make sure you are able to resolve Brand Fusion. And it's not a, a bad draw by any means. No, you can just no, normal no. summon it and use its effect to threaten Indeed. your opponent's extra deck monsters. It's a super poly with legs. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed it is. But your opponent can respond, which That's, makes yeah. it significantly <laughs> less Le strong. Legs are normally useful, but in this case, I'm not sure you want the legs. <laughs> <laughs> so there comes another Link to summon. And it looks like Pascal actually He's is struggling to, to have resources in his extra deck, right? He that can be an issue when you combine multiple different engines yep. that you don't necessarily... You can put them all in your main deck, but you do need the extra deck to support those. For sure. So I've been, I've been running this deck a lot lately on... Uh, Without the runic cards, though, and uh, yes, <laughs> it is a problem, right? You can easily run through because, especially like the first turn combo, you're using one yeah. or two copies of each of the sure. evil twins. And I mean, this is uh, evil twin Kizikal number two already, so yeah. that's also the last one he has in his extra deck, an and extra that is now followed by the last copy of evil twin Lila in his extra deck. And so there is no access to gigantic sprite anymore, so you can't even extend into your sprite combo and get a smashers to easily get rid of the monster. Now we have picked up freezing curses, which maybe, is also not helping you. Maybe but Pascal's just hoping he'll have runic cards to sort of close out the game in Probably. the end, even if he runs The runic out of cards just monster. grind so well, right? They can just yeah. work through boards so good because they are just trading one for one in theory, but then Runic Fountain just makes it an unfair <laughs> trade because you are drawing cards afterwards. And you're like gradually banishing your opponent's yeah. deck. This card, however, Evil Twins Trouble Sunny, could oh, really help card. now because this one is at 3.3 attack points. Yeah, okay, okay, I can see it coming. Yep. Is this, this is the second main phase, right? Yep, it is. So battle phase is not an issue here. But we, yeah, we are going for the Trouble Sunny. And it's very difficult to attack over the Despian Quirtis, right? Because you can use its effect. The good thing is, I think yeah. we already saw Kurikara Divincanate in the hand of Pascal. So as soon as Gilam decides to use the effect of Despian Kuridis in his opponent's turn, that Kurikara is going to be live and then he can distribute the Kuridis, which is kind of nice. Will that trigger the effect of Kuridis? Um, how does, how does Kuridis get its effect triggered? I think card it only effect. Has, it has, has to, to be a card effect and that, this is a tribute, so I guess this would not. Probably not, no. I think this, yeah. It's nice to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with the table judge at the table yeah. so they can tell you all of these things. I want to try something. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, there's Super Polymerization set for Jilam, and that could be a pretty good card here because both of the monsters on the field are light monsters. So is there the potential to see Super Poly into Garura here, uh, maybe? It would be Mudring. Oh, yeah, Mudring, you're right. Is he even running the Mudring, though? Let me check. He's, he's not playing Mudring, I'm afraid. Then I don't think we're going to see one. <laughs> Probably not. There is Runic Slumber being activated. And Pascal is reading his own card right now. I'm it's interested, yeah, why it's targeting the, the opponent's monster. Because it can't attack that turn. Oh, then. it stops it from attacking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the Dark Magician. The ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense is being banished here. Which uh, is actually quite good. Yeah, it means you don't have to send it yourself. Yep. Yeah. It helps you. But I don't know whether we're going to see Gilem resolve Brand Fusion that game anymore. Because there are all the Fallen of Albas is being gone. And look, Gilam looked through his extra deck. Is there the Mud Dragon? And then he realizes, no, I did not put it in. So for this particular situation that he encounters here in his first game, in the first featured match of the day, he's not going to be able to resolve Super Polymerization just so there. Activating it would be beautiful here because obviously the live twin Sunny and Switch has got a Sunny and Snitch. Sunny and Snitch, yeah. Has got a quick effect. But your opponent wouldn't be able to respond to put it in the graveyard and summon the two Absolutely. live twins back out. Yeah, and I mean, as we saw, Pascal is struggling to have resources in his extra deck by that point. So if you get rid of that Sunny Snitch here, I think you might even be uh, in a spot where you have multiple turns to draw into your engine again, and that could bring you back into this game. Also, as soon as the Trouble Sunny 
attributes itself. There will be a light and a dark on the field, so... Oh, you're right! There is Kizikil and Lila coming back. I mean, it's two light monsters, right? But now you, you can just... Uh... Hey, wait, no, you still no, don't have it. Can you summon a Garura with those two, perhaps? No, no, it's, it's light and dark. Oh, they yeah, have to true, be true. Oh, are. Lila is dark, you're right, you're so right. <laughs> so that could work here. Yeah, look at that! Super polymerization! Trying to fusion summon the Karidas with the Lila. With your own card effect. Bringing us into... Wait, he... I, I thought... Oh, Dracos oh, yeah. to Pelia. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. That <laughs> works, to be honest. But also, Dracos to Pelia just feels like a card that uh, Freezing Curses uh, could really easily take care of, or also Flashing Fire. Those are really good answers to just the Dracos to Pelia. It can be very annoying against the Sprite deck, right? Because you can target one of their level 2 monsters, make, negate its effect, and make it level and 1. make it level 1. That's a crucial part in that matchup, honestly, yeah. I think you can activate... Exactly. You can activate the... Kizikil now try to bait out the Dragostopelia, try to summon back another monster, and then Pascal Keem's triple tactic talents in hand would be a really good answer to that, to uh, possibly gain more advantage to win this game. For sure, eventually. for sure. Oh, yeah, we got. Oh, we drew into another, another evenly match, yeah, Pascal Keem. I think we talked about that in our meta analysis before the event as well. Uh, we think that evenly matched probably Spoiler is one alert. of the. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> sorry, but I mean, it's it's an obvious fact that I have to mention here. I think evenly match is probably one of the strongest cards right now in the format, and that's why I'm absolutely not surprised by Pascal Kim running triple of it in his main deck. Well, according to some preliminary data that Luke was showing me yesterday, evenly matched the second most popular card wow. at this event. After I'm sure you can guess. Ash Blossom, Ash probably. Blossom yeah, that spring, yeah. We've guess, already seen yeah. two copies of that this game as well. So. Absolutely. But uh. we, we can see a little bit of a downside to the Runic Engine at the moment, because we all know when you use the Runic card, you're not going to have your next battle phase. And this game number one is already going on for 20 minutes. You are struggling to close out games, because yeah. you're missing the most crucial part of your turn that actually helps you end games, because you're not <laughs> having a battle phase. You're not able to battle with your monsters, and you're not uh, able to force uh, life point damage to your opponent, and therefore you are really yeah. not closing out the game. Oh, there comes Branded opening to protect the Dracostopalia. And that means we're also not going to banish cards from our opponent's deck, but we can still resolve Runic Fountain, of course. The Runic cards, they're very grindy, aren't they? And you kind of hope at some point when you have six cards that your opponent will just say, pack it in. Yeah, <laughs> yep. You kind of rely on that, to be honest. <laughs> because if your opponent says, no, we gotta, you got to finish this game, then it can, it can take quite a while to do that. Pascal yeah. can still get rid of the Dracos to Pelia this turn, by the way, because he has the Trouble Sunny in the graveyard that can just banish itself and then send one of the evil twins from the field off from the deck. And I don't think he's a playing he's playing a deck one. But you can send one of the evil twins from the field to the graveyard and then non-targeting send a card that Guillermo is controlling to the graveyard. And it's Absolutely. nice. It's actually, a, it, most of the time, you don't really want to send monsters from your field to the graveyard, but sending one of the evil twins can let you just summon it back again yeah. and get its effect again in your opponent's turn. Oh, we're going for... Oh yeah, I was Something. about to say, there, there is no gigantic left in the extra deck. Oh, oh Unchained Abomination is coming in here. That's another Link 4 that Pascal Kim has decided to play. So two not super popular uh, Link 4s being played here by Pascal Kim. The Nightmare Griffin and also the Unchained Abomination we see right here. But this one I think is really, really strong with the Runic sure. Engine because you have the Flashing Fire and that's basically a pop 2 then. Yeah, yep. and Absolutely. you can combine it with your Evil Twins as well. It just yeah. gives you an extra pop, or well, once per turn you get an extra pop every time you yeah. pop something. Yeah. Also, the Life Twins, or the Evil Twins rather, lock you into summoning fiends from the extra deck, and fortunately, Unchained <laughs> Abomination is, is a pretty a strong fiend. Yeah. You think Pascal, you know, he, he just realized it now? <laughs> he was like, aha! I mean, he was going through his extra deck for like, like a couple well, what of can times. I have? That oh, is a this fiend. is great. <laughs> Let's do that, yeah. And um, he has Sprite Blue in his hand there, but. Um, even before summoning the Abomination, there uh, was no chance to summon out the blue, because blue needs a level or rank 2 and not a link 2. So in that scenario, that wasn't working. Oh, we are negating Redrakus Topalia here with Freezing Curses. He's, and we are banishing Freezing. not Freeze so interested well. in uh, negating it, but just activating a Runic card. Wait, isn't... I think maybe the Unchained Abomination oh, was no. destroying it in the end phase. Maybe that was... 
Maybe he chained that to the unchained. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like what that. happened. Yeah. Oh, and Julian picks up Super Polymerization for turn, but that's his only card in hand. And we all know it has a cost. It has to discard one card. So this card is not doing anything here. And it's going back over to Pascal. But he's Ooh. not going down. Yeah, and he can use this in either end phase. It just says during the end phase. I want to show you guys again so you can read it as well. So that's an easy pop here. And now we actually do have a battle phase, I think. No, no, he, no, used, no, he the... used it in the end phase, yeah. right? He used the yeah. freezing crisis in the end phase. So we're just going to wait. I mean, our opponent is top decking here. We can always uh, destroy <laughs> the one card that he's, he's bringing to the field with Abomination. So I think Pascal is in a pretty decent situation here. And the top deck for Gilem is not one that he necessarily wants to see. It is the Tribrigate Mercuria, which he sets. And I mean, it's this card going. can also it's, be, yeah, destroyed. be destroyed. Yep, yep. So maybe it would have been better to just keep that card in hand in case you get another turn to work with oh. it. And look, he has a playset in his hand now. Pascal Kim <laughs> drew all three of his evenly matched, and I don't know whether he wants it here. <laughs> How yeah. many talents are going on there as oh, well? Oh yeah, there's <laughs> also two talents, yep. <laughs> but I think he's only running two, so uh, that might be the uh, entirety in his deck. So now I think GM still has some turns because there are no monsters being drawn by Pascal Kim. He just has 3,000 attack points on board and that oh. is an Aluba. Aluba is an excellent draw here if your opponent doesn't have Freezing Curses. Oh, it only works on special summon monsters, I think. Oh, okay. Um, no, so it is doesn't. Is that the Flash no, no, fire. Fire. Fire, fire? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Freezing Curses on Aluba and once more GM is looking for his graveyard. There is nothing protecting that. We are banishing three cards, of course, for the Freezing Curses. And there is, I think, the first branded fusion we see here in this game being banished there. It is one of the downsides of some of the runic cards is that you can't activate them unless your opponent has a monster or you have a clear no. extra monster zone. Sometimes with runic, the best approach to play is just not to play. Just don't give just them any cards on your board yeah, exactly. to, to activate their runic cards. And look, there's, when they draw runic tip, though, they are usually fine because are, runic definitely. tip can always be activated. Fetching another runic card from your deck is always going to be possible. And I think you're going to try to activate the runic tip as soon as possible to find something. You don't want... Uh, I mean, you, you really want to activate something before the next battle phase. And maybe you're also trying to find a monster at some point because you want to use the sprite blue from your hand. Yeah. <sighs> but with only Kurikaras, even these, and triple tactic talents, <laughs> that's not just going to happen. Look, is we're just going to set another card. Got much left to search with the sprite blue? Uh, maybe a jet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sprite Red would be something Oh yeah, he has a new for. Sprite Red, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But it's crazy, he, he basically drew all of his non-engine here. Did he set all three of his evenly matched? Because I don't see yeah. any trap card left <laughs> in his hand, so all of his three background cards there are evenly matched, which is quite ironic and iconic. <laughs> the talent, and he has to set one card as well, of course, leave open one of the spell traps. Fusion, fusion, fusion deployment for German. Yep. Better eyes than me. Fusion yeah. Deployment actually has quite the interesting target. Not in this deck, though, but I still want to showcase it to our viewers who are not that familiar with the branded deck. You can actually, people usually side deck it, yeah. play the uh, Neo uh, Elemental Hero Aquaneos, and then just special summon out Aqua Dolphin to try to get rid of Absolutely. one of the Ashes. But the that's not hand. going to happen here anymore in game one, as Pascal Kim is taking this game number one here with his live twin runic strategy. Gilam is conceding, and they will be going over to the side decking process here. And that took quite a while. It looked really good right from the get go. But then it still needed time and time and time. And Pascal yeah. was drawing one non-engine card <laughs> after the other, setting free evenly matched. So what do you think now in game number two? Gilam, as he had before game number one, has the decision here to go first or second. Do you think he's going to make the same decision as he did before game one? I mean, he has seen the Kurikara. Yep. Because he had to discard it. He hasn't seen all the evenly matches. I think True, that he maybe hasn't seen any. <laughs> Pascal is going to side these out. It plays Probably. interesting games with your yep. opponent, doesn't it? Because if you choose to go second, it's quite uncommon. So your opponent's not going to know whether you're going to choose to go first or second the for the second is, round. I think his side deck is giving me very, very um, good vibes that he's going first here because he is going to side in Brand Expulsion and also the Jimmy Puppet. But that would usually be your plan going first. But let me tell you, versus Runic decks, it's honestly not that great because Runic decks are obviously not that reliant no. on your monster effects because they have so powerful spell cards. And therefore, the Jimmy Puppet Nightmare is not as strong as it would be in other matchups. But I would say usually that would be his go-to plan it's, it's in game two. It's still really strong. 
you got to be honest, it's still a really <laughs> strong play. You're still... I mean, Hugen can't be activated. True. And I mean, it shuts you down all the other engines. You can chain yeah. the a runic spell to the branded expulsion, right? That is a good point. So you um, will always get your Hugin, at least. True, true, yeah. 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 Because yeah. your opponent, there's no way, your, yeah. your opponent's presumably not going to wait for you to activate a runic spell. Before. They, I mean, they, they, they could. could. Yeah, they could but it becomes a little interesting game of chip. But then your opponent just, you know, normal summons a sprite monster and so that's special summoning. And, yeah, know. but I mean, you could, worst case, just do it on the normal summon of a sprite monster then. That's true, yeah. It will be interesting it, to see for sure, it, but it, there it are has, some, some options yeah, as for sure. It has sure. different applications. You also don't know what your opponent is bringing into the side deck. Absolutely. Let's see whether Pascal Kim has prepared for the branded matchup. And honestly, he's one of the few players that really is prepared because Biz deals were really not that popular lately anymore, but he's bringing them. He's playing Triple Magna Mood and he's playing one Druid Swarm. And honestly, this is really good versus the branded matchup. A triple Tactic Thrust has been a card that was pushing the Bestials out of the metagame. For sure. Also with the Forbidden and Limited list yes. that kind of took out the Telemans deck out for of the sure, competition sure. a bit. At least I think it's still a really strong deck. Yeah. But uh, with the decrease of Magna Moods <laughs> in, in main decks and side decks, uh, some decks have become more popular, but they are still strong. I mean, people are playing fewer Triple Tactic Thrust because you're not going to only face Kushtira. Yep. And without Bestials in the format, the card is not as strong as we thought it was. Absolutely true. And uh, there's a high risk in letting Pascal start. I mean, Pascal also has a decision to make, though. Yeah. Is he making me start or not? Because if Pascal knows that he's going first, there's one card that he's certainly going to bring in from his side deck. But I think I'm not going to spoil you just yet, <laughs> because maybe we're going to see it later in the game and you're going to see what I'm looking at. But what I'm also looking at with the players right now is that they are ready for game number two. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get back into the action. Let's see game number two here. So we have 16 and a half more minutes <laughs> on the clock. Pascal is going to think that... Oh, wait, he has both. Actually, he has a Nibiru and he has a trap card that he was siding in. Oh, it's, oh yeah, now organism. you can see it as well. There is the grave of the super ancient organism. So Pascal just wasn't sure. Is he going to let me start or not? And honestly, even going second, yeah. this card oh, yeah, is pretty yeah. decent. I really don't dislike the card going second as well. It's weird to side in continuous trap cards going second. The, the only problem and issue I have is trap cards that you have to set when going second versus Despia, they could usually be a victim of the Guardian Camara that is just being summoned in end phase and that is just going to destroy your back row. Oh, but looks like yeah. he made Pascal start again. Look at that. That oh. means that Grave of the Super Ancient Organism is going to be live. It's going to be incredible. He's, he, he's got the cross-out designator. But I very much doubt <laughs> that he has... Oh, oh but the one of Hoppy's Duster is being drawn for turn there. That is Kavush. insane. That's devastating. That's the only back removal that Gilam's deck is featuring. We were featuring. discussing this before the, the round started, right? We thought, what outs does Gilam have yes. to suit Grave of the Super Ancient Organism? And we were like, he's got the one Feather Duster. He's, he's uh, said it with a tone. He was like, he has the one Feather yeah. Duster. Yeah, I didn't expect it to draw it, but just <laughs> casually he picked it up there for turn. And he got rid of the grave of the Super Ancient Organism, which honestly is designed to be sided in with Kashtira, because this is expected to be the most popular deck at the moment. But it's so good for his Brandit as well, because Brandit does not really have a way around it. Kashtira can, can go into their exceeds, but Brandit. After you resolve your branded fusion, you are pretty much left with yeah. only your fusion. So Gillum's got everything he could ask for here now, right? He's got the cross-out designator to protect from Ash. If your opponent's got another hand trap, he's got the oh. trouble tactics talent. He's got the branded fusion. The most important question here is, because we have th seen the Nibiru in Pascal's hand, does he have a Nibiru to cross out it? That's the thing. He is side decking two copies of Nibiru. So it will depend on whether you put in oh. that one copy of Nibiru. And he's looking through his deck there. Okay, he found the... Oh, that is also something that you don't really see that often anymore from branded players. But he is using the Light Hack Sealed Fusion there together with the Fallen of Albas for his branded fusion. To it was go into... Albion. Presumably Albion. Probably Albion, yeah. There he is. And then Albion confused with itself and the Hex. The good thing about Dragoon? Albion, though, is like Albion can still attack. So I think you are probably just going to try oh, to put up 8,000 points of damage here, right? Yeah. So I would probably try to keep the Albion on board here. 
because that's like the main difference between Lubalion and Albion. Albion will still be able to attack mm. even though it's used to the fact, and Lubalion can't. And right here, you are going second versus not a whole lot on the side of Pascal. So maybe you're just trying to close that out as quickly as possible. But there is Bestial Magnamut on the side of Pascal. We were discussing it. There is actually... That's also a pretty uh, bit big difference. However, the tactics talents, yeah. right? This is just going to make it easier for Gillum to end the game this turn. True. But, oh, and he has Brennan in red as well. But he can't, he can't target, target the Hex Sealed Fusion here. We're going to use the Brennan in red anyways. Was that was the I'm pretty sure the Hex Sealed targeting Fusion. the Hex or yeah. the Albaz? It was targeting the Hex, I'm pretty sure. Here comes Lubalion. Well, that... Yeah, that still lets Magnamut get to the field, but it's... Very heads-up play summoning in defense mode. That's there. what I was about to say, for no. sure. It's very counterintuitive. Your monster's got 2,500 attack, uh, but yeah, putting it in, in defense to stop yourself from being hit on the first turn by a Tactics Talents. For sure, that was really, really good. But the beauty of Tactics Talents is even if you can't win the game this turn, it's got two other very powerful effects. For sure. You may as well look into your opponent's hand after he did nothing basically in turn one. And then you could look into his hand and see that Nibiru, which is really, really frightening. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe we just go for that. How, How many, many summons are that, we Yeah, on? that's <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like, do I mean, Branded often do five summons on the first turn? Yeah, they usually do. There are some routes where you don't have to do it, but usually they do. Oh, he's using Nubalion and Albion together to go into... What is he even summoning with that? He, look, sure. he's, he's not sure himself. He's looking for his extra deck. And so he's this bringing is... out Dracus to Pelia here. And this will prevent you from using the Lubellion, unfortunately, as well. Because it's banished by the time it, it's no longer on the field, so you he, can't activate it. He probably had no other way to resolve the Albion no. anymore, right? Yeah, you that's have why to resolve the Albion the, if you've activated yeah. it, of course, yeah. So that's pretty unfortunate for him because it looked really good, but all his brand infusion did there Together with the branded and red that he also chained was producing a Dracostopelia, which is honestly not that big of a threat. All it needed was one Magna Mood. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> that shows you the power of the bestial still. And we are going for the draw two here. And I'm not sure if the draw two is the correct approach here, because at this point you have used your branded fusion, you have used the most powerful cards in your deck. Maybe it's time to look at the opposing hand and say, hey, yeah, maybe you can't play either, so I can win this in the long run. Yeah, yeah I was thinking that that was a sensible approach. Once you've seen your opponent just pass the first turn. What are you going to draw into, right? Because yeah. you are going second, you have a lot of blowout cards your opponent's board, but you don't have really any trap cards or something. You use your follow-up. You yeah. used the branded in red as well already. Yeah. There's nothing in the deck anymore. But there is Brandon opening that he picked up for, t for that draw. Discarding. Oh, he discards Ash Blossom. That's also quite bold here of Gilem because that would be a card that really helps versus opponent's top decks there. Oh, what Special summoning out V Fall Novaldos. Is that. That is not legal. Th that's what <laughs> I was about to <laughs> say. <laughs> yeah. It is Brandon opening for a reason. And Fall Novaldos is a lot of cards, or a lot of other cards are considered to be Fallen of Albas, but <laughs> Fallen of Albas is not considered to be a branded card by any means. You do have to question yourself slightly when it comes to this branded deck, because some yeah. cards add branded yeah. cards, some cards add Despia cards, some cards add a card that mentions Fallen of Albas. They like to mix <laughs> it up for sure, but now we're summoning out Elliptium, and I mean, Elliptium has an on-field effect, which can increase the attack points here of Dracostopelia, but Dracostopelia would have been big enough to run over the Magnamut anyhow, so that's not really something that helps him too much here. We're setting a card, and please tell me that you're attacking with the Dragostopelia over the Magna Mood as well. Because I don't think that he entered the battle phase already. No, but I mean, we for sure now, with that special summon of Adliptium, are over five summons, so yeah. that Nibiru would also be live. But I mean, why would you even uh, do that before? Because now you're just going to do it in main phase two, and you're tributing only the opponent's monsters. Yeah. So that's even uh, better, because your opponent is going to have a less stronger Nibiru token there. Maybe. And I mean, you're getting rid of the Dragostopelia, right? Because that one, with the few cards that Pascal has, it's pretty huge. For sure, you're definitely going to use the Nibiru here. Interested by the set in main phase one. <laughs> True. It might be from uh, playing too much speed duel. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, because he did that. I was like, maybe he's not attacking. I agree, yeah, that was why you were like, maybe he just uh, won't use his battle phase, because he's setting now. But um, 
I mean, maybe in this situation it's even a smart play because uh, you make your opponent uh, think that you're not going to use your battle phase and then Pascal uh, maybe is using the Nibiru in main phase 1 already because he could just also go into your end phase straight from main phase 1. So uh, setting the card there might be the correct play, to be honest. But here comes the Nibiru. I'm really happy about the Nibiru, to be honest, because you are going to search for a Bestial and uh, there is nothing in the opponent's graveyard so far. I mean, you could use your own Magnum to be fair. Yeah, you don't really have much use for it. Um, for sure, for sure. So we are summoning the token defense position. And we are going to get another dragon in the end phase. And I think the only dragons he is playing are the Bestials. So we are going to search straight for a Bestial Druid Swarm, I would assume. Is the token bigger than the Nibiru? Um, yeah. In terms of defense point, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, defense points. Elliptium has 2k defense, and our good old Drakistopelia has 1.9. One, 1. So oh, yeah, just it is, about it is yeah, bigger. 900 bigger. It's interesting because you always you, you know the sort of relevant yeah. stat of all of For the monsters, sure. but then when you ask what's the defense points of Ad Libitum, which is a monster that's very rarely in play. Absolutely, and I mean it definitely uh, comes down to battle stats here, quite certainly, because. We are getting closer to timeout, so this game has to be decided in the next seven and a half minutes. And therefore, Pascal definitely has to worry about getting a hat here in life points if he wants to win this match. So that Druis Worm will provide an answer to the token. For sure it does. If you just... And you can also... Uh, oh, that was huge, the fountain draw. Oh yeah, because you already have runic spell cards in your hand, so you will be getting a hat here pretty, pretty decently. Can you afford to be using... Runic cards now with so close to the, the timeout? That's a good point, though, yeah. I mean, you probably just work for your opponent's board here this turn and then try to go for it next turn. That would be my thinking there. You can try to find the uh, troubles and uh, the, the sunny snitch. And then, if you have a life or evil twin monster on the field, every time your opponent normal or special summons a monster, <laughs> you gain 200 life points and your opponent loses 200. So, that is Flashing Fire being activated to special summon. Or is it. Yeah. It looks like it's yeah, special summoning a Hugin. Hugin? Yep, that is Hugin. I mean, worst case, you could also always go for Moon in, which could provide no. you with some uh, life oh, points. Oh, he does have that face. in his, his side deck, so chances are he sided it in. Yep. Wait, not mistaken. No. no, he doesn't. No, he's not. Okay, he can't go. For oh, he plays it in the, oh, in the extra deck already. His... Yeah. Oh wow, that's a very tight extra deck then. For sure. I mean, he decided to only run one gigantic sprite, so he definitely cut down on some crucial cards there. We are drawing into the runic tip as oh, well. Oh, what a great draw there! Because now we can also uh, carry on to to go to the back row, right? We can just yeah. search for runic destruction, so we can take apart the opponent's board step by step. If we want to, we could also go for Flashing Fire, because I think the card he activated at first was... Was it Freezing Curses or was it Flashing Fire? It was Freezing Curses. Yeah, I think it was Freezing Curses, and now he could search for Flashing Fire to get rid of the token if he wants to. Yeah. Does he already have a Flashing Fire in his hand, though? That could also be the case, yeah. He's playing hard to get now with his hand face down. But he decides to not do anything further here. Pass it back over to his opponent. The branded red is still set on the field. Does it actually do anything? We have the Adliptum in the graveyard, but I don't think that there is anything else. I mean, now we have the Cartesia on board. So the right? Cartesia, yes. the, the Nibiru token again is, is light, I'm assuming? It should be, yeah. I'm pretty sure it is light. But there comes Runic Tip on the summon of Cartesia. But now that Cartesia is on the field, it has a quick effect, so you could always yeah. just respond here. Yep, and it also you can use the branded in red to add back the ad libitum and then fuse off the Cartesia as well. Yeah, that works. And there is no response to the effect of Cartesia. The thing is, whatever you're summoning out here with the effect of Cartesia then can be targeted by the spell card that we are about to search. There comes one of the cards from Photon Hypernova, the latest main set to be released. It is Grand Guignol. That was and top top notch pronunciation. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> playing it just because he's French, I'm assuming, yeah. because that <laughs> name really does sound French to me. Uh, but yeah, it, it looks like it's even the Starlight Rear copy. It looks really decent there. Oh, it's a lovely card. Yeah, it lets you sure. send a light or dark monster from from anywhere, yeah, in the extra deck anywhere all main in deck. the world. One time they'll bring out a card that lets you send it from your side deck as well as your extra deck and main deck, but not quite today. <laughs> yeah, the only requirement is that it has level... to be a level six or higher. Yeah. But, I mean, there are plenty to choose from. There's obvious, the obvious answer, I'll be on the extra deck. Yeah. But oh. sometimes there's also like a Bestial Lubalion from the main deck that can be a good send as well. Um, but, yeah, here I think we're just going for the Albion. Yeah, he's already grabbing his extra deck there. But is it even resolving? That's the question here. It's, it's got to resolve, right? 
I mean, we search first with tip, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So yes. we, okay, we yeah. would already okay, have no. an answer for that, but we have to banish the card as well. But that probably is the branded fusion that is right there on top of the banished pile. Also, like, the thing is, Pascal doesn't necessarily have to deal damage here, because he is one game ahead, so as long as he doesn't take damage here in this game, he's going to win the match. That is absolutely correct, and the Freezing Curses are going to be activated here on the Grand Guignol. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> He's struggling, yeah. and I haven't tried to say the name yet. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to uh, his big brother, the Mirror Jade, Ooh. it does not send for cost. Was that a Banish of Despian Tragedy? It looks like it That's is. That's very and useful. also Mercuria. I, I think I saw Mercuria for sure. So if he even banished both of those, that could be a really, really good banish Because for him. he might be able to just sneak a few hundred damage in and with only a couple of minutes left because you can summon the Guardian Chimera oh. with Branded in red. Yeah, true. Oh, we are, look, it was a Despian tragedy indeed, searching for that ultimate rare Arlooper. Yeah, these are some very shiny cards for real. Yeah. He knew he was going to be featured. For he thought sure, I'd best yeah. get the shiny ones. And we have also seen Pascal draw into the Kizikil Frost, a card that does nothing for him. So those draws with Runic Fountain really not putting in the work right here. So what is he going to do? That Crossout Designated so yeah. far has not really put in the work. Let's I be honest. Crossout Designated does have a very specific purpose, though, I would say, in this deck to negate the Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Which, crazily enough, Pascal Kim is not even playing at uh, all. He didn't get the memo that it was the most popular yeah. card this weekend, <laughs> and that he should be playing it, everyone should be playing it in the... But maybe that bold decision of not playing it is going to uh, bring him the victory this weekend. Well, if your opponent's got the, the dead Crossout Designator, then it... Every time. Every time. Has he, has he got two crossout designators now? Yes. Yeah, one is set, one is in hand. So he's entered the battle phase, so maybe he's going to use the branded in red in his battle phase, perhaps? That sounds about right to be honest. Oh, he's not. They just no. set a card, and now this is really close to a time situation. And Pascal will actually just have a turn with all of the runic cards in hand, basically. So he is going to draw some cards. Okay, so we are going to I think probably first activate of all, destruction in end phase. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I love that. that Gives me Mystical Space Typhoon in end phase yeah. vibes. Yep. <laughs> and also banishing four cards from your opponent's deck. Let's see what they are. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hagen is yeah. mandatory to activate in the graveyard. It has to go back to the extra deck. That's true. But it's nothing you can choose. There comes the destruction on the newly set card, which is just another crossout designator. Banishing four cards. There's Dark Ruler, Called by the Grave, Talons, and Expulsion. Interestingly enough, he even sided in an explosion going second. Yeah. I mean, against a deck that doesn't really OTK, you just want to have as many resources as you can possibly have, probably, right? Yeah, probably. You don't have to use it exclusively to summon the gimmick no. puppet. If you tribute summon a branded monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz, then you can summon two monsters to your own field. Yeah, that works it's very just well. another handy target for Albion. So, normal summon Kizikil Frost. Yeah, <laughs> but he did draw into the good old sprite blue for turn, no. so any level 2 monster on board will do it for him to get his sprite engine going here. One of my favorite engines in the game. I just love these little lightning thunder <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very, really, really cool. And the main target for blue usually is going to be sprite jet. I am, I'm in love with sprite blue's jacket. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe we'll get you one for the next YCS. <laughs> Thank you. I'll that take that as a promise. <laughs> <laughs> but there's Sprite Carrot being searched here, actually. I quite like that, to be honest. You can just go on to... Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I like that, to be honest. But the there comes with Brandon and, and Red. Red. Oh, but there is another Bestial. We knew about that Bestial. There's Bestial Drewsworm on the targeted card. But, I mean, perhaps you don't want to search the Jet in this situation, because the usual target for the Jet is the Starter, but you definitely don't yeah. want to activate Starter when yeah. there's only 10 yeah. seconds left Yeah, that's actually in the true. game, and you're on equal life points to your opponent. You have Smashers as well, and at this point... So, there is oh, wow. the announcement! The timeout has been announced, there is no difference in life points currently in this game and that means that game number two is going to end in a draw meaning the whole match as pascal won game number one is going to end in a victory for pascal so we are still seeing a Kuridis on board just to make sure that gm does not take any damage <laughs> at all in a turn where there is no battle phase and the turn will end 
immediately after this. But maybe something else could happen. Maybe Guillaume has a last trick on his sleeve. But <laughs> no, we are having a handshake. And Pascal is victorious in the first round of the 250th YCS in London. Yeah, what a start for the title defender, basically. Yeah. This time switching it up, not bringing the Sky, Sky, the Sky Striker strategy, but the runic life twin sprite deck. He likes spells. Would you he just like yeah, spells? Like as we said, would you describe runic maybe as the sort of new incarnation of Sky Striker? Sort of. But sort of. How, how do you like it? Do you think this is a good deck to bring into this tournament? Do you think this could be the deck we see this tournament being won by? Well, I'm worried when I see this match that even though Pascal was in a winning position, mm -hmm. it seemed like for almost the whole match, it still yeah. came right down to the wire. Absolutely. You know, exactly equal life points going into timeout. This might be something, you know, if your opponent's just done a few hundred damage to you in one yeah. game, maybe he could have with the branded in red in the previous battle phase, just done a couple hundred with a yeah. Chimera. It certainly feels like it's a lot of work, right? You have to really yeah. work with those yeah. runic decks. That's what I was I was complaining about that when I was playing a lot of... <laughs> you uh, don't like working while you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You're playing Yu-Gi-Oh for It was fun. too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a tournament and I was struggling to OTK my opponents to, to win games. Yeah. And I think that the runic engine doesn't solve that problem at all. It gets rid of opposing monsters, which is a problem for the deck. Yeah. But it, it doesn't really help you win games. Also, I don't think that... I mean, Kashira is kind of the deck to beat right now. True. It also doesn't make this matchup better. Of course, you can argue, okay, there are big monsters on the Kashira side. Freezing curses help. Well, Flashing sure. fire really helps. But Kashira Birth is <laughs> such is a, a fantastic card. It is if a you don't ass. have the destruction immediately to just answer that. So I think that this deck is not the perfect approach to win the tournament if you face a lot of Kashira. But, of course, those famous players who are on the deck, and let me tell you something, there are a lot of them, they can prove me wrong, but let's hear first what Ed and Pascal have to tell us about it. Thank you very much, Leo. I am joined by Pascal, the winner of YCS 2019 back here in London, and also now the winner of our first feature match. First of all, congratulations. You're back since your 2019 victory. How does it feel to be back here at a YCS in London? It's good after Corona, finally being here again, having the chance to defending my title. And here you are, Sky Strikers before. This time you're going with the Runic Live Twin Sprite with some Bestials. Talk to us a bit about your deck choice. To be honest, I had no clue what to play, so I just uh, relied on my team, asked them what they are playing and uh, trust on their choices. So I've tested the stake for like two days and that's it. <laughs> Only two days and you're here straight in with the win in that first round. So is there anything kind of spicy that you've put in that deck or is, do you find it's quite a standard build? I think the deck choice itself is kind of spicy. I don't think that that many players are expecting that deck at least in that um, in the build like people expecting runic decks but not with live twins and uh, sprite together at least my opinion yeah i think the deck itself was kind of a spicy choice for this event yeah well it served you well so far so let's just go through the game that we've just seen so there was a strong opening field from you there was an evenly matched which cleared your field and there was a, there was a kind of misplay. Maybe it was because he was up against the previous YCS London champion. There was a little bit of nerves because Guillaume misplayed because there was a moment where he could have normal summoned Albaz or returned a Luba to hand to get rid of your Griffin. But that meant that you still have that on field. So at that moment, do you try and capitalize on that moment or those nerves or are you just sort of waiting to see what happens? Uh, I mean, he discarded the Albaz for uh, the branded opening, I think. Was it that? And the Albas would have been the out, if I'm not mistaken. So I was like, okay, maybe he's nervous, maybe he's doing a mistake there. I was just waiting and see. I can't change anything about it if he has the out. So I just just sit on my griffin and wait if, if he has an answer or not. He could have, I think he had triple tactics as well. He could have taken the griffin. But uh, I can totally understand if you're nervous up on the stage, especially if it's your first YCS. As, uh, it was for him, so... First YCS and then your first duel of a YCS is put on that stage against the previous champion. That's got to be nerve-wracking. But you managed to banish the Dark Magician from his deck. There was the Super Poly into Dracus Topelia where he cleared the field a bit. And then Unchained Abomination was a really strong field presence for you, which took game one for you. So what is it that you quite like about having big cards like that in the deck? 
I mean, with the uh, Runic engine, you have to skip your battle phase, so you have to think about how to get rid of the cards you cannot clear by battle phase. I think Abomination does a good job, especially with the uh, Runic spell that pops, or the Evil Twin that pops, so Abomination can pop an additional card, uh, also popping in the end phase in a card, so I think it's a good choice to uh, wipe the board. No kidding. And then we get into game two. There was a first draw of Harpy's Feather Duster, which got rid of your Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. So that was a, a moment like that, because that's a very good card to put up against Branded. So how were you feeling in that moment? I mean, I had Magnum and uh, Nibiru in hand. I have to admit, I didn't expect a Dragoon. So I was uh, pretty glad that I had the possibility to out the Dragoon, especially because he had to resolve his Albion. So he had, he had to use the Lubellion and couldn't get to uh, Dragoon again. Or I, I don't even know if uh, he could have uh, gone for Dragoon, however. Um, I wasn't that scared in the moment he uh, cleared my trap. I was like, OK, I have my backup cards, didn't expect Dragoon. Then I saw the Hex, whatever the card is called, for Dragoon. I was like, OK, I have the Magnum, I have to hope that's enough. If not then uh, I will go to, into game three. <laughs> Absolutely, and then you mentioned that Nibiru, that was quite a disruptive moment for it. And then Gilm kind of played quite defensively, and as a result, it just meant that you stuck with that game one, you had that lead, and then it was a long, long game one, which meant that game two slowly ticked down on time, and you've taken it. So congratulations again. Are there any decks, considering you said you've only been playing this for a couple of days, are there any decks that you're slightly anxious about going up against over the next few rounds of Swiss? The mirror match, I think, could be kind of hard if other players are considering the deck as well. Um, yeah, and I have to admit, I was a bit scared about Despia because uh, I do not play any Ashes, and that's the choke point for the deck. But it worked at all. So. I mean, it's worked out for you, so congratulations. Best of luck in the rest of your rounds of Swiss. Guys, don't go anywhere. Obviously, the thing that happens between some of these rounds is because we have so many players, over 3,600, if there are any time issues at all through those rounds, there will be a little bit of a delay before round two's feature match comes to you. So in between that, we're going to have a little bit of fun with some quizzes and some other content. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more coverage. Brand new for Yu-Gi-Oh! Rise and shine, Ruby. Looks like we got some work to do. Crystal Beasts are back and ready to rack up some wins with their new advanced Crystal Beast forms. You can score cool new cards and add some precious gems to your collection with this all-foil set. Yu-Gi-Oh! Battles of Legend, Crystal Revenge. Five cards per pack, each pack sold separately.
Welcome back to more of your coverage here at YCS London 2023. So as I explained just before our little break there, in between some of these rounds, especially in the early phases, when there are thousands of players, even 20 different matches that have been put into extra time can cause some of these things to be pushed back before we can get into our second round feature match. So to kill some of the time between those, we have lots of different bits of content coming for you. So we've got some live quizzes, where we're doing some interviews, we've got deck profiles, we've got a lot of content creators that we've been chatting to here. But one of the main things we get to do is we get to have some fun here as a coverage team where we get to play some rounds together. So we've got some speed duel tournaments, we've got Time Wizard March 2005, and right now we have Time Wizard March 2010 format. So in front of me I have Nadir and Marcello, who are two of our commentator team that you guys are going to be seeing quite a lot along with Alberto. And these guys are about to play our first round of three different rounds. It's a best of one as we play this March 2010 Time Wizard format. So gentlemen, can we do a high roll to see which one of you will be starting, please? Okay, that's a seven. I'm having to get quick at this maths thing. And that's 11, so you're gonna go first. Nadir is gonna go first. I'm gonna hand you guys over to the wonderful Basti, Tom and Leo, who once again are gonna be taking you through some of this. And this is quite fun for us because we normally shout over other people's card games, but right now we get to play the card games ourselves. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much, Ed. By the way, if you have watched the Guess a Card before, <laughs> I got the Okazi on the first picture. This is really important to me that I got to mention that. So, the real champion. <laughs> we are back in 2010. And this is one of Marcello's favorite formats oh. in the Yu-Gi-Oh! history. So there is a clear favorite in the room. It's definitely Nadir, right? He's my favorite. <laughs> it has to be Nadir. Yeah. But also, it's not just Marcello's favorite format. This format has been so popular lately. That Time Wizard format is being so popular amongst a lot of people in Europe, in the US, even like everywhere in the world, basically people are playing this. And we and therefore have some public events as well. Yeah. We have some public events yeah. for it here, really big ones, scheduled ones for this weekend too. And I think we can explain more while we are watching the game. Yeah. So let's get into the action. Let's see what Nadir and Marcello are bringing here for this castle tournament. So I think we saw Nadir. Yeah, he won first. the die roll. Indeed he did. And look at that. He is starting with the hamster and also the Raiko. And Greffer in there is, I think the starting hand of Nadir looks really decent there. As you can see, he's on Blackwing, but it's not just a regular Blackwing deck. He's actually heavily relying on Vayu, which is like the main thing in the deck. I was going to say, you, you, you say he's on Blackwing. I don't see any Blackwing cards. Yeah, not yet, but I, I can tell you, they are about to come yeah. into this game. Vayu, the absolute coolest ninja chicken there is, I yep. want to say. I was wondering if that was going to be his name for a second, the absolute <laughs> something, but uh, no. There is the flip summon of the super nimble Mega Hamster, and we're going to set ourselves a Raikou to the field. This card, and I hope I'm not confusing this head, is an absolute power force. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I think you're right on the set, so I will give you that. I'm not sure about the joke, but the set was correct at least. <laughs> yeah. do, there's no, no lie, though. Hamster and Raikou are the pair that make this format. Oh, I, I Absolutely. If we had this format as the main event and we saw do you think Raikou would be the most represented card it could very well be i think Caius would also be a good guess Caius, because yep. almost every deck is also playing Caius in that format uh, but it's really interesting as blackwing nowadays could be considered the most popular deck in this format in this time wizard format uh, but back in the day people were more sold on the uh, quick draw Dandelion deck, like the Synchro deck, but this isn't considered to be the best deck anymore. So I think it's really interesting to see a format developing, even though it has been 12 years ago. That's really, really strong. It's for me, when I play that deck, I feel like I really want Glow Up Bulb. Yeah. <laughs> but true. unfortunately, Glow Up Bulb didn't come out until oh, a few sets afterwards. Oh, and look at afterwards. that flip summon Raikou onto the Shining Angel. So the floating effect of Shining Angel is not applying when it is destroyed by card effect. So that's very heads up there by Nadir. And now he even has plenty of dark attribute monsters in hand. None of them you There's want to read. Oh, one of the, the heavy storm. Demons. That's, of course, also a little downside to the Raikou. You are milling random oh, cards. Oh, but there's another yeah. Kaius, and we're going after one of the back rows. What do you what think of it? this sequencing? Perhaps maybe target the, the set with the, with the Raikou and the monster with the... True, you're right. With the Kaius seems a bit more traditional. Also, of course, Kaios is one of the best cards, and there are philosophies about the deck or about the Kaios strategy <laughs> that you want to use it whenever because it applies just so much pressure. However, once you see a Shining Angel, you know it pretty much can only be the 
let's call it Christia Turbo. It's a fairy deck. It's a fairy deck. And yeah. they rely heavily on Christia, and you don't have that many outs oh, to Christian. Ooh, and look at wow. that. There's Herald of Orange Light discarding another Herald of Orange Light to get rid of that Kai's and also negating its effect. That's strong. So that back row on Marcello's side of the field must be strong. It must be very important to give up Herald, because Herald's an extremely powerful effect. I mean, in this format and even in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! today. Yeah. It is, but maybe it also was really crucial here for Marcello to get more fairies into the graveyard, yeah. because, of course, there is that number of four fairies that he's trying to accomplish, because at some point he wants to get to the Arc Lord Christia, which is his ultimate boss monster in this deck. And there is, with the Nova Summoner, basically the fourth fairy already in game for him now. So Nadir's got to be very cognizant of not letting that Nova Summoner Absolutely. get to the graveyard easily. There is Card Trooper being normal summoned. <laughs> and we're milling three more cards. And there is the first Blackwing of the duel. We see the value I was talking about earlier. Is that is that three darks? We talked about the magic number of four oh, fairies, but is it a magic number of three darks? There's also Dark Arm Dragon, of course, in the deck of Nadir. And I think not only in the deck, it's in his opening hand there. And, and also Chaos Swords, there are so many cards that can apply pressure there for the Oh, that is actually th three ducks. We that just three ducks, saw right? the Herald, so maybe there won't be such a good answer to this Dark No, Arm I think Dragon. it's only two ducks, though, right? No, it's Caius, Caius, and Vayu. I and thought then oh, it's two Caius, yes, hamster. two Caius, you're right. There's two Caius. Oh, that is really strong. We have seen double uh, orange light discarded to just protect the back row on the oh, right side. Oh, there comes oh, the oh, 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 true. Oh. Wow, very heads up play there by Marcello because he sees there are three dogs, so he knows there's the potential of a dark arm dragon. So normally a lot of people <laughs> are just using the trap dust as soon as they can, but Marcello really, really nicely waited here for the perfect moment to get rid of the Dark Arm Dragon, but he sees very still, still the Chaos, chaos Sorcerer. Sorcerer is insane right here. It's very, very annoying for your Nova Summoner, because again, you don't get its effect if it's destroyed by a card effect, and you don't get its effect if it's banished. But, I mean, in general, there's so much going on in the hand of yeah. Nadir, because that Grapher is also really powerful, because it can get your um, Shiroko into the graveyard, making your Vayu that is already in their life, so there's a lot of steam going for Nadir. And it's excellent for his Turn from the different dimension, it's going to let that him banish well, some of his yeah. monsters. That is super strong indeed. I, I feel like when you're Marcello, you think, right, I've got this great read on the Dark Arm, so I'm going to activate my Dash Shoot, and then you think, oh, there's <laughs> Chaos, there's Chaos, 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 Chaos That, is, as that well. is a good hand. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> but let's be honest, like, Marcello really protected his back row there with the Herald of the Orange Light, so I expect this back row to be quite impactful, so maybe Might it is torrential. an immediate answer to the Chaos Sorcerer. My money's on Call of the Haunted. Oh, I, I didn't see it, but Call of the Haunted seems like an excellent card for this deck. He doesn't have to, to respond to, to the Chaos Sorcerer, so well, that's. I feel like if it, if it was a monster, if it was a trap that activated on the summon, then you would have just activated no. on the Caius, right? Because you could chain it to Caius effect, who's torrential or bottomless. Yeah. So, Marcello picks up another card for a turn, and he's under quite some pressure here. Yeah, that's. As I mean, the time format, a uh, time wizard master, he is himself. Losing here versus Nadir would be quite an upset. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> I guess we are all rooting for the underdog in this yeah, scenario, Yeah, for right? sure. Also, Marcello has won enough casters yeah. from hands, <laughs> I gotta be honest here. What about you, Leo? Have you won enough yet? I have won quizzes. <laughs> I have won plenty of quizzes, and I am proud of that. It hasn't <laughs> happened in the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments yet, but... Uh, oh, there is the Mystical Space Typhoon on the just return of Shemesh. Hopefully, Hopefully he will not activate okay. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a lot of fairies there for Marcello, then. Oh, it doesn't bring back Marcello's fairies, oh, it but it, you do pay half your life points, and then your monsters just get banished again in the end no. phase, Oh, right? you're right. So yeah, true, true. <laughs> no, not There's so no useful. real upside to it now. <laughs> but I'm mean, hitting a return with the Mystical Space Typhoon must feel really good because this is a power card. This can yeah. end games in seconds. However, it's not that powerful in this deck because if you special summon back your Vayu, you can not you can't use it, synchro no. summon yeah. from no, the field. No. I mean, Marcello did know that that was the return, right? Because of the trap dust shoot he Pretty played much. earlier. Oh, but there's Dust Tornado now as well on the other back row. And it is oh. Mirror of Force! It's always very scary if your opponent just says, oh, I'm going to destroy yeah. this back row, I'm going to destroy this back row. So there now. must be something powerful oh. coming, and it is brain control onto the Chaos Sorcerer. And are we now getting rid of the Chaos Sorcerer itself, or do we get rid of the card trooper That's tricky. Trooper They're here. both very threatening yeah, cards. Because the sure. card trooper can send more cards from your deck to the graveyard, maybe get a Sirocco in the graveyard. But oh. he is banishing the Chaos Sorcerer. And that is not look, is looking that too good for Marcello's last card? I think it is. I actually think it is. The last straw. 
And the draw for turn for the Tidus of Magadan Knight. Absolutely insane right here. Now we can look through Marcello's graveyard. And Plank's oh. Brown Zombie oh, and Shiroko are getting milled by Card Trooper. <laughs> <laughs> now he <laughs> understands this format. He knows how to pilot this deck perfectly well. Marcello just giving him a round of applause there. <laughs> And I mean, you don't really overcommit here, right? I think you can normal. What you can do is normal summon the Armageddon Knight, send another valuable resource, uh, another value, perhaps, yeah, exactly, and then just attack this. I think if there isn't enough cards for a Christia in the graveyard, then you don't need to rush. If there is enough cards for a Christia, then you really want to end this game right now because a top deck could change the entire game. By but my I think count, there's three, but yeah. I might be, I might be counting. There wrong. comes the Armageddon Knight, though. I, I, I really like your approach. It's just setting the Raikou maybe to just yeah. get rid of the back row next turn or something. I, I like that. No, I'm, I, I like attacking for the game. <laughs> He's got oh. the aim, you know, let's go for it. I mean, yeah. Oh, I, I like That's that a more fun yeah. <laughs> I like that approach as well to just uh, use the Plague Spreader here and go for a Bryonic. But I mean, it, it limits your resources for the following turns. If, if there is a Torrential Tribute. Maybe there is no following turn, who knows? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be the optimal case for an idea. <laughs> But Indeed. I mean, we, we do still have Part of me Bayou and Shiroko in the graveyard. Yeah, so. prefers using the Bayou first, and then you can you can summon a Stardust Dragon, and then that, also and that works, puts yeah. another level six Blackwing in the graveyard, and then you can use the second but Bayou. Then you're oh. really playing into the uh, Torrential Tribute. Well, I mean, not, you're getting you, an armor master. You can make a, a Stardust Dragon first with the with the Plague Spreader and the. Yeah, but I mean, the then on six. the Plague Spreader, you would yeah. get hit by the Torrential, right? Yeah, but then you get the second follow-up. So worst yeah. case scenario is, yeah, you get the... But Nadir is really contemplating. Like, he knows this is a crucial part of this game. Like, this is the turning point. Is he committing here? And is he getting punished for it? Or is he just going for game? And is he going out victoriously by just doing all of his stuff right here, right now? Also, this is a deck I brought to this uh, event, and I forgot to put a Mist Berm in, so <laughs> there's no way we're going to see that being summoned here. I, w I see this, and again, and I think Trishula. This is this is me. Yeah. Sort of like it's the it's kind of old format, well, but again, it's too there too. There is going to be the Brian. Oh, he's going for it. Discarding no the Raikou. What from is the set? It is oh, Book of Moon. Moon. So he's going to live enough to prevent it? I think one extra turn. No, that's is exactly 4,200 uh, 4, damage. That's what I was thinking. There is oh. Card Trooper being 1,900, and then also the Armed Master coming out now. That's the a very ring. heads up from Nadir. <laughs> look, I think he has to look it up himself. How much is it? <laughs> it is Game oh, and Nadir. Oh, Nadir. What a win. <laughs> <laughs> Nadir winning versus Marcello Varveri. This is the major upset of the tournament so far. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This could be the upset of the weekend. Yes. Let <laughs> I think Nadir is done for the weekend. He, he, <laughs> can, he can go he home. Can that retire. Was, he, he did all he got there. But I mean, not going to lie, he still has to play out the final. And I yeah. mean, um, you're going to get into the action later as exactly. well, right? You're yeah. going to play some can Time Wizard as Alberto well. Alberto avenge Marcello? But he's got to get through me first. Can. How do you like your chances? I don't know what he's playing, so I, I, I know the deck I play. I like I like it very much. Okay, okay. So it would be surprising if you didn't know the deck you were playing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, you, you could say this thing, this thing for, for the deal, though, because he just played your deck, to be honest. <laughs> that is, that is he goes, oh, point. I hate this deck. Why did you give this to me, Leo? Yeah, I, I mean, just it, kept it's milling Vayus and Sorokos. <laughs> I'm pretty surprised that he had Armageddon Knight and Greffer because those are only one-offs, because I only have one of each. <laughs> what a fantastic deck builder. But the Card Trooper. Uh, the Card Trooper the was card excellent. Trooper. He, was he, was better. he actually was better because he yeah. milled more useful cards. Well, the Card so Trooper easy, very easy. much carried that game, didn't he? He did 3,800 yeah. damage, milled the Vayu and a Sorocco and the I Three think, Dogs I and the Raikou. And zombie, yeah, like he did it all. He did it all. <laughs> there was no the little need for machine that cards. could was Card Trooper. That was really, really cool. So, uh, as I've just heard, as I've just been informed, we are just going for a live quiz. This weekend, we're aiming for as much live content as possible, and therefore, we are just going non-stop for so much action. Like, our goal this weekend yeah. is to be live pretty much non-stop, just having you entertained as much as possible, so you will not have any break content or anything. Sometimes, of course, there will be some, but usually we're trying to go for live and more live yeah. and more live stuff. And of course, there's the main event going on as well. So that oh, will that be too, right? That will be <laughs> there. We came here for we were just here for forgot. the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could also just enjoy ourselves for the whole weekend. You guys would have to live with it because you tuned in now. <laughs> So, but we've just been informed that yeah. our quiz master and the 
quizzes are ready. So let's get over. Let's let's let it take it over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leo. It's me, Ed, the quiz master, here with my quizzes, as Leo put it. Thank you very much, guys. How exciting a little bit of a game. I'm sorry that you didn't win that round, though. Commiserations. Nadir did take it, but we'll see where that happens. Now, are you confident with the Time Wizard 2010 format? Do you think you might do well? About that, I am. About the quizzes, Ed, you already know. We already know. For those of you who haven't seen some of our coverage for previous YCSs, Alberto sometimes struggles with the quizzes, so we'll have to see what happens here, although we possibly already know. So, gentlemen, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a back and forth on a series of quiz questions that we have prepared. So to get this started, why don't we do a game of rock, paper, scissors to see which one of you will be starting. But can Alberto win this? Okay. So we can't even. Do yeah, 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 that's fine. It was a draw. It was a draw. Okay, Alberto's managed to win something. So we're going to go on from here. So we start with you. We're going to do first to first to five because we have time to fill for a little bit while we wait for the final few tables to get finished and then for our feature match to be selected and for our players to make their way up here. So we're filling time with content as much as we can. Alberto, your first question. What is the name of the number 75 monster? Do you guys at home know this? Do you know what number 75's main name is? There's so many number cards, Marcello. I never remember which they all are. But luckily, I know, because I have them written down right here. Alberto, do you know what number 75 is? No, number 75, hard horror? I have no idea. Unfortunately not. Marcello, I get to pass it over to you. Do you know what this card is? Um... <laughs> I'm thinking of Crimson Ninja, but I don't think it's right. Is that your answer then? Yeah. I'm afraid that's incorrect, gentlemen. It's Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. That's a heck of a card name that I get to read out live on this stream. So we move on to another numbers question. So, Marcello, this question's for you. What is the name of the number 11 monster? Slightly easier. I'm sure some of you guys in the chat already know what the answer to this is. Again, I know, because I have them written down. Do you think you know? Uh, I might. <laughs> give me just... just give him a second. We've luckily got plenty of time to figure out exactly what these answers are. And we have lots more questions, a lot of them to do with things like card text. The, the only thing that come close by, I think it's wrong, is 101, which is Shark Corner R, but it's uh, number 11. No. I know 101, but not 11. OK, so I'm going to pass it over to Alberto. Alberto, can you get this one? Is this your moment? I was thinking about a shark, but I don't remember the name. I don't even know if they're a shark, but... Well, I'm sure some of you in the chat got it. The answer is Big Eye. Number 11 is Big Eye. Both of them knew as well. Look at Marcello's frustration. <laughs> It's fine. Tell you what, I'll move on from numbers for a bit, and we may come back to numbers very shortly. Let's go for some card texts. Now, this is one that we've had before, so I'm going to see if you guys can remember this one, because this is the round that I'd, I'd like to think I'd be good at, but we'll find out. Alberto, this is your question. So this is the card text of a normal monster. Much more than just a child, this dragon is gifted with untapped power. Now that, I mean, Leo, Leo's giving me, a, give, he's, he's chanting it in my ear. I know that Leo knows it over in the commentary booth. This is a classic card. Think OG, original couple of sets, original starter decks. Those are my clues for some of these. Let's see what happens. Do you guys know? I'll read it one more time. Much more than just a child, this dragon is gifted with untapped power. Your turn. Do you know? I'll go with Hunter of Dragon, but it's, it's not the It is not. So, Marcello, do you know? <laughs> Baby Dragon. It is Baby Dragon! Baby there we go. Congrats. Yeah, child, see, you had it. You sort of knew the thought process. Maybe five was an ambitious number for us to go to. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll go to three. We'll have to see. Right, next question. We'll do another card text question. Marcello, this is your one. You've got one point. Please make sure you keep a note of your points, because I will forget. Next question. This human-shaped animal with wings is beautiful to watch, but deadly in battle. Again, think of those early cards, early signature famous cards. That's kind of what we're going for here. I realize whenever I look in the feedback monitor of 
this, that I'm so much shorter than all of you guys. In fact, that's the one thing with Nadir and Tom, the UK commentators, I'm less short. I feel like I'm a short king up in here, <laughs> up in the Hugo commentary. Right, do you have an idea? Um, I'm thinking RPs, but I can't figure out a, a normal RP. So, because RP ladies, I know the numbers, but RP does it actually exist without numbers? RP lady, that's that's my question. I'll go just for RP lady, no numbers. Correct. Yeah. It is RP lady. Very good. Okay, so that's two, which means we maybe have to get up to that third number. But this is now your question. We'll go for another card text. Ooh, which one am I going to go for? Okay, we'll go for another classic card here. This monster moves so fast that it looks like an illusion to mortal eyes. This might actually have been a harder one than I thought, but it is a very iconic early card, a Yugi card. But that could be anything at this point. That could be one of any 40 cards. Alberto? Do you think you know the answer? I'm judging by the smile on your face and the laughter that possibly not. Do you want to take a stab at it, an early Yugi card? Yes, I don't even want to guess. I can't really think of any, honestly, with this text. Goodness me. <clears throat> so, 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 let's, so, uh, the, the mortal part is really giving me skepticism about it, but I'm thinking OG fast cards, so I'm just going to go for Sonic Bird. I'm afraid that's incorrect. It was Gazelle, the king of mythical beasts. So neither, neither of our party got that one there. I'm going to find another, another one. Tell you what, in the last tournament that we did, we had some pearly questions. So why don't we quickly ask one about pearlies? So the last question I'm going to ask, what is pearly doing in pearly pretty memory? Uh, it's having a buff. Correct! So that is the third point to Marcello, and therefore Marcello wins this quiz. Commiserations, Alberto, but frankly, we all saw this coming. I did well, Good. as always, you know? <laughs> uh, Of course, of course you did. So, Alberto, Marcello, thank you very much for doing this quiz with me. Guys, we've got plenty more coverage coming your way. So I'm going to throw you guys back over to our wonderful German duo, and also Nadir. And this is going to be a nice little mix-up of different commentators that we've got throughout this weekend with our new trios. I'm excited. We've got round two coming very shortly. So, gentlemen, how are we feeling about the current tournament so far? What do we think about round two? Thank you very much, Ed. We are joined here by the master himself who defeated... Il Bestio. <laughs> Marcello Il Bestio. So, you are the Blackwing master now, right? Is that going to be your new thing? Are you going to play Blackwings now until the end of days? Uh, I think it's a big stretch to call <laughs> that a Blackwing deck. You know. <laughs> that um... is a fair point. <laughs> Well, you know, I just got to walk away from this, admitting <laughs> that I have a 100% win rate against Marcello, not sure. technically, so undefeated. That against, makes uh, you also a European champion then, of course. Yeah, <laughs> so and the YCS champion. <laughs> yeah you, you didn't hear it on stream, but we actually did wager his uh, world top four oh. and his uh, European oh. win. So Congratulations, yeah, thank <laughs> you. even more. What can I say? <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you are going to see, uh, because Ed didn't mention it yet, but we are preparing the second semi-final of that tournament right now. So Alberto and Tom Payne, who was just commentating with us, are going to play another match of Time Wizard 2010 format. And so you are going to watch your opponents for the final. Are you, who are you more afraid of at the moment, <laughs> even uh, though you haven't seen the decks yet? No, I think Alberto's on Gravekeepers, I think, right? Oh, is he? Yeah, he's doing nice. a little bit of uh, oh, sharing. Cool. Uh, so, you know, Gravekeepers, Necro Valley, um, there's been so many iterations of Necro Valley, but all of them, I'm pretty sure, say you can't use Vayu. That's a pretty... I, pretty... I mean, you are running Triple Raikou, you're running yeah. Double Dust Tornado, which was pretty smart deck building, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> I built that deck by myself. Yeah, I know. So. I didn't just borrow it from you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely Ooh, also not point. missing cards. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, yeah, so... Um, I'm excited to see this. I'm not very well acquainted with uh, the format, but I know it's extremely popular. It is, yes. you know, it is one of the most beloved for, um, sure. uh, for the for the player base. You know, to go back in some of those legacy time wizard formats, uh, it's just really popular because there's so much variety. There's so much different. Uh, yeah, there's so many different decks. Yeah. And also, what we talked about earlier, it's so crazy that the format is still developing, even though it's 12 years ago. Look what we have here. <laughs> Are you I also an enthusiast of the 2010 format? How could I not be? Yeah. Everyone loves these Time Wizard formats. So currently, I thought that we were going into our feature match, but no, apparently we have some slight overtime, as oh. usual, with these early rounds. All right. But the current setup is happening over there. I'm excited to do some of these tournaments because we also have the 2005 one as well, and then we yeah. have the two Speed Duel tournaments as well. For so, sure. 
what decks are your guys' favorites out of all of these? For the 2010 format, mm. uh, I gotta say, I mean, I'm a little bit influenced by Nadia showcasing the power of the deck just now, so I gotta say it is Blackwing for me personally. Fair enough. Nadia, I'm guessing you're quite fond of Blackwing by this point as well. <laughs> well, actually, uh, in the little bit I've played, uh, usually against Joshua Schmidt, actually, he tends to play this, uh, is it called Quick Draw? Yeah, Quick Draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the, um, Volcanic Shell. The guy who discards. Yeah, adds Quick Draw. Oh, no, Drill, Drill Warrior. Warrior. Yeah, I yeah. love that card. Drill, Drill Warrior is really strong. Oh, and Leo, how about you? Chef's Kiss. I really like the Ferry version. Oh, uh, okay. The one that Marcello was playing. He couldn't showcase it, but I have seen him play the deck. It is absolutely crazy. Christia is such a strong card. Oh, yeah. But Ooh. I much prefer. We're ready. The so deck keep, that keep we talking. Might I'm going to go sure. over to the main stage. So we, I, I much prefer the Light Sworn version oh. with Christia because it, it's always fun to watch. You know, Light Sworns, maybe you mill something with a brigade. Maybe you don't even draw it because it's limited. May so I have a little spoiler for you? Maybe oh. we are going to see some Light Sworn cards maybe. just now. I mean, Light Sworn walked so Tier Lament could run. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> Light basically is the 2010 Tier Lament, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Somewhat. Yeah. Not, not as consistent. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> they have charge oh. of the Light Brigade, though. You yeah. can search any Fair Light Sworn monster from your deck. Nothing Just more Lament's, enjoyable than milling those walls. I mean, walls. Prolo Rhino is somewhat similar, to be honest, <laughs> but... <laughs> We got to see, and I've heard we are ready, so let's go over to add another two tier lists for the second semi-final of this Casas tournament. Well, hello, gentlemen. Long time no see. We're back again. <laughs> it's quite fun doing this for us, because like I've said in other tournaments where we've done these, we just sort of get to talk over other people's games. So getting to come and play ourselves, this is good fun. I like this. I like that we get to all have fun together. So I've obviously got Tom and Alberto in front of us who are going to be taking part in this semi-final match to see which one of you is going to be up against Nadir in that Time Wizard March 2010 format final. So gentlemen, let's do a high roll, see which one of you is going to be playing first. That's a six. Alberto, can you beat a six? Huh? Really? Four sixes in a row. Oh, goodness me. And that's a four. So who's going to be going first? Are you going to go first? Tom's going to go first. So I'm going to hand you straight back over to the guys who just threw over to me. Basti, Nadir, Leo, take it away for this Time Wizard March 2010 format semi-final. All right, so thank you, Ed. I'm really excited to see this, the second Italian powerhouse, because, of course, Alberto's main testing partner is Marcello, so we can expect high-level gameplay here. Absolutely we can. And I think we, we talked about it long enough, so let's just get into the game. Let's go over to the table once more and let's see how they play this out. Let's have a look. Let's get some Yu-Gi-Oh done here. So we're Ooh. going to see Lightsworn versus a Synchro deck, so maybe not Gravekeeper. <laughs> that Gravekeeper deck was a bait, apparently. All right, okay. Look, he played you there. He wanted to make you think he's on Gravekeepers. <laughs> oh, and that is a really crazy opening by Tom because he has the Aaron milling two Light Swords while having double Judgment Dragon in hand. He has and double Herald, Judgment Herald Dragon in hand. Orange Light wow. that can discard the actual Shiren. Oh, it's, it's not called like that, right? Wait. I think Shiren again is a Tielemans card. <laughs> but, but Sh Shire is the, uh, Shire. the beast. Ah, yeah. Shire. Thank you. It's, oh, another, the fairy. it's another fairy. And. So you can discard it with Herald of the Orange Light, and yep. you can also always just get the fourth light on the grave if the Aaron gets run over, but that's not going to happen. No, but just one set Monster Barrel Beato, and is there any back row being added to it? It's really rough oh, to... Oh, is uh, there any? Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, no, he has to protect it, because the amazing yeah. effect of Aaron is that when she attacks a face-down monster, it doesn't trigger any flip effects, uh, nothing during the, gra uh, during the graveyard in the middle of the damage step, because it just simply shuffles it away. Yep, that is really powerful, especially because Raikou and Nimble oh, Hamster are some of the most powerful ooh. cards in this format, but there's Celestia being tribute summoned. Celestia we allows you to destroy two cards your opponent controls in their spell and trap zone when it is performed with a tribute summon, and you also get to mill oh, in the process. Oh, is there? Not so oh, oh, Light Swan! Oh. The Starlight <laughs> Road! There is Starlight Road as a perfect answer to that Celestia. And let's be honest, whenever your opponent is just mindlessly setting three cards yeah. to his back row, yeah. there must be some sort of answer to Heavy Storm or Mass Removal. So I'm not surprised to see Starlight Road here, to be honest. The thing now is, there is going to be a Celestia in the graveyard. That means already four Lights ones. We have double Judgment Dragon. So what you want to do here is summon one Judgment Dragon, attack over a Stardust Dragon, and then use the effect. However, there's two more back row cards. 
Yeah, so it's still a lot to fight through potentially if we have anything for the uh, for the summon of the Judgment Dragon. Then we aren't be able to go over into the battle phase. So I think we just, over. we just clarified that Celestia is still going to mill. We didn't hit any Light Swan cards though, but we already had four, four yeah. Light Swans at that point, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, you also have Herald of the Orange Light. You can just activate the Judgment Dragon effect and then negate the Stardust Dragon after that. That's a lot of pressure coming down then. Do we still have a monster that could close it out there? Oh, yes. there is. <laughs> he also has the soul. I think this might just be the OTK immediately. There is Stardust <laughs> Dragon. And do we see the answer? We know that he has the Herald. And yep, yeah, there it Herald. Is. This got Shire. Is so <laughs> strong. This has And it's a, a spy. The oh, oh, does I us. can't <laughs> believe this is happening. And this is already game 8,000 damage in the first turn. Tom could attack. What a game! Wow! Our, our UK people are really showing off here in this Time Wizard tournament! <laughs> are you afraid now of your opponent in the final? I mean, if he's gonna open like that, then yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, apprehensive right now. That, that, that is a very impressive opening by wow. Tom. I mean, he also had to hit the mills with the air, mm -hmm. and he really, really needed the two names that he got there. I mean, he still milled four more cards with Celestia, yeah, so, and rough. he did miss with that, so I think he could have had some other ways there too, but still, that was super impressive, and uh, some of those decks in the Time Wizard format are slow. They need some time to build <laughs> yeah, up, as we one. just saw, but <laughs> this deck can just capitalize on that massively by putting so much pressure on that opponent's decks while it's just setting up still. So I think why we thought that Alberto was on Gravekeeper is, of course, the Spice, but I think that he was actually running a Cat Synchro deck. We didn't even consider oh, that. Cat Synchro, okay. True, Maybe true. with a little bit of Flameful, so we have Cats and Dogs. Cats and Dogs. It's raining Cats and Dogs true, here. True. That is absolutely so, true. I think he played that at the last Castles tournament in Lyon, right? That's what makes yeah. you think bad. Yeah, I think that is actually true, for oh. sure. Also, I, I really like the Gravekeeper strategy, but not really in 2010, right? So we have Ed as well here. So Ed, what did you think of the game? So quick! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even find out what was going on, but... I mean, that's the nature of these alternative formats. Anything could happen. But I figured to kill some little bit more time before we have to go into this, I wanted to do a quiz with you guys. But we're going to do it from you being up there okay. and me well, being in here. Let's which is go. why we've got this amazing... Oh, wait, you're over this side. This amazing <laughs> split screen effect going that's on, actually cool. which is totally new. This is quite fun. But I can hear you. You can hear me. Perfect. Absolutely. Let's quiz it up. So we'll try something different this time. We're going to need you guys to buzz in with your answers. So just say... Buzz. Buzz. Okay. <laughs> See, we're very creative here. <laughs> but that's all we're going to do. I've got some of the similar questions that I've asked the Italians. And obviously, we know which one of the two Italians won that one because it's a fairly consistent. I mean, I, I've right heard now. some of those, yes. to be fair. You've heard some of the questions, or you've just heard. Yeah, the one with Baby Dragon. Then I won't ask the Baby Dragon <laughs> question. And the Harpy Lady. I have a question. Then I won't <laughs> ask that one again. Can but I use Google? <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> cannot. But we'll see. So I've done a couple of the number questions, so I'll throw it out to you guys. Remember, some of you guys in the chat may also know this. Also, one more thing for those of you watching at home. The reason that we, we fill no some chance, of the time the with quizzes in alternative <laughs> formats is because lots of things lead to delays when it comes to getting our next feature match. We have a number of tables who are still in extra time, so we're trying to make sure that you guys still have something to watch while we wait for our next feature match. So speaking of that entertainment, let's get quizzing. Okay, <laughs> gentlemen. What is the name of the number 50 monster? <laughs> oh, what are you okay, looking at this me for? This is the moment it puts everyone on stoppers. Is, is there a way to earn minus points? If or you get it really... Uh, minus points? It really yeah, like, like, <laughs> not how, much, how much faith do you have in your answer? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I could just try to, to guess one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to give you minus points if you get it wrong. You just won't get points. So what's your answer for number number 50? Buzz. <laughs> oh, wait. Nadir thinks he's got it. <laughs> uh, number 50, wrong Aminiad. Incorrect. Buzz. Ba oh. Okay, Leo's buzzed. <laughs> number 50, Gin Buster. Incorrect. Basti. Buzz, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Buzz Basti. Um, Dugaris. It is none of those, I'm afraid, gentlemen. Number 50, is Black Ship of Corn. I should have oh, known that. You guys of should have known that. I had it on my should have known. So don't worry, I'll give you another it's number corn, question. Of course. Now, this is one that we've definitely seen throughout some of these tournaments. So let's see if who's going to jump in on this one. What is the name of the number 89 monster? Buzz. Nadir? Hope Harbinger? No. Uh, um. 
Uh, Leo thinks he's got it. Leo thinks he's got it. Leo thinks he's got it. I'm going to get down I, to I your level, what, Leo. I, I won't. What is it, Leo? <laughs> what is no. it, Leo? <laughs> I know all their names. I just can't attach the number to no, them. No, that's the problem yeah. with this round. Yeah. It's really hard. It's also an unfair Please advantage just say that Leo has been card highlight to them from now. Just say something. Gin Buster. It is not Gin Wait, Buster. Listen, so, Gin Buster. 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 Go on, I go like on. The um, I think it's Neo Photo Galaxy Dragon. It's Diablosis the Mind oh, Hacker. Yeah, no. See, that's the thing. They all know the answer, but they don't know the answer. <laughs> do you want another number question, or do you want a card text question? Hit us with it. Go. Hit us with it? Okay, we'll give you a third and final number question before we move on. We'll try maybe first person to get three points, just because <laughs> otherwise we may well, be, we'll be here until round three or something. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Okay, let's go. What is the name of number 59? Oh, Bus. oh, go on. Silent on arc. No, that's 101. Yeah, you know that one. <laughs> that's 101. Come on. I know 39 as well. But, uh, so well, 59. okay. If you don't know 39, then <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Utopia okay, plus Buzz, 20. Leo. Leviathan. No. Which okay. one? <laughs> the, 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 the first one. The, the, first the against one. Against one of them. <laughs> I'm not even going to embarrass myself with an attempt here. Let's just uh, hear the answer. Would you guys hear the clever. answer? Okay, the answer is number 59, Crooked Cook. Oh, oh of course. See, I knew it. Of course, they all know it. Right, time for a card text question, gentlemen. You ready? Yeah. All right. Yes, please. Okay. Which monster has the following card text? Should be quite an easy one. I know the chat are going to go nuts for this one. A dragon Buzz. with five... That was very early. You, that's confidence, Nadir. Go for it. Blue Eyes White Dragon. Incorrect. Bus, bus, you said bus, it was a dragon. Bus. bus. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't got there yet. I haven't finished it, but go on, Basti. Five Headed Dragon. Incorrect. So, Leo, ah. you get, do you want the full question? I want the full question, of course. <laughs> okay. He said something with five. A dragon five. revived oh, by <laughs> sorcery. Its breath is highly corrosive. Red Eyes Black Dragon. No. <laughs> Incorrect. I'm afraid it was Dragon Zombie. Oh, okay. We wouldn't have gotten that yeah. No, I was going to say, I mean, the maybe it's just me. I feel like these ones are slightly more answerable, but maybe that's because I, I've got the answers in front of me. Fair enough. Weird. Okay, let's go for another one. Remember the buzz Maybe let me finish the card text before you buzz in no. this time. Okay. Which monster has the following card text? A sea dragon known as the King of the Ocean. It attacks its enemies with huge tidal waves. Sea Dragon King of the Ocean? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Not my answer, but... No, no, no. Uh, you didn't buzz, exactly. so it can't be your answer. Uh, one of you's got to have it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think... May it's you repeat the card text? <laughs> I can. I can repeat it to you one more time. A sea dragon known as the King of the Ocean, it attacks its enemies with huge tidal waves. I know the card. Now, I will say that this is something that I've seen played in Master Duel before, and I know it's something that we've definitely seen played with some legendary ocean cards. Megalo Smasher X? It is not. That, that's a dinosaur card. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Even he I must know. know that he must know. <laughs> that's one dinosaurs. of a few cards I'll know straight off the top of my um, noggin. Uh, Buzz, go on, Leo. I'm going to say Amphibic Beast. No. no. Is that even a card? Buzz that as well. Go on, Basti. Super Megalodon Shark? No. The answer was Kairu Shin. Oh, it was Kairu Shin. Monster, yeah, of yeah, so you guys have known that. We've played that some of the Legendary Ocean one. So we'll give you another card text. So how many points do we have at the moment? Can, can we just Negative ten? seven. I don't think anyone's got any, have they? <laughs> Sad, no. no we okay. We're on well, this rate, it's first to one. <laughs> <laughs> do we want one more card text? Yeah. yeah, go on. Come okay, on. this one might be a little harder, frankly. <laughs> oh, wow, because the <laughs> yeah, first yeah, one was so easy. easy. <laughs> was so easy. <laughs> Okay, let's go for this. Enemies become overjoyed when struck by the heart ray emitted from the uh, forehead of this shiny, buzz. tiny buzz. cherub. Go on. Happy lover. Very good. What? <laughs> wow. Straight away, look, there's, there's actual bewilderment by the rest of our commentary team that you've got that. Never I mean, look, that. we've still got some more time to fill before we it's get into this next card. one, so we I'll, can carry on if you guys yeah. want to try go again. On, then. I'm going to go for some different questions. Sure. Okay, going to start getting a bit more complicated. We're away from numbers now, we're away from card text. Okay. So let's try some of these that we've got here. That's my category. What colour is the hair of Modolce teacher Glassoufle? Buzz. Oh, go on, Nadir. Green. Correct! I would have said green too. That's one point to Nadir and one point to Leo, which means Basti, you're currently lagging behind. We're going to see which <laughs> one of these come, get my time. I would have said green as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, right. Next question. How many people are on the art of people running about. Buzz. Oh. Go, who buzzed? Who buzzed? I did. Both of us did. Both are gone. Three. Incorrect. Buzz. Um, Basti? Five. 
Incorrect, Leo. Uh, you were going to say three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eight. Very close. I'm afraid it was ten. Oh. Uh, okay. So, so I get half a point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> Next question. Which monsters are featured on the art of Ghost Trick Scare? Ghost Tricks. <laughs> Thank you. Good. No, there are two specific monsters I'm looking for here. Buzz. Buzz. Who? Uh, Leo. The one with the pumpkin head uh, and the other one. Uh, <laughs> Though, I mean, those are right. Trick, I need the names. And Is it Jiangxi? Ghost Trick. Uh, <laughs> no. the, the Jack Frost. No. Buzz. Go on, Basti. Uh, Ghost Trick Spectre and Ghost Trick Ghost. I know, they're all ghosts. No, right? You said Spectre. <laughs> like, Spectre is a ghost. Oh. So what's the other one? Mary. Mary. No. no. Okay, can't give was this Spectre anyway. correct? It was, Ghost Trick Spectre was one of them. Oh. The other one was Ghost Trick Lantern. Oh. Uh. So we're nearly there. I've asked this pearly one. So let's, let's go to a different pearly question. Okay, I love oh. my so we pearly. You love the pearlies. What is pearly doing in pearly delicious memory? Eating. Bus. You didn't buzz, <laughs> Nadir. I can't give it to you. Eating. Go, yeah, very good. Yes. <laughs> that's a point. That's a point across the board. That's a complete guest. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Remember, Nadir, you have to buzz. <laughs> sorry, you don't sorry, buzz. Sorry. He's with the score. I also feel when I look at the preview of this that I'm some kind of special correspondent that's <laughs> currently out on location. Hello, we're here at the London XL, where there's been a devastating defeat in the Time Wizard format. So let's go to another question. What type? What card type? Is Ohime the manifested Bas Mikanko? Who was that? Me. Go on, Basti. That's a ritual monster. Correct. Yeah. That's an easy I'm one. I'm leading. That's two <laughs> points and then one apiece for the rest of them. <laughs> this is going pretty well. By the looks of it, we've still got a lot of people here. I don't know if we're able to cut to a shot of all of the players who are currently stood waiting for the next round. But we do have a lot of people stood waiting, which means any moment you can feel the vibratory anxiety of people in here that we are going to be getting the pairings very soon. We might even hear an announcement ping up and everyone will be ready. But until then, boys, we'll just keep quizzing. <laughs> Bring them on. Time to keep quizzing. <laughs> so, what monster does Galactic Karibo special summon with its effect? Buzz. Go on, Nadir. Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Correct! Whoa. So that is two points each to Basti and My Nadir. guess would have been Karibo. <laughs> Honestly, but I just heard the word Galactic. <laughs> and you went, I think I know that. <laughs> right, Leo, you still have chances here. You might be able to pull this back. So let's see what question we've got next. Okay. What monster type is Tierlemans Kashtira? Bas. Oh. Leo got there first. It's an effect monster and it's a, it's a psychic. Type. Yeah, he got it, he got it. It's psychic. Wow. Two apiece to everyone. So let's see where we can little go. Tie that was a question. tough one. <laughs> was a are, tough we one. are we going to make this the time? Or should we go to five, considering we've still got a bit of time? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's go to five. Why not? Let's yeah, go to right. five. We've it. got time to kill between these yeah. rounds. Or, uh, in fact, well, no, we'll probably wait till after the next round to go into the final of our time Ooh. wizard format, right? Yeah, yeah. Better. Okay. I mean, that we weren't expecting the last round to go so quickly, I'll be honest with you. But it doesn't matter. We move on. OK, next question. Fill in the blank. Tenchi Kaime is always treated as a what Bas card? Basti. Ninja. I can't give you that. Oh. Buzz. Go on, Nadir. Samurai? I can't give you that either. Oh. Leo, it's all down to you at this point. Buzz. Go on. Ninja Samurai. It's Ninjutsu, <laughs> right? Did you just combine their <laughs> answers? Okay. Maybe that's the answer. It's Ninjutsu, right? <laughs> It's ninjutsu art. Oh, well, that's, that's too bad. Basti. I know my ninjas normally. Yeah, that is you true. normally do. You normally go with the ninja ninjas, Basti, but I'm afraid today your was, was not your time. <laughs> sure, just make sure it doesn't look the same. <laughs> we'll move on to another one. Let's talk about gold pride. We're going to see some gold pride over this weekend in the current format, so let's ask some questions on that. What color is gold pride Leon's steed? Buzz. Buzz. That was Leo. It's gold. never me. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's gold yellow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that means three points to Leo. Tough one as well. Yeah. It is a tough one. Surprising. Have you guys all got three points or is it three and two? Four, three, three and two. Oh, you got two? Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. a three. I'm a three. You right, guys are a two, right? right? We, we both have two, yeah. Oh, uh, no. What uh, colour no. are the sheep oh. tokens? Buzz. Leo. Blue. Red. Orange. Did you say grey? No. I said red. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's not red. 
It's not. Yeah, it's yeah, I can't give it to you already wrong. wrong. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Okay. Who's that? By, yeah. by the way, I should mention for some reason I've lost you in my ears. Oh, good. So oh. now I can't hear you. I'm gonna have to just gonna have to shout at you from here and hope that we get it. His hair looks really funny, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, <laughs> who's buzzing next? It's perfect, yeah. Stop He's insulting me to my face! <laughs> Stop insulting me! I will not stand for this! I'm a special no, correspondent but, but in this window! You wanted to buzz, right? Uh, yeah, buzz. Um, so, blue, pink, orange, and green. So he couldn't You're hear you, have to I'm So, <laughs> you have, Fasty, to have, you, have you answered yet? <laughs> Do I have to? No. Oh, was it wrong? Was I wrong? Well, I don't know what you answered. I can't <laughs> hear you anymore. <laughs> Uh, so, Basti, why don't you answer, and I'll read out the answer and tell you, and you guys can tell me if any of you got it right. Do we have a pen here? Blue, yellow, gray, and pink. Gray? Okay, so the answers, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly try and get the replacing my ears, but I'll give you the answer, and we'll see which one of you has managed to get this right. The answers are blue, yellow, orange, uh. and pink. Pink. That was mine. That was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah. exactly okay, mine. has got a point right. there. Yeah, That's there excellent. Go. And now right. I can hear you guys in my ears again. Thank you very Hello, much, Simon, back. our sound man. God, it's good to hear your voices again. <laughs> Honestly, I've missed you your all hair so much. is fantastic. I did not say <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, yeah. else. <laughs> regard no, no. I'm so going to watch this back on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna Do not check it. the vod. <laughs> I'm going to hate you for it. Okay, so that means three points to Leo, three points to Nadir, which means Basti. Basti, you've also got three. No. no. Oh, so that <laughs> means, up. But that means we well. have to try and get three points to Basti. Thank you. Let's see what happens here with this next one. What colour is the dress of the Iris Sword Soul? Buzz. Nadir. Blue. Correct! Wow, Nadir racing into that fourth point there. Of Ooh. course I know what the worst Sword Soul monster is wearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, let's see. Let's fill in the blanks for the following fusion materials oh. of Flame Swordsman. What and what? Uh, buzz. Go on, Leo. That was Basti. That was oh, me. Oh, sorry, was it? You sounded <laughs> like Leo in my ears. But go on then, Basti. Uh, flame Swordsman is... Swordsman? And a flame. Who's Swordsman? Did you just make <laughs> up a car? <laughs> just any Swordsman. Who's Swordsman? <laughs> just Swordsman. You don't know him? Uh, uh, so it's Swordsman and uh, Flame Ghost. It's... Incorrect. Okay, I, I thought so. <laughs> I, I won't try. I've not. I've got to be honest. Genuinely, don't know. It's flame manipulator and Masaki, oh. the legendary swordsman, okay. which is a swordsman. That's what I said. Yeah, good <laughs> job, Buster. Ah, well, so you got his profession. Yeah. Okay, he got his job. I'm going to need you guys to fill for a couple of seconds while we yep. swap microphones. That's oh, just yeah. how long yeah, this yeah. segment's been. Let's let's just resume this a bit. Okay. That was a that was a tough one so far. So. You know, when I was younger, let me just tell you this random anecdote. Uh, me and my friends, we played with this uh, sort of... Um, Swordsman deck? Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> just like, uh, you know, a bunch of normal monsters, yeah. right? But what we did was we used the, the text, like the actual flavor text of the yeah. normal monster, as their effects. Oh. So, you know, when you're like nine years old, you just come up with these extremely bizarre random rules. But I will tell you, in this meta, the best card is Flying Fish because it grants three wishes. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's good logic, I can understand that. The kind of rule I'd make up with my brother when we played when we were young with those original Kyber and Yugi decks is, I win. Oh! That, that was yeah. the rule. It right. was always but you could only use that once per duel. <laughs> that is true, but that's all you need. I think that was you know? always only for the older brother, though. Yeah, like, that was yeah. always the older brother rule, I win. I got elder brother privilege <laughs> yeah. there, just to sort of go, no, that's me, I win. So we've still got a handful more questions. We'll go through them and see which one of you manages to take that five-point win. What's the scores? 3-4-3. Three, three. Don't make me remember. Three, yeah, four, you've three, got four, four points, the other two have right. three. So thank, let's see. Thank you for upping my score as well. Oh, yeah, 3 4 2. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, I thought you had a third point. Okay, my mistake, Basti, but it doesn't matter. Right, we'll get into this question. This is going to be another fusion monster question. Fill in the blanks for the following fusion materials of Grapha, Dragon Overlord Bas of Dark ba World. That was Basti? Yeah, it's a dark monster plus Grapha V. Plus Grapha, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so that's now. <laughs> now we're at 3 4 3. It's Dragon Lord of Dark World. Actually. Exactly what I was about plus, to say. Plus Grapha. <laughs> Gentlemen, Grapha. your next question. How many cards are featured on the art of card destruction? Bus. Buzz. 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 That was oh, really? nasty. Okay, um, five. Correct. Okay, very good. This is actually getting quite, quite close now because we only have three questions left. Okay, let me have this one. <laughs> We've got to see if Leo can get this as well, just so we can get that real tiebreaker moment coming down. Let's have another fusion material one. Although, this is quite a relevant one to the formats that we've had recently. Oh. 
So it, it, this kind of depends who's been paying the most attention to the Tierlements archetype. Oh. Fill in the blanks for the following fusion materials of Tierlements, Kaleido Buzz. Heart. Buzz. Go on, Leo. Tierlements, Rhino Heart into Aqua Monsters. Very good! So now it yeah. all comes down <laughs> to this, as long as you can answer the question, because I only have two questions left. So you've got to get one of them. One of you has we to will. get it in order for us to get this done. Which monster is featured on the art of Melfi staring contest? Buzz. Nadir. Melfi Rabi. Correct! That means <laughs> Nadir has won this quiz. Congratulations, <laughs> mate. So that means very, very soon, hopefully, we are going to have our next feature match. But in the meantime, I'll tell you something we can do to fill some more of that time. Okay. Why don't we do some live guess the card? Oh, Not cool. quizzing, yes. but this is something we all enjoy doing. I'm going to head over there, but in the meantime, let's throw up one of those guess the card graphics and we'll guess live on air. I know her, I know her. Okay, then what's her, her name? <laughs> um, well, she looks pretty sad. It's not it, Aqua Spirit. It's an old, it, it could be Aqua Spirit. It's a pretty old card. No, it's Aqua not. Spirit is not that sad. Pretty sad. I want to say this is a normal monster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is uh, the trap card of the mermaids. I shouldn't have said that. Abysphere. Abys oh, yeah, you're right. Mermaid Abysphere. Abysphere, yeah. Abysquall. It looks like a Let's meme. Do them, it, it's just Abysphere, right? Yeah. Do we actually have the answer? Wait, we'll, get, we'll all get the answer at the end. <laughs> mm. I'll just say Mermaid's, uh, Mermaid Lab is Lindy, just in case it's her, but it's Abysphere. I mean, it's, it's Lindy on the picture, yeah, yeah, but, it's yeah, but that's oh, definitely Sphere. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Just in case. You got it. Yeah, the final you, slide is what shows Ukazi, you the Sphere. though, where you got it instantly? <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. And Busty said, no, it's Very not good. Ukazi. Mm. It's not Ukazi. Please you know, be Cyberstein again. I'm never gonna get. I'm never gonna have a better moment with guess a card than with Cyberstein. <laughs> that will be your one moment. Yeah, yeah easy. exactly. Easy. Um, Elemental hero Neos. Blurring light. This looks like a Mayakashi. Could it not be a Weatherman? <laughs> Weather, Weatherman. Oh, uh, okay. Those are some teeth. That, I mean, that looks like a dinosaur card. I, I gotta be it honest. Does it also be feet? Um, no. Like from a dragon or something? Or caterpillar? Uh, like very tiny feet. <laughs> Very tiny. Tiny I don't know feet. how your that feet look, like, but I'm exactly no. like that. <laughs> that looks like a cloud. That's what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought. A Cloudian? Oh. Snowman Eater. Snowman Eater. Wow. Yeah, there it is. I've Come. never paid attention to that part of Snowman Eater, to be honest. No, I'm usually focused on the snowman yeah. part, I'll be honest. Yeah. And now it's the eater part. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is nightmare fuel. <laughs> yep. I'm going to see that in my dreams. I'm going to so. destroy a monster on the field. I love yeah. that Fez he's wearing. Yeah. That is quite an interesting feature, isn't it? So, we've got a snowman that's got a monster under it. What else do we give it? Well, let's give it a hat. 1900 Defense God, what a card. Oh, that card. I love that guy. I know this! Um, oh, um, sorry, um, we have a technical glitch here. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment as we un <laughs> unblur this. It's that zoomed in. Ah, okay. Oh, that's yeah. good, it's a, gra it's a gradient in sky. Uh, isn't this the card that destroys everything by discarding five? Final Destiny or something? Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this wow. is getting worse. Thank you. Thank you this so much. This might be the it. least fair one. Probably we've the next ever one had. just gives it away, right? I oh, knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I, I was going to say it How immediately. Did we get that? Even the crowd are cheering at this going, they all know it. I can't believe it. I thought it was like a, a burning landscape. I thought it was a yeah, faded, no. gradient like, sky. Yeah, I the, thought that was like a, a I tower I thought Karibo had more texture, you know? The, the third zoom was so bad, so you could tell that the next zoom is going to give it away because I had to do such a little zoom in between. The feet of Karibo mm. look like the, the teeth snowman eater. of Snowman Eater. Honestly, yeah. you're, well you're a little too much into feet. I gotta be honest <laughs> with you, my friend. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> um, what do we have Yellow. Here? Very good, it's just yellow. I want to say it's a wing beast. Is it yellow? Did okay. I just zoom it's in? It's more yeah. yellow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that actually just zoomed in, right? Yeah. had to have been. Yep. Right, we're going in reverse uh, order. Melfi Caddy. Caddy. Melfi Caddy, good idea. Good one. Oh, uh, it's a minimize. Uh, Totem hip, Dragon. Hip potion in. No, no, that one. Multiply. multiply. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's multiply. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Really? Yeah. I got it. Yeah, it is. I got it. It is multiply. I got multiply. I got one. I got one. It's great. This is my greatest moment. I never get these. Cyberstone moment 2.0. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so old school cards I can kind of remember. So in the show, this one like summons uh, a million. Yeah, what, what is? <laughs> yeah, can we get an actual Infinite number on it? Actual yeah. a million. 
That is what happens. Is he getting relinquished or he gets Thousand Eyes Restrict or something and it covers all the eyes? <laughs> That's literally how they win in yeah. the show. Okay, let's guess this card. Oh! Um, I, I, I would say this is an eye. Yes, <laughs> correct. You we've are. Got, we've currently, because people are still waiting. Winged Karibo. Winged Karibo. Winged Karibo? No, that's okay. a Kari so that's, that's a spell. It's, it could be Karibo, Kuriba, Kuribi, Kuri, Kuribe, Kuribon. Uh, Winged Karibo level 9. <laughs> the, no. This one is angry. Mono Karibo. I think, yeah. I think this is a is spell Is it not level card. 10? Level 10 is also angry, I think. Right, okay. This is a spell or card. I'm telling you, this is a spell card from Hidden Arsenal. This is. It's a Karibo spell card from Hidden Arsenal, I'm pretty sure. Well, he's coming up here. <laughs> I'll verify that for it's you. It's a wing Kar winged Karibo wing strike. <laughs> I mean, there was a winged Karibo on it. You've got to give me that. <laughs> it's a spell card. Berserker, Berserker crush. crush. Who thinks of Berserker Crush? When that's that's like exactly Karibo. what I see when I see winged Karibo trying to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice to think that this is a little Berserk. You know? Yeah. It's a cute little Berserk. Um, this is an Ancient Gear. Do you think? Uh, yeah, mm, I'm pretty sure. It kind of looks. Well, listen, if I say it with enough confidence, it's probably correct. Okay. Oh, uh, preparation of rights. Preparation oh, of rights. I thought preparation of rights. I think so. Right? I think it's prohibition. Prohibition. No. No, no it's, it's not prohibition. Definitely prep. I think you're right. Really, preparation? Oh, wow, that's strong. Didn't I thought even know preparation of rights looked different. On it. Yeah. But yeah, the, the rocks in the background, that's it, it's yeah. fitting, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is, it is, it is. For those of you watching Strong and stuff. guessing at home and wondering where the next feature match is, don't worry, I'm keeping an eye out, <laughs> watching for the moment the crowd surge their way towards yeah. their tables when the pairings are ready. But right now, it's time to guess cards, Basti. That's what we're going to be doing. I hope I can guess one, yeah. <laughs> Preparation right! It was that. That was strong, yeah. <clears throat> Look at the little bird in the background, I love that one. Uh, yeah, that's um, what is that? R Ritual Raven, right? Ritual yes, Raven, yeah. yes. <laughs> that is, guess, that is you can guess a card within the card. <laughs> oh, 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 this is a jar, I think. Could be, yeah. It looks like a jar. Maybe a baguette as well. Maybe what? Jar baguette. baguette. Baguette jar. Jar baguette. Okay, it's definitely. Don't think not. it's a. Oh, oh, oh it's the uh, the card that is. It, it, she she's gray. Uh, in the graveyard, she has an effect. She's a fairy. I forgot uh, the gray name. Graveyard fairy. <laughs> graveyard fairy. <laughs> And this looks like uh, a Rage Raptor to me, not gonna lie. Yeah, no, I can see what you mean. I have no idea. Uh, oh, this is Xyz Reborn. Xyz Reborn. It is indeed. Xyz Reborn? It is, yeah. It is, yeah. Wow. Xyz Reborn. Special summon an Xyz from the graveyard and attach this card as a material. We've accumulated quite the crowd who are also getting quite involved in the guess the card. Yeah. I've heard some actual cheers and I've heard disappointed moans when we get it wrong. Yep. I'm sorry to let you all down like this. I played this in Constellar. Did you? Well, yeah, so that's why you know it. I love Back the art the on that. That's the thing, I never pay that much attention to the artwork. I always no. only read the card text, and that's why. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is that a sign Sky Striker? No, that's an artifact. S Cyber Sketchet? No. Oh, no, this is. This looks Cyber C. Um, oh, okay. Not Draconic Diagram. Looks like a room. Mirror. An arena. Runic Fountain. It's a mirror. Right of Aramisia. Mirror? Um, this isn't um, helping. Oh, draconic it's a, diagram. It's a world like. I said card. draconic diagram. Really? Yes, yeah, they said that. Good job. It's not diagram. It's not it's diagram. It's not diagram. I don't think it's diagram. It's, it's, a, it's obviously a, a spellbook card. card. It's a spellbook card. Spellbook library. Spellbook of Crescent. Yeah. Is, is that the yeah, name? Yeah, Crescent, yeah. Cre yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah, the yeah. name, but <laughs> Crescent, yeah. See, we're now getting the crowd shouting it at us, which means this has turned into an interactive game. We're sorry. I mean. Maybe that's actually the card name. What's Judgment at these days? It just came back to two and Master. I like I it. I think it's at one. Spellbook Library that's of the Crescent. That's what you said. Good job. Basti is good at this. Mm, I think I have two. <laughs> Over all the tournaments we've done, I think I have two. <laughs> I, guess I it's think I'm not really topping that. <laughs> you really just bring it out one per tournament. <laughs> that's the thing. I have to have one that yeah. I guess. Yeah. Sometimes they let me guess. It's in your contract, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It has to be one very, very <laughs> good. Red triangle. Um, um, that looks like a chicken. I recognize it and I'm going to kick myself. Oh, it's Red Eyes Black Chick. Yeah. That looks very reasonable to me. Is it? Maybe. No. Um, oh, it's, uh, oh uh, it's an, is it an Ignister? I recognize it and I can't think of the name. It looks like I from Brains. Oh, it's Cari Cyber Karibo? Cyber Karibo. Cyber Karibo sounds legit. Uh, Galactic Karibo or something? Galactic oh, Photon Karibo. Karibo. Photon, Photon Karibo. It is Photon Karibo, isn't Photon it? Photon Karibo. Thunder Karibo? Sprite Karibo. Sprite <laughs> Karibo. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Sprite level. Karibo. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> Karibo, Karibo. Oh, I mean, that is a Sprite card, basically. Dang it, we yeah. know our Karibos. <laughs> 
Attach wow. material and special curry vault. Can we use the synchro? Mm -mm. Mm. Ah, damn. <laughs> oh, Gra oh. Grafa. Um, is it? I think it's uh, Summon the... Skull. Gra grave Mammoth or something? <laughs> Zombie Mammoth. Zombie Mammoth. Zombie Mammoth? That's yeah. what it's called? Someone's shouting at me. Oh, it's Grafa, though. Or Mammoth Graveyard. Balderock. Oh, oh Balor, that's Balor a good guess. Doom King Balladrock, yeah. Balor Drock. Is that oh. what it was, the Doom King? I think it was uh, Doom King Balladrock. Uh, no. no. Oh, no, that's not it. Is uh, it an Archfiend card? Is it Demise? It, demise? King of Armageddon. Oh. Skullmeister! No, it's Skullmeister. <laughs> it's Skullmeister. <laughs> Dang it. Well, you heard that the crowd, yeah, the with crowd no help from the crowd. Help. No, I, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we got these headphones on. Yep, Skullmeister. Well, See, I was, I was looking at his face as he shouted at me, and I, I okay. saw sort of, you got it before How many I did. skulls are on Skullmeister? Oh, that would be a great quiz question. One, two, three, four. Well, he's holding six, <laughs> so you got that wrong. Nah. Okay. Oh, mm. yeah, that's an easy one. Oh, yeah. But okay. I'm not going to tell Cyber you guys Stein. so you can guess a lot more. Oh, so you know Cyber what it is? So kind of, of course, I know what it is. Do you? Uh, okay. No, yeah, he knows. No idea. Cyber Stein, I got it again! <laughs> I got it on the first one! Is that Cyber Stein? I think yeah, so, is Cyber it not? Stein. Or it is Jinzel oh, Ray. Oh, oh, and by the roar as well. of the crowd, we have pairings too. The pairings are being announced. Goodness me. And I did it! It is Cyber Stein! I got it again for the second time! Well done, Ed. And I got well it on done. the first one! How many life points does it pay, Ed? Don't make me do uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, I just Sad remember the moment. art. Take a guess. A thousand. Almost. But I wish! <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's let's, not let's all turn. find out again. I can't believe I got Cyber... Is that two? I've got two in one! 5,000 <laughs> life points. Special yeah. one fusion monster from your extra deck in a tap position. I don't even remember it's that. It's especially BBFA. good in uh, Speed Duel, I have to say. Should well, we do goodness me. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to this. I'm going to find out more about our pairing, and I'll be back with our feature match. Keep nice. guessing some cards. This could actually be a spicy tech card for the format Herald of the Abyss. Um, but it's not. It's not, no. Oh, I this is... Um, a Galaxy or a Photon? No, it's a Colosseum. Brutal Colosseum? Savage Colosseum? Savage Colosseum? Kaiser Colosseum? Uh, Think that, oh yeah, I think Busty is actually right. Yeah. Which wow. one? The, the, the evil Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> like Colosseum and a bad bird in front of him. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, no, this is Star oh, Hall from shit. the uh, Star Starbucks Star Hall. Oh. I said another Starbucks card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks Colosseum. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You used to be able to have like you, you didn't really play this one, right? Did oh, you, you did. Uh, you did yeah. in Dragon Ruler. You could make like yeah. three thousand attack Jalgens over the ah, course of yeah. like multiple turns. Oh, true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, that was like the that only like way that. Yeah. yeah it, the only way you could deal with a uh, monster over twenty five hundred attack. And kaikus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's Giant true. kaikus, twenty seven hundred. Can banish from the graveyard. Um. What do we it's have pink. here? It's uh, pink. Melodious. Prediction Princess. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, he's wearing a jacket. Oh, is it? Is it Kazaki? Oh, I it's, it's Kazaki. Or it's overworked. I'm gonna say overworked. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah. Are, th are those supposed to be keypads? Yeah, it is overworked. Yeah. Oh. I th yeah. I think it's. What's the scientist's name? Is it Kazaki? I think it's Kazaki. Turbo teleporter. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's overworked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He looks uh, overworked. When did, you play over, when did you play Overworked again? Uh, Fire Fist. Fire Fist, yes. Yeah. yes. True, that was so good back in the day. Yeah, they would uh, have a big field of, you know, um, well, who was the best one? Bear. Bear, bear was yeah, the best one. Bear. Back in the day, Bear mm -hmm. was the best one. Yeah. Nowadays, things change, and it's more of a combo deck that nowadays. That deck is but... completely different. Yeah, well, you know? totally. Back in the day, it was like the easy deck, just summon mm -hmm. one monster and trade stuff. Card, card D sometimes as well. Yeah. Before playing. Oh, that was a good and card. Nowadays, one fire I have our deck. next pairing written Classic. here. The oh. players are making their way up. Let's Would go. you like me to tell you the decks that we're going to be seeing? Ooh. Oh. Um, I'm, uh, I'm afraid that maybe yeah. they hear it, so that would be oh, not good point. the best we idea. <laughs> we have people watching. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there I will is. say, I'm excited. I'm excited to see this on a feature. I am as well, for sure. So we will know very soon. But we have Jake Ellis versus Kevin Pinganet. Cool. They are on their way up currently. Oh, I actually do oh, know what I that is. Know that I know that one player. <laughs> well, there, there we go. So that'll be That's exciting. Cool. You guys will all see that very, exciting. very soon. I will have to do a lot of work on the card tool. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Let me tell you that. You're going to be <laughs> card <laughs> highlighting your way through. I'm going to leave you guys to it. The next time you see me, Nova Master, by the I'll way. be introducing <laughs> our feature match. Good luck, gentlemen. See you in a bit, Ed.
All right, you guys are going to have uh, Tom Payne yes. instead of me yeah. for this uh, second round feature. We have to do a swap out at some point, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that <laughs> your next feature match is potentially something interesting. From, oh, it is uh, very interesting, yeah. I can tell you. You know yeah. what it is? Yeah, okay, I know what okay. it is. All right. yeah. We were actually looking for that one player in front of the tournament, uh, yeah, before the tournament, mm. because we knew what he was on. All right, we'll find out momentarily then. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just afraid when they come to the featured match area yeah. and we're like, oh, yeah, that guy plays this deck, that would be a little yeah. bit awkward. <laughs> All right, let's uh, wrap this one up, I think, and then uh, yeah. I, I shall depart. Yeah, that sounds who, about right. Who is this? It looks like a dragon to me so far. Really? Uh, could still also be something completely different. I am just in awe at this... Uh, uh, oh, one for one! Uh, yeah, that is one for one indeed. Is it? I think it's one for one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It should be oh, one for okay. one. By the way, after this, we are going to be off the card guesser for just a second, but don't worry, guys, don't leave. We are going to be right back for yeah. the yeah. players, two feature match. Players are on the way to the feature match area, so it shouldn't be too long. We'll be back we will see momentarily. you back in a second. So, just a quick second. Bye-bye, guys, until in a few minutes. See ya. to do. Crystal Beasts are back and ready to rack up some wins with their new advanced Crystal Beast forms. You can score cool new cards and add some precious gems to your collection with this all foil set. Yu-Gi-Oh! Battles of Legend, Crystal Revenge. Five cards per pack, each pack sold separately.
Atlas has seen the future of dueling with ancient Tomb Keeper cards to block your opponent's graveyard while testing your own powers of prediction. New hieroglyphic versions of your favorite cards and six different designs of sleeves to keep your cards safe. Your Yu-Gi-Oh! future awaits you in Magnificent Mavens. 20 cards and 70 sleeves per box. Each box sold separately. Welcome back. Thank you very much for all of your patience as we get now into the second feature match of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live from London. I have with me Jake Ellis and Kevin Panjane, and we are ready to kick straight into this match. So, gentlemen, can we do a high roll to see which one of you two will be going first? Who would like to roll the dice first? Kevin is going to roll first. That is a two. <laughs> and then, Jake, your turn. Okay, that's a five. So, Jake, are you going to go first? You'll go first? Okay, Jake is going to go first. I'm going to hand you guys over to Basti, Tom, and Leo, who are going to take you through the coverage of our second feature match. Guys, take it away. And I'm taking it away, so thank you very much, Ed. <laughs> I did the same joke in Lyon. People didn't like it, but I'm you're just gonna, going to you're continue gonna with stick it. To your you're, guns. you're making it a thing now. Yeah. As How long as you continue doing it, you, do you will it. be fine. <laughs> but let me tell you something, gentlemen. We already spoiled it a little bit that we're going to see an interesting deck now. And we can now reveal what we are about to see. And it is a deck that got massive support recently in our last set. And it is Gate Guardians. I'm so excited yeah. to see. This is insane. Like, it's so cool to see stuff like we've seen like Blue Eyes get support, Dark Magician get support. Yes. And just like stuff from the show, which you like it's watched amazing. when you were a kid, now is getting legacy support. So you can play all the cards in your deck with some new stuff and like compete in yeah. tournaments of this scale is great. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. It got a lot of new cards in Maze of Memories now. And um, while we were looking through all the cards, because let's be honest, we're not that big of experts in uh, the, <laughs> you're not a in the Gate Guardian, Guardian expert. expert yeah. yourself? At least Leonard and my aunt. <laughs> but we found out that, Tom, you are actually a little I, bit I of an expert. I don't want to say I'm an expert. I want to say I, I know what most of the cards do. Yeah. But, but so let's uh, go over it a little bit. What is the deck trying to do in its first turn? What is like the end board that you desire to build with the deck? So you want to summon the fusions. Um, so Gate Guardian's got three new fusions. Yeah. So you can summon these a bit like the ABC monsters. You can summon it from banishing the appropriate Gate Guardian monsters from your field or graveyard. And some of the new support has got tools to put the monsters onto your field as oh. spell and trap cards oh. or in your graveyard. That's really good. But that means uh, you still are required to play the old Gate Guardians. So we are still going to yeah. see Kase Jin and Sangha so, Jin and all those. Exactly. That's really cool. I love that. Yeah. And uh, I've just heard that the players are ready. So hopefully we are going to see that live in action now in our round two featured match of YCS London here, the 250th YCS. Let's go over to the table. Let's get into the action. is just about to start and I am really curious if we are going to see the different Gate Guardian monsters combined. I am... That would be... <laughs> oh, what a pun there. We, we should need, need a little pun counter for Leo oh, no, over no, the we, we couldn't count. Yeah, we don't I'm, want to I'm it up this event. <laughs> oh. oh, and we're seeing the Live Twin Sprite version again. So, after this being not very popular uh, like before, the latest update of the Forbidden and Limited list. This deck is, has become has become really, really popular. This time, we're not going to see the Runic engine in, though, in it, though, uh, contrary to round number one. Yeah, so we, we didn't mention Jake's deck because, you know, how can you <laughs> when the other person's playing Gay Guardian? Absolutely, But yeah. he is on the Sprite live twin strategy, so yeah. it's kind of very similar to what we saw in the last round, apart from rather than running the Runic cards, you're running different choice of some you know extra probably sprite cards and then maybe some extra cards to complement that like the, the traditional tech cards we're seeing book of moon infinite impermanence hand traps these sorts of things absolutely yeah jake and is immediately revealing almost his entire hand by summoning out red uh, normal summoning the kissing kid and then special summoning the blue after i do think no i think this is the correct line to go yeah you like it, it? it looked pretty good <laughs> yeah, i was I thinking that right. maybe you summon the red after you try to use the gigantic but I think it's all right like that. Well, we have red and carrot now, so both of those are going to be part of our end board, which is really strong because that already trades with one monster effect and also a spell card from our opponent. And it means you it gives you insurance when you're doing this whatever you want to do on the first turn, right? Because you can negate things on this turn, yeah. you can negate things that you know. You're probably even happy if your opponent is trying to interact with yeah. you now on this turn because that means you can negate now and you can also negate on the upcoming turn. That means you're already trading with two cards, which is better than one, of course. Are we going to see a lot of hand traps in the deck of Kevin because he's running a lot of gate guardian cards. Oh, I don't yeah, know if he surely has the space. not. <laughs> not really. The usual approach with those decks that take a lot of space for your engine is to just have some powerful board breaking cards in yeah. their deck to uh, justify having a couple of cards going second and he's going with that approach as well. Uh, we see he's on evenly matched, he's on Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon. Honestly, those cards are really good versus Kashira, but I don't know whether they're super powerful in this matchup here necessarily. Especially he, yeah. the Book of Eclipse. Mm. Well, Book of Eclipse still threatens the carrot and the red. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, you can't true. use them once they're face down, but I agree. You'd much, you know, Book of Eclipse, when your opponent's got Link monsters in play, feels a bit worse you because just, obviously you can't set those. You just need a combination of the cards, right? Exactly. You need to have Book of Eclipse pulse evenly, and then you are free to out the board because with three oh, set cards and three evenly. Three set cards really is, this is a very <laughs> scary board. So let's see what Kevin can bring us. Let's hope that we're already seeing some Gate Guardian cards being summoned here in game number one. <laughs> Geo getting that. Yeah. Evenly matched. I'm manifesting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to see it. He could just have two evenly matched. Yeah, yeah that happens quite a lot. Every time I have one answer to evenly, I'm getting double evenly. It's a rule at this point. Well, you need to have two oh, answers. But there's to not evenly. going to be oh. evenly matched because there's <laughs> yeah. a field spell being activated, and that pretty much rules out evenly matched. Do you, do you think Jake has like a, a sneaking suspicion that he was going to be facing something a bit weird because it's a round two feature match? He's running a, a reasonably yeah. well represented yeah, deck, yeah. so. You know, and he's not playing uh, uh, someone that he might have heard of before. 
which is usually another will be, be a very interesting so deck now you for kind sure. of know you're going to be in a very interesting but this deck. is labyrinth wall shadow which labyrinth is wall the shadow. field spell which also just released in um maze of, maze memories. of memories and it's gonna let it's him pretty cool oh, oh not we are anything. negating Wait, why doing? would we put the carrot to the graveyard? Yeah, I think <laughs> it was just tapping the carrot. Easy, like, yeah. you know, you're probably quite nervous in the feature match, so course, accidentally put something in the wrong place. So, oh, and that's perfect yeah. for Kevin because he just has another copy of Labyrinth Walled Shadow. And that can be activated multiple times per turn, so... Yeah, I was just really double-checking it myself, actually, as to whether you can use it. But this is a card that you can use multiple times per turn. A lot of field spells now, you can only use the, uh, like as many copies as you have. You can only use once per turn. Yeah, but not with this Gate Guardian field spell. And Kara, in particular, says it negates the effect and not the activation. So if indeed, the card says indeed. it can only be activated once per turn, then Kara would not let you activate a second copy. So look at that! Suijin hitting the field! That's a one-off in his deck. And I mean, you are only going to play one-off... Oh, I mean, he's playing double Katagen, actually, but only one-off Suijin and Sangha. So Katagen is the good one. Yeah, Kassigen apparently is the Katagen good one, is a good one. But it's got the least attack points. <laughs> but, I mean, this picture alone makes me happy. There's Suijin in the Spell and Trap zone, and there's Fusion deployment. Oh, that makes sense as well. Yeah, I do expect this card from uh, the good old... Despia deck, which we also saw in round number one, but uh, now we see it in Gate Guardians. I do remember you said in, yeah. uh, in round one when you said the first person played Fusion Deployment, and you said he must it's be playing Despia. It's what he's playing, But yeah. no. <laughs> it's not that obvious anymore, and there is Cartage in, as we just learned, maybe the best of the uh, Gate well, Guardians. Yeah, he's chosen to run two copies, so you can summon one, you, know, you can summon Gate Guardians combined by banishing all three, yeah. and then there are also ones you can get by banishing two. So if you banish Water and Wind... I need it, Book of Moon. But he probably doesn't know if this is a fusion deck because fusion summoning yeah. should still work with your set monsters. Yeah, I was going to say, this is again one of those... I mean, you know, the advantage of playing a deck yeah. that's a bit weird. There is a fusion deployment. <laughs> so. Yeah, he knows it's a fusion deck. But, I mean, yeah, that gives it away a little bit, I'm agreeing. And it, uh, to me, it's got to be really spooky seeing this... Uh, Suijin, is that the name of the card I'm saying? It right, the, the Water Gate Guardian. Yeah. Because it's just like... Your card just says, put it there in the spell and trap card zone and don't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh. you, you have to wonder what that's what's that going to do to me later? How is my opponent going to use that card? Look. It's very weird. So and we go with Prisma Effect, revealing Gate Guardians combined again. We're just letting this go, so... No, no I think we're negating oh. it. Yeah, we are negating Prisma, it. Prisma, again, oh, right. it is an old card, so I wouldn't remember off the top of my head whether it's a cost to send from your deck or whether you send it as part of the effect. Because it is cost, yeah. It is cost, which but is why he's still got Nowadays it has problem-solving card text, I mean, and it is a cost. Why did he send the Kazajin? I thought he already has one that is face down on the field. Well, you can summon as many Gate Guardians as you like in a turn. That's fair enough. So maybe he wants to go into the Gate Guardians oh, of we're now going Wind after and Water, I guess. The field spell. I think the Field Spell has already done its job, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm also, like, maybe we had an end of main situation here, and oh. that's why he decided to just use the effect that he could only use in main phase. I, I guess there's nothing else you really need to yeah. destroy because okay. the other monsters, they're just as useful in the graveyard as they are on the field. And I don't know whether I would have run over one of those because, to be honest, now that means next turn they can just summon the other out again, right? Yeah, I mean, but otherwise you just link them away for a trouble summon. Yeah, yeah, also quite a valid point. I'm agreeing. At least if you summon the other part back, you're locked into fiends. Yeah, true. That is a good point. And but, I mean, if, he, if like there's no further progress from Kevin here, he's still has to deal with Sprite Red and Sprite Carrot next turn again. Ooh. And that is his turn there. And this could very well be a new card called Prey of the Jirai Gumo, which I find really cool because Jirai oh, yeah. Gumo is a card I used to play as a kid. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> you could have I remember but somebody it, explaining it to me. It halves your life points. He couldn't summon it. Yeah, I was <laughs> no. going to say, I don't believe that it's the Prey of Jirai, Prey of Jirai Gumo. Jirai Gumo has to be summoned in the same column. Yeah, interesting. So, by my understanding, if he'd wanted to, he could have chosen to summon the Gate Guardian of Wind and Water. But he chose yeah. not to. I might not understand exactly how these cards work correctly. But let's, yeah, let's bring wind it up. Wind and so Water. Wind and Water is only with uh, cards you control. Oh, it's only with... Oh, I see. But he controls. He does but control a Suijin and a Kazajin, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say they have to be face up or anything like that? No, no, like no, that. it doesn't say that. And normally the way these sort of contact fusion works is you can use face down Yeah, cards. I would absolutely agree on that. There comes Starter into Sprite Blue. Maybe Kevin is a newer player and he does not know about the fantastic ability to fusion someone with face down monsters. 
Yeah, I mean these are these are some old, you know, confusing new cards. Not everyone's using them, so you might. It's a, it's quite an old thing to be able to yeah. fusion summon with face down. It doesn't come up very often, but it does. And every time there's new fusion cards released, people are people so used to fusion yeah. summon from your graveyard nowadays. Yeah, with you fusion from your grave, around. your deck, your hand. <laughs> and it always happened with Elemental Hero Prisma back in the days. That sure. was sending a Gladiator Beast Bestiary. Yeah, yeah, that was classic, and oh. you were supposed to set. We're searching for Gamma Burst, and that is a riding on the wall. I think Jake is going uh, to try to finish this turn here. Yeah, Gamma Burst is a very powerful card. Gives all of your level 2, rank 2, and link 2 monsters 1,400 extra attack. That's a lot of damage yeah. adding up. And we are going for another monster. This might as well be Onibimaru to clear the field. You might go into Gigantic to extend your board. But either way, I think that Jake is going to try to book a ticket to OTK Town here. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I agree. But it it's is a Gigantic. Great okay. I love that. <laughs> it is the Gigantic there. So what else does he need from his deck? That's an interesting question. I he's got the carrot, don't really he's got the red. Know. Maybe he just wants an extra monster to attack with and he's just sort of upgrading the attack. Probably. Because there's I mean he could summon out a second sprite red as he's playing too, but yeah, okay, that's what he's doing. I mean <laughs> there we go. Fair Why enough. <laughs> if you want to. Still, the effect of Sprite Red obviously is once per turn, so even if you have two copies, you can only use it once. Yeah. So what's next, Jake? Maybe he also has Smasher set already and just wants to have one card that he can banish. Oh, okay, he's getting rid of one of the reds now by Exceed Summoning. Probably now into the Onibimaru. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought. A, Please uh, don't forget that he also has the effect of the Life Twin Kizikil. Yep. Yep. yep, there we are. He does not forget. That was a, so, a lack of fear for the face down card. I feel like if you can just leave up a negate and your opponent's no. got one, like most of the time it's probably not going to be, you know, it's never going to be a Mirror Force, is it? Okay, <laughs> but that's still. <laughs> Leads to Kevin picking up his Gate Guardian cards and Jake wins game number one here with his Life Twin Sprite strategy. You were saying you're never afraid of Mirror Force. However, in Labyrinth strategy, sometimes you actually <laughs> see people running Storming Mirror Force. Oh, wow. Okay. And I mean, he's playing so many old school cards, so maybe he just brought all yeah. of them and, and also brought a Mirror Force, right? <laughs> also, there is a good chance that he has no idea what you play in Gate Guardians. Yeah, of I course. Mean, so we didn't really before this round, so that would absolutely be possible what, for sure. Uh, do you know what to side deck? I mean, that's always the upside mind, of playing those decks, right? The, I can see some dimensional barriers in Jake's side deck. Yes. I think they'd be pretty good. I don't think it takes that much to know that he's running fusion monsters, right? Because he's seen fusion deployment, he's seen elemental hero prisma, which reveals a fusion monster. He is running a really interesting card and I don't yeah. think it's the time for it. I mean, it's, it's April now and he's <laughs> running Santa Claus. I can't stop. <laughs> But yeah, he is on Santa Claus, and I think Santa Claus would be a card that comes in here, to be honest, because um, when you are expecting fusion summons to be done by your opponent, usually they are going to end on a fusion monster that is doing something. So just tributing him with Santa Claus seems pretty reasonable. That does? Because you lock yourself into fiends. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, That's why it's better than a kaiju smart. in this deck. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to make a kaiju joke, but... Uh... Yeah. Are some of the kaijus fiends? I'm not. Are there any of them fiends? I think there's uh, no oh, kaiju that's I think that, that our... Level like seven. Radiant is Radiant. a dark. Radiant, Radiant, is, Radiant is definitely is a dark. Everyone loves it for being dark, so you can yeah, banish yeah. it with the lure of darkness. And but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not a fiend. I, I need some help with the spelling of the card. R A D. R A D. I A N. It's pretty easy, actually, my friend. But yeah, uh, let's look at the rest of the. Ex uh, of it's the not tech. as easy as you would think. Uh, so ev evenly matches also in the side tech, and I think uh, Jake would be. It's a fiend. Oh, it, it is, is a fiend, fiend, actually. Interesting. But like. Um, the evenly matched usually is a card you side in going second versus anything. It's very yeah. generic, yeah. But the thing is, probably or maybe Jake doesn't know that this Gate Guardian deck puts up multiple spell trap negates. So I think evenly matched is not even that great of a card versus that deck. No. Because in a perfect world, he's going to end on two spell trap negates, right? In a perfect yeah. world. Yeah. Not even. He could draw a triple evenly matched, of course. That would deal with that, obviously, but or, or that's one, a pretty hard one task. one Santa Claus. Yeah, but maybe um, uh, Kevin also has some cards to support going first. I see Skill Drain could be coming in here. Skill that's a pretty an good interesting card. choice. It'd definitely take me by surprise, because, you know, you, I guess... I, I, mean, I mean, I suppose anything would take really you by surprise. Big, they right? are big. Yeah. And monsters they are so big. have effects that activate in the graveyard if they're destroyed by a card effect yeah. or battle. I, I really like Skill Drain, to be I honest. really also like... Solemn Judgment, to be honest, if you're going first right now. I think that is the, of course, it's good going first, but I think that's like the perfect addition to side decks because evenly matched is a thing. Okay, you have yeah. a lot of negates, but I think there are mostly only spell trap negates, right? 
Yeah. Yes. The and thing is, and in, in, this, in this deck yeah. specifically, you do have an answer to evenly no. matched with your um, exactly. fusion monsters, and therefore I think skill drain is just a better answer. And you can just negate uh, Dark Ruler with a Sun Judgment, by the way. But I think that the players are ready, so let's cut our discussion here and go into game two of the round two feature match. So I'm absolutely hoping to see a fusion summon now being performed by the Gate Guardian deck from Kevin. Oh, his whole deck looks like it's built around fusion summoning, so I'm confident we're going to yep. see... I would also yeah. love to see a hero lift into Guardians. your Elemental Hero Prisma, just paying yeah. half of your life points, but getting a lot of that, a lot out of it. Oh, but I see Nibiru in the opening hand of Jake, so that could be an issue here. And Effect Veiler. Nibiru plus Effect wow. Veiler is like the combo to end every combo. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like... The anti-combo combo. Exactly. Oh, we see preparation of rights first of all, though. Oh, yeah. I and love that, Magician yeah. of Souls in this deck. I think this is really cool. It is. So we go for Illusion of Chaos first, and that would be able to search out the Magician Souls that you were just talking about. Magician of Souls was such a powerful card when it came out in yeah. the Spiral deck, because it allowed you to send a key Spiral it master It was plan. absolutely great. Also, I, I loved it in Prank Kids. There was like that Prank Kids Magician Souls deck, which was really strong as well. And it pulls extra weight in this because you get yeah. to you put your uh, Gate Guardian monsters on the field as spells and traps that don't do anything. So yeah. what better to do with them than send them to the graveyard with That's Magician of Souls? Really good. And also and extra cards. for the effect of Magician Souls, you could also just send Carthage in or something to the graveyard because it just needs to be a spellcaster, right? Yes, so it's that's really strong, it, just, yeah. it just seems to do absolutely yeah. everything. It seems deck. to be a Gate Guardian card, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Gate Guardian Magician, but fortunately, it's also a Dark Magician card, which is why you can search it. Yeah, <laughs> true. With Illusion of Chaos. But I, I really like that from Jake's deck. We, we talked about it. He doesn't play the Runic Engine, but that allows him to play more hand interactions. And uh, therefore, we see the upside of it here by him opening up multiple of that so he can just interrupt his opponent very easily. I'm interested. I don't, I don't know this too much to hit with Effect Veiler in this deck, but I don't actually know. <laughs> I mean, you can hit the Prisma. You oh. can also hit this one. You I mean, depends on how many cards he is discarding here, right? I no. think they are just clarifying that Magician Souls could send Carthage into the graveyard, <laughs> which is absolutely yeah. the case. It's probably not something you'd uh, expect. Oh, before. we are uh, dis uh, we are discarding the prosperity and we are drawing. Yeah, I wouldn't have I would have not veiled that either. I think. Do you think this means he's got a second prosperity in his hand? Yeah, but then he can't activate it because he drew a card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Because he, he tries yeah, to no, draw cards, so prosperity doesn't do anything anymore. But would you prefer to like? Surely you'd prefer to activate the prosperity and choose one of six. Nah. Than just draw the top one. <laughs> No. Um, uh, yeah, no, you're Heavily right. disagreeing on it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this adds a little bit of flavor to it, I think. <laughs> oh, and now we finally oh, yes. see the first fusion summon of the Gate Guardian deck, and there's oh. also a Suijin, so it will be Gate Guardians combined hitting the field here, all three of them. And it is being looked up by Jake now as well, and Kevin is having a smile on his face, <laughs> yep. I am the Gate Guardian player in this tournament. Here you can have my Jake Gate Guardians combined. needs to have a good read of this card, as yes. we probably all do, because it's a card you've not seen before. It's got quite a lot of text, so you oh, need yeah. to check that you're not just going to do something silly. So this one in particular says three times per turn <laughs> you can negate a card which targets, uh, negate an effect or a card which targets one of the cards that you have on the field. And now yeah. Valor is not that good anymore. Exactly, Valor's gone. Oh, but there's only Nick on two well. sets. <laughs> True, we didn't even summon five times. That's strong. But I mean, you can just play, right? Yeah. At this point, there's... Uh, I mean, you, you know what card is really good versus Gate Guardians combined? Sprite Smashers, because uh, that yeah. card does not target. I was going to say I Santa think, Claus. I think I saw <laughs> that in his opening hand, to be honest. Or even the yeah. matched. <laughs> so, uh, but we are right now just starting it off with one of our Life Twin cards. Lila. And, starting oh. it off with Lila. and there is a skill drain we were talking about. This, Holy moly. This is a strategy since the dawn of Yu-Gi-Oh, I think. Yeah. Yes. You, you play a big monster, <laughs> and then you play a skill drain. Oh, but look at that. Okay, I thought we have a direct response That's to the skill drain. Home? That is Life Twin Home indeed. That is actually crazy. It's yeah, quite an unpopular Life Twin card, right? It is indeed, yeah. You, you discard one to special summon one. But then you are uh, Evil Twin locked in the extra deck. Like Evil Twins or just Fiends? Evil Twins. Oh, wow. Okay, that's very restrictive. I thought I, I considered playing this card because I was playing the Searcher for the Life Twin spells as well. So I could play it as a one off if I get interrupted really heavily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's what he's doing exactly. He's playing it yeah. as a one off. 
I think maybe the plan here is just to somehow try to climb up into yeah. uh, Troubled Sunny, and Troubled Sunny could be an... Oh, but oh, we yeah. instantly used Book of Moon on the Frost that was summoned there. And the Book of Moon was, in fact, a good read, because if you already invest two cards in a Life Twin Home, then uh, you see what I did there with a book and a good read? Yeah. <laughs> 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 need an intervention for these puns at some point. <laughs> it's only the second round, guys. It's going to get much worse. Oh, no. Was it? He's gone to oh, the battle phase. Oh, we're going phase. to the oh, battle no. phase. That's looking good for Kevin. Am that I skill drain right stopped him in his tracks. In thinking that you could have used the the field spell to destroy True. the live drain. Maybe he, he forgot just, about the additional effect of his field spell. You're absolutely maybe right. Maybe he'd just rather that his opponent had a monster in attack mode so you can just punch it for a ton of damage with Labyrinth. Uh, with his big gate guardian monster. So, look, Jake is also rereading it and then probably realizes with the last sentence, yeah, it actually says you can, uh, at the start of the opponent's battle, oh no, it's only your, oh no, it's of your opponent's battle phase. That would have absolutely been the case I think it was at the start of here. your battle phase, I think it would be even stronger. Yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, oh, and look at that card, that is Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth, another new card from updated the... Updated Wall Shadow. Maze of Memories, and it is being mad by Ash Blossom there from Jake. Does it have an effect in the graveyard as well? Yes, it does. Yeah, you can banish this card from your graveyard uh, to destroy. Uh, at the start of the damage oh, yeah, step, if your opponent's one-star battles while you control a Labyrinth wall card, you can banish this card from your GUI, destroy that opponent's Oh, monster. that's really helpful, because he's got the field spell, so... Yeah. That's, unless Jake goes out of his way to clear the field spell now, that's one sort of Sakuretsu armor kind of effect. Yeah, I mean, there are more and more traps coming out of this uh, Labyrinth deck, right? That's what <laughs> a Labyrinth is known for, like having a lot of twists, and that is definitely the case here. So do you think Jake... Even if Jake has an answer for the skill drain in the form of Sprite Smashers, then how do you answer the Gate Guardians combined? Yeah, that is true. And also, we have to get Sprite cards somehow first to resolve these Sprite Smashers. Yeah, you can't just search it so easily when there's a yeah. skill drain in play. Indeed. That does have to go in attack mode, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be the case. That's how Yu-Gi-Oh works. <laughs> Flip some of my monster into face-up defense position. Oh, and... Is that the Sprite Smashers? Yeah, yes, it is. I think he you can banish from hand. Yeah, and he might have discarded something for Life from Home earlier. I think he discarded the Bureau, so that was not. Yeah, all right. No, no that no, is no, not no, how no, Sprite no, no, Smashers no, no, works. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. he does yeah, not yeah. even have a Sprite card, sadly. So that Sprite Smashers cannot be activated here. So he had one half of the Smashers. Oh look, and he had, but he has Santa Claus. Ho, he does ho, have ho. the Santa oh, Claus. Oh no! But uh, how much attack does Santa Claus have? One five, I think. And, I, I can't imagine there's another reason one, two. to play oh, only. Santa Claus other than oh, the fact that it's quite two. small. Oh, you can... Oh, but yes. in this case, it's oh. still bigger yeah. than the Twins. But that's that's the only advantage I can see of running Santa Claus over the Kaiju. Gate Guardian combined has a grave effect, and now we are scooping Gate Guardians <laughs> control their way into Game 3 wow. while flipping Skill Drain. Yeah, the skill indeed was very much drained here in game number two, and the Gate Guardian strategy comes out on top here to give us a game three here in our round two featured match. That's amazing. I love that. That was that was great to see. Yeah, Gate Guardians. It's it's a take on it. You know, you don't just have to play the Gate Guardian cards. You can play Elemental Heroes with yeah. Prisma. You can play Dark Magicians with Magician. It's really Magician cool. Soul. And you can play Skill Drain. It's a combination of so many old decks, so many yeah. old archetypes. We have a Hero Lifts in there. We have Magician Souls, as you said, in there. And then, of course, also the <laughs> almighty Gate Guardians as well. And I think this is something we can see quite a lot of this weekend. We're seeing like lots of little engines, maybe because in the, in the last round we yeah. had Runic, Sprite, yeah. and Live Twins all yeah. in the same deck. And then there's this little engine of the Adventurer package, which we can sure. see being splashed into basically everything. So it's very cool to see like lots of different engines being together. And in the branded deck, it's kind of going to an accumulation of like three or four different this deck, archetypes. The Gate Guardians would make good use of the Adventure Package, right? I haven't seen like a really important normal, normal summon. summon. Of Not course, really. you have the Prisma, but you don't really always want a normal summon it. You have a Hero Lives. You have a Hero Lives, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I mean that's actually fine, but what I'm works. asking myself is, can Gate Guardian break a bigger board? Because we have seen in Game 1, that, that was a really tough one. It was a standard Sprite board. Yeah. And I don't see that many ways to break boards with the deck. Maybe yeah, the, the problem is, in, is in engine it's already yeah. hard for sure. And then like he, he's relying on Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, and evenly matching his main deck already. And from his side deck, there's not much more support coming in. I can tell you, he's upping the number of evenly matched to three, and he's also upping the number of Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon to three because he is only playing two of each in the main deck. And then there's also Triple Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And Leo. You are an expert of the Life Trend Sprite deck. What do you think about Ash Blossom and Joy Spring versus that deck specifically? 
No. It's, it's not that great. Right? So, I mean, <laughs> in one word. <laughs> I mean, there are applications for it. Sometimes you have weird hands. Yeah. I mean, if you're normal summoning Leela yep. and you get Ash Blossom, you have no way of continuing to play. Of course, Ash Blossom is good. Ash yeah. Blossom always has the potential, if you throw it at the first thing, to win the, t to win the game, possibly, because you end the turn. But there's also there's, the very yeah. likely scenario that it just doesn't I stop mean, him. I mean, he is even running double secret password. I think he's running yeah. double or triple Sunny Snitch, so you yep. can always even search for the Kizikil Frost. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can negate the Gigantic, but then if there is a Jet Hard Draw or a Blue, then it doesn't matter again. But the players are ready for Game 3, so let's take it over to the Feature Punch table. Game 3 just about to start. We are seeing the fist bump of friendship. And now we're going to draw our opening hands of five with a Jake, starting with a... Ooh, not that good hand. Absolutely not! It's he only has Sprite Jet as monsters! Is that a Harpy's Feather Duster? I that? think so. That's quite a curious card to have when you Look know Look at that! Jake starts by setting free and not bringing any monsters onto his board, which is usually what you want to do with his deck. I, I can really understand the Harpy's Feather Duster, though, because the board that Jake will put up doesn't really do well versus just set skill rain pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have the carrot, but just the yeah, carrot. Yeah, you usually yeah. do. Oh, boy. Jake is not happy with that. And Kevin now activating Illusion of Chaos from his hand, so he will get more draw power going by searching for Magician Souls here. And Magician of Souls just seems like a very, very powerful start, right? Just for no real investment, you get a Gate Garden in your graveyard, and then you can filter your draws to find whatever else you need. Yeah, Gate Guardian Magician Soul is really a good card, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it has proven itself in the past. It definitely has, yeah. So, are we, yeah, we're instantly starting with that. Why not? Let's get the first Gate Guardian to the graveyard. It is Carsagin. So, like, somehow it's always Carsagin, right? That must be why he's playing, yeah, too. Yeah, it's a spellcaster. Like, yeah, probably. Oh, you said the only spellcaster of that? Yeah, the other ones are Aqua and Thunder. Oh, oh okay. that's why he's playing, too. I see. Yeah, then it you makes absolute are sense. You truly the Gate Guardian expert. Thank you. I've looked it up earlier. Because I, but then I was looking it up so much, I thought that you maybe have said it already, so I didn't want to just uh, edit no, it again. No, there comes huge that. deployment already. Oh, that card is so good in there. Indeed, Can we are any again. Of your small gate guardian monsters. Small is a small. little bit of an wow. understatement. There's sewage incoming, and not going to lie, relative. that's 2,500 <laughs> attack points. That's a lot for a sprite. <laughs> Indeed, sprite, yeah. sprite is going to have a tough time handling this. Sprite monsters, I would say, are big for level twos. Yeah. <laughs> You know. Oh, and on the summon of Suijin, <laughs> I think we're yeah we're thinking about Book of Mooning that again, and Kevin should be fine with that once more because, as far as we understand it, he is supposed to be able to contact fuse with those set monsters, but right? Does he know? <laughs> oh, but there again comes the Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth. Last time it was Ash, but this time we see it resolving. I, I want to see a, a tribute summon of Sanger of the Thunder or something that like would that. Be that so would be fun. Yes. <laughs> but I don't think he will need it because he now gets access to the field spell. Labyrinth Wall Shadow has been and surged. I really love this synergy because you, you activate the field spell, then you put a Gate Guardian in your spell and trap card zone, and that in itself gives you two cards to send. The Magician Souls. That is so yeah. good indeed. Oh, but yeah. Whilst putting something in your graveyard that you really want. Amazing, for sure. And he's still not used as a normal summon. Yeah. See, that's why you could play the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> but he puts another Cassigen into this bounty. He yeah. really likes his Cassigen. Yeah. He, he just likes it the most. Maybe he has Sanger of the Thunder in his hand because he's only running the four yeah. Gate Guardians. Yeah. So yeah. this would be all four. Yeah. Indeed, it would be. Are we going to see a possible draw to. Oh, and oh, that is, it, that is, it a, is tribute a tribute summon. summon. Oh, the what number sank up the summon. It's a Labyrinth Heavy Tank. It is Labyrinth Heavy Tank heavy indeed. Tank? It's super rare from Mace of Memories, and it is being tribute summoned right there. And Kevin is explaining what it is about to do. This is mad. This happening here in round two of YC's London. So actually, that, actually, a Labyrinth card. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Right, it's, not, it's with an I and not a Y, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And Before there comes the contact ideas. fusion with all three of them. All three are now in the graveyard. And therefore, we get Gate Guardians oh. combined onto the field. And this is looking really good. First of all, the Heavy Tank looks like one of my favorite classical cards from the era of Paradox Brothers. It's Labyrinth Tank, right? 
I think it yeah, might I think be so. yeah. Drill Ride. It looks Probably very similar drill. to Drill Ride as well. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, there was an old like uh, ritual monster. Like oh yeah, the, true. I remember the that one. Level well. seven. Oh, so there comes the. Oh, see, this again. It can, can, can be negated. You've got three once per turn negations. So what's the uh, other bend the same chain? Oh. Boon. Is it is it once per chain? It it's doesn't read not. it. He's oh, just wow. using it again. Kevin is negating Infinite Impermanence and Book of Moon right there. He's knocking off Jake's socks with the Brothers Paradox. <laughs> <laughs> what You've a been working on there. your rhyme. And look, I we have him. another wow. summon from water. the Spell and Trap Zone. Is that 8,000 damage? Heavy tank play? can't detect the turn it was summoned. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but there oh, is oh, the okay. this buff. This wow. is indeed game. And therefore, we have Dave Guardians taking round number two here yeah. of YC is London 2023. Oh, you have heard right, it's 2023. Yeah. Gate Guardians are winning <laughs> featured matches. What's going on here? Oh, what a game. And the, we fantastic. really got to see the power of Gate Guardians yeah, combined, yeah. negating two targeting spells and traps in one turn. The power of friendship lets you yeah. negate so many targeting <laughs> effects. It's absolutely insane. Uh, that was really strong. I mean, unfortunate start, of course, for his opponent there in game three. Jake really just setting free cards. Ah. Also, free cards that would only target opponent's monsters and therefore could be negated by Gate Guardians combined. But, I mean, let's not take away the glory there from Kevin. It, having it got to show off the power of it, didn't it? And again, like if you're running a deck where other people don't know what it does, you don't necessarily know that you need these cards are not going to be yeah. very helpful. Like Book of Moon against the fusion deck where you can still fuse or tribute summon both of you. We <laughs> saw a tribute right. summon of just like the monster has the effect. It, you can just normal summon it. You can it, just normal summon it. But I think he said that no. he <laughs> doesn't know about the uh, face down fusion summoning. So he just thought, I got to get rid of my Sujin. So bang. <laughs> Beautiful play. But Just slamming him right there. For me, it's very obvious that we already have one top cut contender now. Oh, definitely. I, I, I he, think we have a winner. Yeah. yeah, maybe even that, at least for the best deck in the room, because it is very, very clearly one of the OG favorite decks from a lot of people as well. A lot of people were anticipating the new support for the Gate Guardian deck because the archetype was so beloved by many people. And as you could just see, it is actually capable of competing in nowadays meta game. But let's hear it from the man himself. Let's hear it from Kevin at what does our winner Kevin Piganyi has to say with his Labyrinth deck. Uh, no, Lab. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Basti. Yes, I'm joined with our Gate Guardian winner, Kevin Panjanet, right here. Congratulations. Now, we were all very excited to see, well, A, the Gate Guardian deck, but B, see the Gate Guardian deck win. So talk to us a bit. It's obviously had the support recently. Talk to us about why you like Gate Guardian as a deck. Um... It's a really old archetype and Konami decided to make really good support for it. And I was like, you know, this game can be wild. So I would decide to just play for fun and to make people happy by playing it. And when people see these cards, they're always like, oh, why is this? And they realize this an old Gate Guardian deck. So I was like, it has potential. I worked for weeks on it and then it paid off, really. It really did. And the commentators were saying throughout that match, something quite exciting about it is you can actually pair that deck with quite a few different archetypes to make it work. So do you want to talk to us a bit about how you went about doing that and building the deck with the synergy? Yeah. So um, I thought about the Eldish variant, which was, in my opinion, not the most effective one. Um, and then obviously we have Machine Souls for Kazajin. We have Prisma for Herolive. And then I'm not playing everything by free, for example, like the Wall Shadow. So I try to have hands with no multiple copy of cards, which means that I will always have a playable hand because you're playing bricks technically with the big pieces. So I, you know, I work and work to get something really narrowed down to something that worked every time, and I adapted to the meta as I'm playing anti-meta like cards to go second because this meta game is hard at the minute. So I try to adapt to it and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's also worked out very well for you taking that second round. So let's go through some of the play-by-plays in each of the games. So in game one, you had the Labyrinth Wall Shadow negated, but you had a second one in hand, so you managed to get that out. So apparently there was some confusion that you didn't fuse with face down monsters, which kind of set Jake to take game one. So do you want to talk to us a bit about that? I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens. There's the pressure of being up there on stage. And I was like, and I was like, to be honest, he was already ahead in terms of uh, his ceiling was so high that I couldn't come back to it. And I played two Prisma main deck and I drew both and a hero leaves. So I was like, the deck doesn't want to play, <laughs> basically. Which is why it was, I was like, to be honest, he's already higher in the ceiling than, than me. So I was like, let's not go. He had three face down, he had five in hand. It was like, no point of me just trying to push too much. So yeah, that's why. 
Okay, so then you just decided, you know what, let's just get into game two. And then game two was decisive because you got our Gate Guardian combined, the first time we've ever seen that in a YCS. So that was very exciting. And then on top of that, you put straight down that skill drain. So you just controlled that game two straight away. So talk to us about the thought process because I'm guessing when you get Gate Guardian controlled out, it's got 3,750 attack but it's also got the three negates. But with skill drain, you can't use the negates. Were you just putting it there as a dominant field presence? Yeah, so most of the decks in the meta, they can't get over a big piece like this. With the effect monsters, only a few decks can do it. And if I take like, you know, Lava Golem, Kaiju, they all float. And that's why I played a deck in this specific meta because all of the cards are played everywhere. And I was like, if they, if they float, so I can you know, I can come back basically. I knew a new specific deck with no monster effect. If he doesn't have the smasher and he has to spend the entire hand to be able to banish my monster, which is going to summon another one, I'm going to have enough attack points to just push for game anyway. So that's why I did it. Okay, fantastic. And then obviously we got straight into game three. A difficult start for Jake where there was a three set and then a pass. That's always a nervous moment for a player. But I'm guessing you probably felt quite confident in that moment. You then managed to, you had the Shadow Ghoul resolve, which meant you got the field spell out, which was the first time we got to see that resolve throughout that. And then you negated both the Imperm and the Book of Moon with Gate Guardian combined again. So talk to us about that third game going into the win. Um, I was not expecting two face downs and I saw my book of Eclipse and I was like, that's a bit useless now. So, and then I thought, if I tried to discard it with Magician Souls, I'd be like, something's gonna happen. And then I realized, well, I just need to tribute some of my tank to just bait the face down and I finished basically. <laughs> it was crazy, it was great. And the commentators were going absolutely nuts for it. They were so happy. That was so exciting. Thank you for giving us such a brilliant display of gate guardianship as we went into this. That was congratulations on getting that second round and best of luck with the rest of your Swiss rounds. Hopefully we'll see more gate guardian in the top cut. We never know, but well done again. Guys, please don't go anywhere because before we get to our third feature match, we're going to have to fill some of that time again. So we've got you some Time Wizard tournaments coming from the commentators. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right over with that game momentarily. So I'm going to throw you over to our commentators who are going to quickly talk to you about the game that you're about to see. Gentlemen, what are we about to go through? Thank you very much, Ed. So how I think uh, I want some revenge for what <laughs> happened <laughs> because Tell I was destroyed. About it. <laughs> yeah. So my hand was very good, I guess. Yeah. I mean, not super good, but it was okay. I mean, I was prepared to face a Celestia or a Judgment Dragon, I would say. <laughs> I had the Starlight Road, but uh, I guess this is uh, Tom's weekend. He rolled uh, four times a six and then a double Judgment Dragon and another monsters to cause the game. That's pretty good, I would say. Yeah, but also on the other side, I think we have Nadir that uh, faced Marcello and had it all. But without no further ado, guys, our players are ready. So let's see who the Time Wizard Format 2010 champion will be. It all comes down to this. For the Time Wizard March 2010 format, it's Nadir versus Tom. It's going to be exciting to see exactly what goes on here. But, gentlemen, I hope you're both ready. Let's do a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. That's a 10. And that is a 5. So who's going to go first? Tom? Tom is going to go first. I'm going to hand you straight back over to the gentlemen who have just fired you over here. And we're going to get straight into this game. Gentlemen, take it away for the final of our Time Wizard March 2010 format. So, we are back. So, you were just talking about how you got Beat. Steamrolled. <laughs> Let's be honest, it was a pretty quick encounter. You got judged by, by dragons really heavily. Twice. And, uh, so, yes. yeah. and the soul of purifying light, if the yeah. name it is was correct. cherry on top, yeah. yeah. It's actually exactly 8,000 damage, right? Yeah, it was yeah. 8,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> Tom, I mean, everything is in your hand now, I guess. <laughs> let's, let's talk about emotions a little. How did that make you feel? 
No, honestly, after what you did to me yesterday, that I think surpassed it because basically I was not expecting it at all. I was ready to face one Judgment Dragon, yeah. not true. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we also have some uh, pre-recorded tournaments that we were playing yesterday. Oh, that was yeah. a lot of fun. And uh, as you can tell, Alberto and I played a little bit. You will soon find out what happened, guys, no worries. But uh, I can tell you that reading cards in this game matters a lot. But let's be honest, I mean, Nadir also performed very well versus Marcello. And I mean, he yeah. kicked Marcello out of a tournament and yeah. therefore he's also contending here in this final. And both players are ready. It's going to be a UK final altogether here for a March 2010 Time Wizard format. So let's get into the action. Let's see how it plays out. So, we are going to see Blackwing versus Lightsworn. Fantastic matchup. Yes. But uh, Nadir's hand is not too great. I see a Raikou, I see a Plague Spreader Zombie, and I see a Jane in, in attack Jane. position. Let's mill some cards. There's the first Lightsworn, and that's none. Orcus and a Beckoning Light. Giving it back over to Nadir. Also, I really like that uh, Tom version of Lightsworn is I would say very different from the stardom ones we're usually going to see because he plays a lot of different variants with Herald of the Arlong yeah. Light alongside with the Arshal Christia, which is something that you don't really see at all in the Light Sworn deck. You just want to do, you know, Solar Recharge, then Charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, it, it, it was telling me why we were set on the table. It's just, yeah, I like this deck. I built it. I think it's good. And uh, it worked out so <laughs> far. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell that he likes it when he's summoning Judgment Dragon twice in a turn. <laughs> Oh, Nadir immediately setting down the Judgment, not wanting to get hit by a Celestial here. But I think he, he does have... And still yeah. there is Celestial, but he obviously has an answer to it. Yeah, And like, I mean, you have to, you have to yeah. use Judgment here, there's no way around. Yeah, yeah. yeah because otherwise uh, this gets carry, you could mill uh, Vool for stuff, yeah. You just activate it straight away. It's a, it's a high investment, 4,000 life points, yeah. and especially in uh, those older formats that can be a rough encounter that there's one back row and I think we okay, set we set the Raikou, right? So we yeah. have an immediate answer. So it's yeah. actually good for us that Tom decided to set a card there. I think it's the Beconning Light. Oh, oh. okay. But I, this is still not that bad. I think yeah, it might be a Beconning Light. But, I mean, uh, now also, we drew into Heavy Storm, so we have an answer to that card anyways. And what is it? It is yeah. Beconning Light. I mean, you have to use Dairy yeah. Storm at some point, right? Because uh, there's nothing really... Just make sure that you're not getting Book of Mood at some point. But we have to discard our entire hand now to get back some light monsters with the number of oh, cards we discarded. Oh, there's a Black Spreader being discarded. That's not looking too good. I mean, this is just fishing for something, right? We have four fairies in the graveyard, but if you take away one more Christia, then yeah. we <laughs> only have three left, so... Yeah, because now here I think that uh, yeah, he, you know, he has to take yeah. the Jane because he yeah. doesn't have anything else and he's uh, actually relying on the top deck. Uh, on the other side, Nadir drew Card Trooper, which might be very, very helpful. Yeah, for but sure it is. keep in mind, if you play the Card Trooper and mill three, you have a good chance to hit a Zirocco or a Vayu. Does not really help you immediately, but the Jane will deal a lot of damage. You're at 4,000 life points already. Yeah. Oh, and that mill is absolutely not good for him. No. Yeah. Bad news for Nadir, especially because I saw he has a uh, Dust Tornado in end, which, I mean, against Light Sworn, no. uh, is not helpful. You, you will set it and hopefully yeah. your opponent sets a beckoning light in the end phase. Well, there's already one of those out, so you couldn't really uh, bank two, on that. Two, actually. <laughs> oh, two, yeah, two. He, uh, he even milled one right at the beginning. Yeah. And there are a lot of potentially really good top decks there, and it is Card Trooper from the top for Tom Payne here. Oh, and he can just go for Card Trooper and mill maybe one ferry. I think the well, odds are pretty high. Pretty, oh. pretty high. He's last thing. Yeah. I think yeah. he already knows. Uh, <laughs> if he hits one ferry, not two, not three, not zero, one just ferry, one ferry. Exactly. So that is not a ferry. Neither that is, is this. Ferry. And that's <laughs> okay. not one either. But we are running over the card trooper, still doing quite a bit of damage. Now, he yeah. is dropping in life points here quite massively. Yeah, he's left with 2,500, which would have meant that if he, if he milled a ferry, then this game would have been sealed. Yeah, it would have actually yeah. been over right there. Yeah. I think that you want to summon, with a Book of Moon in hand, you might want to summon the Vayu in attack position? Okay, no. I think you <laughs> could attack over the Card Trooper, that might actually help you. Oh, there was Soul of Pure Fang Light now also being drawn, so even if we mill two fairies there, we are fine. Oh, oh and there's the one fairy! That means we have exactly four fairies here. 
so we might go into one Christian. And there she is! Agla Christia hitting the field, but there is Torrential Tribute as an answer. Oh, and the Torrential Tribute might have been a gigantic mistake because there is still a normal summon open. Yeah. You oh. are going, oh, you can actually just draw the Christia again. Yeah, he just put Christia on top. <laughs> then he has one back with Christia's effect. And you draw one with Car Trooper. If you chain it correctly, I don't know if... Is one well, of, those of those mandatory? Is mandatory yeah, effects? that could be a good question. Mm. If one of those is mandatory, you couldn't really arrange the chain as you like. But if both of them are optional, there absolutely is a way to Car just immediately draw that Christia again. And I think Christia is mandatory as well, so both are mandatory, yeah. so you can still right. decide. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. That is great, so... One, yeah. two, exactly. One card trooper, two Christia, yep, Christia on top of the deck. And then, I mean, he put the other Christia on top of the deck. Yeah. Wait, Wait. That, that was a Christia, right? No. I'm confused. I'm uh, very... Maybe, maybe he did the other way... No, maybe he wanted to do the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. He did it the other way around, I guess, yeah. But didn't he do Christia chaining two? Or maybe he just said maybe, chaining two, yeah, chaining maybe, one. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe. Probably, yeah. probably. So there is going to be the summon of Soul of Purifying Light. This card won him the semi-finals versus you, Alberto. Is it going yeah, to yeah, bring was, him victory was, here as it well? It was the Soul of Purity yep. and Light. Of course, that I mean, one won him the game. It was that exact yeah. one. <laughs> that was 2k exactly that he needed to deal there. Yeah. And here, uh, he also has the normal summon. He has the Jane. So, I th ah, also oh. the Plex Prayer. Yeah. Oh, that means, ah, oh, the Book of Moon that Nadia has said has to come down at some point. Yeah, he has to activate the Book of Moon of, on the soul here. And that would still lead. But is there like a problem Synchro Summon? Because if you Book of Moon, the Soul of Purity and Light here, and he Normal Summons Jane goes into Goyo Guardian, you lose. But isn't there no. okay. Fort Ruler? Yeah. Because Fort Ruler yeah. is... Yeah. Oh, okay, but Ooh, he does he go for the Stardust, for the Stardust Dragon. Dragon. Okay. Because Ford Ruler would have answered the Book of Moon, right? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. on the other hand, it doesn't play around Mirror Force, which is still in here. Oh, but there's Christian. Both of those monsters are big enough to be able to attack for game, <laughs> and therefore that Book of Moon is not going to be able to stop Tom here from maybe even going for game here. There comes the Soul of Purifying Light back to his hand. <laughs> Battle phase, attacking with the Christian. Nadia is offering the handshake, and therefore our champion here for this Time Wizard tournament is Tom Payne. Fantastic performance by our co-caster, in fact, Tom Payne. What a man. I mean, he used so many different boss monsters over two games. It's Judgment Dragon, Judgment Dragon. He had Soul of Purity and Light every single time. Yep. And he also used the Christia. He summoned it twice. He had a really cool combo. It, it would have been much cooler if he said, okay, Chainlink 2 is Christia. Yeah, and then <laughs> just I, put it on top. Then no. I put it on top <laughs> and then draw the card immediately. That would have been really nice. But, but let's be honest, maybe the meta has to be reconsidered now because in the beginning, back in 2010, people believed Quick Draw Synchro to be the best deck of this format. Then people have came to the conclusion lately that maybe Vayu Blackwing is the best, thing, uh, best deck that we see Nadir bringing here. And now there's just Light Swan steamrolling and taking yeah. our tournament. So maybe Light Swan is the best deck of this format. I mean, Light yeah. Swan is more I mean, of a high roll. I mean, honestly, when, when you face Light Swan, you just uh, really don't want your <laughs> yeah, opponent. Yeah, you just, you know, with all these meals. But uh, yeah. again, we said that Tom built it differently and uh, it paid off. Yeah, yeah really. Really. Soul of Purity and Light is a really cool card with the, you can just banish light monsters, in fact, which is really good. You can rid of Raikus, yeah. you can actually banish the Judgment Dragons as well. We have so much grave control because you all also banish two, so you can really just use your graveyard yeah. as much as you want. So we're going to give it over to Ed and the winner, and of course, Nadir, our finalist. Yes, thank you very much, Leo. I am joined by both of our UK commentary team here who have just taken part in that final. Obviously, commiserations to you, Nadir. Now, talk to us a little bit about that game before I come over to you, Tom, our winner. How are you feeling? Uh, disappointed, uh, distraught, uh, emotional damage. <laughs> it's all the other words of distress, yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been dreadful. Good, uh, good job, Tom. Good job. Yeah, good. So, over to you, Tom. You obviously won. Congratulations. How do you feel? Honestly, I just can't believe I'm here. You know, I'm over the moon. I'd like to thank my friends, my family, <laughs> Konami for putting on this wonderful event. Everyone at home who's watching and cheering me on. You know, I just can't say anything more. That's it from us. Good night. Well, it has been great, and this is obviously a wonderful thing for you. The first time that you've been a part of these, ever since, you know, these live events have come back, you've now 
come into this team and you hear winning Time Wizard formats. Now, obviously, there's been a number of the different formats with Speed Duels and Time Wizard. Is this now your favorite because you've won this? Obviously, yeah, yeah. Your favorite formats are the ones you do well in, so Time Wizard is the one for me. That's what we like to hear. Now, speaking of formats you do well in, you've just taken part in one of our quizzes. You have not taken part in this quiz just yet. But what I'm about to introduce to you guys is our quick fire quiz round. So the way this works, it's like a game of tennis. I'm going to give you guys a category. You're going to go back and forth until one of you gets it wrong. We have one of our Konami adjudicators ready to make sure that the answers are indeed correct. So mm, you won. Okay. Is it, is it, would it be fair to give it to you to start because you lost? I guess you can choose. Okay, well, that's very, very sportsmanlike of you. So, Nadir, you're going to start, and obviously, like, once he answers, it'll go over to you, and it'll go back and forth until one of you either can't answer or gets it wrong, okay? Are these going to be easy questions? I can't promise they're going to be easy questions, Tom. Is it going to go back and forth once? <laughs> it may go back and forth once or twice. It may go back and forth 15 times. It depends on the question. But we do have quite a few questions. We've got about 20 different questions here, 20 different categories, but we may save some for later, just so that you at home understand why we do this it's because we have to make sure that there's time filled in between these rounds because we're still waiting for the third feature match and all the third pairings to be ready so are we are we nice and center in frame we're nice and center in frame so we can get going with our quiz so your category name a past european or oceanic ycs winning deck go spiral zodiac necros Necros didn't win, it was Shadol. It won a, a YCS, not a national. Did you not say European Championship winning deck? European or Oceanic YCS winning deck. Oh, a YCS winning deck. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, -um -bum -bum. Telements. Despio. Oceanic. Uh, -um -bum -bum. So t uh, no, they didn't win. I should probably be able to do this. Have we said Shadol? Okay, Shadol. Burning Abyss? Did Burning Abyss win a YCS? He'd Multiple? know. He'd know. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> this probably shouldn't be that difficult, to be honest. Um, <laughs> putting me on the spot. Three, two, uh, one. Oh, I give up. All right. Okay, Nadir, that's point to you. Would yeah, flu under ease have counted? Is that one? Is that one of YCS? I don't think it has. Wonder? Maybe that's in my brain. Maybe it was a final that it got to at least, but maybe it didn't win. Okay, so that's one point to you, Nadir. Make sure you guys keep track of your points because I will forget. I'm on two. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> you sneaky swine. Okay, let's go to the second one. So you started that one, so we will let you start with this. Name a card that appears, I hope you've seen this, otherwise this will be a tough question, on the 250th YCS participation game mat. Uh, I sh these are prize cards? Prize cards. Chaos Emperor Dragon, something of this. I don't know the full name. The Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy. Is that Envoy of the End? Okay, I'll, thank you. Is you, no, I was going to say I it's not. The one was Envoy of the End. The normal one. I don't know what the name, the full name of the Pendulum Chaos Emperor. This Dragon. is a bad start. This is a very bad start. Dragon of All right, Dragon of Armageddon. Let's go. Blood Mephist. You're doing much better than me. Uh, <laughs> I probably won one. Does Giant Hand appear? Okay, number something. Giant. Dick Vorzak. Oh, that does appear. Uh, Crush card virus. Very good. Utopia Kaiser. So much. You know all of these things. Uh, da, 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 prize cards. <laughs> so I just like the way you're like, you're cheating. You know more things. I, I, he's not cheating. I'm just doing badly. I don't know my prize cards. Though. I've seen, I held the prize card yesterday. We held it for social media pictures. And I was holding it, but I, I didn't read the name of it, which I probably should have. Um, what are the Dark Fairies called that are on there? Dark Lord, Superbia, Dark Lord... They, do they come Superbia is one of them. Okay. Minerva the Exalted Lightsworn. I was broken, I should have remembered that. Uh, Dark Lord Desire. Uh, uh, you took my one. Um, another Verse Dragon. Very good, okay. Did you say another? Another Verse Dragon. Uh, Diablosis the something Mind Hacker, 67 is he? Number 67? Was that in? Okay. Oh, uh, I'm, I, I'm blanking. I pass. Oh, okay. So that's one apiece. Goodness me, that was exciting. Yeah, you got three points now. Do you have another one? No, he's joking. <laughs> oh, did you not have a follow-up? I, I don't know what the other Dark Lord is called. So there's Dark Lord Desire, Dark Lord Super. Do you know what the other Dark Lord is? Not the 
prize one. No, I don't know. Okay. Any of our commentary team, do you think you know? No, there's a lot of shaking of heads. Basti looks like he might know. EDRI? Maybe. I don't know. I'll be totally honest with you. Yeah, but yeah, there were definitely three, right? I, I think so. Oh, Gold Sark was on it. Well, it's too late. You passed, but yeah. noble of you to keep going. So we're going to our third question. We're at one apiece. Name a European or oceanic city that has hosted a YCS event. Go. Prague. London. Utrecht. Ah, oh, that was mine. Antwerp. So that, was, that was a Euro. That was Euros. Does, uh, that technically doesn't count. So give us another one. Brussels. No. Has there never... Has there's, no. Euros as well? No, there was the, um, the battle pack. There is. Oh, I'm, get, I'm getting nods. Ghent. That's fair. Uh, Lyon. <laughs> Paris. Paris. Toulouse. Toulouse. Rimini. Oh, that's good. But then, yeah, well, there must have been a Milan. Yeah, I commentated in Milan. Okay, Milan. You should remember. <laughs> Bochum. Oh, more German. Dortmund. Berlin. Dusseldorf. Dublin. Was that, was that a YCS or was that a European Championship? Oh, it wasn't? I went to the European Oh, that's a shaking of head from our... That means, that means no, that means you, you unfortunately have dropped that point. So that's two points to you. Another one because I said... Um, okay, go again, go again. Barcelona. Uh, Madrid. I don't. Uh, Glasgow. That's a lie. <laughs> okay. Nice try. nice try. I'm afraid that's that's gone to you. So that's two points one. Okay. Let's go for the next one. That one was quite fun though because these are all events that we've all been to together. It's just name European cities. Pretty much. Yeah. Can you name a major city in Europe? No. Okay. No one went for Oceania either. No, that's true. I don't think we remember. I mean, I'm sure there's like a YCS Sydney. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, name a rank seven XC's monster. Dave Blosis, the mind hacker. Big guy. Draco Sack. Master of Blades. What is Master of Blades? Uh, number uh, Lucky Straight, number seven, Lucky Straight. Is that the name? Um, is a, a Rise Heart a seven? Yeah. Cash Tira, Shangri Era. Dark Arm Dragon of Annihilation. That's a good one. What else are people running? I should probably know the whole extra deck. There's a pearly one. I don't know the name of it. There's like pearly dark and pearly light, but I don't know what they're called. Um, what else do we run? There's a raid raptor that summons a Zephyrus from your deck. These are all good effects. I'm going to need a name. Effects, but do I know any of the names of them? Three. Arsenal Two. Falcon. Two. I may have cheated. Though. Arsenal Falcon? Ebon Illusion Magician. I have on Illusion, which that's not a real card. No, it is, but you know. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, something Tomahawk, what's the card? Number, it's a number, Galaxy Tomahawk. You're much better at this. Do you know the number? Has it got a number? It's a Galaxy Tomahawk. Galaxy Tomahawk. The, the one that is banned and summons your... I think it's a number. Okay, thank you, Galaxy Tomahawk. Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. You, you, you only gave me that because you knew it. <laughs> Oh, what else? Zeus is not seven, even though you know, it's, it's every level. Uh, um, I should give up. I'm taking too long. Well, that's fair enough. So is that your third? Is that your third point or second point? No, it's two each. Two, two each. Two each. Well, there we go. Gosh, this is getting exciting as we possibly come down to a tiebreaker. Well. If we're doing best of three, judging by the fact that we still have a crowd around us, I'm assuming that means that the pairings have not gone live for our third round, which means we can go to five. We, what, we're doing best of five? We'll do best of five for now, first or first two five. five. Okay, okay. Okay, so your next category. Name a spell card that appears in Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. He should start though, right? You started last one. I won, so he should start. Is that not how it works? No. It's just alternating. So a spell from the set Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Correct. Pot of Greed. Raigeki. Dark Hole. Now, now we're struggling. <laughs> Is Graceful Charity in that set? No. Nadir knows. Uh, Rush Recklessly, maybe? Is that? That's a spell. The one with the big red pig on it. It's a boar, actually. Sorry. Monster Reborn. Is that in there? Yeah. Uh, change of heart. D spell. 
Is that, is that in that set? I don't I have no idea. Uh, is it remove trap? Hang on, sorry. I've, I'm getting in my ear that we may have one correct. Change of heart is not from it, is what I'm hearing. So, go again. Go again. do you want to go again? Uh, so, I've got remove trap. Fisher. Fisher. Swords revealing light. Correct. Okay. Shield and sword. Sword and shield. Sword and shield. <laughs> we were nearly there. Soul exchange. Soul exchange. Is soul exchange in it? No, no soul. No, that's not. Okay, another, another, another attempt. So how we we getting points? There was one over here that wasn't getting it. Oh goodness me! Which card? Which card was? Was it sword and shield that's not in it? We're just finding out now. Sword and Shield is not in it. Okay, so that means that would have been the second one you've dropped. So we're going to give the point to Nadir there. It's a disqualification. That's fair. Like <laughs> yeah. two, two gameplay errors. Okay, so that's three loss. points to two points? Yep. Yeah, yep, okay, good. Thank you, thank you for keeping track, guys. I'm just no. naming old cards. No, no, no. Just naming old cards. That's all we can do. But the one I have written down as an example here was Swords of Revealing Light. So I'm glad someone said it. What's Dark Hole an answer? Dark Hole was an answer. Okay, Nadir okay. gave that one. Ready? Okay, yeah. So we're going to go into another one. Name a six samurai card. Xian, the Grandmaster. Kizan. Tenkabito Xian. Gateway of the six samurai. Are we naming monsters or, or just any six samurai card? Name a six samurai card. Okay. Um, uh, 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 Fuma. Is that is that just a okay? Kageki. She and spy. Kagamusha. Smoke signal. Uh, Elder of the Six Samurai. Chamberlain. Chamberlain. <laughs> You're going for the really obscure ones. Um, Iro. Uh, Zanji. A hand of the Six Samurai. Foot of the Six. <laughs> 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 um, uh, so you said Iru. Uh, come on, United. Six time United. Great Shogun Shien. Dojo. What's the name? Full name. Shien's Dojo. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of a card. Let me see if I can get it. So, it you pay life points until you have a hundred left, and then you summon a bunch of six samurais from your graveyard, and it's a trap. But do I know the name? Backs against the wall? I think it's that. Sounds familiar. Evenly matched. That's, that's not a six samurai card. It's the artwork of six samurais. Are we, are we counting that, our Konami judge? There's, there's a deep side. I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking, can we ask the crowd? No, we're vetoing. That's it. Does evenly count? Okay, evenly matched counts. Sorry, Tom, we had the entire room turn against you just there. I know. Uh, asceticism of the Six Samurai. Goes in match. No, oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not allowing that. No, okay, we're not, allow we're not allowing that one. Oh. It has to have Six Samurai. Um, the crowd disagreed with you, Tom. Have we done Kagimucho? Oh, Lord. Um, Ascetism is... Is that the draw one? So you said United, we, uh, United, Six Samurai United, which is the draw one. Asceticism targets a monster and summons another one. Double-edged swords. What? This is not a Six Samurai card, is it? it? It special summons two Six Samurai. It has to say, like, Six Samurai word. Well, you got the reborn. Uh, <laughs> you got... <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, da -da -da -da. There's a red, what's the red and the blue one called? It's just like, it's a level three. You can special summon it if you control the blue one. Um, Nadir's probably gonna know the names, so I should, oh God. It's like Mashudo or something, six samurai Mashudo. Nah. What's that a card very though? Close, very close. That's, that's a shake of heads. So I'll throw over here and see if you can get one more. Mizuo. Okay, you were nearly there. I, I quite like the trance-like state you go into when you're like, I know the name, but I have the effect. Shoo! Uh, you have to pay 3,000 life points, and then it's got 2,500 the attack, and then you can destroy one of your opponents. I quite like that you do that to get your way there. Well, well, thank you. It didn't work, but I tried. Are there any new ones? Like, 
We've been naming cards from like, is he? And for you. Uh, hang on, how new are we talking here? Uh, w the latest Six Samurai wave of support. Is Where, where's this? I'm thinking like 2013 or something. This is like 2019-ish, maybe? 18? Mizuo and the red one and blue one, yeah? I think so. Well, either way, you've dropped a point, and that means you now have four points. You have two. So, stop this. Stop lying to me. So we'll go on to one more question. So if you can get to five, that'll be it for now. And then also we have some other footage that we can show you, which include deck profiles and also speed duel tournaments amongst the commentators and more. Am I going first? Let's find out. Yeah, you're going first this time. Name a card with pot in its name. Pot of greed. Good. Have you been watching the, uh, the, well, the pot card? Don't small talk me. <laughs> All right, pot of prosperity. <laughs> Extravagance. That doesn't have pot in the name. Pot, pot of desires. Avarice. Pot of acquisitiveness. Dichotomy. Pot of generosity. Spirit of the pot. <laughs> That's good. That's, that does have it in the name. Uh, Avatar of the pot of greed. Does shard of greed count? No, it's not got pot in it. Pot. Uh, have we done all the good ones? Have you done? I can't go, have we done this one, in case it's one you haven't got. Acquisitive, acquisitiveness, extravagance, desires, dichotomy. That's the one in my, I have one in my head that the commentator team have just said to me. Uh, don't, don't you be cheating, don't you be, don't you be looking over there. I, I pass. Upstart pot goblin, no, no. Just make that up, stop, Pot of Goblin. Pot of Duality was one that I was being whispered in my ear. I can't believe you guys missed that one. How did I miss Duality? So wait, are we giving that point to you there, Tom? Okay, so that means four, three. But also, I will, I will say, I, I interrupted you to stop you from small talking me, but you were trying to do a good plug to the Pot Collection. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say we should know this because we've just released the Pot Collection. We certainly have. And if you guys saw the commercials for that, you'd see a beautiful range of pots to fit in your hand. Okay, let's move on. Let's find, oh, we've got, a, this could be potentially match point for Nadir. And we've still got a handful of ones for me to pick. So let me think. Okay. Name a card with the word blue in its name. I like... I, I like you start with name a card and then you wait and I'm like, is this just going to be name a card? Name a card. We'll be here forever. Blue eyes, white dragon. Maiden with eyes, eyes of blue. Alternative blue eyes, white dragon. <laughs> uh, blue eyes, tyrant dragon. Blue eyes, ultimate dragon. Blue eyes, uh, shining dragon. I don't know the name of... Oh, uh, Blue Eyes Neo Ultimate Dragon, is that right? Blue Eyes? Yeah. Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. Blue Eyes Twin Flash Dragon, is that the name? Is that what it's called? There's the one that you summon with two blue eyes and it can attack twice and it's got... But twin Burst. Twin Burst. Okay. We'll give you that. Uh, I'm thinking of the normal summon guys. Uh, X with Eyes of Blue. Come on, help me out. X, X with Eyes of Blue. There's Maiden. What's the other one? What's the other one? Sage with eyes of blue. You're welcome. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> Is there a fusion spell maybe? I don't know. There's still a blue eyes one that no one said yet. Relatively new support. Is there spirit of the blue eyes white dragon? It's a dragon spirit of white, so that doesn't count. Right, that's not fair. I was also thinking of silver's cry, which lets you summon a blue yes. dragon, but that's silver for some reason. Are there any other random cars with blue in their name? Sprite Blue. Very good. That counts. Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. Very good. That's what I was thinking of. Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. It's relatively new support. Uh, I wonder if there's a Synchron with blue in the name. Should I look over there? Will that help me? I mean, you can, but you'll just see them nodding at you going, there's ones with blue in it. What, Blue Synchron? Synchron Blue. <laughs> You're just making cards up again. I'm hoping, yeah, yeah, I'm trying it. I'm guessing we can't accept that, so I'll throw over to see if you can get one here. Sure of the blue flame? Okay, well, there we go. So that means you've got five points, which means Nadir has won this. Oh, oh, the disrespect. I don't think I've seen that since my grandfather did it. 
Oh, and there, there it is returned. So you may have won Time Wizard, but you have won the quiz, the quick fire quiz. We will be back with even more of those quizzes. Unfortunately, the next round pairings have not gone live yet, which means we're going to throw to a guess the card with our commentators, and we might try and fill some more of that time. And also, we may end up playing some of our speed duel stuff if we have to wait a bit longer. Thank you very much for all of your patience. We appreciate all of you guys watching us. Congratulations to both of our winners of the main tournament and the quiz tournament. We'll be right back with even more coverage. Gentlemen, over to you for some of that Guess the Card live on stream. Thank uh, you, Ed. Gotta get good at guessing, right? Yep. What do we have there? That's an eye. I already guessed that it's an eye. And it could be a dragon, too, if you ask me. Yeah, it yeah. looks oh, like it's a Karibo, another Karibo card. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> those eyes, I will always remember those eyes. Those are Karibo eyes. <laughs> if that's Which not a Karibo, you're gonna be embarrassed. Yeah, it I, has this is to be the, yeah, the like the one kind Lingo of Lingoribo, right? Hmm? Lingoribo? It could, it could be, be Lingoribo, yeah. It could be Lingoribo. Lingoribo would look a little bit more mean. Oh, no, it's not Lingoribo. No, it's, it's not Lingoribo. It's uh, a different one. <laughs> Someone yeah. in the crowd, please help me. <laughs> it is certainly a Karibo, though. I'm, I'm really sure it's a Karibo. Oh, yeah, is Rocket Karibo. Really? Is that Rocket it Karibo? It looks like a rocket. Stop using the card I let you. Yeah, what are you doing? No <laughs> okay. It's and we have Karibo Photon. Photon. Oh, ah, that Kribo one is the Photon. one that summons Galaxy Ice Photon. We're close. Or? Yeah, yeah. Almost. almost, almost, yeah. Okay, we're going to close this now. Yeah, yeah, please. So, oh! Wing Dragon of Ra. I thought the same, but I think that's a bait, honestly. Yeah, I, I think, think so it will be something around the... Uh, I don't know. Ra's Disciple? Oh! Oh, that looks... That could still be Ra. No, I think, I think that's like a very old, normal monster. This is like not a unicorn, but like a goblin with only. Oh no, it's not that. <laughs> ah, this is the trade in. Trade in, oh, yes! You're right, it is trade in. It Very is good. It is actually trade in. This card, one level eight monster, draw two cards. Yeah. yeah. It's the Felgrin Dragon. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. True, that was a uh, quiz question at some yeah. point, right? What no, card? I think it was a card guess a few events ago. That could actually, also yeah. be the case, yeah, true. To right. the one person in the crowd who shouted trade in, I think it was trade in, <laughs> that they shouted, thank you. Good job. You did it. Almost as fast as we did. Or as Alberto did. Much faster. Rather. Yeah. So, what do we have next? I honestly kind of want to score one here as well. <laughs> Guess the card. Let's okay. Let's get onto the... Fucking. No. I would know it's, that. It's blue. Sprite blue. <laughs> blue eyes, white dragon. I oh. think this is the key for the... Um, this the could one be very well be. The three. I think that's... It's the card that put spell lever. counters on it, right? No. What's no. that? No. Limiter uh, yeah, Area yeah, B. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, level right, Level right, Limit right, Area right. B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. The B changed. I got it because I saw the B. B was quite a big giveaway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The B changed it all. Yeah. yeah. B. <laughs> exactly the name. <laughs> exactly the card, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But wait, is that... Is that the spell card or is that even the trap card? Because there's also no, the that's, trap cards. The, that's the, A, right? Trap card is A, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. When will that get some support? You know, I want the whole alphabet. That was back in the day a burner, uh, burner theme deck yeah. staple. Everybody was on that card. Yes, the card. Oh, um. So maybe it's the brown Lyrilisk. Hmm. Cobalt? Cobalt Eel, yeah. Yeah, you're thinking about Cobalt, but that looks like a star. So oh, oh. It's. Is it Eichelo? I have That's no idea German what the English, name, yeah, English card name is. It could actually be, yeah. It could also be one of the performable cards, to be honest. To be fair, everything could be a performable card. Yeah, but like the background gives yeah. me performable wipes, to be honest. Yeah. Some performable lion. I'm just I'm saying it now. Oh, it's, oh, it's oh, a Karibo. Oh, <laughs> of yeah. course, of course. Uh, <laughs> well, which one, though? Is, it, is there a gift Karibo or something? Yeah. Why are we even saying something else than Karibo? <laughs> Let's just say from. this is Gift Karibo from <laughs> now on. This is Gift Karibo to me. This is your reality, Basti. We are all just living in your world. Look, it's Karibo! <laughs> what is Gift in the car text, maybe? No. Gift this card to your opponent! That would be a pretty nice card, not so Still good versus Kashira. Yeah, true, actually. Well, Marshmallow! I'm gonna call Marshmallow. There's no way that this isn't Marshmallow. I'm betting against it, not gonna lie. I say Melfi Penny. Oh no, oh. There is, this is not Marshmallow. I'm sorry? <laughs> what do we have what here? What did they show? I, I don't... I have no idea. If I would have understood it, I would have said... <laughs> what is that? 
I would have taken that as my point. Of course you would have. What is that? It's it's That's a it's a happy. Card? What is that? It looks like a potion of yeah. some sort. Yeah, 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 happy yeah. potion. I'm gonna say happy potion. Mm -hmm. I've never seen this card in my life. Yeah, you're right. It's a potion. Yeah. Smile potion. I'm gonna say it's smile potion. Smile I knew it. Potion. I knew it from the get go. If your opponent controls a monster whose current attack is higher than its original attack, why you control no monsters? Draw two cards. That is pretty strong draw power. Not gonna lie. Sure. Obviously, he's smi <laughs> he's smiling like that. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, look who, who's joining us. A Karibo. This is a Karibo, 100%. Uh, like, statistically, from what we've had so far, I would oh, agree, uh, but that really doesn't look like a Karibo to me. There is some brown surface to it, so it could be a Karibo. Well observed. It feels like, oh. Um, At first, I would have said it could be a light stone card, just by, by the armor and everything. Recharge. Oh, it's, is solar it solar recharge? recharge? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's the... Uh, no. the Dark Light no, Brigade a, Recharge, no, the uh, Twilight Brigade Recharge. Really? Is something. it? it I think be. Jane faces... This could also be yeah, no, 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 just Solar Recharge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Solar yeah, recharge. Like, it, it was uh, giving me yeah. lights on vibes, so it was Solar Recharge. Nice. Nice. Busty getting all the vibes here. Yeah. It's all the vibe today. I think we're already done with two oh. rounds. Oh. I'm seeing oh. that, so the tide Players of the busy moving. crowd here start to move in emotion when the pairings Ooh, are gone. Yeah. Which means Looking we good. may have our pairings very soon. Gentlemen, I'll be right back with an update. Absolutely. Sure so. thing. I, I feel like we're just almost starting. Karibo! When it's we a have a Karibo card. card, we always start with the ice. Yep. Every single time there's ice. Berserker first. Slash. But we have Berserker Slash already, right? This is a different Berserker card. I'm 100% sure now. But like, this, this looks like a spell card to me as well. I don't know. Again, it's giving me spell card vibes. <laughs> but yeah, right? But it is a spell. It's, it's a spell I think card. it is a spell, a spell card, card right? right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. It's Karibo, look into my eyes. Um, this is... Oh, um... Yeah. More Karibos. Detonate? I think there's a card called Detonate or something. Could be this. Maybe. Let's go! Oh. Let's go! Sebastian Lemka! <laughs> More on accident, to be honest, but I mean, I will take it. <laughs> yeah, I will take it. I will absolutely take it. So we are in for another uh, one. This is the Invoker, uh, I think. Uh, the right? X Saber Invoker? Or no, which one? no, no. No, the Invoked. Uh, what was the uh, name? Alistair. 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 Alistair, really? Yeah, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I will I go with that why, one. Why, why you would say Alistair there, but sure. I thought we were having another interview, but Ed is just taking pictures yeah, with yeah. people. <laughs> that looks cyber like, Dragon. Yeah, I would have said it looks like a Cyber Dragon to me yeah. as well. It looks like Cyber Dragon Barrier, to yeah, be honest. Probably because some of the other Cyber Dragon, yeah. yeah. Or maybe it's Are just it's the it's regular one. Yeah, it's the normal one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Pretty sure it. that's the original one. That was my one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cybernetic Revolution Classic. Iconic card. Yeah, absolutely. Game breaking back in the day. That card was really powerful. 2,100 attack point. Can you imagine? This card is still good. You can just go into Chimera Tech Overfleet Dragon. Uh, no, I think Break Fields. Was it Overfleet? I think it was another one. Mega Fleet. No, it's also not Mega Fleet. I think it's uh, Fortress. Isn't it Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon? Fortress is the one where you Context take user. machines. Oh yeah, oh, yeah Mega true. Fleet is the one with the extra oh, monsters. Oh yeah, yeah, true. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You, can, right. you can break the U link. True, 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 true. So which one is this? Yeah, exactly. The Jinzo. Oh. That was a not, close one. Not too I don't bad think the of a guess. Match. No, but no. oh, this is um, the Ignis to Live one. Oh, I thought this. Oh, it could also be uh, Vian. Vian. I think Vian. it's Vian. Is it Vian though? Yeah, yeah. it is Vian. That is Vian now, yeah. indeed. Normal summon Vian. Send malicious. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy, easy. So, what do we have next here? On the plate. It's just, a just feed more cards to us. It's the first hero card we got, right? Yeah. For it being such a popular archetype and having so much support, it's actually quite interesting that we only saw one hero card so far. Vision hero. And Vian. instead, we saw already 15 Karibo cards. Yeah. But I mean, we will have plenty more heroes of to course, go. Of course, yeah, for sure. Guess the card. I'm guessing that is not a hero. <laughs> what is it, though? I'm just, I'm just. Oh, I'm just oh Spellbook Magician! That's oh, yes, yeah, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Yep. You yeah. want that point because you said no, it's Prophecy? No, obviously not. <laughs> obviously that's yours. You can have it. Thank you. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm, as, as you play it more, you get better in this card guessing. Yeah, that's true. Lie. You're looking for, for the certain points that are important of the card artwork, and then you're like, oh yeah, that is the one thing it's I remember. Mostly colors. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and eyes, if it's... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The eyes are also giving it away a little bit. Also, a lot of spellbook cards. We had plenty of spellbook cards, too. That is indeed true, but they are quite beautiful. Yeah, obviously. They are okay, really spellbook good. Magician of Prophecy. And I mean, good we one. have Spellbook of Judgment in the TCG yeah. now as well, so you might as well play some spellbook cards. We, even in Dortmund, we had Spellbook on Featured Match. That is true. Yeah, yeah. that was a really cool feature. Oh, I know that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. I, I know what you're thinking, Leo. I know what you're thinking. What's that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, too. <laughs> oh. oh, Artifact Scythe. No, this is the card I lost to, I guess, from uh, Tom. Oh, Soul I'm of Purity sure. and Light. Yeah, yeah that's... Oh, that... Oh. Might be, no? Mm. Is that, is that one? That's, that's not pure... I, I think it's... I think it's the other one. I think it's I think they're true, no? It could still be Soul of Purity and Light, though, I think. No. Oh, no. oh, oh that's a Vendred card. Uh, yeah. Vendred... It's not Revenger. Oh, wait, is no, it Artifact I was Scythe? Right. Yeah, it's Scythe. Right. Yeah, true, true. I was, uh, but it looks like a Vendred card. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> they showed us the unimportant, card of the, uh, unimportant part of the card first, and now there's the Scythe, which is the important part, of course. So, any news for us? I can tell you exactly who our players oh, are for beautiful. this round three feature match. We have Sean Smet Ooh. versus Ben Sherman, who is the 2014 UK national champion. Oh. Wow. Making and his return wow. to YCS London here in 2023, almost a decade later. Can he make it all the way? And you we'll know what? I, I think I have some more inside info because Sean Smat also was a national champion in 2022. So that will be quite a battle we have here in round Really? Three. Which nationals was that? Uh, I think it was Belgium, if I'm not mistaken. Should, should wow. Be. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. So we got two oh, it national could also champions. Been, uh, it could also be UK. Just ask him, rather. But it, <laughs> we'll he won check. a national championship, I'm wow, pretty we sure. Got, we got a battle of national champions. Yeah. So that's what we like to see. For Goodness, sure. This is a, sort of a, a carriage oh, vibe. Uh, pumpkin uh, carriage. Pumpkin horse carriage. card. That is a Did you just throw a bunch Valkyrie of words? Card. Yeah, of course. That's every, every card has cards. Ca carry it on the Valkyries or something. <laughs> carry it on the Valkyries? Pumpkin carriage. <laughs> I was you said, really close. You, well, the first thing you said was pumpkin carriage. Yeah. Oh. Then you threw a bunch of words together. Yeah. I said card. Oh, okay. Horse card. Pumpkin carriage horse card. <laughs> oh, of course. Guilford uh, the Iron Knight. One. Wait. Well, Guilford the Iron Knight. Every time you say something with confidence, it it's might true. as well be bad, yeah. Uh, Could be Dragoon. No. It's a little the bit background is a bit dark. I recognize light. it. I can't pimp. I thought it was maybe Gearfried or Guilford, but it's not. Dark Armed Dragon. No. This is tough. The colors match to Dark Armed Dragon. Which one is this? Oh! Oh, oh it's a. Uh, Vision 2. No, it's a fusion. Oh. It's, it's a fusion. It's a Vision fusion. Hero Future. Yeah. Is it? Aha! Our players are there. I'm going to make my way over. Gentlemen, okay. good luck with guessing the card. I will see you, you shortly for our feature match. We also have to change up our seatings, man, because yeah. <laughs> I think let's do one more guess for card and then we will go out of the picture yeah. for a moment because we have to switch up the commentary team for the next round as well. So one more guess for card after this and then Leonard and I will be heading out because it will be the turn of Marcello Alberto and Nadir casting round number three then. That looks like Black Garden. Oh, yeah, no, it, it could as well be. True. Oh, it's a pot, pot. card. Yeah. I I'm saying this is a pot card. Good guess. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's the... Oh. Ah, this is uh, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Oh, yeah. you might be right. Yeah. Oh, the card in Anti-Spell Fragrance is a pot card. And that is the fragrance that comes off it because it's a spell card. They're all normal spell cards. That is... I have... I just realized that now. Yeah, absolutely. True, it is Anti-Spell Fragrance. That is... that is quite clever. Absolutely. So, see you soon. Welcome back, Duelists. We are now here with our third feature match here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live from London. We have quite an exciting duel here for you. We have Sean Smet, the Belgium national champion of 2022, versus Ben Sherman, the UK national champion of 2014, making their 
return here to London, try and see if they can get all the way to that YCS top cut here at YCS London 2023. Very exciting. Gentlemen, best of luck to you both. Let's go for a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. Okay, Ben has rolled an 11, and that's... A, oh, an 11 as well. Okay, that's a six. And the, okay, you're going to go first? Okay, that means Ben is going to go first. I'm going to hand you guys over to our wonderful commentary team. We have Marcello, we have Alberto, and we have Nadir. Guys, please take it away for our third round feature match. Thank you, Ed, and welcome to round three of YCS London 2023. As Ed mentioned, as always, uh, I am here with Alberto, but we have a special guest on our desk for the weekend, Nadir. How is it going? How is it feeling? I'm really excited. This is uh, quite deep into Photon Hypernova format. We've had yep. Maze of Madness and, uh, I suppose, Trap Tricks uh, Structure Absolutely. Deck as well. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's uh, exactly what we're going to see. We have a lot of different variety with uh, the magnitude of players it to be expected. But as you mentioned, among some of the key differences which uh, our German colleagues went through in the meta discussion for the event, one is the Beware of Trap Tricks Structure deck, which was released. And this is exactly what we are going to see for this round three, as Ben Sherman, representing the UK, is playing the Trap Tricks decks. What do you guys think of it? Well, Ben is a formal national champion, yeah. so whatever yeah. Ben has decided to play for this weekend, I think is... Should be a respectable choice. Absolutely. You know, uh, I think this, stru this structure deck is extremely formidable. Yeah. I think in isolation, it might be one of the most powerful structure decks just by itself with three I copies, agree. you know? Like I it's, agree, it's exactly. It, it's pretty much all you need to play the deck. And uh, it is definitely powerful for whoever is not familiar with it. I think the last time it was this relevant uh, is probably back to 2014, uh, back in the day when uh, essentially uh, it was one of the deck which was uh, played with artifacts in it and the fire a nice end uh, and uh, that where you pretty much played only Mirmelio or some others and Mirmelio is still a powerful card in this deck uh, nowadays but it's essentially a trap deck as you would expect uh, but don't disregard it compared to other trap decks it can put up a lot of XYZ monsters uh, and a lot of threats so we'll see on the other end though I think it was about time the most represented deck uh, is Kashtira for the event uh, but don't be too surprised because uh, actually it's only around 19%, a little less. We'll be able to give you guys the percentages, but I can tell you that the top five decks are not even getting among the 50%. There are a lot of different decks, but it was about time we saw one of them in action. So, who is it gonna be? Sean with this Cash Trio deck or Ben and his Trap Tricks? Players are ready, let's go to the table. So a key factor in this game is definitely going to be the dice roll here because being able to go first with trap tricks and just set up all of the different mods, uh, the, all of the different yep. uh, trap cards is going to be extremely important to be able to stop Cash Tira, which um, I think it's going to kind of struggle potentially dealing with even just something simple like a regular floodgate trap hole, uh, setting the monster to the field. You know, it's uh, it's a lot to contend with when you just have your own booked monster here. And this is one of the best openings you could hope for in Trap Trick. Yeah. Just any monster plus Shade Brigadine. This allows you to trigger the effect of Sarah, allowing you to special summon from your deck a Trap Tricks monster. Now, as well, uh, because of the fact that Mermelio, which it looks like what he might be going for here, uh, actually he's going for the new one. Yeah. yeah. The sequel? Yeah. Yeah, so, the sequel, yeah. right? Yeah. By being able to trigger the effect of a trap card and a trap tricks monster simultaneously on the same turn, you're able to benefit from both effects of Sarah. So this should be able to get another trap card from the deck as well. Yeah, here you go for the XPC summon of Pinguicula. And uh, I think this is one of the main reasons why the deck is so consistent, right? Just with a couple of cards you just put up on the field, a lot of pressure to your opponent and uh, 
I guess also the deck, as you mentioned before, can allow to play, I mean, a lot of different resources, such as his main deck in three copies of Nibiru's as well, which might be very helpful in this matchup, also evenly matched. Mm -hmm. so it's and uh, spoiler warning, uh, he has drawn into two copies of Nibiru, so <laughs> he does have that option for him. So now he is gonna go for again pretty much the shape brigading of the deck, yeah. which as you can see here is the new Holy trap tricks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is very good because basically this can be used in the same turn the carry was set. So basically it's uh, it another extender. And uh, yeah, what a turn uh, here from. Uh, yeah, from as Grand. I mentioned, uh, this deck might look like a trap deck, but as you can see here, he ended with no traps face down actually, but with. Uh, just a uh, lot of XYZ monsters and the option of the Redoer, which is extremely nice because, as you can see, he always makes it with the trap, meaning it's essentially a Phoenix Wing Wing Blast uh, uh, in form of XYZ monster. Let's see here if Sean uh, will be happy with this, but he starts things off with an infinite impermanence on the Time Thief Redoer, which is already something to start things with. And uh, we have seen already in YCS Leon how consistent Kashtira deck is, and uh, it's very difficult to play against it. But yeah, I think it makes sense to chain the Dante. Yeah, you you're forced it. to chain it, and now you are uh, pretty much exposed. But uh, a lot of players, pretty much, I would say that the Kashtira deck at the moment has two options either to play as a kind of a Zodiac deck, uh, realizing only on a Rise Art uh, and nothing else, or it can go all out. Uh, and the reason is behind. Pretty much about Nibiru, yeah. and Ben is maining it, and I don't think you expect it, especially in trap tricks. So uh, that might be a factor in this game one. Let's see. So the issue with Nibiru, of course, uh, as you mentioned, is an extremely powerful card to counter the Cash Tira deck. Um, personally, I feel like in this current meta game, just because of the sort of I don't want to say dominance, but you know the uh, just the existence of Sprite. You know, it's a very yeah. popular and common deck. I would be very hesitant to main deck Nibiru. Do you think, in this type of situation, do you think that you would ignore Nibiru in game one, or are you always going to be hesitant? I think uh, you might just ignore it. Uh, to be fair, uh, at the same time, I gotta say, Trap Tricks is not the most popular deck. Uh, but I, I was just, uh, you know, roaming around, looking at some of the deck profiles that have been released in the past weeks. Uh, and uh, some of the most successful trap tricks did main Nibiru. So if uh, Sean did his, uh, his homework, so maybe he knows that Nibiru might be there, especially when your opponent is playing trap tricks and he doesn't set anything and he has three cards in his hand. Like, you could expect multiple monsters or at least, uh, you know, Ash Blossom, something like that. So, but in general, I would say you just ignore Nibiru game one. So I think it's an extremely powerful deck going first. Would be able to mm -hmm. just use these two card combos to set up a lot of uh, trap cards. Unfortunately, we didn't draw that many here, but you know this. You know we had the uh, disruption, the effect of the redoer. We were uh, completely set up for the next turn. We have our protection, uh, but I suppose one of the biggest key main weaknesses of the trap tricks decks is definitely going to be going second. So that's why I, I think opting to main deck those answers, those really powerful field removing. Uh, options with the evenly matched and the, the Nibiru. Yeah, and the evenly matched is uh, really good in general, of course, but in this deck uh, it's better than in others because, as we saw, with the Trap Tricks uh, new trap card, you need to discard the trap so you can just discard the evenly and it's not going to be a dead card going uh, first, for example. Still a decent amount of synergy there, yeah, yeah. it works, works quite well. All right, so Theosis is going for the Scare Claw. Typically, you want to go for Rise Heart. Any yeah. reason you think? That we went Might have it in his hand. Yeah. He's just yeah. trying to play through, but now we should count the summons as well. We are on three summons mm. at the moment. And uh, yeah, I don't think Sean uh, is gonna. No, let's see. Could still play around it. That's why maybe he didn't go for the Rise Heart. Removing a Exiton nice. from the Exit. That nice. is a classic. What it's been a, a while since we said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Legacy of the Valiant 2014, I believe. Yeah. Evil Sworn Exiton Knight. Yeah. What a card it was. <laughs> Yeah, once per chain. That was uh, yeah, that was insane. One of the one of the first <laughs> times we had like a quick effect removal yeah. like that. All right, so making quick work of the field here and uh, removing all of Ben's options. Now, yeah. suppose the last final critical moment of this and the decision making is how far does he keep going now? Because okay, so actually, this might be the fourth summon because the f at the beginning of the duel he had the unicorn that got stolen. So actually, I think we are on four summons and this might be the fifth already. So let's see. Yeah, he's gonna play conservatively in a way with the Arise Art for free, which I mentioned is pretty much the way you play the deck similarly to Zodiac, just rely relying on uh, your boss monster. 
Pot of Prosperity, a Did interesting choice to use in main phase two rather than maybe main phase one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's decent because uh, some players have been using Garura, which is why this makes sense. Because uh, when it resolves, it's going to get banished, triggering the Rise Art, and you can get back the Garura from uh, the banished zone. And whenever they deal with the Rise Art, then that's your plus one. Uh, we can check whether Ben is playing that or some other interesting targets in the action. Uh, not Ben, Sean. So I see what you're saying, he's uh, trying to have that synergy with the yeah. attach effect of the Rise Heart, but I was just maybe curious, you know, you want to like see I know, your in options. In general, I agree right? with you. Yeah. In general, I agree with you, but just if he's playing the Garura, yeah, he's playing. Yeah, he is, yeah. so mm. makes sense. Uh, and it decides and to go for this a... This is exactly... Yeah, okay, no. Ah, okay. going for the okay, Goliath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, still similar concept. Yeah. He's still the fourth summer, right? Yeah. Uh, I actually think it might be the fifth, because at the beginning he went for a Unicorn. And I think it yep. was, yeah, yeah. so it is. it is the fifth. Yep, and this is what we are going to go through. And, and I think this uh, was totally yeah. unexpected, as we mentioned. Absolutely. Uh, I think if you, if you are a cash tier players this week, and uh, as we have also seen the last week, and also the UK Open champion, yeah. I mean, uh, you just want to go and push as, as much as you can, and then if you get punished, you just deal with that. And here, for example, you could see why uh, putting one of those cards. Unfortunately, even if you use the Garura here, it would be even more punished because of uh, Prosperity, because uh, that would uh, not allow you to draw a card for Garura. But, yeah. yeah. Now, plays back, so Red Warrior comes back. Let's so see. a decent amount of recursion despite this. You know, you would think like Nibir the Primal Being coming down, it's a very, very sort of powerful, almost mm -hmm. game-ending card in and of itself. But the ability to kind of still be able to set up a Fenrir here, you have Birth for next turn, so it's still a lot for Ben to contend with and try to remove these resources away from, uh, from Sean here uh, just to make sure that he doesn't have a chance to come back on the turn five. Yeah. All right, so Sweet. this is the new Trap Checks monster here, Arachno Kampa, going to be used to immediately link summon into Sarah. And here we're going to try and trigger... Yep, there it is. This was uh, utilized last turn here, going for this similar combo here. And that is, yeah. as you mentioned, a very similar card to Shade Brigadine, allowing you to trigger this... Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah, and this is yeah. Sarah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, so despite this, uh, the Sarah still will activate. And Mermelio yeah. activating the mandatory effect to destroy <laughs> a spell and trap card in the field. And removing that birth is extremely, extremely critical to be able to stop Sean from coming back with any sort of uh, play on the following turn. We mentioned in 2014, Mermelio in action, and now back almost after 10 years. Still again at the top tables. And uh, yeah, but Sarah is the MVP by far. It's such a good. Uh, Link one, and now we see one of uh, again the new ones, uh, the Link Chu uh, Kularia, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Generally, this is what you try and go for on turn two here, so you can actually start mounting an offensive. Trap Trick, of course, a very defensive deck yeah. in the way that it sets up the field to be able to stop the opponent from summoning powerful monsters. And I think uh, now that we've dealt with the Nibiru. Uh, that is a really, really good position for Ben. And his opponent is now just uh, basically dealing with a top deck at this stage. Yeah, this uh, really is an upfield battle. There is another Nibiru, by the way, waiting in the end from Ben. <laughs> so, just in case. But yeah, here we see the flag Flaggate travel. travel. Really good card in a lot of formats, like even on uh, Duel Links, it was uh, dominating uh, World Championships uh, and event. But yeah, congratulations to Ben for winning this game one. It seems like he had uh, a pretty good but unusual opening with no face down trap card on turn one from Trap Tricks, but it was enough. Then Ibiru was the, definitely the MVP. So maybe his decision is paying off. I think going first there, like I mentioned, is extremely important, yeah. you know, being able to set up those trap cards. But, but despite that, he didn't actually have access to too many of those trap cards, did no, he? No, but the thing is that, uh, I mean, the Nibiru was the game changer. Because yeah. uh, you don't really expect people to play Nibiru in the main deck, and then if, if they have it, you just get punished and deal with that. Uh, honestly, I think that the trap Tricks decks, as we mentioned, I think it's very consistent. Because basically, with just a couple of cards, he was able to come back, not only once, but then, you know, put pressure and deal, basically clear the entire yeah. field. And then going to game two, honestly, if I were Sean, I would be scared because basically after what I saw, you have to play around Nibiru. And then basically you could be prepared also against other types of matchups, not against Raptors. So it's not going to be easy, but he has some key tools in his side deck, which uh, we might be saying soon. 
I think this all in judgment could be a solid choice by going first in general, sure. and also the cosmic cyclones are good. And uh, I think of the of them both, I think Ben is more prepared in a sense that uh, he's built his deck. Even if going second, he has three copies of Evil Image, Trini Biro, Trim Permanence, Three Ash Blossom. He has a lot of cards. Yeah. Just on the concept of side decking here, I'm just wondering, you know, when you're in this kind of situation and you've seen the Biro in game mm -hmm. one, and now you sort of ask yourself. Uh, do I take it out now that my opponent has seen my Nibiru? Does the opponent continue to play into it? There's almost that little mind game dynamic going on I there, agree. isn't there? It's, uh, it's interesting. I think it really depends on what kind of deck you're playing. Uh, on the one end, I like it in these kind of trap-heavy decks because uh, usually you're able to deal with uh, just the Arise Art alone. So maybe that's kind of a mind game. It's like your opponent wants to go all out uh, and maybe locks uh, even your spell and trap zone instead of the monster zone. Uh, but then if you're playing free evenly and free Nibiru, you know, maybe even Lava Golems in the side, deck, Sphere mode, whatever, these kind of cards, obviously it's, uh, it's very tricky for your opponent. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me that most of Ben's side deck is for going second. So let's see how it goes. Maybe we could sur even be surprised and Sean uh, makes Ben go first. Well, let's see. However, our players are ready, so let's jump back into game two. So as mentioned here, Sean is going to have the opportunity to choose whether to go first or second. Very likely you want to go first, and <laughs> we can see and, yeah. his opening hand. <laughs> but the Nibiru is back, baby, <laughs> and uh, alongside an impermanent, so... Was that just a pass? Wow! Did he pass? Yeah, oh he just passed. Brutal. Yeah, wow. that's, that's really, really rough. He does have Feather Duster, but yeah, completely bricked. Uh, he has a Ghost Mourner, which could be... Nice to slow things down, but a brick is brutal at this point. Well, I must say that that is obviously not an ideal situation you want to be in. However, Trap Tricks not particularly known for its ability to end the game so fast. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, th I think you're always just going to be scared here that we're going to have a lot of ways to set up. This is a very good mourner on this Sarah, yeah. isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. Mourner, uh, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting option. Uh, we have seen it very popular in Kashtira instead of cards like Veiler, mainly because it's a level 3 tuner, so you can normal summon it to make Baron really easily, and it's a decent card, I agree. I wonder if you <laughs> miss that era and this period of Yu-Gi-Oh where your hand traps were tuners that you could either use as disruption or normal summon to the field and combine for some combo plays. Those were, uh, yeah, those were the days. Especially oh, Goki. So Goki was on top of my mind, I remember. Yeah. Not only because of tuners, but because they were, uh, you know, level 3 for uh, uh, some XYZ plays, so, yeah. Yeah, like Saber Invoker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The boy. All right, uh, a couple of options going second. Sometimes I've seen a couple of Trap Tricks players play Utopia double with double or nothing to be able to <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, deal 8,000 damage when your opponent has a monster on the field with at least, or at the most, 2,000 yeah. attack. Uh, that has been a common strategy of Trap Tricks, but not really something that I think they've been doing post-structure yeah. deck era. He's just attacking, it seems like. Uh, yeah. And uh, might go for Redoer again or some uh, XYZ play, let's see. I think Redoer is particularly powerful when you can combine it with a trap card yeah, as a material here, but I think uh, good old Rafflesia yeah, is sense. extremely good. Rafflesia being able to get any trap card from the deck, I can't yeah. yeah. But what Ben doesn't know is that Sean has the Arpest Feather Duster in yeah. hand. So, so if, if there is a solid top deck, uh, this could change everything. Because uh, I saw there was a Theosis in the end. Yeah, I think he's missing one piece. But no, he drew I think the big, big bang. bang. Yeah. yeah, that's brutal. Oh my. Yeah, still gonna go for the feather duster. This is gonna be a little bit odd without any follow up. I'm hoping there's something that he can do. Yeah. Despite this. Because otherwise we might have a quick one. Because now, as mentioned, you get a plus one, actually a plus two potentially. So. Yeah, so the Trap Tricks Sarah, because a Trap card was activated, as mentioned, she's going to be able to activate and special summon a Trap Tricks monster from the deck. And okay, that's just Mermelio. the Mermelio. And because of the fact that, again, mentioned that the mandatory effect of Mermelio activating to destroy a spell and trap card in the field trick is the secondary effect of Trap Tricks Sarah, which then gets you a new Trap card. Now, the disadvantage, you can't use it on the turn it's set. Yep. So if there's any way for Sean to play here, 
then he should be able to try I'm okay. He didn't oh, throw okay. it to the Fenrir. The Fenrir. But okay. uh, I, yeah, I don't think this, this is, is enough. Here. You yeah. get the floodgate trap wall yep. uh, and uh, yeah. Sean is pretty much stuck at this point. Uh, I mean, as you mentioned, Ben, former national champion, you can really see it. Uh, he's super comfortable with the deck, not even thinking that much. Uh, he knows what he wants to go for. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here it's uh, a piece of cake, I think, to just <laughs> end this uh, duel. A wealth of experience with Ben Sherman, and I suppose it also comes down with the deck building as well, you know, being able to use yeah. those Nibirus in the main deck, deciding that that was the optimal way to build this deck, especially going into not quite a dominant cash tier format, but obviously popular nonetheless. Now he's trying to find a path to game here to be able to close this one out. So, I mean, Floodgate Trap Hole, absolutely incredible card. You may remember this from particularly at the beginning of Master Rule 4 when yeah. you would activate this on a monster in the extra monster zone. That was uh, yeah, that's very a detrimental. Way to shut down everything in Zodiac format. Yeah. Yep. Floodgate Trap will acquired here, should he wow. not be able to end out the game, and yeah, this, this might is be impressive. Yeah. Again, we mentioned it, oh, this is kind of a trap deck, but uh, I don't think Ben likes this definition, you can really see it. Both <laughs> games, he had more monsters than traps, to be fair, and yeah. yeah there you see it, it. The Fist Bomba, and it is burned, who takes it, Chew and oh. What a match and what a convincing show of dominance from uh, from Ben. I mean, uh, not much we can say. As mentioned, uh, this might be a deck that not many people are familiar with. Uh, it was, uh, again, uh, released uh, uh, quite recently from the structure deck, uh, but I think uh, it's convincing. Yeah, I think even despite the fact that he didn't really open all of those like set five typical yeah. standard thing you would expect from a trap deck, he was still able to uh, completely dominate and control that game. No, but I really like that, especially starting things off with the Purika itself and then putting up the yeah. link, the Sarah on the field. It's just uh, puts you so far ahead in the game. And uh, I think it showed us how powerful the deck is and mm -hmm. also how it counters the Kashtira deck, which might be one of the top uh, pick deck of the of this weekend. So maybe, maybe we'll see. I mean, there are a few trap decks, and uh, we mentioned how uh, some plenty of times Alberto is a fan in general of trap decks. Uh, except when he has to name them uh, for a quid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what do you think in general of uh, this kind of strategy? Are you a fan? Are you more of the combo-oriented player, if those even exist, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, milling and special summoning is obviously going to be uh, <laughs> something a little bit more enjoyable that I partake in, I think. But I think the most important and critical thing here with the Trap Tricks deck is that Rise Heart is such a polarizing monster yeah. in this format. And the sort of ba banish continuous macrocosmos mm -hmm. effect, not that relevant against Trap Tricks, is no. it? No, in indeed. I mean, uh, also, we saw only one time the Rise Heart being summoned and then, you know, the Nibiru was there. Yep. Uh, but I think what the deck really does is uh, having all these trap cards in your deck to stop uh, one single play of your opponent because, of course, Kashtira relies on, you know, having the monsters on the field. So uh, the, the, all these trap tricks effects, I mean, in the end paid off. And uh, I mean, still, this is the third round, a lot of rounds to go yet. And uh, I like Ben's approach, though, of the deck. I mean, if he goes second, he has a lot of options. And mm -hmm. as we saw, uh, I think, in my opinion, the deck is built to go second in general, also by looking at his side deck. I think he can do well, especially also against other type of matchups. So definitely could be interesting. I think it, it kind of reminds me of when uh, you know YCS Las Vegas uh, Labyrinth was showing really well and he reached the finals. Uh, but it's a trap deck where monsters are good, but monsters alone are not enough to win. And so you could see in the past weeks throughout uh, you know regionals and other events where people started to play cards like Feather Duster. And maybe this is where Ben, you know, stepped in up a notch uh, and now he plays a deck where you do have traps, but you have also cards like Rafflesia, which don't really care about your Feather Dusters. So let's see, though, because uh, thank you guys for being with us for round three. This was a pleasure to enjoy, but before we head out, we want to hear it from the winner, Ben, uh, alongside Ed. Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Ben Sherman, who's just won that with his Trap Tricks deck, our round three feature match, the fist there. So like we said in the intro, you're the 2014 UK national champion, and here you are, almost 10 years later, working your way through YCS London. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling okay, just trying it out. So every deck's really weird right now. There's no clear best deck, so just play what you find fun. 
Absolutely. So obviously you were up against Kashtira, which is quite a dominant and slightly feared deck by some people. No, not at all. God, you just handled that with confidence. So we're going to go through some of these matches, but obviously you just you just shook your head at me there, which means you're not too worried about it. Were you actually pretty confident the second you realized it was Kashtira? Uh, yeah, so I played Kashtira up until a couple of weeks ago, so I knew like the ins and outs of the deck. Uh, so I knew what it did, and I know it has a quite a hard match against Trap Tricks, specifically just because of Floodgate Trap Hole. So which did come up actually at one point in game two. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go through game one. So obviously there was the Arise Heart on field, but because of a couple of things that came out in five summons, which means you had the Nibiru straight away. I was wondering why, why Sean didn't trigger the Arise Heart before Nibiru hit the field, because there was, a, there was an interaction that could have happened there. But either way, you managed to clear the field and you took that game one because he just couldn't do anything. So at that point, you've already said that you've been playing Kashtira, so you know how it works. Were you feeling pretty confident? Oh yeah, definitely. So um, I decided on playing Nibiru. It's a bit of a meta call because the scenario is weird. The game people make rise out and force summons usually, but playing into a board, you can just usually end on Sarah and Redoer. Redoer gets rid of itself; it comes back. Sarah, you can bring with the traps. You end on the same board, but clear all their board. So they're forced to play through. But yeah, once the Nibiru comes down and I get to play, then um, once I'm established, I'm fine. Excellent. And then we got into game two. So. I mean, you started with a Nibiru in hand, so if that same interaction happened with the summaries and instead of four, it was five summons, you were already ready. By the looks of it, Sean bricked straight away, so slightly difficult start for him. There was that Harpy's Feather Duster on your back row, but you had the, now I never know how to say it, is it Hol Hol U T A? How do you say it? Uh, I say Holotea. I might, I might be wrong, I don't know. It's just, I just read it. So yeah, the Duster was strong. Um, I could have searched a Ratna Camper. Uh, to protect from Duster, but I wasn't really worried too much about it because I only lose effectively one card. Uh, and then I can carry on playing, and like you say, it didn't happen too well, so... And then, yeah, I mean, that really helped you just build quite a dominant defensive field already. And then, as you mentioned earlier, the Floodgate Trap Hole, which instantly faced down that Fenrir, so you were putting an instant stop to everything that was going to happen, couldn't go into the combo, and you just you just took it there. So, you feeling you feeling pretty confident now at this point? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the deck has a lot of versatility and can deal with a lot of different things. As you saw there with the Puddicker interaction, I can just clear things and then you can do saucy stuff with Alamaris, bring it back and just, it's a bit cheeky stealing that stuff. <laughs> Anything you're worried about going up against in the upcoming Swiss rounds? Uh, Labyrinth is actually kind of hard because it can search Eradicator, which if they just go first and search Eradicator, it's like, <laughs> sure, I'm a trap deck. <laughs> Well, let's hope you don't go up against that before you get to that top cut, but who knows, anything could happen in this. Congratulations again, our 2014 UK national champion working through that third round here at YCS London. Don't go anywhere, because in just a moment, we're going to be back with a quiz while we wait for round four. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. It's quiz time. So obviously that was quite a quick feature match, which means there's still time on the round. And then obviously if there's any judge calls, we may have extra time for some of these rounds that are taking part, which means it might be a little bit of a wait before round four. So in the meantime, quiz time. And then we're going to be showing you a speed duel tournament. What better way of filling your time than bringing you even more exciting Yu-Gi-Oh content? So gentlemen, you saw our UK duo battle it out with Nadir taking it. Right? They were really good. Are you feeling confident? So I'm up against the quiz master himself, Mr. Leonard Koenig, so I will try my best. I was really bad at the last quiz, so I think that maybe this is the day for Sebastian to beat me. 
Very possibly. I've also just realized that you're so tall that the top of your head is slightly coming off the screen. That's just, that's just how short I feel next to you guys. There we go. Yeah, you'll just have to, have to squat, squat down a little bit. Or, tell you what, we'll move back a little bit just to see if that fits you in a little bit. There we go. See? You are smart. See? I know how cameras work. Ha. Okay, so you guys know how the quick fire quiz works. It's going to be a sort of back and forth tennis game. We're going to see if one of you guys can get a point off by getting it right and the other person not getting it. So, with that in mind, let's do a bit of rock, paper, scissors to see which one of you wants to go first. Okay, ready? There was ferocity in that game of rock, paper, scissors. That was one of the most exciting things I've seen all day. Okay, right. So we've done some of these before, but let's see how well you guys managed to do some of the same questions that our previous group heard. So, name a past European or Oceanic YCS winning deck. Salomon Great. What again? Sorry, I didn't understand. Salomon Great. Um, Tillemans. YCS winning, right? Oh, Tillemans was good. Sky Striker. A couple, yeah. Uh, Burning Abyss. Prank Kids. Necros. Shadol. Kashira. Okay. The free between the legs. Oh, no, it's, it's European. Yeah, European. Oh, I, I said an American vice, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to have to give that point then straight away to Leo. We can't, we've got to be cutthroat here. That's how we're going to have to deal with this quiz. But also for our adjudicators, we have our wonderful commentators who I can hear in my ears and they can hear me in theirs. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Congratulations on your commentary in that last game. It was some thrilling stuff. So we move on to another question. So obviously we'll be starting with you this time. Name a card that appears on the 250th YCS participation game mat. These are all prize cards. Utopia Kaiser. Minerva the Exalted Lights one. Gold Sacrifog. Blood Mephist. Crush Card Virus. Wait, Diablos is the mind hacker number 89. Dark Lord Superbia. Dark Lord Desire. Dark Lord Adari. <laughs> uh, Kaiser Dragon? What? I don't think that was in there, so we, we can't give you that. There was another verse another dragon, though. Game. Another verse dragon was one of the prize cards we've seen fairly draw. recently. Yeah, there's, there's lots of them. I These guys them. knew it. So that's one apiece. Excellent stuff. So let's move on. This is a slightly easier one, but it'll get harder as the rally goes back and forth. So I just gave that to you, so this is your one, right? So. Name a European or Oceanic city that has hosted a YCS event. Go. Utrecht. Lyon. London. Dortmund. Melbourne. Düsseldorf. Toulouse. Barcelona. What did you say? Barcelona. Brussels. Madrid. Why is this hard for me? <laughs> Prague. Prague, good. Um, Ghent. Rimini. Milan. Uh, <laughs> Sydney? <laughs> that good one, yeah. <laughs> that was mine as well. Um, um, time, that's time. Okay, so I'm going to give that one to you. So that's two points to you, one point to you. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Now, this one, this one was quite a back and forth with our last pair. Name a rank seven XCs monster. Draco Sack. Diablos is the mind hacker. <laughs> um, Kashira Shangri-Ura. Kashira Iceheart. Dark armed the inhalation ring. Big eye. Um, it's getting tight. Uh, red. Red Flare Dragon. Master of Blades. Yeah. <laughs> we have some more in stock. Let me just quickly grab one up on top of my hat. Three, two, one. That's another point for Leo. Okay. So that means three, one. We're going to do first two, five. That's how we're going to do this. So. This one was quite difficult, but we'll see if people can get it. Name a spell card that appears 
in Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. We might have to have the list ready from our, our coverage team who are going to be standing by. So can you name any of these? The spell cards that appear in Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Go. Monster Reborn. Rageki. Heart of Greed. Dark Hole. Dark Hole? It's Dark Hole and... Okay. Uh, then I'm going to say... Uh, the burning, no, that's not a normal spell. Normal spell card? Yeah. Burning land? No. I feel that's going to have to be a no there, which means you get a point there. So that's two to you, three to you, which means we move on to our next question, which will be... Tell you what, I threw a couple of these out, and I like I liked this one because it's a, it's a difficult back and forth. So let's see how you do. Name a card with pot in its name. Pot of greed. Pot of prosperity. Pot of duality. Pot of desires. Pot of um, equipedness. <laughs> Pot of Everest. Oh, that's a good one. Um, spirits. No. No, it was another one. Time. So that's going to go to you. That's your fourth point. Four, I two. Had you had another one. What was your other one? Generosity. Ah, uh, part yeah, of generosity. See, Tom sees this opportunity to go, well, we have the pot collection, of course, which you guys can buy now. So quite a difficult one, but still fun. Always interesting to see who's going to get that one. So let's see. Now, we did one which was quite interesting, but I'm going to see. I might throw out a different question for this. Oh, 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 so many choices. OK, name a counter trap card. Go. Solemn Judgment. Red Reboot. Seven tools of the bandit. Wow. Solemn warning. Are we? Uh, OK, solemn strike then. Solemn scolding. Oh. <laughs> uh, counter counter. Did you say wiretap earlier? Wiretap. Oh, good one. <laughs> um, Solomon Great Raw. Wow. True. Um, uh, Tillman's Crime. Infernity Barrier. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of counter traps still. Is there a dino counter trap somehow? <laughs> no. Time. Okay, so that means, Leo, you've won the quick fire quiz between our German commentators. Commiserations, Basti. You are usually also good at these. I'm sure there'll be another quiz later on this weekend that you'll dominate. But Leo, congrats to you. Guys, don't go anywhere. We've got even more quiz action. But before that, we've got a speed duel tournament for you. Welcome back to your coverage here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, live from London. So between some of the feature match rounds of our main event, we've got a little bit of extra content for you. Between us here in the coverage team, we're going to play some of the alternative formats that you're going to see throughout this weekend through the public events amongst ourselves. So first up, we've got one of two speed duel tournaments that we're going to be having amongst ourselves. We can see that we've got Leo and Basti here ready to go. So gentlemen, why do we get started? Why do we roll a dice to see which one of you is going to be going first. We'll do a high roll. How many dice are you picking up? Three, three whole dice, four whole dice? Goodness me. You're going to make this really difficult on my instant math skills. Twelve. Okay, good. Thank you for helping me there. Okay, and what's Basti got? That is less than 12. Okay, so Leo, are you going to be going first or second? You're going to go first. Leo's going to go first. I'm going to hand you guys over to Marcello, Tom, and Alberto, who are going to be your trio of commentators for our first round of the coverage Speed Duel Tournament. There was a bit of disrespect there, but I'm going to throw over to you guys now. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Ed, and hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we are delighted to have Tom with us uh, as we will uh, go back in with the memory with a few years ago, and uh, we'll get the chance to... From the 200th yeah? twice, yes, was Absolutely. my first one. Absolutely, and it's a great way to, to do it again here. And uh, as Ed mentioned, uh, in YCS Lyon, we started this tradition. We were already playing in the past events some of these commentators' matches, but Speed Duel was introduced for us uh, at the last event. And what a best way to do it than to pretty much celebrate the release uh, yesterday. So uh, March 30 of Speed Duel GX, uh, Duelist of Shadows. So we will be playing with those eight decks each of us uh, were randomly assigned two of these decks and once again we had to randomly pick one of them for this tournament but 
we will get to see all of it in action because we will have later on another tournament of speed duel. But for now, we're starting with Germany against Germany. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think Germany's going to win. Yeah, that's my prediction. Yeah, last time I think we had a couple of tough matches. I was uh, very close, but uh, we will see. We'll see. The guy seems prepared, though, so we have to Absolutely. keep an eye on it. And as, as I mentioned, uh, I think the match is quite heated. Uh, yeah. they, they don't want to lose. Uh, they really care about uh, making it to the finals. We saw Sebastian just refuse a fist bump from there. <laughs> yeah. there. I'm not sure what, uh, what that was about. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we, we have seen these guys uh, really gave out their best uh, to win. But as we could see already, the skills are uh, revealed. So let's see what the decks will be. And again, as a reminder, you guys, can play with these decks that were just released. Our duelists are ready. Let's find out who will advance to the finals. And here they are, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, some sportsmanship. Uh, it wouldn't come out. <laughs> So it's gonna be Shadow Rider Kamula against the Shadow Rider Night Shroud. Who do you think is favorite, Tom? <laughs> oh, I like dragons, so I'm gonna say the Night Shroud. I agree, I agree, I agree. But Leo was very, very fond of getting the zombie deck. Absolutely, I think uh, Leo got some of the best decks among the eight. But here we see a strong start with uh, one of the cards that has been played in a lot of different formats. Uh, we see it as well in the 2010 format. So, yeah, it's, solid start. It's interesting to see as, as me who's yeah. not played this format a lot. It's just you got to get used to somebody setting two before attacking. Yeah, it exactly. Very strange. <laughs> no main fist two. Gotta <laughs> keep that in mind. And 1800 is always a solid attack in this kind of format. So I, I've seen that the point of Leo's deck is to kind of turbo out a vampire Genesis, which has got 3,000 attack, yep. which, is, which is quite a lot. Um, and so his skill lets you turn any vampire monster into the vampire lord, which then you can tribute mm -hmm. for a vampire Genesis. Absolutely. And the vampire familiar, which I think is in play now, lets you search the vampire Genesis. So that's all you need. Exactly what Leo is doing right now. So. We gotta say, I think Sebastian this time wants, uh, let's say, <laughs> to revenge last time because he was annihilated by Leo. <laughs> oh, oh dear. He's, yeah. he's gonna need a lot of revenge. Yeah. And here we see this vampire retainer coming into play. And what a combo. Wow. Wow. Yeah. There looks like there's quite a lot going on here. Absolutely. Already managing uh, to put up a pretty annoying monster. That's a quite an old card. Well, it's new now, but it was it was yeah. released a very long time ago. Absolutely. I, I was old enough to remember that card being released as the new sort of vampire lord. Mm -hmm. I think it comes back the standby phase after it's destroyed by battle. Yeah. Ooh, and we see a cosmic cyclone. Definitely Ooh. good, but costly when you only have four thousand life points. Yeah, it's worth. I I kind of saw the deck and I thought, wow, that's a cosmic cyclone. That's great. But then I was like, maybe in this format you'd just yeah. rather a good old mystical space typhoon. <laughs> And here I can see a Luster Dragon in the yeah. end from Sebastian, but he doesn't really seem happy. Uh, no ways to deal with this vampire. Ooh, also Book of wow. Life from Leo. Wow. And here <laughs> see ah, it stops the graveyard effect of yeah. Red Eyes Wyvern. Yeah. Would have let him banish yeah. it and yeah. summon a big dragon from his hand. And but now he's going to pay again to add uh, a Vampire Speller Trap with the Retainer. So much advantage, and yeah, and this deck, this deck looks already scary. No to way, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Ah, I thought he was gonna overlay for, <laughs> for a rank two there, but no. <laughs> probably not. That would be a little unfair. The gachi gachi game Yeah, I was something. thinking of gachi gachi <laughs> as well. Like, yeah, same. The oldest XYZ monster, the exactly. oldest rank two, and here we go. No mirror forts from Seb and Totem Dragon is actually destroyed, <laughs> oh, and that's, that's it. That's the game. That's it. As quick as that. Well, it is called Speed Jewel. True, indeed. Then no yeah. revenge uh, from uh, Seb, uh, who is defeated once again by his <laughs> German <laughs> body. And uh, Leo is in the finals. Leo so. is in the finals, and he's going to play the winner of you guys.
Absolutely. Uh, it's gonna be tough. Uh, last time I was destroyed. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm more scared of myself than Alberto. But let's see if uh, <laughs> absolutely we will uh, we will give justice to these uh, GX decks. Uh, and uh, as you could see, this is uh, an incredible, fun way to play Yu-Gi-Oh. And uh, you can all do it at home. Uh, it's uh, it's really fun, I think, to just play around with these decks. Uh, just have a couple, or even have uh, eight people party at your home and yeah, your no, little tournament. Yeah, this is a great way just for eight yeah. people to get together. Also, a lot of my friends were very excited about some of the yeah. cards being reprinted in the set as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Totem Dragon is a card that's um, yeah, being played a lot in some of the Time Wizard formats, and yeah. there was only one. It was only available in its exactly. original printing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely a great way for the game, and uh, I'm not sure if we will go back to the winner f just for a quick chat. Uh, so, in the meantime, uh, I think as Tom mentioned, uh, the next match on the line is the one between me and Alberto to find out uh, who will advance and face Leo in the final. So, thank you for being with us. Stay tuned, and we will be back soon with the next match. Another game world?
Tokyo Photon Hypernova, Chaos Monsters, Castira, Gold Pride. More cards for Fallen of Albaz and Dogmatica, plus many more with brand new Photon and Galaxy cards to make your deck out of this world. 100 cards in all, Photon Hypernova. Nine cards per pack, each pack sold separately. Welcome back, guys. My name is Ed Templer. Now, obviously, Ed is on kind of a break, but I have found someone, a really well-known player by now, the finalist of the YCS Lyon, and we're going to have like a quick mid-tournament interview. So, Anthony, what is your score? 3-0 uh, right now. Of course he is 3-0 again. And I just want to ask you a question. This is an open-wide format. How did you prepare for the tournament? Uh, it was really hard. I tried every option. And then we went back to the initial option, so it was it was hard. It was trial and error and finding something that works. I'm not still sure if it works, but it's going fine right now. So, Let's see. so obviously you play tested with a lot of your friends. Uh, is there any particular player in the tournament that you really don't want to face? Because obviously, I would like to ask you about your deck, but of course we don't want you to, to reveal it here. Um, is, is there any player who you are particularly afraid of? Uh, probably the guys from my team, Kong and Joe. Uh, they're a really good player and their deck is really good against mine, so I hope I don't uh, face them. Yeah, especially Kang. It's <laughs> he is actually he was playing this round versus Jonas Koschel, so uh, two German friends who are high-level players facing off already in round three. So that could have also been a really cool potential featured match. Would you be excited to play another featured match somewhere in the tournament? In the finals, of course. <laughs> so you think you're going to make it back-to-back -back finals? Maybe win this time? Uh, I'm not that confident as last time, but. If I'm in the top cut, I could make a feature match, yeah. If, if I'm taken, of course. <laughs> well, well, if you're taken, I mean, you're kind of a candidate now, especially after this interview. So let's talk a little bit about your YCS Lyon experience, because this is kind of unique, right? Reaching the final of a YCS with so many players. Uh, how was the experience for you? I mean, can you elaborate on that? It was really nice. It was a really good feeling. There, were, there was a lot of preparation to win in the mirror match in tier elements. Tier elements was a really good deck, RIP. And the tournament went as uh, planned. I didn't plan to lose that much against Kashtira in the tournament, but it went well in the end, because in top cut, when I play against Kashtira, I finally drew the out, which is uh, what Yu-Gi-Oh is about right now, apparently. And in the finals, I was in the finals, so it was already good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you, you don't reach the finals every day, right? Have you had any Top Cuts experience uh, before that? Uh, I had uh, two Top Cuts, one in 2019, YCS Utrecht with Spiral, and YCS Dortmund with Tier Elements again, top 32, I think. So you're quite the Tier Elements player. Um, is there any other deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that you really love to play? I mean, you top with Spiral. Uh, is that maybe your favorite deck? Uh, I think my favorite deck is still Sky Strikers. I won the Belgian National Championship with it, and it's really a cool deck. It really rewarded the player, and I really like those kind of decks. Well, so when I met you first at a regional tournament, which was someone in 2017 or 18, I was playing Zodiac, and what deck did you play then? I played Chainburn. Do you have a special relationship to Chainburn? Because this is, it's a polarizing deck, I want to say. It was a good meta call back then for Zodiac. 
Zuzia couldn't have a lot of uh, back rate and wasn't sided that much because Chamber was that popular. And I won pretty easily, I think. So maybe we will have to have a time with a rematch sometimes because honestly, I really didn't perform well at this regional. It was like 20 players and I went 3-3 or something like that. So uh, yeah, I, I will have to have the revenge at some point. But anyway, thank you so much for the interview. A little, we're trying to mix it up a little, have some, some mid-round interviews if the players are done already. I hope that you liked it. And we're going to go into another quick break and don't go anywhere because we are going to be back soon. Welcome back to the coverage of the 250th YCS here in London. And Leonard, Hi. I think it's time to talk about the meta game a little bit. Well, let's have a little bit of an overview, a little bit of a breakdown. Let's check out what are the different decks right now, because honestly, there are quite many decks that are really viable right now in the moment. Yeah, starting off, we have Kashira, a deck that we have seen in the previous European YCS, Lyon, yes. as well in the top For four. Sure. Yeah. Strong deck, really strong deck. I think the top Super. contender. I would say so too. I expect this deck to be the most represented here over the weekend. I know a lot of top players are actually on it. It has been pretty successful in uh, Peru, for example. Oh no, it was Lima, but in the yeah, South American. You have ICS. been successful with it. I, I also won a regional with it, not gonna flex, but yeah, that's a really good deck for sure. And a lot of players are going to use it this weekend indeed. But there are many more contenders. And honestly, one of them wasn't really one to be expected because at the beginning of the format, not a lot of players were on that sprite deck. But... I was on it. <laughs> you were on it, and a couple of other people were as well. And it's starting to add up. A lot of people are actually yeah. having success at regionals with sprite at the moment, but not with any kind of sprite deck. There's that little bit of extra sparkle that is being added on right now. We are playing the Melfi's in Sprite right yes. now, and it is a little bit of a small engine. Yeah. We have two main deck monsters and two extra deck monsters for the most part. Sure. But those cards are crazy. Oh, Just yeah. like Melfi of the Forest, take two level two monsters of any kind, easy peasy in Sprite. search out Catty, and Catty is absolutely insane. Yeah. Special summons itself out in the end phase, and then searches a Pinny in the next turn, quick synchro summon. Everything. It's this amazing. card is so good, gives you access to Herald of the Arclight or to Mary Melfi's, which yeah. is a bounce on the opposing turn. Y you could tell that you love the Sprite deck. You're I a really big fan. So I think it could as well be your pick for the event, right? You're really hyped about the deck. I can definitely see it coming into the finals or at least deep in the top cut for sure. And then also there are two other variants of the Sprite deck, which are a little bit less popular, but also still very strong. Uh, first up, there's the Live Twin Evil Sprite version, yeah. which is also really good. Sometime, sometimes it's even being paired with the uh, Runic engine as well, yeah. throwing more and more engines into the deck. And also, let's not disregard the winner of the South American YCS we had, because Adventure Sprite also still is a thing, and they won a YCS recently, so we might as well see this deck taking it all down this weekend. Yeah, Adventure Engine has some ups and downs, of yeah. course. Sometimes you can you can brick a little bit, you can draw cards that you really want to search out of your deck, yeah. so the draws are not that good sometimes, but if you just start right of Aramisia, it's absolutely massive. It is really, really good. You know what is really amazing to start with as well? Mothmech Circular, because this is also a deck that is coming back into the meta game a lot currently. Um, in the Ishizu Tillman's format we had, it wasn't that popular because they were uh, Mudora, Keldo, really uh, making that deck struggle. But now, yeah. Mothmech is really on steam. Yeah. We have seen winning Mothmech decks at regionals back and forth over all Europe. And therefore, this deck, for me personally, is a really hot contender this weekend. Bestials are kind of strong against yeah. it as well. You can chain them to Super Factorial, which is really strong. You can also try to stop the combo by chaining it, them onto a Sigma. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend that if there's one more extender, then true, basically true. the entire combo still works. But Bestials I mean, are also, also not that popular at the moment. Yeah. So it's really good times for Mothmech yeah. overall. And uh, Honestly, it's even more represented than another deck that a lot of people expect to be super, super good in this format. But Branded still is a top yeah. contender, but it will be interesting to see how this deck is performing this weekend. I know you talked to a really passionate Branded player early on, 
And what do you think? Is Brandit like the deck that can all uh, can take it down all this weekend here? If you have a good day with Brandit, it is the absolute best deck in yeah. the format. The deck has one issue, and that is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, which is everywhere. Yeah, that is the problem because sometimes when your deck has one issue card, then you might meet it in the side deck of another player. Yeah. But having a card in every main deck that it's tough. might shut down your entire turn just by its own, that's a really tough choice. We'll be interested to see how the branded players are going to do yeah. this weekend. I can tell you there are still plenty of branded players. I mean, we have plenty of players overall, so still a lot of branded players as well. Next up, very contrarian, we actually have multiple trap-based strategies in yep. this format as well. And both of them are really good, and I can definitely see both of them top this weekend as well. Uh, let's start off with Labyrinth. Labyrinth is really powerful. You can run multiple floodgates if you want to. You have so many interactions. You have a decent going second. Yeah. And also you can just run evenly in the main deck. And what's even stronger, it's Ra's Fear Mode. The oh, card yeah. is absolutely super powerful. It breaks basically every bot if you don't play around it. Because yeah. players will probably try to just end on Arise Heart, which is not the best bot after all. It can take apart an entire sprite bot easily. Yeah. And it's really hard to recover from that. So the deck is really strong. Also, if it starts, it's... Yeah, it's crazy. It, honestly, like going second when no deck is really putting out negates, it's just super good to yeah. set five because yeah. you are going to break the opponent's board with all of your trap cards very easily. So I think that is definitely a contender. And the other deck that is really starting to get popular with these of the uh, structure deck is Trap Tricks. Trap Tricks basically is a deck where you can buy three, three structure decks of the Trap Tricks deck, and then you have a Meta deck right away, which is really yeah. cool. I see Chaptrix having success as we get to. And this is a really nice control combo ish yeah. deck. You have your one it's or two mixture, card combos. Right? Yeah, it's, it's really nice. You can extend the combos really well, which I like as well. And of course, you can also splash into some engines like the Therions that won the German National Championship sure. easily with the new Sargus card that came out. An X ray sure. monster that just searches your Lily Borea or the Disc Colosseum. And it's, it's just really hard to beat this deck when it goes first. For sure. But I think one last thing we have to talk about is the Runic engine. Because honestly, yeah. we can't have a meta discussion without talking about maybe even the arguably strongest engine we have in the game right now. And the Runic engine really made its comeback as well after uh, Keldor and Mordora being gone. Because those cards were a problem for the deck, but now this deck is just, or like the engine in so many different kind of decks is really thriving. What kind of decks do we have that are using the Runic engine right now? We have we have the Sprite deck, which isn't that popular anymore. Sure. We are having Naturia, which has become oh, yeah. more and more Absolutely. popular. It has really nice combos. The Sacred Tree is such a good card together with Camellia. We have For Hire and we have oh. Plunder Patrol, which has also increased in popularity. Yeah. So sure. Runic, we will see a lot of those in the top card. I'm pretty sure, sure about that. I like the engine a lot. I think it is maybe Draw three. the best engine we have right now. Draw three. It definitely is going to uh, be very popular in our featured match, and I'm looking forward to that already. Um, but I have a last question for you. We talked about Please. all the most popular decks. What is your pick to win the event? To win the event, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, I'm going to stay loyal. I'm going to go with Sprites. And you? I have to say, Kashtira was the deck I piloted for quite a while now, so I'm going with Kashtira all the way. So I have one last question for you as well, because we have been talking about the different decks that shape the metas. But what is the non-engine card? that will be the card of the tournament. If you ask me that, I gotta go with evenly matched. This yeah. just feels like such a blowout card all around at the moment. Whenever you're resolving evenly matched, basically, basically against whatever deck you're playing, it's probably going to be a pretty good situation for you. Well, that's a big upside of the sprite strategy because with Carrot you have a pretty good answer for that. But let's, let's not play favorites here. We are going to see how this tournament will turn out in the end. And we're going back to the next featured match. Stay tuned.
Millennium Necklace has seen the future of dueling. With ancient Tomb Keeper cards to block your opponent's graveyard while testing your own powers of prediction. New hieroglyphic versions of your favorite cards and six different designs of sleeves to keep your cards safe. Your Yu-Gi-Oh! future awaits you in Magnificent Mavens. 20 cards and 70 sleeves per box. Each box sold separately. Okay, okay, so what I'm going to need you to do, as I explain to our oh, others, yeah. <laughs> is I'm going to need you guys buzz to just say noise. buzz whenever buzz. you whenever you're done. Okay, buzz. So we're going to start with. Tell you what, do you guys want labyrinth lore, trick or trap tricks, hall of prize cards, normal navigation, or legendary collection recollection? Trick or trap tricks. Trick I, I or like trap that. tricks? Yeah. Those sound like things I might. Okay, know. Yeah. so I'm going to need you to buzz in whenever buzz. you can, and buzz. we'll see exactly what happens with this. Okay. So here are your questions, gentlemen. First question <laughs> is this is a card with 2,200 attack and is an XCs card. Remember to buzz in, and you have to tell me if it's a Trap Tricks card buzz. or a Ghost Trap. Okay. Marcello? Trap Tricks. <laughs> Correct. Can you tell me the card? <laughs> that wasn't that part was of the question. question. It wasn't, but I'm wondering <laughs> if you could tell me. Hello, 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 fe. Hello, Mesha. Hello, Maris. So, yeah, you, you were pretty on there. Okay, so well, that's one point to Marcello. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it up on the database there, Marcello? I got Marcello. <laughs> there appears to be a picture of it on the screen. Sorry, because we, we featured Trap Tricks in the last uh, round. I see, that's just coincidental. Coincidental. I can't believe this fr like, absolutely flagrant disregard for the rules. <laughs> I'm at I'm one also seeing movement, yeah, which I believe <laughs> means we're going to have our thing very soon. So let's get through this category what, and see who wins. Watch his hands, okay? Okay, if don't worry, move, he's going to have his hands, hands up. up. Yeah, so guys, your next question, remember to buzz in. It's a zero attack link monster. Is it ghost trick or trap tricks? Buzz. Go on, Alberto. Ghost trick. Correct. <laughs> now, can you tell me the card at all? Um. Hmm. That's a no. It's probably a no. Can I get a, a 0. 0.5? <laughs> Don't worry, there's no extra, there's no oh, extra there's points. No extra points. Okay. I'll tell you what, uh, actually, no, there will be extra points, which means you technically, well, you cheated. So do we give Marcello that first? Oh, 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 he's, he he's on minus one, I think. Nah, well, I didn't. We'll give you the one point. And then, so if Alberto. If I cheated, I knew I would do the name. <laughs> True. I didn't know the name. So, yeah. Alberto, you got one point. Can you get what the, the Ghost Trick card is? I can't remember the name. No, it was no. Ghost Trick Festival. So that's one point to our Italians. Tom, you're slightly lagging behind here. Let's see if we can get it to you before we get into our round four. Okay. Are there more trap cards with ghost trick or trap tricks in their name? Buzz. Marcello. Ghost trick. That is correct. There's no bonus point for this one. I, because was, I know it was tricky. There it we go. It was tricky, but obviously all of the trap tricks traps are trap holes and they don't have trap tricks in the name, but if I didn't know if If it was that obvious, were... you would have bounced. I didn't know if there <laughs> are any trap trick, like any um, I like, ghost trick traps. I like a lot of the smack talk that happens during these I'm not saying it's rounds. easy. I was just saying that was what I was thinking. Is that what you thought Did as well? Did they cheat again? Uh, no, no, you didn't I, cheat I, this no. time. Well, you still have a trap trick card in front <laughs> of you. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay, let's, let's get on to the next question so that we can get into our feature round, guys. So, this is a link two. That's all the information That's I'm giving it. you. That's it. Is okay. it a trap trick or a ghost Buzz trick? Trap trick. Yeah. Correct. 
Can, can you tell me the name for an extra point? I de definitely can't, but I know there is a link to for Trap Tricks. It's Trap Tricks <laughs> Cularia. So that means you have one point each Yay. and Marcello has two points. So it kind of comes down to this. Okay. Are we ready? Are there more XE's monsters with Oof. Ghost Trick or Trap Tricks in their Oof. name? <sighs> Buzz. Tom? Trap Tricks. Is incorrect. Oh. Buzz. Okay, Marcello. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, Marcello what? absolutely takes that round there because of, well, basically, by default. But congratulations, Marcello. <laughs> Commiserations to the others. We will come back with even more quizzing very, very soon. But obviously, now we're about to get into our round four feature match. So don't go anywhere because that match is coming right up.
for Yu-Gi-Oh! Rise and shine, Ruby. Looks like we got some work to do. Crystal Beasts are back and ready to rack up some wins with their new advanced Crystal Beast forms. You can score cool new cards and add some precious gems to your collection with this all-foil set. Yu-Gi-Oh! Battles of Legend, Crystal Revenge. Five cards per pack, each pack sold separately. Welcome back, Duelists. We're here with our round four feature match here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live in London. So for our round four feature match, we have Jessica Robinson versus Jovan Do Rosario. This is going to be an exciting duel. So guys, if we want to do a high roll just to see who is going to be going first. That's a five for Jessica. And that's a three for Jovan. So Jessica, are you going to go first? You're going to go first. Okay, Jessica's going to be going first. I'm going to hand you guys over to Alberto, Marcello, and also Nadir, who are going to be your commentary trio for this round four feature match. Guys, take it away. Thank you, guys, and welcome to round four of YCS London 2023. We had an incredible match to start things off for at least our team of commentators last round, and we are in for a treat in this round, too. So, obviously, the highlight of the weekend is that this is the 250 YCS, and we went through, as you will see later on in one of the videos, me and Alberto covered the beautiful entry playmat that was given, which covers pretty much all the dates of the previous YCSs, as well as the YCS's prize cards. But I gotta say, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not just about YCS's. There are a lot of different tournaments just as important and beautiful, and one of them must be the European Championship. And why am I doing this intro? Because we witnessed last year a beautiful story, one of the best we have seen at the European Championship, where Marcus Patel was crowned UK and then European champion. He won with his deck, Rika, going undefeated. And just 
Jessica was one of the friends that definitely helped out uh, already with this process. Uh, they played it in three people and together and they were doing really well. And well, Jessica once again playing today the Rika deck uh, and undefeated. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible achievement that Marcus Patel achieved by winning the European yep. Championship. And he credits a lot of that success to Jessica's absolutely. deck building. Yeah, she really contributed so much with the Rika strategy. Yeah, I think this is one of the main reasons why when you play such a deck and your opponent don't really know how to interrupt you, honestly, this can put you really far ahead into the tournament and then paid off incredibly. And uh, she's performing well today. So I think that the deck is super consistent as well, very explosive deck and uh, has a lot of powerful resources. So I think in this format, he's uh, very, yeah. very powerful. And sometimes players do lot learn from their mistake. One of the key reasons why Marcus won the European Championship was because most duelists didn't know what the Rika that did. And I want to bet that they still haven't read the cards that well. We'll find out anyway. She's going to be up against uh, Jovan, uh, and uh, it's going to be an upfield battle. Let's see if he will be surprised once the Rika strategy is revealed. Regardless, our our players are ready, let's find out who will be the winner of round four. Alberto, you mentioned the explosivity and power of the plant deck, the Rikas, as well as the Sun Avalon cards combining together. Now, the amazing thing is, if you told anyone 15 years ago, a singular normal monster could create such a powerful end field, I wouldn't believe it. Yeah, I and mean, there it is. <laughs> low Kai. Yeah. All right, so I think I'm fairly familiar with this combo. This did actually just recently release in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, and I've been having a lot of fun with that. So, uh, yeah, this is your first Link monster that gets you your Sunvine Sewing. Yep. And from there, well, you have an incredible way to get to a lot of those Rika uh, engines and, and the uh, disruption as well with the, uh, the field spell, which is actually very similar in some ways to Lair of Darkness, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is definitely the key card to the success, especially because it allows the deck to perform very well, even going second, to just get rid of the already established uh, board field. And we can see that in the deck list, there is actually quite a few changes from uh, what they played at the European Championship, because uh, we see the Ethereum package, which wasn't there. Yeah. I think this gives uh, a lot of consistency as well, especially because this deck relies on XYZ monsters as well. I mean, we have seen uh, how powerful the Sacred Three Beasts and the Teardrop the Rika Queen are. And uh, here, if Jovan, was, uh, oh, I think he's playing uh, maybe just in, in permanence. No, he's, he's, not, he's not playing any interruptions in his deck. Wow. So we will see the Rika deck in full action. So here's the amazing interaction that uh, Arrow Mage ja uh, Jasmine has with this deck. Whenever mm -hmm. you gain life points, uh, you're able to search any plant monster from your deck to your hand. And I think this is where you obtain your Rika Madan. And that is the one that gets you that incredible field spell. Oh, actually going for the Lily Boria here. Yeah. So yeah. As, as you mentioned, this was a different uh, sort of engine played compared to the European Championship deck, which is using the Therian engine. Yeah. I think this also, uh, as you mentioned, Marcello, basically when people are not prepared to play against this kind of deck is even more is even better, right? So if adding uh, you know some spicy, let's say, to your deck and uh, people that really know how to stop you, maybe this it's uh, you know gives you a, a little bit of advantage. So I really I really like this. And this essentially uh, gives uh, Jessica an, another layer of protection against uh, any possible cards in the side deck, as well as uh, a rank 8 uh, option, if that's uh, what she wants to go for. So. so here's the resolution of the Arrow Mage Jasmine, just a Lone Fire Blossom style card, tributing a monster that it points to to special summon any plant from the deck. Actually goes and for the, the Lone Fire Blossom, yeah. Yeah, the original one. <laughs> and tributes away the Lily Boria, and I think that's because you want your Therian monsters in the graveyard to then be able to special out another Therian monster. Noticing that the field spell did not search for Regulus is usually uh, yep. a sort of... Uh, yep. There it is, yeah, oh, hard okay. drawing the Regulus there. This is a great, great opening. 
So from this point onwards, you're protected uh, for the rest of your combo because you have the Therion Regulus, which simply reads, uh, negate a card that your opponent controls by sending a Therion card yep. that you control. So for the rest of this combo, Jessica is going to be completely uninhibited. Yeah, essentially you have the protection from the Nibiru or any possible evenly matched in the main deck. Mm -hmm. But it's worth mentioning that Jovan is, play, is maining a card that might actually be really strong in this uh, match uh, and that we have yet not seen this weekend, that is the Kurikara. Three mm. copies wow. in the main deck. Yeah. So Kurikara is an interesting card. It reads, uh, you contribute all monsters as your opponent controls that activated their effect this turn. Mm -hmm. And generally, if you're able to force out a lot of your opponent's activations by using all of those monsters, yeah. uh, then you can just simply tribute them all off for the effect. Probably mostly for the Cash Dira matchup, but it has some overlap yeah. here. Plants are a deck that just have such an incredible legacy in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, we've seen so many <laughs> different true. variations of this type. Absolutely. Now, I don't think uh, Jessica's going to be playing any dandelions or tengus in here, but uh, the closest thing to that, I suppose, is going to be a, uh, the Sun Avalon Link 3 monster, which simply revives a uh, loci back from the graveyard and allowing you to go into some uh, link climbing. And I think this is the, 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 the best opening ever yeah. that she, she will ever yeah. ask for, because uh, having no interruptions on the field here, I think she will have at least a three to four of them. So. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned how simply drawing the normal monster, the low she is, is enough. Yeah. But when you have the Tyrion package, it's just the cherry on top, and it makes this even tougher to, to combat, and yeah. So this is what we're doing. We're going into the third engine of the deck. We've seen Therions, we've seen Sun Avalon, and this is where the Rick has really started to shine here. Madan getting the Glamour, uh, which I think is picking up a Princess there. And I'm assuming there's going to be a Field Spell that's already been drawn that will be used at this point. Field Spell is very, very uh, powerful in this deck. Just the ability to tribute your opponent's monsters for the effects yeah. of your Rickas. It's arguably the, the best card in the deck. What makes mm -hmm. it really shine. We just... Roaming around the tables, we saw some players using even uh, uh, Polynosis <laughs> as a deck card, <laughs> maybe when going first. So, yeah. Is that the uh, negate when you control Yeah, the uh, Solemn uh, Judgment yeah, for yeah. plants, <laughs> let's say, yeah. So. I think the last time I played that card was in a draft. In a battle, battle <laughs> yeah, draft. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is a really, really good XE monster here. So, it, a, uh, when a monster is tributed, it basically special summons itself yep. from the extra deck and then attaches it. Uh, onto the card there. And because we just activated a spell card, you can use the effect of this uh, this monster here to attach a card of a similar type. So the spell card was activated, then attaching the spell. So now this allows this to act as a monster or spell negate, yeah. as we have the Disc Colosseum underneath it. And also here it gets the Rika Sheet from the deck, and uh, what an opening from Jessica. Yeah. And honestly, I would be super scared if I were Jovan, because uh, how do you deal with this? Yeah, yeah, Sheet is such an incredible card. It's uh, one of the few... So it, the, the good thing about this is when you're playing this sort of combo deck, uh, I think that, you know, just having, like, negate, negate, negate uh, isn't actually always that good, potentially. You need, like, a little bit of variety in your disruption. That's so true. here, in the in the option of the uh, Rika Sheet combining with the field spell, you can trigger your opponent's monster and then mind control your exactly. opponent's monster for the turn here, which is really good against Sprite. Absolutely, and the thing is, as you mentioned, costs are what matter because uh, you cannot really respond to the cost and with the field spell they are tributed so uh, we saw how uh, for example uh, he, Marcus won against a lot of uh, sprite players I think both in top eight and in top four at the European Championship so uh, it's definitely a very really strong deck and uh, let's see let's see if this Kurikara maybe <laughs> is in the <laughs> end and uh, can do something for uh, your Jovan yeah. So as Jovan draws for turn here, let's summarize and see what exactly Jessica has here. So we have the Link 4 Bengal Lancer. This is a quick play, uh, quick, sorry, quick effect. Uh, during the main phase, uh, you can just simply uh, return a monster you point controls to the hand. Yep. We have the Spell or Monster Negate with the uh, XE, and we have the Therian Omni Negate uh, with just simply sending a Therian tra and the Field Spell and the She. There's a lot okay. to go through here. Here I was about to say before this runic tip that maybe, and it's uh, something that we sometimes debate about whether you pick up your deck and you don't even show your opponent what you're using. Uh, I think if you know that you're done, uh, that's very important for at least uh, getting an advantage in game two. But uh, Jovan is just going to try his, uh, his best and uh, he reveals to Jessica that he's playing at least a runic deck. 
could still be either Naturia or Sprite, I guess. If there's any deck in the, in the format currently that can actually deal with a lot of the uh, monsters on the field here, it's definitely Runic. There's a lot of just, you yeah, know, I agree. You know, freezing curses, flashing yeah. fire. There's a lot of ways yeah. to try and fight through here. Yeah, when we interviewed uh, back in uh, uh, YCS Storm and uh, uh, Marcus, who was participating, he was saying the exact same thing, and it's the reason why last minute he didn't play Rika, because he was afraid of uh, Runic Sprite. Mm. So, let's see. But it's really rough when you have to wow. normal summon <laughs> yeah. Sprite Blue here. Uh, but I think he has two copies, so kind of mm. forced to go for this. And uh, now the question that Jessica has to decide here, do we simply bounce the blue to the hand so that it denies you having that level 2 presence so that all of your sprites can extend? Uh, this will be a risk because now yeah. she knows that he, his opponent is on into Runix, so he has easy access to his extra deck as well if he really mm -hmm. wants to put a hogging in the, on the field. Uh, she's considering it. Seems like, yeah. Hmm. Okay, interesting approach. Going to tribute. Yeah, her own card, but yeah. Picks it up. Wow. Incredible. Uh, yeah, there. yeah. Incredible showing. Jessica takes uh, game one. And then again, uh, I have to wonder whether it was just better to not reveal the deck. Uh, sometimes, yeah. obviously, it's not something obvious. You want to try your best. Maybe your opponent just uh, is not paying that much attention or uh, makes uh, a misplay. But I really would have liked uh, Jovan uh, from at least uh, keeping that information. But I want to highlight that he's playing uh, some very unique cards, and one of the <laughs> cards that probably many people will not agree by is one of my favorite tribute uh, monsters. Oh no. <laughs> Please don't say that. Vanity is fiend. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have sweet memories, sweet and sour memories, I gotta say. But I played it at the World Championship back in 2017, and uh, it's, I, I like it. I mean, any runic card at the very worst and basic level is a tribute. Is a tribute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you can go for Vanity Spin, and if unexpected, uh, maybe Jessica doesn't even have an out. I don't know, yeah? Yeah, no, something like that, when it suddenly hits the field, it really is a polarizing moment. You know, yep. it's not really something that can just be baited out, like, for example, a singular use of an infinite impermanence. Mm -hmm. You know, this is permanently staying there on the field, and it demands an answer Absolutely. from your opponent. And also against the Rika deck, Vanity uh, Fiend just you know does the job at its own, no? So it's yeah. Uh, maybe let's let's check if actually Jessica is playing any outs. Uh, maybe impermanence in the main deck, but outside of that, uh, she uh, has the Regeki alongside with the Triple Tactic Thrust, which okay. But at the in. same time, with the Vanities on field, it's not obvious that your opponent mm -hmm. is going to activate uh, any effect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just uh, swing with the boy and. Uh, Call it a day, but actually she's playing also two copies of Dark Ruler, so plenty of uh, possible outs. But do the, you, yeah, do you put those in? Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's hard to say, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think like uh, Runic, obviously, uh, you would think like has a lot of the disruption from the hand, utilizing yeah. the fountain with the freezing curses, uh, the flashing fire. So generally, you wouldn't, I think, probably want to go for monster negates, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. But we also have an additional card, which I don't know if we want to <laughs> spoil it yet. But yeah, let's let's not do it for now. Maybe we'll see it in action. But she's playing definitely a unique card that I think she can search once again with the three copies of uh, Triple Tactic Thrust, uh, which maybe flew under the radar lately. But I think it's uh, an incredible card, uh, uh, probably just as good as talent, and sometimes even more. Searching cards like evenly matched to go in second. So let's see. It's uh, gonna be a close one. As you can see here, we're having a show over to all these players uh, here in round four. Still a long day. Nine rounds today, and three more before the cut uh, tomorrow to the top. And uh, let's see. Our players, though, are ready for this game, too. So let's find out whether Jessica is going to just crush her opponent with a 2-0 lead or whether Jovan is going to make things 1-1. So we're going to start off the game here. Most likely wants to go first. <laughs> There's no way yeah. you want to let that Rekka deck do that again. Uh, so typical sort of sprite end field. You know, you're trying to draw, get as much advantage as possible, utilizing those uh, those fountains. Not once per turn either, if uh, potentially we end up with a heavy runic hand. 
uh, but also going for that sprite engine with the with the uh, sprint, for yep. example, yep. Uh, setting up double cross. A lot of uh, disruption you have in this. And I was wow. about to say, <laughs> here is one of the unique cars from Joe Van Dijk, uh, which is just the one copy of uh, Tillman Merley. Yeah, yeah, this is nice. This is something that you don't really see quite often. And uh, yeah, we said that uh, it is good because basically you, you had the, the chance to, to summon the Stapelia. But here comes an Ash Blossom. Oh. Mm. Okay. okay, there's yeah. a blue. Sometimes it's really frustrating when you have cards like Ash Blossom. I feel like sometimes they're very low impact against a deck like Sprite Runic. Yeah. You know, you're either you're holding for that fountain or you know you stop the Hugin and it's like, okay, special. Yeah, blue. you just go there and say, maybe if he doesn't have it, you mm. know. But uh, yeah, as you mentioned, there are so many key powerful plays in the Runic deck that uh, if you activate Ash Blossom on one and then he has the other one, you know, it doesn't really pay off. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a deck that's really good at just absolutely slicing through hand traps, yeah. you know. Sometime. And I think, uh, and I think here also, uh, he, he will have the chance to both combo off, and then on the other side, I think he has a value field. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think yeah, he does? I think he does. Let's he should see. be the last card. He might. In the... uh, he might. You're right. He might have it, and then it's even better when you are not just using a runic spell. I mean, that's the advantage with playing a deck like Runic Sprite. It's not a deck that's reliant on its normal summon no, whatsoever. Absolutely. It's the reason why, I mean, even, uh, you know, Josh was me when he won the YCS, he was playing cards like Sphere Mode, the Lava Golem. You can play those kind of cards in this deck and it's perfectly fine, so... Yeah, restricting your limit, uh, your normal summon for the turn is, is fine when every single card in the archetype just yeah. says special summon your, uh, your level 2 monster. Absolutely, and uh, here, uh, yeah, you go back to a card that has uh, fallen off in popularity a little bit ever since Sprite Elf was forbidden, but uh, it's still does whatever you want to do. I Iberia just getting a draw and uh, also with the ring spells the synergy with Vanity Fiend is you can draw it throughout the turn yeah. with Fountain and Iberia so. Yeah I like it honestly. I mean it gives you a little bit of speed and uh, whenever you're done with the blue and the jet I mean, it's one another piece that you could put on the field. I like it. I think one of the most important things to mention is you know um, something that's obviously Yu-Gi-Oh players love is drawing cards but <laughs> The reason why it's so good in this situation is because you can deck thin a lot, and because there's such a heavy draw engine with Sprite, you get to see those side deck cards. Wow, but Ooh. Vanity Fiend is discarded, uh, so maybe he drew into the second copy, otherwise this would definitely be a surprise if uh, he decided not to go for any at all. Well, getting the Runic Fountain here, Hugen not once per turn, being able to uh, utilize its effect to get to that fountain despite the first copy being negated. I think he might have drawn the second copy, honestly, to this card. But at the same the... time, does he only have two cards in hand or three? That's my that's concern. Two. Because if that's true, then you probably have a spell if you go for the fountain. And yeah, no, because he has the cross. No, no, okay, he has a okay. second vanity. Yeah, mm. wouldn't that make sense otherwise? Uh, so gonna just figure out. Okay. There it is. Wow, but okay. it is being normal summoned. <laughs> and like we mentioned at the start here, it really demands an answer from Jessica. Do you have a response? But now Vanity here, Fiend? the good thing is uh, this board cannot be regekied because there is uh, the protection from a Yugen. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it also protects the Vanity Fiend. That's why he didn't go. Oh, no. wow. okay. <laughs> what a punish. <sighs> yeah, I mean, uh, Vanity Fiend is... It's Vanity Fiend. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's just uh, it's too strong to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why it's so good here. It's because obviously, you know, it's an incredibly powerful normal summon that restricts your opponent from playing. But the important thing is, like, your opponent post siding, they would probably be more more scared of the runic fountain resolving all the runic uh, yep. spells being used as disruption. So generally, I think you know something like cosmic cyclone is maybe sort of the go-to side deck option against runic. You wouldn't really think, oh, I need to prepare for vanity. No, exactly. You don't really expect it. And as we mentioned, uh, maybe Jessica didn't side in any of the cards yeah. we talked about because basically, so. yeah. You cannot expect no. it. You cannot special summon. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if we were going yeah. for another tribute there. That's Vanity Ruler. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, at least the advantage is that we can uh, definitely deal a decent amount of damage. You know, that gigantic sprite is boosted as it is utilizing the yep. uh, the uh, extra deck monster as a material. Gives it a nice but beefy for now, he still needs to skip this yeah, battle phase. Yeah, the battle phase. So, yeah, true. Yeah. She's getting another turn at least. Uh, which makes you wonder whether this face down monster is correct. Because if now she draws into an evenly matched, uh, maybe, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Let's see. I think she's double checking yeah. the effect of uh, Hugin's destruction. Maybe protection. she top decked to Raigeki. You know, she's like, let me deal with this Hugin first. Yeah, setting a monster, you know, you're not really in risk of uh, losing all your life points at all. The battle phase skip is, you know, one of the main drawbacks of the runic deck. Ooh. Okay, okay, things getting interesting now. That could potentially be an answer to the Vanity's feet. Yep. Con Con. Again, Rika Con Con is, is such a... Uh, amazing card in this deck to be able to use the tributing effect for the cost here to move the Vanity's Fiend. And thinking really hard here about how we're going to deal with this. What the sort of runic ver variant? Oh, Ooh, wow. wow! The last card. <laughs> wow. It's a runic destruction and also banishing four off the top here. Yeah, banishing. Oh, they go she. That's an important removal. Wow. And talent. Uh, and at the same time, going to draw. Three cars. Yeah. This is brutal from Jovan. Returns those back to the bottom of the deck and draws three cards. And Runic really showing off why it is such a massive. Oh, okay. second, second copy. copy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna have to send oh, pass again. Down monster. Yeah. At least uh, now, of course, uh, Jovan has to skip another battle phase. Uh, so. She will get yet another draw. So unfortunately able to not able to utilize Kong Kong's effect to tribute a plant monster as we do not have a Rika monster. And I'm sure she maybe has something on the field there, but probably just doesn't have a way to utilize that second effect to its yeah. full extent here. So um, now it must be said, however, in this situation. Okay. Wow. We're gonna double cross the yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay. But did he forget that he has to skip uh, this battle phase? That's my question. It was... Uh, yeah. mm, good point, good point. Maybe he goes all in and then uh, she's like, uh, wait, you cannot go for a game right now. That would be really bad. Especially if maybe he goes, you know, gamma burst or anything like that and then... Well, we'll see if uh, yep. Jovan has forgotten here. Uh, sometimes these floodgates can act as double-edged swords. You know, you can just set it up, stop your opponent from playing, but if you can't capitalize on that, then you're back to square one. Absolutely. All right, well, we're going to try and set up something else as well, because Jovan does also need to play uh, yeah. himself and uh. actually mount a offensive here, going for the Sprite Red to yeah. try and set up a negate, but that Vanity's Fiend double cross might come back to bite him. We'll see. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see the point. I think he honestly. has carrot and red maybe in the end, but... Do you think maybe he's in a situation where he recognizes, okay, well, I've managed to stop the main push here for Jessica. Now I need to be able to set up enough that I can disrupt them on their turn and then have my battle phase again on the following turn after that. And that's it's why we're trying to... Or maybe he just thought that the priority is getting rid of this con con and... Uh, mm -hmm. That's it, because otherwise his vanities would have been out of the regardless. Uh, uh, but still, I don't know. All right, opting to go for a second copy of Starter there. We've already used that this turn. I think maybe he must have drawn Smashers or something. I, I would assume one would play Smashers, right? Yeah, either he are yeah. through the Smasher or he's had it out. What, mm. yeah. what I don't like, though, is uh, Jovan seems like he's improvising, you know? <laughs> like, he's kind of freestyling. Uh, yeah, when you take a decision as important as getting rid of both the Double Cross and the Vanity, I've, I think you have a plan in mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it might be that OTK that is not actually doable. So I'm worried for Jovan, but... Yeah, also, see. the only Mibaru let us think yeah, that he, that he go wants for to that. try to yeah. go for game, so I don't know. Potentially going for game with something like Gamma Burst would be the search, and, and instead he got the uh, starter. Yeah. So should be aware of the fact there's a battle phase skip here. Winibaru going to banish this until the end of the next end phase. And clearing up here, but again, it kind of <laughs> yeah. begs the question, what are you actually <sighs> attempting to do here? I think he might even go like, yeah, double gate gigantic or something. and I don't know. All right, so I, I think that's maybe the game plan here, right? We need to like try and put up enough so that we can absolutely just uh, take the game on the following turn. Yep. Um, and so yeah. by setting up enough disruption here with your runic cards, <sighs> it feels like the Vanity's Fiend just did enough. 
Exactly. Oh, no, but I think he passed. He passed. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Probably recognize that the battle phase is uh, yeah. being skipped this turn. I mean, this is still an impressive uh, field yeah. nonetheless. Uh, he has two runic cards in the end. Uh, and there he goes. So we need to do something here. Well, Jessica is flip summoning Lokai. And in order to use the effect of Concon, we need to be able to activate a Rika that actually does Tribune. Because there isn't a um, Vanity's Fiend anymore, we can special summon from the hand potentially and use the Concon. But immediately recognizing the yep. danger here on response to the flip summon of Unicorn? the Lokai. Yeah, mm -hmm. Unicorn yeah. it is. Okay. Are we going to spit? Yep, we are going to spin Lokai. But normal summon has not been committed to this turn, mm -hmm. and of course we do not control any more monsters, which means potentially unexpected die also gets you uh, into your main combo here. But there is a lot of disruption still to contend with for Jessica, Absolutely. so let's see if she can still fight through. Runic cards in the hand, oh, sprite okay. red and carrot. She does. Here comes uh, Princess. Princess. Yeah, yeah. Princess coming down, which. Allows you to uh, search for any Rika monster, I believe. And it looks like she's using the field spell to tribute off the gigantic. But then, yeah, the uh, oh no, no, it's yeah, the uh, carrot that's yeah, tributing the gigantic yeah. to negate and destroy. And thrust. Ooh, wow. All right, so thrust is a, a card that has been pretty popular recently. If your opponent simply activates a card. Uh, in the main phase this turn, then you are able to search any spell and trap from your deck, and you can use it that turn instead of setting it if they control more monsters than you. Yeah. No, just a monster. No, just, just a end, monster. Just yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, I don't think that uh, Jessica sided in the right game, honestly. I mean, even if she not had even it, sure if you would go yeah. for that. You probably want to go for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some combo Maybe. piece, uh, get rid of the last disruption, uh, and hope that. There are not good runic spells in the end from mm -hmm. Jovan. You know, the thing with runic is just it's so adaptable and very versatile. You know, you're, you're able to just play it in so many different uh, different decks, you know. Sprite yeah. is probably the most common one. You know, it has great synergy there. We've seen Naturia. Absolutely, recently. yeah. Naturia, there are even pure runics we have seen with yeah. like kind of a burn strategy, yeah. And normal summon oh, Lokai. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's see these spells, because they, they really need to be good. Yeah, this uh, Link 1 should hopefully have some kind of response. Otherwise, I think Jessica might just have like the ability to go for a full combo here. Absolutely. Doubling, double checking the effect of uh, Sun Avalon Dryas to see if that we actually can use it. And we're just seeing if there's uh Oh, uh, there's a freezing curses yeah, from yeah, uh, okay. Joe Wanda. Okay. okay, there's why. Mm -hmm. uh, two plant monsters on the field means that we can still keep going potentially, despite mm -hmm. the freezing curses. Okay. Mm, sewing off the top there. Uh, Did she banish a sewing early? Oh, Whoa, that's actually wow. huge. Yeah, that might hurt. Yeah. Yeah, important combo piece for the yeah, uh, both gone. strategy. All right, as mentioned, I think she's probably going to go for a Jasmine here. I think you can tribute any monster that Jasmine points and not just plants. Yeah, but I think we might see... Uh, let's see, the last three runic corn in the end might just be a pop. And I would say... Yeah. Flashing uh, fire. Wow. Flashing yeah. fire it is. And uh, uh, yeah, I think she, she Recognizes calls it a day mm -hmm. and uh, picks up the cards. So it's 1-1. One, one. We're going to game three. Really back and forth one, yeah. Do you think that maybe we got a little bit fortunate there, removing our vanity fiends? <laughs> you know, that was, uh, it was a I bit think, shaky, yeah, I think. I think so. I think we got ahead of ourselves. Uh, we might uh, get a chance to ask uh, Jovan whether he wins uh, his game three, uh, if he thought he was going to go for a game and then realized and kind of uh, improvised, because uh, I'm sure at some point he was improvising, because he stopped for a moment and was just like debating whether to go for what. And uh, I mean, Luckily, he didn't uh, actually lost to his own decision, and uh, we're going to game three. And now Jessica doesn't really need to worry about, uh, you know, Vanity's feed. Uh, she's just focused on uh, her combo, and uh, 
do you think she even has anything in the side deck for going first? Yeah, I noticed something really big there. Okay. Uh, Naturia <laughs> Rose Whip Ooh. is a uh, card that simply says your opponent can yeah. only activate one spell and trap for that wow. turn. Which against yeah. Runic, I mean, no, I mean that's, that's bad. Yeah, That will be incredibly powerful to yeah. see and hopefully we will get the chance to see it. But uh, I think in a deck like this, you really want to try to see your combo as soon as you can. So I don't think she's going to side in a lot of cards, especially by going first. So hopefully, yeah, we'll go to see the Renatura Rose Whip uh, in yeah, action. Probably gonna cut just the even Lee's might add something else. On the other end, though, uh, let's see, because Jovan has a lot of cards for uh, instead going first. Mm -hmm. Going second... Uh, mm. It's like decking a yeah. Ash Blossom playset, you know, Ash Blossom. I don't think you really want to use it on the dry ass because you know you might have a hard draw on yeah. the sewing. Typically, ashing the sewing maybe gets you there, but it's kind of weird. Sometimes this uh, plant deck can just really power through hand Absolutely. traps. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean it might not be enough, especially Some, because like your one yeah. is just not playing anything else rather than that. But you gotta just side it in and pray yeah. it's enough. Uh, sometimes maybe on an unexpected die even it could be enough. You never know. I mean it depends whether he has experience in this matchup. Uh, Ghost Bell on the other end, uh, not really useful here, but again, it's up to the experience because uh, if Giovanni is not comfortable with the combo, he might have to improvise his side deck uh, patterns as well. Regardless though, they are basically ready for game three, so let's find out who will be the winner of round four. So as you mentioned, Alberto, you don't want to dilute your main deck with so many side deck cards. You know, you're playing a combo deck. You want to make sure you get to that uh, all-important loci uh, as quickly as possible and just have enough to be able to try and uh, do, through, do your full combo through disruption. Yeah. I do see one of those cards we mentioned in game one, which is the Kurikara from Giovanna. Actually, two copies in the end, but it is not the... Yeah, not Hoshi. the loci. Not, yeah. Instead, again, the petal is going to be the opening from Jessica. Okay, so we aren't going to see the explosivity that we noticed in game one. Uh, she really just had absolutely everything uh, and really demonstrates the power of just how much this deck can do. But I think it's going to be a little bit weaker this time round. Okay, we've got a no low fire. Fire. Ooh, wow. Yeah, wow. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> this changes uh, <laughs> yeah, the scenario. Never mind. <laughs> that is access to Lokai. Yeah. All right, well, I think this should be able to go into full combo. We're not going to be able to utilize the Therian Regulus. I think they're plant-locked from this point onward with the effect of the uh, the Rickon yeah. from the hand. Yeah. Uh, but it should still be enough here. Yeah, it's still, it's still really, really good. Uh, on the other side, again, I mean, this uh, will test the water, so whether Kurikara is enough against this, uh, this matchup uh, or not. Uh, at the same time, it could have been a lot of other cards. So we had seen, uh, as mentioned, the Sphere Mode, Lava Golem. Uh, so at the end of this match, we probably can discuss whether the Kurikara would have been better or worse than any of those other options. Do you like playing a sort of combo deck style like this, where it has such an important focal point, which is Loki? You know, if you have a way to stop that, mm -hmm. the deck can sometimes kind of fall apart. Is that maybe a little bit of a glass cannon deck? Uh, probably is, uh, but it depends on a different series of factors. Because, like, it, it, if it's not just a free off, and it's obviously not, you have unexpected die and other cards to get to the card. Uh, it's obviously better, but in a 12 rounds event plus top 64, I think uh, going second is also really important. So you have to pretty much. Uh, you cannot commit uh, them. You need to really have your focus. And uh, while at the European Championship for Marcus, it was possible because going second, there were no real threats uh, against your combos. Uh, nowadays, it's different because, for example, you could see a lock uh, from Kashtira of all the zones. Uh, so it's it's definitely interesting uh, and uh, good compromise. Uh, we'll see. But at the same time, Jessica has been playing this deck for basically a year now. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure that even if she had a blindfold on, she was able to play <laughs> better than all of us combined. So, I think uh, being confident with the deck is definitely important. Yeah, I mean, the uh, training that goes in with this deck, blindfold yourself, make sure you got the zone <laughs> placement right. Like, that, yeah. that, is, that is in the training dojo. Uh, so, getting the uh, Therian Regulus here, 
uh, to the hand with the Discolosseum. And uh, yeah, I mean, she's got all the plant monsters on the field here that she needs and still hasn't even resolved the Jasmine. Let's see if we go for that Rose Whip. Yeah, I think we will most likely see something uh, on the line on game one. But uh, the Naturia Rose Whip, I think, uh, might be dropping soon. Yeah, that'll be an absolutely incredible uh, way to shut down Runix. So Curry Kara, you know, naturally, I think you probably want to play that for um, the uh, Cash Dira deck. Yeah, right? Obviously, yeah. it has overlap here, and I think it's because like all of those monsters just activate yeah, yeah, in yeah. the turn here. So you take, you know, standby effect with Shangri-Ra, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I feel like in this matchup, it's a little bit harder because you actually have to like force your opponent to do something, like activate their Bengal Lancer to bounce to your hand, activate the uh, Regulus to negate. So by the time you've actually baited out those disruptions, do you think the Curry Kara has that much impact? Uh, uh, it's tough, yeah. I would say maybe not 50-50, but uh, yeah, it's not uh, that impactful, honestly. I mean, maybe, especially in this kind of matchup, uh, you might not be so confident of siding them out, you know? Mm. Just, uh, maybe you just, you know, you just say, look, it's better to have them in rather to have them out. It's so, all I have, might as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. problem I see is that it's if it's alongside the Rose Whip, then you cannot really force out those negation yeah. either. So, yeah. like, at that point, uh, it's tough to even uh, get them there, yeah. All right, well, here's Madan going for the uh, tribute to Special Summon itself, and this gets the uh, the Glamour or the Concon. Absolutely incredible field spell, as mentioned. Uh, hasn't come up, I suppose, in game two. Didn't really have that much an opportunity to use it, but yeah. when you have your full setup here, it's, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Now, I think with the uh, no, ooh, adding the lone, the lone fire, fire, yeah, fire. Okay. We normal summoned, right? Did we? Uh, no, I think she. Yeah, uh, yeah, she opened the pedal, right? Or mm. uh, yeah, 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 she normal yeah. summoned the pedal, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, as we talked about a little bit earlier, there's the uh, link climbing capability of uh, Malayas, which uh, special summons back low kind. Yep. Then you go into Bengal Lancer, and. Uh, don't forget as well, Bengal Lancer has a uh, reborn effect. You can banish uh, mm -hmm. monsters equal to its link rating from the graveyard to bring it back. So yeah. yep. even if the Curry Kara gets rid of it, you can bring it back on the following turn. True. Sure. And at the same time, we shouldn't take time for granted because uh, this deck, uh, as you can see, consistently gains uh, 600 life points at the very <laughs> beginning. And there are 10 minutes left. Uh, so with the skipping of battle phases from Runic, uh, yeah. you know, mm. it's, uh, it's also a thing to consider. Ten minutes remaining, and uh, you know, going to be behind on life points because of the Sunvine yep. Healer uh, gaining life points. You know, it's it's the, the pressure is on for uh, for, sure. for Jovan for sure. Also, because I think he might have a starter in hand, uh, so that it's even more yeah. life points mm -hmm. you lose. Yeah. Okay, but no Rose Whip for mm. now. So I mean, all right, at no. least. Oh, that's so Ooh, frustrating. The sixth. You saw yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ash Blows of Return. Oh, that must uh, be so, so infuriating. That's always not a pleasant thing. And I don't even know if he has anything to force this out because he has a jet and the starter, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. With double Kurikari and Ash Blossom. So let's see if he finds a way to. I suppose maybe like a starter can get you into a red. That immediately yeah. contends with one of the disruptions of the Bengal Lancer. But at the same time, if you go for red, you don't get that advantage given by blue and jet. But he really needs to speed things up. Yeah. Yeah. Now he activated a runic spell. No battle phase, nine minutes. Pressure's mm -hmm. on. Yep. Need to play as fast as possible. And uh, I'm getting really skeptic here for Joven chances. So even though we have multiple copies of Kurikara in the hand, you know, you have to discard it because it's the most useless card. Yeah. But you're also telling your opponent, hey, I have Kurikara, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know if if it's worth not discarding the Ash Blossom on this stage, but I mean, obviously, you, you, you need to do it. Especially because, like, I think you're telling your opponent, I'm discarding one Kurikara, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, now Jessica might be thinking, uh, maybe he has yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so honestly, now time is really important. Yeah. Now that you know that uh, Kurikara might be there, okay. Never mind, so at the moment, she... Yeah, she's gonna go for the negation from the princess in the graveyard, it seems like. Uh, that's a very uh, obscure effect that doesn't come up... Uh, uh, it's probably one of the reasons why yeah. a lot of people lose to this deck, is yeah. they yeah. don't realize you have a negate exactly. in the graveyard by tributing one of your plants, or your opponent's monster if you have Concon up. Yep. 
And let's see if she activates the effect of Strena here. I think uh, because it was tributed, it gets to uh, attach itself onto a monster uh, from the extra deck. Kurikara still not live on any of these exactly. monsters. <laughs> that's so the great thing. Yeah. That, that's the critical thing here, yeah. Um, let's see. So the jet is the only real play that is left for Jovan. So she might be a little bit hesitant to uh, negate here just because you yeah, know, of the danger yeah. of Kurikara, but uh, does have their sheets. The, the oh, the worm, actually. Okay. Yeah, wow. But even then, is Kurikara really a danger without a battle phase? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, Good point. Yeah. We're down to seven minutes remaining. And uh, yeah, uh, with the sheet to face down, uh, it's really so much advantage. You think that's a weak impermanence at all? You know, negating a second level two on the field, just uh, make gigantic. Yeah, I mean, it's you can get rid of gigantic uh, with mm -hmm. sheet, so it's not a big deal. And uh, this impermanence really tells me that he, she knows, you know, uh, that the Kurikara is there. She she doesn't want to get Kurikara. So yeah. yeah, this is what's going on here. Going for a link play here, looks like. Yeah, sprint maybe. Into the manly, maybe. <laughs> 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 be the, the play we we wanted to see from ever since we noticed this merely in the deck from Jovan. Yeah, he's thinking really hard here about what to go for because, I mean, this is a critical part of the game. Like, if you... Oh, oh Donner! Okay. All right, that should force something out. Yep. Uh, so Donner is a relatively new card, and yeah. it's been something that's been played uh, by, I think, basically every deck has just been running Donner. What does yeah. it require? It's just two monsters with different types. And you can basically use it as a Diamond yeah. Direwolf. I was about yeah. to say, I call it the modern uh, Diamond Direwolf, <laughs> yeah. Played by most decks and, yeah, just a generic uh, removal. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a further deficit in life point might be coming down yeah. here. No, nope, okay. okay. So Only going for the Bangal answer. Yeah, unfortunately, no battle face. And, uh... Oh, the same column! No. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> the same column, not the same column, Jovan. No! <laughs> yeah, you can see both having a little smile, but yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I that don't could think, be the nail yeah. in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If it mattered, I'm not sure, but wow. Too bad. And now, yeah, Jessica is uh, free to do whatever she wants, uh, and. Uh, only moments away from uh, advancing with an impressive 4-0 score. Jessica down by a thousand life points, it looks like. Yeah, because I think when you activate the, uh, what's that, the Bengal answer. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you pay, you pay uh, equal to the monster's attack, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, five minutes on the clock it's here. It's pretty much a formality. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Formality. All right. Uh, well, Regulus is set up here, so any further disruption Which, from the hand. By works. the way, I think he, he, he forgot about the Kurikara as well, right? The effect in the end phase. Uh, Put it to like uh, summon back something from the graveyard, right? Oh, does she have a bonus effect? Yeah, she does. <laughs> she does. Well, I, I love bonus yeah. effects. Tell uh, me yeah, more. Yeah. During your yeah, end phase, exactly. you get to special summon something from your opponent graveyard, and yeah. since the um, starter was negated by impermanence, uh, mm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, point. I guess. Yeah, maybe we I could mean, have brought back the Bengal answer, I suppose. Yeah, but to be fair, uh, I mean, uh, I don't blame him compared to Jessica. Uh, Jovan has uh, a lot less experience at this kind of stage. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, now there is a huge crowd that's gathered around uh, to watch this duelist uh, battle it out live. And uh, there is a lot of pressure down the line. So. Jessica taking her time here just to make sure that absolutely yep. every play that she does is pitch perfect here. We, the finish line is in sight. We just need to make sure that we uh, optimize this as best as we can. And uh, it's yeah. looking like we're approaching 8,000. Absolutely. This should already be yeah. enough, uh, but just to make sure. Yeah, yep. there's the uh, other there effect of answer. And yeah, this is uh, plenty of damage. Uh, gonna <laughs> enter battle phase and yep, the end shake comes down. So, congratulations to Jessica. She is the winner of round four. What a showdown. Yeah. That was an incredible yeah. display of the plant yeah. deck. Full mastery that she has over this yeah. deck. I mean, she showed us, yeah. uh, she's been playing this deck for a year. We said that. And uh, 
I mean, advancing with an impressive record now, and I would be scary to play here, honestly. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We mentioned it, how this deck is kind of a sleeper. Uh, it has been a sleeper for almost a year now. So, I mean, uh, you, you, everyone watching at home should definitely read uh, these cards <laughs> and know at least how to prepare against it. As you mentioned, uh, it's possible now on Master Duel as well. So why not give it the deck a try? And uh, we are going to hear uh, soon enough uh, from Jessica why she thinks this deck is still a valid contender for all. So impressive start at the moment. She uh, hasn't dropped a match, uh, and uh, I mean I don't I don't blame it. As mentioned, uh, the format is kind of an interesting and open state. Uh, there are so many different decks, uh, and uh, when such a format is in play, the side decks also get very weird because you cannot really side for all the matchups, uh, and this means that generically when. Jessica is facing an opponent, uh, it's quite unlikely that they have specific cards for such a matchup. As we saw here, there was nothing too specific, and uh, I think she's taking uh, advantage of this. So There's almost like this cycle that you go back and forth yeah. every format, which is like a control deck sort of dominates. Then that means people take out the anti-combo cards. Now combo decks like Rika start to improve alongside it, you know? Yeah, I mean, and especially, uh, I, I really believe that people in this uh, format don't really, are not familiar with yeah. this deck, so... But, uh, I mean, we will soon see what happens, and uh, honestly, uh, for people uh, watching at home, uh, uh, still, Rika is there, but uh, we will soon hear from Jessica herself. Up. Absolutely. So thank you guys once again for being with us. This was round four of YCS London 2023, where we just witnessed Jessica using her Rika deck to just destroy her opponent. And in the Rika deck, there are a lot of XYZs that are called Rika Queen, but I want to rename Jessica the best Rika Queen probably. We have great piloting over the deck. So let's hear it from Jessica and Ed. Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by the Riga Queen here. I've got Jess, who's just won that round four match. Congratulations. I mean, we'll talk about your deck in a moment, but how are you feeling after winning that feature match? Relieved. Like, yeah. last time I had feature matches in 2018, and I messed up massively, so I'm quite happy just to not have that curse anymore. Were you playing Rika back then as well? I wish. No, Goki back then. It's 2018. Okay, so let's talk about the Rika deck as well, because... I've heard, I've heard tell from a few of our members backstage that obviously we have Marcus Patel, the European champion in the most recent Euros, that you were actually the mind behind that topping deck, that winning deck. So can you talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, so I'm... Myself along with someone else, Alex Robertson, like, originally started with that deck. And I took... I went away and just worked on it a lot over time. Like, over the next, like, for three, four weeks for European Championships. And then Marcus came in and then we refined the deck further. Uh, yeah, we just had, like, that work. I was one of the main reasons behind that deck, yeah. And also, you told me as well that you were responsible for some other topping decks as well. Yeah, um, Alex Robertson got second at Nationals with another, um, the previous before Rika came out, the Snavalon list, with Wrights and Necrosynchron. I also came up with that list and gave it to him the day before the event. I mean, you are the brain behind the Rika. What is it that you like about the Rika deck? Um, I, like, I like that it's all from, like, a vanilla monster. Because the monsters are like notoriously just the worst cards in the game, and I like just being able to summon a seed. It's like a little seed, and it sprouts into a tree, and then just sprouts into this massive board that your opponent can't beat. Well, let's talk about that because in a bunch of these games, I mean, game one, full combo right off the bat, and you built a huge field. Jovan just couldn't play around it. So when that's happening, are you feeling calm, or are you thinking, oh god, I've got to do this in two more games? Um, when that happens, game one, I'm quite, I'm like feeling very calm because if that resolves. Even if they have Lava Golem Steer Mode, it's still very fine because we've still got Strena that triggers when it's tributed. So I'm when that resolves, I'm very confident. And then we go into game two. There was quite a strong feel from Jovan in that. You had two copies of Con Con. One got negated or got rid of, and then you got the other one out. The Vanity's Fiend didn't really help the situation, but then you took the Sprite Red with the Triple Tactics Talent, summoned Lokai. And then there was a bunch of things like the, the freezing curses from Jova and flashing fire, so you just scooped. So what's going through your mind in those moments? So that game, I drew an atrocious hand. Uh, I had two copies of Lokai. I had Ash Blossom, two copies of Lokai, Twin, and two Concon. The Concons were useless, and the Twins, Lokais couldn't do anything. The reason that I normally I would never Ash the Runic card, but I had to because I knew if he had any sort of interruption, I lost my normal, my normal summon Lokai. 
Um, I like. I'm trying to think how to word it now. <laughs> um, if I top, I was actually very happy when he summoned Vantage Roller, because by, by him summoning Vantage Roller, it means that he's limited as well. And he, what, he only had, the only negatives he had is Vantage Roller and Cross. If I was top deck, let's say a Rika Glamour, I could then tribute that as cost, and then I could set up my, I could set up a board through his Con Con, sorry, no, his Con Con, through his Double Cross, and I would have been in like a very very good position, because I knew his card in hand. But unfortunately, I did not draw a Glamour or any Rika cards. But yeah. Well, that's why you go straight into game three. And again, just that full combo and that huge field right from the top. And then there was the, the really tragic misplay, which made the <laughs> all of the commentators go nuts and the crowd, was there was the imperm column. And that's when there was the Sprite starter being played in there. At that moment, are you going, OK, I've got this sealed? Um, as soon as he had two cards in hand, and after, after activating Kurokara, I kind of already knew I had a game. Even if that, even if he didn't make that mis mistake, I still had the Sheet and the Hypertron to negate and destroy, and a Drone Lockbird with a load of follow-up in hand. So I was pretty secure in my position regardless. I was going to ask you about Drone Lockbird and things. Are there things in this that you would typically side for things like the Runic Sprite matchup? So Runic Sprite is one of the most represented decks right now. Um, I side things like Ash Blossom in, because I think Ash Blossom is just a very good card against the Runic draw three. Because I can out-resource and win those games because of petaling, my uh, Rika Petaling Graveyard, which would one stuff every turn. But the draw three, it beats that. So I think like, little cards like that, for niche interactions, wins matches like this. I mean, it sounds like you've really got this Rika thing down pat, and you've taken this. That's now your fourth win, so you're now 4-0, and oh, isn't that right? Yes. Excellent. Well, best of luck throughout the rest of your Swiss rounds. I hope we'll see you in that top cut with that Rika representation. Congratulations again, Jess. Guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to have round five coming up very, very soon. But before then, it's time for more quizzing. Don't go anywhere. Today, I'll teach you the three steps to dueling greatness. Step one, obtain the Speed Duel GX Duelist of Shadow Spots. Step two, gather your allies and duel together. Step three, master the 20 new skill cards. And when you do, the Sacred Beast shall rise. Speed Duel GX, Duelist of Shadows. Available now. 200 cards per box, each box sold separately. Welcome back. So I told you we'd be back with more quizzing because we have to wait for round five to begin with the pairings and then to get our duelists and get them up onto our feature stage. So in the meantime, we've got plenty more coverage to come to you, oh, yeah. whether it's commentator tournaments or whether it's these kind of quizzes. So as you guys can see, next to me, I have three of our wonderful commentators. I have Basti, I have Tom, and I have Leo. Gentlemen, how are we doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are I'm you doing? Fun. I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking, Leo. I appreciate that. That was a great match to watch. It's very interesting to see Jess with the 
clearly the Rika mind. Yeah. I love that she was responsible for the the decks of so many other top players who were playing like Rika and Rika San Avalon and things. I think that's crazy. So speaking of topics like that, I've got some categories for you guys for oh, our quiz. Good one. So, Let's go. The transition boss. <laughs> I don't just segue these for nothing. So basically, we've seen that Tom has already taken part in one of the category quizzes. So we're not going to be doing that category. So Fair ignoring enough. that one, I'm going to read you guys the categories and I'll let you pick. So we have the Labyrinth Law, which is based on maze cards. Oh. We have Hall of Prize cards, which naturally features YCS prize cards from the past. We have normal navigation, which is, is there a monster with so-and-so in its name? Mm. And then there's the legendary collection recollection, which means each question relates to a re-released booster. So I'll give you the four categories that you get to pick from, and we'll go from there. So there's Labyrinth Law, Hall of Prize Cards, Normal Navigation, or Legendary Collection Recollection. I what would you like? Normal Navigation? I want to try nice, Normal. Yeah. That That sounds fun. All right. Are, I mean, are we going to get the, normal, the name of Normal Cards, or are we going to get the, the text? Uh, it's going to be... So basically the question is, is there a normal monster with banana in its name? Okay. And no. you have Let's to say, do this. Let's yes. do this. Buzz? No. Or no. Is and that, it's, buzz, it's buzzing in. Oh. And then okay. we'll move on to the to another category after this one. So I let's like see it. let's see how you guys Again, fare. you're going to have to watch Leo's hands over here. That's true. We can't you're, have any Marcello well. business going well, on. Well, Marcello was doing exactly. <laughs> ah, 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 I Marcello see. was always ready to jump in and google it, but it's fine. Okay. Normal navigation. Question 1. Is there a normal monster with six samurai in its name? Buzz. Leo. No. Buzz. Is incorrect. Buzz, yes, yes. Oh, do you want to go on? Do you know the name? We don't need to know oh, the name. You, if you know the name, I know it's the just, name. It's just a yes or no. Oh. And it's the opposite of what Leo said because he got it wrong. So nobody of them gets points. How? Or do both of Maybe them Maybe Leo points? gets minus Whichever one. Whichever one buzzed in. Tom, did you buzz? Well, I said, but you can decide who we got there first. I also know the name, so I think... Well, Tom, I'll give, I'll give this one to Basti, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next question. Are you guys now you know familiar with... Ask? It's Chamberlain of the Six Samurai. How could you not know this? <laughs> of course. It's got 100 I, defense. I know two, the set, two, but it's from Strike of Tom starts trying to prove why he should have got those oh, points. Oh, definitely should have got those points. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you made me pick! <laughs> I thought you guys were going, well, he said it first. Okay, let's go on to the next one. You guys now get how the format of this works, right? Yeah. Okay, second question. Remember to buzz in. Is there a normal monster with Destiny Hero in its name? Buzz. buzz. I think so, right? Uh, no. Is correct. So that is no. two points now to Basti. Goodness me. <laughs> Do you know the normal monster? I don't know what the normal monster is. No, there, is there is no normal monster. <laughs> oh, you said no, that's why. Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go to our one. third question. Is there a normal monster with a gladiator beast in Bast it? Yes, Bast oh, sh that was Basti again. Uh, yes, there's Andal. Yeah, I remember Andal. He was a beater. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. 1900 I'm crushing this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the highest attack setup for the level four. Yeah. Ones. Let's go to question four. Is there a normal monster with Insector in its name? Buzz, Buzz. no. Oh, sorry. Do you I think you buzzed first. I think Tom, Tom, Tom yeah, was a little yeah, quicker. Yeah. Okay. Did you say no? I said no. Correct. That is correct. And then finally, is there a normal monster with alien in Buzz. its name? Leo. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So oh, that means alien shock trooper. One yeah. point. One point. Three points. That correct. is correct because yeah. that's how many add to five. I can do <laughs> quick basic arithmetic for children. So, that means we have three different categories to go through. So let me give you those and see which one you'd like. Obviously, we can't do trick or trap tricks because yeah. Tom's done that one already. And I definitely remember all of the answers. Yep, exactly. So we have the Legendary Collection Recollection, a Hall of Prize Cards, or Labyrinth Law. Which would you like? I mean, if we play them all, just go through them step by yeah. step, right? Yeah. Just go with the Labyrinth Dealer's one. choice, yeah? Okay, we'll go with Labyrinth. So, these are all questions based on maze cards, okay? What is the total attack plus defense of Labyrinth Wall? Buzz. Maze. Oh. That was bad. <laughs> I say maze. <laughs> you just, buzz. Did you just say maze instead of buzz? I did say buzz. maze. Maze. <laughs> uh, I will go with uh, 3,000. That is correct. Goodness me, another point. That's four points. Make sure you guys keep a tally of points because I I'm hopeless to remember. 4-1-1. Four, one, one. What's bad. the 4-1-1? <laughs> well, it's the Basties winning. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, okay. I like now it. Now we got to step it up. That was a Leo-level pun. How one. many eyes 
does Jirai Gumo have? Bas, Bas. Bas. Oh. Was that Basti Bas. again? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's free. Is correct. Five points. Goodness me. Right. How many new Gate Guardian Fusion monsters? Bas. In... Who was that? Was that Tom? Was Tom? Yeah. Three, four, three. Uh, oh, you said four. three. Oh, it's four, for goodness sake. Did you say four, Leo? Uh, I was going to say four. Okay, well, I'm going to have to give that point yeah, to Leo, yeah. then. Uh, I don't know why I Stolen. said three. There's three the new one. So there's three, three five. Two, and then there's... Uh, How many points has Tom now got? One? Just one. And then you've now got two, Leo. Yeah. Okay. I'm coming in at you. Let's see sure. where we go from here. <laughs> okay, guys, next question. Easy one. First, fastest finger first here. Name the three monsters... Buzz. Okay, Can let's go, go, let's go, yeah, let's yeah, go. One of the three monsters. Go for it. <laughs> Sujin. <laughs> oh, 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 and Saigajin. That's not buzz, true. That's buzz, not buzz, it. Buzz. Oh, Tom. Yeah. Sanger of the Thunder is the last one. Correct. Sanger of the... Uh, why? <laughs> so that means it's two know. points for Tom now, which means Leo and Tom are drawn, and Basti, you have five. So here's the last of the Labyrinth Law questions. Goodness me. It's quite a tough one. I'll get it. How many years has it been since the last time Wall Shadow was released in the TCG? How many years? The last time. Yep. Bas. Basti. Zero years because it wasn't Maze of Memories. No. Before, okay. before that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a it wasn't. It's not called Wall Shadow. It's called. It's got yeah, a slightly. Yeah, it's a different card. It's yeah. Shadow Ghoul. Yeah. Okay. True. I'm gonna say Buzz just for fun. Okay. And let's say. 20 years. Yeah, probably 20 is a good guess. Incorrect. Buzz. So, go on, Leo. 19 years. 19 years, did yeah. you say? It was 10 years. Oh, wow. Okay, so got to read some digits. points. Too, right? Okay, Must so have. that means we can move on to another category. Which okay. one would we like? Buzz. Do we want oh, taller <laughs> prize cards or legendary collection recollection? Recollection. Prize card. Oh, okay. You want legendary collection yeah. recollection? Okay. God, it's quite difficult. It's quite a mouthful to say that one, I'll be honest. Okay. What is the cover monster? On Invasion of Chaos. Buzz. Basti. Um, that's the... Ah... Uh, dark Magic Ring of Chaos. Correct! Oh. Six points to Basti at this point, goodness yes. me. Okay, what secret rare monster appeared in Pharaoh's Servant? Buzz. Basti. Jinzo. Correct! <laughs> I think we have a clear winner here, everyone watching at home. But let's keep going. Which booster pack would you find? Would, let me try. Let me start again. <laughs> let me start again. Which booster pack would you first find Mirror Force in? Buzz. Buzz. I think that was Basti again. Uh, Metal Raiders is correct. <laughs> right. Next question. Which is the first booster pack featuring Hungry Burger? Buzz. Leo, Buzz. I, this is the first one I don't know. I was like, <laughs> okay, Basti, Basti always just <laughs> shouts Buzz Basti because works. the questions no, are know easy. The no. Yeah, of course you know the cards. <laughs> the questions are rather easy, so I just shout Buzz this time. So to give be me an answer now. Give me the first no booster idea. pack featuring Hungry Ruler. Burger. Sorry? It was Spell Ruler. Ruler. <laughs> yes! <Yay>. Let's go! <laughs> okay, right. And then final question it. of this category. Which booster pack would you first find Swords of Revealing Light? Buzz! That was Tom. Legend of the Eyes. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a crossover from an earlier yeah, quiz. Yeah, very yeah, yeah. good. Well, good memory I'm there. It's a quiz question I'm that we learning. had earlier. One of the back and forth was named spell cards from Legend of Blue Eyes. Yeah. Very, very good. So, that means we're down to our last category. Do you want to recap the points? How many points have we all got? Oh, I have too many to recap. I'm so, oh, I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> I, I definitely think I want more than Leo. I That's think I have seven. <laughs> I should have seven or eight. I think we're both at I think, three, I think right? you're yeah. on seven. I think seven, so seven or eight, yeah. Three, three. Let's see seven, if we can beat three. Sebastian together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, is uh, actually it must be eight because we only missed one question. I and think you've so, got yeah. three each. Okay. Good thing again that we could do basic GCSE maths up in this house. So we'll go on to our final quiz question and we'll see if Basti can beat the other two contestants combined. <laughs> so, gentlemen, here is your next question because our round five pairings have just gone online, which means we'll soon have our round five feature match. Hall of Prize Cards. What was the prize card given out at the 200th YCS? Buzz. Leo. Dual Link Dragon, the Dual Dragon. Is incorrect. Bas Basti. Uh, it was uh, Chaos Dragon of Armageddon. I'll give you that. It's Chaos Emperor, the yeah, Dragon of Armageddon. No. Yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have most of the words. Setting us there. down. I, so I had to. Don't you remember no, the trophy that Nico Schlierkam held yes, with the beautiful I dragon in it? Next one. How many number, prize number monster prize cards have been given out of past YCS events? Buzz. Buzz. Okay, oh. go ahead. That's Tom. I'm just guessing. I'll say five. 
Incorrect. Buzz. Basti. I would go with four. Incorrect. Leo? Come on, Leo. Buzz, three. Correct! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means we seven points done. between the two of them. Four, three, and eight. Nine. 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 Oh, he's oh, gone, Ron. Goodness, goodness <laughs> me, this is really getting out of hand. But let's see what happens with these final couple. Is oh, That's the wrong category. I almost read the normal navigation one. What is the attack of Minerva, the exalted Buzz. life sworn? 2000. Tom got the point straight away there. Wow. Next one. How many synchro monsters have been given out as prize cards at past YCS events? Plus. Two. Correct. For Basti. How did you get that? That's your Outrageous. tenth point. So how many have you two got between you? Less than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's do the last one just to make sure we've got them all done. Maybe we've got nine if we've done four rounds. <laughs> what is the YCS prize card with the shortest name? Buzz. Go on, Leo. Blood Mephist. Correct. That's that good. was impressive. So that one. means you have 10 points, which means you must have... <laughs> Less. 10. No, we got 10. Oh, yeah, we Did got you just nah, make that up again? Nah, no, nah, no, nah, we've nah. done four rounds. This is the fifth round. Yes. So that means there were 20 questions, but one question that none of us got, yeah. which was... And I have 10 points. Yeah, so we should also So that means 10. you have nine points. No, there have been 21 questions, right? How, how do you get to 21? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did you Hang get on. to 21? This is the beginning of the fifth. No, how far through the fifth round are we? We, we just did. We just did the fifth round. Oh, we just done 20 <laughs> questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going nuts. Okay. Yeah. Basically, Basti's won. That Basti's won against not just one of his opponents, but both of them combined, which is pretty impressive. Guys, thank you for watching this quiz. Like I said, the reason we do this is because there's so many duelists here that if even 10 of them out of the thousands have extra time judge ruling, it's going to mean that we have to wait a little bit before we get the next pairings get the next duelists, and then get them up on stage for our feature match. That being said, the duelists are now being fetched, so stay tuned, because very soon we'll be back with our Round 5 feature match. Hello and welcome back everyone to the coverage of YCS London 2023. Here joined with me is Tom Payne. We're going to be discussing the public events that are available throughout the course of this weekend, aren't we? Yep. So the first event to talk about, uh, obviously if you're looking at us, is the Wing Karibo over here. So you can win this Wing Karibo if you are the winner of the Speed Duel event, which is happening today. It's an Attack of the Giant card. Um, Speed Duel will also be doing on the stream later. There'll be a little caster tournament for you to enjoy. Um, the other big events going on are the Time Wizard. So we have on the Friday the Time Wizard for, uh, from March 2010 format, which, uh, which is an excellent format, a lot of decks that people play, a lot of innovation, even people looking at older decks. Even until today, people still even are creating today. new strategies. Yeah. yeah, so there's obviously like a wealth of decks that people did play. There were YCSs at the time. So famously, uh, Jeff Jones won a YCS Edison with his Quick Draw Dandy Warrior deck, I think was the name. But people are still innovating new decks, and you'll see some spicy ones that the casters are playing um, over some the weekend. Some fairies, some fish. Yeah, some whole, fairies. Whole bunch some, oh, we're having fish as well. That's very exciting. Yeah. Um, and another very popular Time Wizard event that we have this weekend uh, will be played on a large event on Saturday is the April 2005 format, uh, which is a very, very popular format among the community, which the streamers will also be, the casters even, will also be playing for you in a little tournament throughout the weekend. Also, we've got a whole array of other public events happening. We've got a Master Duel uh, public event that people can enter. They have an entire booth and laptop set up for this, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. you'll see us uh, in our welcome video enjoying the Master Duel area. Yeah, so for anyone who wants to uh, take part from now on of YCS, there should be uh, booths set up ready to play Master Duel with uh, pre-constructed decks. Oh. Yeah, as well as in eight-man tournaments throughout the weekend to help you win uh, prize points. 
Yeah, these prize points are a way that you can, uh, basically, if you want to spend the entire day playing out winner mats, uh, mini eight-man eight -man tournaments, yep. uh, you can use these points and accumulate them over the course of multiple YCSs as well, not just this one necessarily, uh, to try and win, well, I suppose the ultimate prize would be another giant card. Yeah, but you'll be able to see a full picture in uh, Ed's walk around where he shows you the prize wall among the rest of the other venue. Stay tuned, and we'll be back very shortly. Sixth anniversary! <laughs> you can't do a thing against my creepy crawlers! Here I go! My entire swarm attacks! What? You don't mean mirror force! Look at these great presents! Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links campaign underway! Ah!
Welcome back. We're now here with our fifth round feature match here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, live from London. So in front of me, I have Jack Staples and David Kennedy, who are ready to get this feature match underway. So guys, let's do ourselves a quick high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. Jack, you're going to roll that first, and that's a six. David, let's see what you're going to roll. Can you beat a six? You cannot. So are you going to go first? Okay, Jack is going to go first. So I'm going to hand you guys over to the same guys that we've just seen quizzing. Guys, take it away for our round five feature. Thank you so much, Ed. And now after quizzing, we also went through the venue. And sometimes you have that experience when you walk through the top tables. And then at some point, you just stop at the table and be like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, Leonard and I, we had that experience when we walked through the top tables in the last round. And we stopped by Jack's table. And I can tell you, I don't even know whether there ever was a featured match involving this archetype, honestly. I I'm can't remember one so from the top excited. of my head. Like, we've just been trying to figure out what all of the cards do. Like, this is going to be great. This is going to be a completely new experience for us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to see what it does, especially now that Jack won the die roll, and yeah. so he will be going <laughs> first, and I think that's pretty crucial for this deck. He's also still XO, so he must have been performing quite well so far. So yeah. I'm, I'm really and excited the deck to see this. we are talking about is Super Heavy Samurais. And I mean, everybody was hyped about this deck lately because this archetype is getting support in Cyberstorm Axis, which is our next main set. But that set isn't even out, and he's still for a tournament already. He's figured out something that no one else has, which is yeah. always a very exciting thing to see in a tournament. You see someone who's come up with something completely new, no one's expecting it, and maybe he can... Totally. And he's pairing it up with the Vernus Silves card, and also the Earth Channeler card, which yeah. is really, really, really interesting. And he's going to face the Kashira deck, so probably the deck he's most prepared for. So I'm really excited to see. I hope you guys at home are as well. Let's get into the action. Let's get into round five of YCS London here into the feature match. So first of all, there is a pretty interesting feature to the Super Heavy Samurais, which is you are only running monster cards. Yeah, I mean, you are kind of forced to because yeah. the Super Heavy Samurais all say, hey, this effect is only going to work if you have no spells or trap cards in your graveyard. So we actually have a list of 40 monster cards and there are the Vernusilf cards we are talking about. He's starting it off with Vernusilf of the Flourishing Hills, discarding itself and also one of the other archetypes in his deck, the Super Heavy, heavy Samurai cards we were just hyping up so much. So what does the, this Vernusilf do? This one adds one Vernus of card from your deck to yeah. your hand. And then it will allow you to special summon one of the Earth monsters in your graveyard? Exactly. Okay. So... Really strong. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like a good deal. Two cards, no, norm no normal summon used. And we have our And you get a special summon and a search. It's a bit like a danger. Yeah. yeah. And Fair just enough. for Earth decks, pretty much. Yeah. Because you are now locked into Earth monsters. And uh, we lately have been... Uh, we, we saw those cards in Earth Machine decks, and we also saw it in uh, Madolce. But now we also are going to see this in Super Heavy Samurai, which is absolutely insane. So let's I just quickly... I would have never doubted that. Yeah, so we, that we just so quickly come on. <laughs> and look at that! We already have Regulus on the board. So I think he's trying to set up a negate here before he's even trying to get into his combo. We summon out the Super Heavy Samurai um, Soul Breaker armor and is immediately linking it away into the Super Heavy a super heavy samurai scarecrow. Oh, this is going to be difficult. If we <laughs> <laughs> super heavy, say those super names. scary. Super scary scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the, the soul piercer that he's just brought back, I believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. sure. That it is. seems to be one of the important cards in the deck. It is a free of indeed, yeah. You can, every time it's sent to the graveyard, I think not even once per turn, I might be saying that incorrectly, but I think you, any number of times, if you send it to the graveyard, you it get to not search once per turn, you're right. any super heavy samurai card. So yep. that's got to be a very useful card to. Get whatever so you want. There's the second Scarecrow. And we were discussing and wondering what is going to be the end goal here. Like, what is he trying to accomplish? What kind of board are we trying to set up there? And look, there is the effect. Because, funny enough, all the uh, soul cards of the Super Heavy Samurai, they are able to equip to, uh, uh, to your, one of your monsters. And then they can use their effects in the Spell Trap Zone as well, which we just see here from the Soul Piece Maker. Yeah, and Soul Peacemaker tributes a monster you control equipped with this card by 
this card's effect and uh, special summon one super heavy samurai monster from the oh, deck. So actually and awesome. that is one the one, one we were wondering cards. about, Tom. Is that, that the is, big one? Yeah, that is the big one. We were like, why is he playing this? But now we see that he can just summon it out from the deck. It is, uh, oh no, wait, isn't it? No, it's not no, the big one just yet. Scales. It is actually summer scale, so it's not just uh, the big one yet. That one just special summons something from the grave again. Soul Piercer, now he it's is so going crazy. crazy. We're, like just, we're just exchanging like our graveyard with our field, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going step by step. Okay, back like to the graveyard. A firewall dragon but there now is the card that is very well known for Earth Machine players, because this is Ancient yeah. Gear Ballista, and it's also going to search the card that you're usually seeing in Earth Machines, because we are fetching out Ancient Gear Box here from our deck. I love Ancient Gear Box. Yeah, and it's look, so Ancient fun. Gear Box is then again... Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, he's okay. adding that, yeah, yeah. He, so the he gets a gearbox, double search because there was another piercer involved. Yeah, Ancient Gearbox, when it's added, you then get to add another card from your deck to your hand with a machine, I believe, with 500 or less attack, which is a really useful effect. And yeah. I think this is an infinite track that he just searched. Yeah, the only infinite track card that he is uh, playing, the Tunneler, comes down. We are also special summoning one of the uh, soul cards soul again. Soul horns? Yeah, this is soul horns, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, no, we're, we're tributing for the Infinite Track Tunneler. Yep. Now. And that, does that allow you to special summon itself and then the Infinite Track Tunneler has an effect oh, in your graveyard? Look, this looks like a Link 4 to me, so there would be two options. It's either Appaloosa or Saryuja here, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, I really want to see a Saryuja. I want to see where this is it going. It is Appaloosa, oh, though. I've been let <laughs> down. <But> don't forget <laughs> about the graveyard effect of Infinite, Tech, Infinite Track Tunneler. Also a difficult one to pronounce. <laughs> Surely. This one is part of Everest from the graveyard. Yeah. But you will need Earth Machine Monsters for that. Yeah. I Which like is not a big deal yeah. with Super Heavy Samurai, <laughs> though. And he's just been, he has been going through all of those now for multiple times already. So there are plenty of Earth Machines. And look, you can even recycle your extra deck. So when you're getting more of those Super Heavy Samurais onto the board now, you can just link one into your Scarecrow again. I love the way you can't run any spell cards, but then the Super Heavy Samurais are just equips, yeah. and you can get such a pot of avarice. You don't need any spell cards. You have all of the spell effects you want. <laughs> yeah. It seems like equipping monsters as equip spells, or like equipping them uh, to a monster, is a thing today. Because we saw the Cartagen in the spell trap <laughs> yeah. zone a lot today. Now we see the super heavy Samurais in the spell trap zone. Monsters are just taking over the game. We have the hand oh, traps. Oh, but this looked like a pass. So this is the end board yeah. we were looking for. And another Ash was picked up, and of course, also the Level Ancient four Gearbox monster is still in there, yeah. That is uh, green. The level <laughs> 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 Just a second ago, you knew the name, my uh, friend. Yes. The green. It is the uh, scales. Scales. Scales, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, oh, and oh. look, David with the classical opening, activating the Reichphobia. Oh, no, it's not Reichphobia. <laughs> That's yeah, another planet. planet is to search the Scarecrow. Uh, right. Right, like Phobia has to search for Scarecrow, yeah. but this one, this of course, is, like is very soft. soft. Yeah. And, and he are. immediately answers with Ash. And honestly, I kind of like it, because we yeah. have a way to deal with the monster effects with Appaloosa on board, and sometimes your opponent just doesn't have access to Kashira monsters at all. Also, you don't have a way to answer a Unicorn, because Unicorn just attacks over Appaloosa. Pretty much, yep. I do agree that was a very smart play there. Appaloosa only at 2,400, yeah. because it had three yep. materials. Exactly. I think he used the ancient gear one to summon out a blue so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was linked to. Oh, so, but there is Unicorn course. already in hand. And he's revealing it for some reason. <laughs> he's thinking this about card, it. Uh, those are all Cyber Dragons. Just in case you're not familiar with the um, Kashira archetype, there is no effect being activated in hand. You just special summon them to the field. And uh, he's using the effect of Unicorn here, which I don't really understand, because that is always going to draw out the first negate of the Appaloosa. Well, maybe he has a plan for it. Obviously, you could just attack, but he might want to do more things in his main phase one before... Yeah, fair enough. I mean, also, attacking. this will... This will draw out two negates out of the Appaloosa now, because on Resolve you can just use the second effect of Unicorn, which I did he not see him like doing. Done that. Yeah, because you could banish, you could just let your opponent banish a monster if you're, if you're precious about your negates. Oh, oh, that, that makes much more triple sense. tactics talents. That is huge. I and think I think Regulus can. That has that, to be though, negated. Probably a card you would have to negate. Your opponent could just take it with oh. Regulus. Oh, but. Oh, it looks like if he's pointing to it, that means yeah, it's resolving, right? There is no targeting on the activation, so. Okay, yeah. we uh, okay. okay, that Maybe was a little was bit of a misunderstanding, probably, yeah. but there is going to be the negation of the triple tactic talents. What's coming next? Is it birth? Birth would be the card you're looking for. You oh, 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 triple wow. tactics thrust as well. But what are you even fetching here? Because as far as I know, Regulus negates the effect of the card, so you couldn't activate another talents here. Yeah. So 
he would have to go with something else. And let me check his deck list. I what mean, is I, I was just thinking he's not playing he's spell cards, but that he could was search a cash tier theosis, theosis or a pot, pot of, of prosperity. prosperity. I mean, there are pretty good options. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. The, the difficult target, like when you need to get something going, is terraforming. But obviously, if you already have yeah, used the field spell, this for time, sure. It's, yeah. So it probably is going to be uh, the prosperity or the good old Theosis. Yep, as you were thinking, Theosis is going to be the solution here. I can't wait for another Triple Tactics card to come out and then we can have a Triple Triple Tactics <laughs> turn. I don't, I don't know what the card would be, but <laughs> it would be fun. I think Thrust is quite popular this weekend, to be yeah. honest. In, in the last weeks, on a regional level, I didn't see it that much, but I feel like a lot of people have actually decided to run this card this weekend, and I do like it a lot, to be honest. I think it's because players acknowledge the power of Kushtira. They know, okay, yeah. there are a lot of players on cash right now, so let me just play Thrust because it makes the matchup so much easier. It is easier. so good versus that I, deck. I love having it going second. It is yeah. one of those cards going first. It's a little bit iffy yeah, sometimes, for sure. But going second, it's so easy to activate because yeah. your Kashtira opponents will always end with a Kashtira Rise out. 100% agreed. So, that Theosis is going to resolve, of course. Jack has already activated Ash Blossom this turn, so the other copy of this card in his hand is not going to do anything. And we're... S oh! That is very interesting to me, because that Rysart... I mean, he would have to go Battle Phase first here, because otherwise he's just going to negate the effect of Rysart here, and then you don't get it to be a level 7 monster, which you want to. Yeah, so I'd be interested as why he chose to do that rather than Fenrir. Maybe he has a Birth in his hand Probably. or a Fenrir as oh, well. Oh, he has Prosperity, okay. That is a lot of cards in his hand, to be honest. It is indeed, yeah. That At is some is points I would have thought that maybe he's but running out of cards. Has but he he just just got, it looks like he has just the one left. Yeah. Unless oh. he's... Besides the Prosperity, only one more card in his hand. Prosperity now about to resolve. I think we are catching six cards out of his extra deck. That's what you usually do. I mean, in the Kashtira deck, you even play cards dedicated to being banished yeah. by Prosperity. I, I love this interaction. I mean, it feels somehow like cheating, right? <laughs> that you've got, you know, you're supposed to be banishing it face down. And that's supposed to be getting rid of it. But then yeah. you can just attach them with... Kashtira Rice Heart. Interestingly enough, uh, David has decided to only run Garua. There are multiple ta targets. You could also play uh, Infinity Track Goliath, yeah. which is an Infinity Track I versus the Infinity Track, funnily enough. And then, of course, also the. Um, some people are play Entis as well as a target for that. But he only runs Garura, which I understand, though. What do so, you think he was, oh, he was hoping I, for? I think he looked for Birth here. Yeah. To extend but his that would make sense. Uh, Kashtira Scareclaw is it's fine, it's fine pretty good. as well, right? I mean, it's because actually really good because you can banish with Rysart for cost and then you can uh, use the Scareclaw Kashtira to banish the Fiosis, which then adds you yeah. back the card that you banished. So you could get to birth with that, which is really strong here. You just have to be cognizant that you're not going to... Well, it's going to be very hard to win the game on this turn. I think... Because you've already used Prosperity. Actually, the, oh yeah, you, oh yeah, you got to be aware of that. I was... I was gonna say, I think we could see 8,000 points of damage here. I was here. gonna say that, but you'd need 16,000. Yeah, then that is really <laughs> tough to get. Uh, yeah, 8,000 is very, very achievable for this deck, but 16 yeah. is uh, probably not. A lot tougher, for sure. <laughs> so we are banishing the Birth, so he sees the line. With the Skia Clock Ashtira, probably going to banish the Theosis to add back the Birth. But first of all, it is on Jack to decide whether he wants to negate that now. I mean, I he, like would be, it. he would be preventing it making it a level 7 and also preventing himself getting cards banished from the deck. I mean, you at this point, of course, you can negate everything because it's basically free. You're not going to get OTK'd this turn. Yep. Yeah, it's only saving you like 400 yeah. points of damage in theory. But possibly less if there's a Fenrir in play because that's just going to end up banishing the Appaloosa anyway. But the Appaloosa should be on zero attack now? Oh no, wait. It's he negated two effects. Okay, yeah. yeah, so he can still negate one more. Which is huge, because now he forces him to go into battle phase before using the Skia Clock Ashtira. Oh, that's good, actually, yeah. yeah. I hadn't considered that. But so he, uh, I, I, I think, think he should have just used the effect... Oh, okay, no. he can now still use the effect of Unicorn, but you're just not going to negate that. Let him bench a card from the extra deck, and uh, you are still having a good time then, because you don't... Uh, oh, no, no! no. I think he should have definitely tried to negate the Skia Clock Ashtira there. And now we are attacking, so uh, that is... Oh yeah, more damage with Raid Sword now, so maybe just, just the 100 damage that you yeah. got from the Rise Heart. That's uh, why you activated <laughs> the Theosis before and just the effect. <laughs> to, to be fair, I d don't quite understand the line that David chose here in terms yeah, of I'm attacking. Not sure. and yeah, I, you could have just... I don't know. I, I don't know why you would use Prosperity there. 
before attacking. So the thing is, I think the main goal of the deck is to get to a rise heart, which is also really good versus the deck because it shuts down the Vernus of engine. But yeah. you locked yourself out of getting into a rise heart here because now Skiaklok, Ashtira and Unicorn will be the only level 7 monsters on the board. And therefore, because the, the effect of rise heart was negated, so it's still a level 4. And therefore you can only go for a rank 7 here, and then you can reborn the monster you detached for some kind of an effect, Mind what? Hacker maybe, he to might reborn. still have Fenrir in his hand. That would make the most sense to me, what, as to why you would search a Rise Heart yeah. off of Theosis rather than Fenrir. That makes sense, for sure. Because otherwise you, you could just add the Fenrir and then add, add the Rise Heart afterwards. But maybe maybe he's just made a small mistake here. I think it would have been better off just going into the battle phase with Unicorn Probably. after. Probably, it would have been so much safer. There's the Burv, we, we just added back with Theosis. The doesn't look like there is a Fenrir, to be honest. Can you see what the last card is? I don't, but... I oh! oh. <laughs> but I think if, if it is He's teasing Fenrir, us with it. <laughs> if it is Fenrir, you're probably just... Okay, yeah, it is Fenrir. Okay. It you is Fenrir. are right, it is Kashira Fenrir. That did make the most sense to me, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That definitely makes sense. Honestly, imagine Jack had Nibiru here. Nibiru would be such a <laughs> blowout card right yeah. away, right there. It would be getting rid of the entire board. Nothing would be left for David except the Kashira Birth, of course, which is pretty good follow-up. But uh, then it would be back over to Jack, who probably now will have to deal with a Kashtira Rise Heart, as I, was as I was just talking about it. Does David run the Telemans Kashtira as well? I uh, don't think so. Let me check. I was just thinking that might allow you to extend your plays a little bit more on that this turn. That is indeed true, but be another way. Not, no, okay. not. Uh, people have been cutting it lately from the deck. Yeah, I've seen like either zero oh. or one copies. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, obviously, if you did, then you could make a rank 7 detached material and then add the Telemans catch tier and then banish, and then you'd be able to make an Arise Heart and another rank 7. For sure. Is, is there a way for David to now access Shangri-Ra, trigger it so he can just summon the... Ah, this is oh, that is yeah, not going to work. Negated. That is a level 4. So we have... The thing is, I really like getting Shangri-Ra onto the board when we have the field spell. But that would mean we cannot go into Rise Art this turn, so I'm not really sure what's going to be his priority here, but it does look like he's trying to go into Shangri-Ra, actually. He's having a good think about it. But that would be the only rank 7 I could imagine going into here. I, uh, I don't know how much you think Diabolosis is needed. Go for Diabolosis. I really don't understand why you would need that card right now, because it it's doesn't a, progress it, your it's turn at all. It's almost what you want. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Oh. Okay, it is Beer yeah. Rise Art. That makes a lot more sense to me. Because Diabolosis could trigger Shangri-Ra. <laughs> if there would be one. But yeah. you can't <laughs> make them both at the same time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the only cool thing would have been with the uh, Diabolosis, that you could detach yeah, one exactly. of the monsters and then reborn it again. And then make it, but by that time you've already used yep. the Diabolosis and there's no way to exactly. trigger the Shangri-Ra. So, we draw another super heavy Samurai card for turn here. And we are starting things off with the... Leo, you are the expert. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let, let's see what he drew, first of all. Uh, it kind of looks to me like... I think it was so, scales. So we're summoning scales here, but okay, he had yeah, that in head already, yeah. yeah. The picture also looks a lot and like scales. So he, he drew like into a Transporter. Transporter is a really interesting card, which looked pretty good versus Kashira to me. So Super Heavy Samurai Transporter actually makes you summon monsters to the opponent's side of the field. And yeah, Kashira has a problem when you have monsters on your own side of the field because they need an empty board. Unless like you have both. Scales. I'm True. imagining what Scales does based on what's happened and the name Scales. That when you summon it, you get to summon monsters so you have the same number as your opponent or something like that. Um, just when it's normal or special summoned, you can target one level 4 or lower Super Heavy Summoner monster in your graveyard and special summon in defense oh, position. Okay. Almost. Almost. I, I, I mean, really wanted it was a that nice to be... Idea. He, he yeah, summoned like out another level he, 4. It, it did that, but he I just wanted that. He in fact equaled the score of he monsters on, on the it field. It was just a happy, happy coincidence. That, that's <laughs> what it did. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to continually search off of this Soul Piercer anymore. Ooh, but look at that. The, he's that playing Nightmare Cerberus. Oh, he's also playing Bagus. Oh, and he didn't play around the Cerberus. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Usually, you're going to summon Kashir Arise in the extra monster zone, but now you gave your opponent the chance to destroy it with the Nightmare Cerberus. Baguska normally very good against cash tier, but in this situation, the not as useful. The problem is, what are you going to do after that? Yeah, you just wait. <laughs> See if your opponent can get something. But I yeah. really like going into Baguska, oh, to love be going. honest. You like going into Baguska? I kind of like it, yeah. The only problem is that there's already uh, Scareclaw, which has got that very funny effect of being able to attack in defense mode. And you but, can bring it back off birth. Uh, it's, it's under the Arise Heart, and... So you can still activate a rise heart. Oh right? yeah, true. Uh, not when Baguska is on the field. Oh, the no, it's just negates it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
negates the activated does, defense. Does Box do something when it's normal summoned? I don't believe so. Okay, he was handing it over to his opponent there. I was kind of... I, I don't think so either, but... He just handed it to nope. his opponent to read it. Go read it, it's just a box. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the, Nothing to see here. Yeah, but David this just must be Cerberus. I like Cerberus. Yep. That looks good to but me. Cerberus is still quite the heavy investment. You're going to get rid of one more card from your hand, which is not even the Ash Blossom, so and a Ryzer can still be chained onto the Soul Pierce, and then you're left with a Cerberus and an Ash Blossom in hand. What are you doing with that? Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be the cash tier of birth. Not really that much. Oh, so and he's gonna be able to attach a Garura. Ah, the attachment, he's oh, not no, going to be yeah, able to attach because you're correct, a Ryzeite yeah. is going to be the mandatory chain link one year in this scenario, so yeah. it will be destroyed before it can attach anything. It's testing players' knowledge of how you <laughs> uh, form chains in Yu-Gi-Oh! What's it when you have multiple effects that want For to sure. trigger at the same time? So those are going to mandatory be banished. Effects yep, go first. yep. A Ryzeite still on the field, so the materials for the effect have to be banished. Trying to, yep. of course, banish face oh. down the... Wait, did you just point at the Cerberus? I would be surprised. Wow, but Cerberus is being banished, and now this game is open again. We have this whole piece, and it can immediately go into the Scarecrow. Yeah, I think that might have been a not the best target. Oopsie daisy. Yeah. Why would you get rid of these Cerberus? What makes you so afraid of that Cerberus there? Uh, and look, Jack cannot even believe it. He's going to link summon right away here into his super heavy, a uh, super heavy samurai Scarecrow. <laughs> Maybe he's having flashbacks to Nightmare Mermaid that <laughs> your opponent has. A a nightmare in play, then... Uh, this feels so good I mean, for Jack here. Even he gets look on his face. Off. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you had me there, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just gonna keep I will playing. take it, I will take it. And we are searching again for the one we also saw in his first turn combo. This is the Super Heavy Samurai Soul Peacemaker. And you, you need to be careful here. I'm not 100% sure how this works, but if you use one of the Super Heavy Samurais as an equip spell, and then you use it as it's an equip spell, to special summon itself, then that would be activating the effect of a spell, which would trigger the cash tier of birth. So you yep. could lose some cards from your graveyard, so you do need to pay attention to that. And um, also, David needs to pay attention to that, because that is actually a pretty niche scenario. Yeah. Because you see there's a super heavy samurai deck in front of you, he's not playing any spell <laughs> cards, so maybe David has already ruled out the second effect of cash tier of birth. Cash tier of birth, yeah, it's a very like sneaky card. Yep. The, obviously, it's got two very other powerful effects. Oh, um, we are equipping so to all these monsters. So he does control a Kashira monster. So I think you should be able to use Kashira both if you want to. Yeah, on resolve of this, I think it should yeah. be. Yeah. But it should probably. I mean, so sometimes this is also an effect that Kashira players forget about because it's, also also it's, so it's easy, easy to, to forget, forget uh, yeah. preparations as well. But this card is so important, especially with all the runic decks running around, because this card on its own can actually carry victory yeah. versus a runic deck. It's very annoying for a lot of. They decks, activate a runic spell card. Trigger Runic Fountain as Chain Link 1, and then you just chain the Kashira Birth as Chain Link 2, and you're going to banish all the Runic cards they targeted. It's quite funny. We were talking about Chain Link, so that works if it's the Runic player's turn, yep. and then if it's the Kashira player's turn, it doesn't, yep. doesn't quite work and out. And look that at way. that, that's Super Heavy yes. Samurai Vagon, or Vag <laughs> Vagon, <laughs> Wagon, rather. Yeah. I was going to say, attention guys, we have a new card on the field. Yeah, this that's, is that's not a drill. also a free <laughs> off. It's not a drill, no, we already saw the drill. <laughs> And so I got one pump. When this is normal or special summon, <laughs> you can uh, change its <laughs> position to defense position. And then the cool thing is, you can just change it to attack position as part of the effect as well to search another nice. card. Yeah, no, but you can just search You're telling me card. I can change it from defense and then back Indeed, to attack yes. mode? Yes, <laughs> it is going back and forth and it has just lead to him summoning Anima. Wow. And he played into the Anima zone. He will be able to take the Rysard there. This is oh huge. Oh my goodness. Has he got a way to deal with the Cash Tira birth as well? He, he, I think he plays Phoenix in his extra deck, right? So I that think, would be pretty good. I mean, he still has a lot of plays, right? I think he is going to go for the victory in this oh, turn. Oh, there's Nightmare Unicorn as well. So he definitely has ways to deal with the Kashira birth. Now cards are oh, all over the place. Oh, and look what he has there, Liu. We were talking about that card before yes. the duel as well. This is the Awakening of the Possessed. Ni Furious Arc Fiend. And this is super special because this card can actually special summon itself from the deck. You've heard right. Leo yeah. had to explain it before. <laughs> we were to so me as well. shocked that there's a card now that can just special yeah, summon itself. But it does. From they, the they, deck. Just, they just really wouldn't believe me. I had to I say. Didn't, I, and honestly, if I was a judge as well, I would be thinking this card is going to be the most yeah, confusing you can card. Just special <laughs> summon it from the deck. In all of Yu-Gi-Oh. So you're, you're like you're grabbing your deck and be like, yep, I special summon something yeah. from the deck. Here we are. But we're just going for the battle phase now. Yeah. And I think Baguska is a pretty good solution now, though. It's oh no! Still, wait, wait. Oh no! Out to oh yeah, but no, it's absolutely not a good. Right? <laughs> it's not a good solution. You're but right. I mean, if you go for this 
At least yeah, it stops your opponent from you summoning back yeah. Unicorn or Fenrir. Yeah, yeah it true. gives you, it buys you a turn at, at boys. To be fair, he has Kashtira Unicorn in hand, so you can just special summon oh, that one, activate right. the birth, and then just go for the Scareclaw Cash, and then just play in main phase two. Well, at the very least, you won't have lost the game on that turn, that but hopefully you'd want something yeah. better. But I, I don't know what there is that is better. I think. Uh, I mean, I like Unicorn, but the problem is we don't nope. have any yeah. cards left in hand, so that's the, not going to work out. The will search a card. Oh, but so if you could link, and then oh, you go, yeah, you yeah, go into you a, link make a link too. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. That's really good. Look, we're going to Ballista to then search and go for the Unicorn, and then. Tell, but David then still has the unicorn in hand. <laughs> we were just talking about that, so he could just fetch himself another Kashtira birth. In the Battle of the Unicorns, there's Indeed, only one yeah. winner. It's yeah. the Kashtira unicorn, I think. So well, we are going to shuffle away the Kashtira birth. It, it's hard to believe for me that he didn't find a way to OTK. Still 3,600 life points left, yeah. <laughs> what lines he could have to add, I suppose. Uh, I mean, we are playing Axis Code Talker, and that is on its own already quite yeah. a lot of damage. And I mean, we got to a Unicorn, there were a lot of other monsters involved in this turn. With, so. with a Surge as well? Yeah, it, it seemed like that would have been the possibility. And now it's back over to David, who is feeling great again, because he has an open board in front of him, only a Nightmare Unicorn to face, and his own Unicorn, as we were just talking about it, in his hands. Playing versus only a Nightmare after this turn feels like a daydream for David. <laughs> not like a Nightmare, He's no. not <laughs> going to overwhelm him with the power of one. One single Kashtira Unicorn. Yeah, there it is, Kashtira Unicorn. Yeah, this card alone is doing so much now. And I feel like this is the, the true kind of power of the Kashtira. Obviously, a Rise Hod's a very powerful card, but the effect that just one Kashtira yeah. Unicorn is just going to set you a birth, which is then going to summon a monster from your grave and then Absolutely. add another monster from your deck to your hand and by itself put probably more than 8,000 damage in play. Also, yeah. is enough for uh, Jack and to that is take enough the game. For Jack, exactly. So we see David after going second in this game and in between looking pretty rough <laughs> taking down game number one here so it's kashira one super heavy samurai zero sadly so do we think that was the full power of the super heavy samurai that's what i'm asking or myself too. i'm wondering are we going to see something more exciting because that board to me looked kind of like if he was playing Kashtira earlier then if it, that was the sort of end board every time yeah. then maybe Kashtira will beat that yeah so if Most he's likely. been if he's been winning his previous rounds then maybe maybe we've got more to see I mean the hand Tantally. was really good he had to face against triple tactic talents and true, thrust true. and full combo which is unicorn <laughs> <laughs> he ashed the, the raid soft but the raid soft I mean, he had the Unicorn already, so that one was yeah. also really tough. But I think that the strategy of summoning a 2,400 attack points Appaloosa with a no, not even a Sakuretsu wrist and armor. <laughs> going German there. Sakuretsu armor in the back. Uh, how is this going to beat Special Summon Unicorn attack? So you'd recommend siding in a Sakuretsu armor if he has any? Yes. Maybe. I, I, would, be, I would be down but for that. I'm yeah. having the deck list right here. No Sakuretsu no, armor. Right. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. I'm <laughs> devastated. And a also, dimensional prison at least. In, no. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but in general, I gotta say, um, Jack seems to be quite confident in his main deck going first because his side deck is not going to feature a whole oh, lot of yeah, going I first cards. Oh, yeah, I love the side deck. Because pretty much he's playing a lot of Kaijus, different Kaijus. He's playing a pretty spicy card with safety on the Time Lord, actually. That's a pretty cool one. You have to be very creative with your side deck when yeah. you're locked into not no using any spells and, and traps. No traps. So yeah. a lot of popular side deck cards, Book of Eclipse, even the match. Eccentric is fantastic. Exactly. That is a funny one as well, yeah. It is basically a monster and it pops itself and then goes to the extra monster zone. It doesn't count as a monster. Pendulums are back, everybody. Uh, Pendulums are back. <laughs> not extra monsters. He's, he's not only playing eccentrics, he's playing pretty much another copy of eccentrics yeah. with uh, Mythical Beast Garuda which is pretty much exactly doing the same than yeah. the Eccentrics, because it's also just a mystical space typhoon in the scale. So do you think his opponent will know, you know, obviously I should, if I make my Shangri era, be blocking my opponent's pendulum zones. <laughs> of course you know how to <laughs> you know approach this. the super heavy yeah, samurai exactly. deck that is siding yeah. into Eccentrics and the Garuda. I mean, that is a really good point, actually, blocking zones, because you know that you only have to block five zones for a full zone lock here. That is indeed true, because there are definitely no spell and trap cards to be yeah. activated. I mean, none that are doing something. Yeah, that is true. Eccentric and <laughs> To the a big end board, yeah. But we are about to see everything that is going to happen here. Game number two is about to start, so let's go over to the table and let's see how super heavy Samurais here are doing for game two.
So, I hope to see more monsters being just summoned from the deck. I, I <laughs> like that mechanic. I think I'm, I'm, I'm building a whole deck around that now. This is the... the I don't, this to me is like blowing my mind. Having yeah. played Yu-Gi-Oh for I don't know, a very for long ages, time, yeah. a, a card that just summons itself. From, it's not like another effect summoning it. It's this card can summon itself. Yeah. And so guys, there are more. There are more. Yeah. That yes, can't for, be for real. Each possessed familiar. I don't know what the archetype name is. To be honest, it's, it's Peter just and also familiars. I think familiars, it's just think, familiars. Yeah. Oh, and that hurts oh, so much. Ashing Vernusilves is just a minus one. We had the Vernusilves of the Misting Seedlings, and that gets answered yeah. by the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And look, Jack is struggling to find a line after that. He doesn't really know how to approach this now. I love those ducks. Yeah, you like the ducks? I like the ducks. They are quite cute, aren't they? For sure, they are. They look like they're having a lot of fun. But Ash is having more fun today. Yeah, at the moment, Ash was a pretty good answer. But we have the normal summon of our I'm not too unhappy about it. You still get to put a card in your graveyard, and now the Ash is gone. Yeah, and I mean, we get to reborn that immediately. And we can make scales. our Super Heavy Samurai Link Monster once again, which do we know that what's the name of the Super Heavy Samurai Link Monster? Scarecrow. Scarecrow, yeah. Scarecrow. So, okay. We still have more Super Heavy Samurai cards in your hand, in our hands. So... So they got to the stop the Venner Sylph cards, but they didn't get to stop our Super Heavy Samurai cards now. And I assume the point of those is to get the Super Heavy Samurai cards. Yeah. If you've already got them, pretty much, yeah. I guess you're happy. I would agree on that. That's an amazingly powerful spell there. Basically, sort of tribute a Super Heavy Samurai, summon another one from your deck. I'd, I'd take that. And yeah, it's the Soul Pieces that just gets you another one <laughs> into your hand as well. So you're getting there step by step. We also didn't really talk about the side deck of David Kennedy. One card that could have been huge here, but is, has not yeah. found the way into his opening hand is Dimension Shifter, because this deck is very reliant on the graveyard, and therefore uh, it could have been a blowout card versus that deck. Oh, he, he linked into Anima. That cannot really be oh, what you like, Oh, that sounds right? like a possessed one. Oh, oh, yeah, true, yeah. Let's just grab our deck again. <laughs> Let's just grab you the deck again. You know what was going on. Of course, that's what he's playing Anima for. You need a, a spellcaster. Oh, I thought oh. it was just a fun way to use a level one, take your opponents. There it is. So he's going to get a search and the another familiar. one. Oh. I, di I didn't even get my head around that, but yeah, he linked into Anima to get a spellcaster onto the board, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> you need Thank to you see for the pointing lines. that out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But yeah, uh, I'm just checking on the side uh, on the side deck of David Kennedy here. The shifter would have been a good draw. The, the would impermanence would have been quite good as well, and he actually got that impermanence wow. there on the monster that has been summoned from the deck. Aya. Oh, but there comes a wagon as the search for the soul pierces still. So I mean, we we worked through two cards out of the hand of David. But does he have another way to get a super? Oh, he no has. That is not the best field. You can see it in Jack's face. He's not too happy, that's for sure. So, what's coming now from David? Does he have his Kushira engine going? Because at that point, drawing Unicorn, drawing Fenrir probably is all you need. Because that one. gets your... Oh, and I mean, Prosperity oh. is going to be a way to get into those, for sure. Yeah. But it, as we discussed in the last game, it does mean that Jack will at least get one more turn. Yep, that's true. Unless there are some very cool Kashtira combos that we <laughs> that haven't gets seen before. 16, that gets you to 16,000. You also, you probably know that that means your opponent probably doesn't have a strong Kashtira monster in their okay, hand. Okay, that's no so engine if they yet. miss off this. Oh, that's no that engine is. yet. That is, uh, wow. maybe Rysart is engine if he has like birth together had, with or, it. Or okay, okay, okay. When, he, when he takes the Fiosis, he already has a monster, that's for sure. Nah, he's definitely just setting up for later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's possible because none of the other cards would have gotten into play, right? That's true. Right, rise out potentially if he has rise like... Out, rise out uh, if you have the yeah. or birth. Yeah. Yeah, but he can't have nothing, nothing. That's, that's true. It's not possible. Oh, yes, Ogre. Yeah, Ogre makes ogre sense. Gets okay. there, yeah. For sure. Interesting to see that David has decided to keep Ogre in his deck because Ogre and Preparations, because we also saw the Preparations, are usually cards that he would side yeah. out going second because a trap card usually is not going to have that big of an impact going second because it needs so much time to set up. I this, like that. Yeah. This, by the way, heavily played into Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, a card that is not really popular <laughs> right now, but again, <laughs> so are the Super Heavy Samurais. Yeah. <laughs> so, we are grabbing, grabbing the preparations. Not a particularly useful card when your opponent doesn't have any trap cards. I mean, to be honest, it still guarantees you to grind very yeah. well. And now at that point, when your opponent ha is on very, very, very little cards, 
I really like having that card for the grind game here. It's lovely just because it's free. Yeah. If it wasn't just like free to add, I don't think anyone would be playing it because you just get it for free off the Ogre. You're like, That's why not? True. I'll just add it to my hand. I imagine Jack had another Ash Blossom because last game he had yeah. two. Imagine he could have just saved one of those for this <laughs> game because I think the OCC on this, like the play that David is doing right there is pretty desperate. I think using Ash here would stop his turn entirely. Now we're special summoning out the Kashira Fenrir, not searching it, we are specialing it out, and then he can fetch the Kashira Rise Heart with the Fenrir effect that is soon to be activated right now. Absolutely true. To be precise. But on the other hand, if he ashes with Yosef, that still gets to trigger the effect of Kashira Ogre. So you could look at yeah. your opponent's top five cards, just make sure they don't really get a good top tag, and then you'll probably get another turn. But so I mean, the battle phase does so anyway, right? Yeah, to say that, but so you're right. Would yeah. David know? I mean, we saw in the last game, right? He had the Fair choice enough. of the Cerberus and Fair the Super enough. Heavy Samurai Soul, but oh. he might not know what to banish. But we search for Unicorn. That probably that either means we have Rice out in our hand already, or or it's something we have for next birth. Turn. Or how's about? Or we are tribute summoning the Kashira oh, Unicorn. Right to search for the birth after that. That's my favorite of all of those. We've seen a tribute summon of a level seven in a previous feature match. Oh, we just got battle phase apparently. Yeah, we just got Battle Phase, use the effect of Kashira Ogre, Ogre on a tech de declaration, as uh, Leo was just suggesting. But I mean, that is, with a Rise Heart Search, that is full combo, right? As in, summon a Rise Heart. Oh, <laughs> I think... <laughs> no, no, you can, you can uh, no, not go for the full zone lock, but you can go for Shangri Era, oh, Fenrir yes, and yeah, Stamper yeah. Phase and a Rise Heart. I guess giving your opponent oh, the Gamma is pretty is, okay, Is that right? a Gamma and uh, Nash on top? Yeah. I mean, unless you... You, you can yeah, give him give, Gamma, give him you can gamma. give him Ash. It's, it's like, probably you take one of the lower free cards, because that means your opponent is drawing Gamma, and then the next turn is drawing Ash. Or, oh, you, yeah, okay. I, th I think it's, it's fine to take the Gamma, because that one actually can help you play, but... Uh, no, I Ash agree, won't. because if you want to make a Kashitira yeah. a Rise Heart, yeah. then Fair it's enough, a bit of a yeah. sitting duck to, true, true. to Gamma. I mean, you don't have any sp <laughs> spells or traps <laughs> to activate that could get banished, uh, and so oh, you you're have right. an open field for a Gamma. So in this particular deck, Gamma wouldn't have made the difference, I guess. But but have we seen the, the Cyframe gear link in the extra deck of Jack? Lambda, yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. could make He's Lambda, that would banish two monsters and then use the Gamma. Yeah, yeah, if, true. If that was a play that he could make. I'm not sure if he could get two monsters in play with his current hand, but... If he had, maybe he has Rice Heart in hand, so he could go to Shangri Era now and then special summon the Rice Heart, go for a big bang banish. I think we honestly, <laughs> I don't think we're even getting there. I think the plan right now is just to uh, pass on Shangri Era, special summon out another Fenrir. Yeah, look, it's just Imperium preparations, and then from there on, it's fine. Yeah, that's one thing. Like Jack might be happy to see his opponent doesn't have any. Kashtira, or that many Kashtira cards, but that means there are probably going to be other cards that are going to stop you from doing what you want to do. For one second, I was really upset about the Ash Blossom top deck, and then I thought, oh wait, we knew about we this. We knew it. <laughs> you should have already been upset. <laughs> should have been upset a few seconds ago. <laughs> oh, but he's but allowing it. Look, he... I mean, it, okay, it works uh, with... Okay, we already grabbed our deck there, but Jack made the quick decision to use Ash Blossom onto the effect of Kashtira, Shangri Ira. And I mean, at the moment, we, we know one of those cards is going to be Kashira Preparations. And therefore, we know one of those cards is not going to do much here. But the other card is much more impactful as it is Infinite Impermanence, which is just going to be used right there. But he didn't use it on activation, right? So this is going to be huge because you can just link it away into Scarecrow, discard the last card for Scarecrow, special summon back out the monster that wagon. We <laughs> wagon. The exactly. wagon, exactly. And then activate the effect again, because the first effect that was impermed was to put it into defense position, but the important effect is switching it from defense position to attack position, Yeah, right? true. What yeah, does right. it do when it's switched to attack position? Searches. <laughs> That's as, good. I like most searching. Of us do. <laughs> we were actually quite in sync there, but I guess was... preparations are just special summons a unicorn from the hand, right? Oh, yeah, true. He can also special summon from but the hand. That, that doesn't true. help, but he doesn't have Fenrir. Yeah, there's no Fenrir in his hand. That's true. This is actually not over. I don't think so. I think there is a line where Jack is getting back into his game, and I really like it. The only thing we have to be very careful is not to put any of our super heavy samurai equip monsters in the middle column. <laughs> As people who are watching yeah. the last feature match will be aware. Don't jinx it, Tom. It's don't very jinx it easy for Jack. To don't forget. jinx it for Jack. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So we are now using the effect of our Link monster, of course. 
Are we going for scales? This also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because that just snowballs into another monster. There's scales. Okay, he's using the middle monster zone. The middle You're monster zone is fine. The monsters. <laughs> you are okay with that. So yeah, we this, need is, to... this is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting closer. We just need one of those token things. You can put like for, for when the, the zone is not allowed to use for Nibiru, we just uh, for, for Shangri Era, we need a. Uh, that is not one allowed. That, uh, it's not allowed, no, but it would be very handy. <laughs> Indeed it would be. So, yeah. there is... Yeah, but now the wagon is coming back. The wagon is there in defense position. And as Leo was just saying, it will be able to use its effect to bring it back into attack position to search for another card. Fantastic. And maybe this time we are going to see the Axis Code Talker coming down. The problem with Axis Code Talker here, though, is if you want to get rid of the Kashira Shangri Era, you would have to banish three monsters in total because Kashira Shangri Era can protect itself by just uh, detaching material each time. And you oh. do need to do quite a lot this turn because you know your opponent is going to have yeah, the follow up of the unicorn. Sure. I'm, I'm scared. So there and is the Salt Claw. Who there are you scared for? I'm scared for the... Oh, perfect! Okay, played very around yes. good. Very good, We Jack. have had featured matches <laughs> where this has played such an important role. In fact, it happened in the final of a YCS London. That was uh, a few finals. years ago. It was, was semi-finals, yeah. Was it the semi-finals? It was Joshua Schmidt versus Ding Kang Pham, yeah. Well, I'm talking... The, the year before, it also happened in the finals. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. It, it must be this <laughs> place. It must be about <laughs> London, then. So, we got the Soul Claw onto the field as well. Special summoning itself from the Spell and Trap Zone. Going for another link too. We're climbing, we're climbing. There's Ballista. And I love we have Ballista. Just a free card just feels yeah. so much fun. It's like Sky Striker Engage. And also I, I didn't I didn't even think about Nightmare Unicorn because Nightmare Unicorn is getting rid of that Shangri Era with one card only in your hand. Does it with chaining oh, unicorn, the preparations? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because oh, maybe he wants to get rid of that. That that is actually quite a smart play here because I think we're summoning out the unicorn here. And then we're trying to banish the unicorn. Yeah, <laughs> the unicorn is then going to banish the unicorn from our opponent. I'm interested though. It feels very sketchy if to activate this and summon the unicorn from your hand because if it's in your hand, it's safe. You can always summon it next turn. It's very unlikely to come out of your hand. So unless your opponent OTKs you, you're going to have some follow up for the next and turn. The, the funny thing is here. Uh, I don't even know whether that's that funny for David, but there would be four monsters on board being ready to go into Axis Code Talker, right? Uh, maybe I'm missing out on him being locked into some kind of Earth monster. He could be locked into Earth machines by one of those effects, I'm not sure. I don't, he hasn't used any of the Verna Self monsters. True, yeah, he got turn. completely stopped on that. So we're searching for the Tunneler. I Did think these Heavy Samurais have good restrictions already. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, fair enough. So but he does have enough to make a Link 4. We, did we use the... Oh, now we are now using we the effect yeah. of Unicorn, okay. It is definitely an effect to summon the tunnel, I, I take it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, it, it, it has to be either Access Code Torco or Unicorn, I think. One I think Unicorn might even be more scary here because Unicorn is just going to get rid of those no. monsters really That's quickly. Shangri, what is the defense of Cash Terry Unicorn? Is it 2400? 25. 25? I think it's 25, 25, yeah. 21. Oh, it's, oh 21, of course. <laughs> uh, guys, I gotta be honest with you, I really. Dig that tunneler card. Uh, yeah, because it is just going to snowball into so many cards here. I right? like I like the way we should just ignore Leo's puns in there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I. <laughs> that, I've that, been doing that for a while. Yes. Okay, all that right. That is just the way to go. I that's can tell just you. The, that's the only way he'll stop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there is I another link summon. We didn't really catch which card he banished there, but let's see when he goes through his deck. Um, there is Saruja. I haven't seen Access Code Talker. Yeah, I think he went with the Access Code Talker there. But the Unicorn is still there, and we were talking about it. That Unicorn is just going to get rid of that Kashira Shangri Ira immediately. And honestly, this did look good, really good again for Jack, but here he is coming back into this game with full power. And keep in mind, preparation is nothing. It is a bit like birth. But you cannot special summon monsters from the graveyard. You can just special summon from hand or the banish pile. Absolutely. So and it would leave. David with just no cards. And here in that case, actually, the uh, Nightmare Unicorn is good enough to run yeah. over the well, Nightmare that's Unicorn. That's what I was worried uh, about as well. Because when you summon unicorn. it in defense mode, it means the Unicorn just kills both of your monsters. Yeah. So and now, what have you got left for next turn? Whatever you draw off the top of your deck? There is one card left in hand. Oh, yeah, there is one card left in hand indeed. Oh, I think, oh and I think I saw it. I think I saw Lava Golem in his opening oh, hand. Oh, yes. I'm pretty sure there's Lava Golem left. So it's not really helping him if we yeah. link away right now. If we leave the board right, wow. right there, and we are... Okay. <laughs> oh, that's Appaloosa, which is all right, because it will probably give him another turn. What's but the top deck here, though? Fenrir and Unicorn are really decent. Of course, the field spell will do, too. Prosperity as well. Birth. Oh, yeah, True Birth is also decent. What is it, though? I think 
Scare Clock Cash would also be good. The Banish is cost, Oh, right? that would be no, excellent. It's not. Uh, no, it's oh, an it's effect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. The thing is, you can then, then still spat. Oh, it's Pangratops Whoa, Pangratops. from the top. Wow. Pangratops is also oh, wow. really good. That is a fantastic the blast from there. the past. I like. It's weird to see because obviously most people call Fenrir the new Pancratops. <laughs> <laughs> so he's running. He wants more. He's got the old Pancratops and the new Pancratops. Yeah, but I, I really like Pancratops in Kashira specifically because it is a level seven as well, and therefore you could sometimes even normal summon it with, with uh, when Birth is on field. And oh, look at oh, this! That is this a card deck. can actually search him another card even if it gets popped. And he also has the Tunneler in the oh, graveyard. Oh, so Tunneler still can is in there. Actually, recycle all these. Scarecrows, right? Well, let's let's check Tunneler first. Tunneler, does it shuffle back Earth Machines? Is that correct? I'm yeah, pretty sure it is Earth Machines. But there's no condition. You can just activate it. Yeah. Was he not able to use it last turn? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe so. he didn't want to have the two draws. <laughs> but I mean, he drew into another Earth Machine for turn, which is somehow finding its way into the graveyard, probably. Well, yeah, he has the Link 1. I think, or, or I think he went through both Link ones. That's why they're in the graveyard at the moment. Only runs two copies. Yep. Sorry, I just assumed that. Uh, that yeah, would be that true. card seems so good. You would assume he plays free, but there is no. the effect of Tunneler. So we are going to recycle our Scarecrows here, and now Jack is getting potentially far ahead here in terms of card advantage for this game. Do you think Jack will be able to make up the life point difference in only five minutes? I mean, it's only two hundred life points he has to overcome. So yeah, I would go with yes. <laughs> I would. Theoretically, go with yes there. Let's see what he is going to find off of this tunneler. The scarecrows back into the extra deck. We are going to shuffle up now. Draw two more cards. Pot of Avarice for free is so incredibly good. That is insanity. Pot of Avarice definitely one of my favorite cards for its play in the Time Wizard format. Yeah. So what is he drawing? Those time he drew Pankratops yes. as well! This is the battle of Pankratops is going down! Pankratops coming up the top! This is incredible! Dino stare down! Ed is gonna love this! <laughs> <laughs> and the Pankratops from David is not going to be able to do anything about it! It's just getting destroyed by the effect of Jack's Pankratops! And now the way is free for the normal summon of Soul Pierce and the effect in hand as well! We are ready to rumble here! We're going to see Soul and Pierce we're going to trigger twice. twice. This is incredible. Super heavy samurais in action in 2023. Soul Pierce just seems like an amazing card. I oh, just, yes. Yeah. The fact that you can use it to search so many times in, in, in one turn. It's like, nice that we already get it in this event, but I think there's probably multiple events to come where we can talk about it. <laughs> For sure. This, Soul yeah, Pierce, this deck seems really good in the future. So. It seems decent now. Yeah, <laughs> indeed it does. It's, it's, it's putting in the work. And now we can activate it because this is not a summon effect either. This, ah, the, the Pancratops top deck. So oh, few people were really playing nice. pa Pancratops now, but oh, I love this. A Pancratops stared. I was interested in whether you just leave, you know, leave both Pancratops in play because the Pancratops would be a great interruption on your opponent's turn for basically any Kashira monster I, that they draw. I think Jack is trying but to not have another he, turn yeah. here. Yeah. Maybe that's the plan. And look at that. Oh, and this oh, is now finally one ben that K. we haven't seen. And that is the big one we were talking about earlier. 3,500 defense points. And of course, as all the Super Heavy Samurais, this guy can attack in defense position. So that's a lot of damage that is going to be applied. Look, we are attacking in defense position. <laughs> the attack can it attack so twice? Funny. It looks like he was attacking twice. Is and that... this is game for Jack here with a Super Heavy Samurai deck equaling the score. What a game we had there. Ooh. Ooh. The crowd is the loving crowd this. The crowd loves it and I love it as well. Wow. That was crazy. So did we think the equip spell was allowing him to attack twice? Let me perhaps? just double check. Um, so that was the soul horns. And soul horns, da 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 da, -da says he can make a second attack during each battle I mean, phase. I mean, honestly, this is like another throwback to Time Wizard format because that was a Ben K OTK. <laughs> it was Indeed it was. A super heavyweight version of it, but... Yeah. <laughs> With absolutely. an equip card as well, this exactly. is absolutely equip, amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really cool. I love that, especially because game one and game two, both times it looked like it was really quickly yeah. over for Jack. And both times he could come back somehow. In game one it wasn't enough ultimately because there still was that Kashira unicorn in hand for his opponent. But yeah. this game number two, it was enough with that Pankratops from the top. I love it. Pankratops versus Pankratops. Who wins? Of course, it's Pankratops. Yeah, the Easy crowd. Battle. The crowd wins. The, crowd, the crowd wins. It for sure. Wins experience. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's not much time left on the clock. So definitely, let's get back into the action. Game number three of round number five coming up. Our feature match goes on.
Two minutes and 22 seconds on the clock. So can we see? Ooh, oh. so many Kaijus in the hand of Jack. If, Jack's got, if Jack gets a turn here, it's huge. Interestingly, we were looking before and we saw that there was a super heavy samurai that would allow Jack to inflict damage during the main phase, Ooh. which is very... Oh, and David has to set a monster. That's a chance for Jack. That's a big chance for Jack right there. And he can actually just special summon a kaiju over the monster that is set. I know it's going to make it much stronger, probably, but he can then attack over the kaiju with his own kaiju to secure 500 but damage. But we start off with Orsa, the Earth Channel, and another card we haven't seen yet, but that makes him special summon out the monster from... Oh, but we're chaining Dimension Shifter, but we chaining? already used that for oh. cost. We already discarded for cost, so we are fine with that for the moment. Searching for the Soul Piercer. Do you reckon Soul Piercer allows you to inflict piercing oh, damage? Oh, we there see it! Is the the Kaiju yeah? over the Ash Blossom! Oh boy, oh boy. And another Kaiju. And another Kaiju! Kaiju. Gazala, hello! Oh, and there is now a machine in the graveyard, so Regulus can also resolve. This is not the most impressive board, but at least it is a board! Facing the Kaiju, we are going into the battle phase, and Regulus is just going to attack over the Kaiju, and damage is being dealt. Got to banish that kaiju. Absolutely. Not get too excited in the time. <laughs> but the most important part for Jack right now is that he is gets he to grab his pen and write down additional life point damage to his opponent. Wow. And that gets him ahead quite a bit, and David has to take that. With less than a minute on the clock, David really has to find a top deck here that can work through the regulars and then also the kaiju on his opponent's side of the field. Oh, there comes a normal summon on top of it. Jack is like, hey, why not? Does Jack okay. have any more plays this turn that he can make? So he's linking into the Super Heavy Samurai. <laughs> he was about to trigger the Soul Piercer, but that never hit the graveyard, even though he put it there first, mistakenly. <laughs> Does Scareclaw have to discard something to the graveyard, or uh, just discard a card? Uh, I think discard a card. However, oh, Scareclaw it's going back over to David. David. 20 seconds, 20 seconds for David here. Is he going to find something? He has another Pankratops. Is that the answer? doesn't look like enough just by itself. You need a, a Cash Terra oh, monster or something. Oh, but I think there's Ash Blossom as a Norman summon, which would enable him oh. to go into Baron de Fleur from his extra deck. Is there enough time for him, He though? needs to make three over 3,000 damage. Baron de Fleur has only got 3,000 attacks. But there is the timer the being announced. And therefore, we have Super Heavy Samurai winning round number five, being still undefeated here in YCS London. And as you can hear in the background, the crowd loves it. I hope you guys at home also love that because I can tell you we are definitely in love with this deck right now. Basti, is this your new ninja? Yes, I am now a super heavy samurai player. <laughs> I love him for that, really. If you play Basti at the next regional, you know what he'll be playing? Indeed, you will. Maybe, Maybe I will wait for Cyberstorm yeah. Axis, but who knows, who knows. Then we're going to soul pierce everyone. This is crazy. Like, honestly, of course, that just set Ash Blossom going back over to your opponent was pretty rough. We don't talk about that. We don't. But the thing is, that, all, that one Ash Blossom could have really helped him, yeah. right? J just having that Ash Blossom for the effect of Orsa might have stopped his opponent in his tracks. It's very scary just to pass in, with in nothing. It's infinite tracks, right? <laughs> Only one. Okay, I like that one. I like that one. It's, it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, uh, what do we think in general? Is there like a special thing that this deck is doing well versus the meta? Is there a special reason why this is maybe a good call for this event, for this event necessarily? I, I want to see more of it. Yeah. I want to see certainly. more of what it can do. Obviously, we saw that great OTK combo with the Benkai and the equip that allows oh, it to attack twice. It almost feels like a going second deck a little bit, right? Because yeah. that was pretty good damage he was putting up there. But it, uh, I don't think that he's running enough hand traps for it. Uh, he True. only has the Ash and Gamma. Gamma seems a bit like he sided it in. Is that? Ah, uh, no, he was main decking Gamma okay. for sure. So okay, he, there, there's actually quite some interaction. I also, mean, it is dangerous to Ash the Vernus because he that's has That's what the I was gamma saying. Well. He, I think you have to actually yeah. main deck the Gamma because Gamma has so many applications, even going first. Let's imagine yeah. he had Gamma in, in that other game there when he started off with, with the Vernus and he immediately got Ashed on it. That Gamma would have been so good yeah. right in that scenario. Gamma on an Ash like that is just one of the best feelings. Oh, yeah. It's it turn it and yeah, you, it you're, you get your opponent's Ash, yeah, you get two free monsters. Oh, what a you turn. Just go into Sprite Sprint, <laughs> Sandy Nimble Angler. Perfect. Perfect scenario, even really? in the Super Heavy Semi yeah. Riding. Absolute just madness for sure. So, um, Jack Staples is the man of the hour, the man that's 5-0 in the tournament currently. And I've had with him right now, so please, let's hear from our winner right now. 
Thank you very much, Basti. Yes, I am joined by Jack Staples, who's just won the round five feature match with the super heavy samurai deck, which, I mean, those super heavy samurais sent shivers down my spine, I can tell you. So can you talk to us a bit about the deck choice? Because the fans have loved this deck choice. People loved it. They were going absolutely nuts throughout that final game. Talk to us, why super heavy samurai? Uh, I've just been playing it a really long time, so I'm really familiar with it. Even if it's not the best deck in the room, if you can catch people off guard with it, it puts, gives you a bit of an advantage. No, I mean, it's certainly been the best deck so far. You're 5-0, and oh, and you just had your feature match. You just told me before we came on, not only have you never done a feature match before, this was your first YCS. Yeah, that's true, yeah. And so first YCS, and you got straight on a feature match, and you won with a rogue choice deck. That must be very exciting. How do you feel? Very excited, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, much more to say than that. <laughs> no, that's true. So something I want to talk about is obviously Super Heavy Samurai has new support coming out in Cyberstorm Access. So considering you're sort of ahead of the curve here, how does that make you feel? Do you think we're going to start seeing more of it as the format moves on? Definitely. It becomes a lot stronger with the new cards. Uh, I just hear a lot of people saying that it's not strong until it gets the new cards, so I had to show it off today. You certainly did. You've proved that well. Let's go through some of the games that we had. First one, David obviously had uh, quite a strong start for Kashtira. There was Unicorn, Triple Tactics, Talent, Thrust. And it just kind of dominated the field. So you decided, let's just get into game two. What was going through your mind at game two? A bit nervous? A little bit, yeah, yeah. There, uh, I have cards in my deck to do uh, burn damage, enough to do uh, for game. Uh, so I uh, decided to keep them in because I was going first uh, game two. I, hadn't managed, I didn't get to use them in game one, so I thought you still might see, not see them coming. True, because then game two, there were quite a few interactions. Then there was the, the Pankratops versus Pankratops halfway through. And then Scarecrow, you built a really strong field. You equipped the big Benke with the Soul Horns, so that was the, that's attack twice, right? Yeah, the equip spell lets it attack twice. And with 3,500 defense, that's a huge amount of damage. It's a huge amount of damage, and that really helps secure that. And then we go into game three. Clearly, David, in a very difficult moment, that set one card pass. So when you see that, in game three, with a little bit of time left, what's going through your mind? I need to get to the battle phase and do some damage. Uh, I think I might have gotten to the battle phase even a bit quicker. I was kind of um, a bit worried when I had to pass the back to, to, to play back to pass the play back to him. Um, uh, did you did you know how much time you had left at that point? Uh, yeah, we were told that going in deciding there was only about three minutes left. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they were, they, the game plan was do damage as quickly as possible. Well, no kidding. Then there was the kaiju interactions. You got that, that little bit of attack damage off with all the things that you had set up on the field, and you ended up taking the win. So going forward, with considering you're 5-0, and oh, what have you been up against so far? Kashtira, obviously, and you dominated that. What else were you up against? I've been at another Kashtira match. Uh, a sprite, but they bricked and didn't get to play any of their uh, main engine. Uh, and a Sunavalon deck. So a mixed bag, but yeah. Wow, and the fact that you've dealt with not one, but two Kashtiras in a format that really lends itself to a lot of Kashtira players, that's pretty exciting. Well, congratulations on winning this feature. Your first YCS, your first feature. I hope we'll see you go further with the Super Heavy Samurais because it's very exciting. And best of luck, not only in this tournament, but with the future of your deck, because with that Cyberstorm access, sounds like it's going to be pretty good going forward. And you're ahead of the curve. You're going to be setting trends for people over the deck list. I hope so, yes. Absolutely, mate. Congratulations once again. Guys, don't go anywhere, because before we get into our round six feature match, we're going to have to kill that little bit of time again. So here's a speed duel for you. And welcome back to more of your coverage here at YCS London. So we've already had our first round of our speed duel tournament amongst commentators. So now it's time to get straight into our second round. As you can see in front of me, I have Marcello and Alberto both raring to go. And I'm going to hand you guys over very shortly to our wonderful trio of coverage. But first, guys, let's get a high roll going. You've got the dice ready. They decided to do four dice. You're going to do six dice, seven dice. You're making this really hard. Oh, guys, don't do this to me. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> That's quick, quick maths. I can't do that. OK, your turn. Can you beat whatever number that was? 22. 32. That was 32 over there. And oh, for goodness sake. No. <laughs> That's OK, definitely not 32. So you're going to go first, Marcello? You're going to go first. Alberto is going to go first. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Sebastian, Tom and Leonard, who are going to be your commentary trio for this speed duel game. Guys, take it away. 
Thank you very much, Ed. So more speed duel action here, and the Italians are once again clashing against each other with their speed duel decks. And honestly, Leonard, you did me pretty well. You like uh, <laughs> finished me super, super early, and I couldn't really get into the game at all. Let's see how the Italians are doing, though, right? Yeah, I mean, of course they tried to to top us with their dice roll. Of yeah, I seven. saw that. I think that yeah. was very intentional. <laughs> they saw you roll four. They thought seven. I think I'll have to find some more for the next round. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> grab as many dice as you can. Why stop at six-sided dice? Let's get some hundred-sided ones or something. Yeah, but it's very interesting to see what kind of cards they're bringing because those are not the usual cards we're seeing here in the coverage of the weekend. This is speed duels, so some... Uh, Really, really rare cards, but you don't see in the meta game that much anymore. And I'm really excited which two decks those two are bringing now to this particular semi-final of the Speed Duel tournament. Yeah, I want to say that Marcello has the deck that is threatening the most of the other decks. It's Macro Oh, Cosmos. he has that one, yeah. It's... Uh, I'm sorry, I just watched the anime in uh, German. <laughs> this is Professor Banner's deck, <laughs> but the evil banner, the Shadow Rider banner, and he's playing against Adrian, I believe, who's running Cloudians. Ooh, Cloudians is great, though. Yeah, I your, love Your Cloudians. knowledge of the show is excellent. Yeah, GX is. is crazy. I <laughs> watched this at least <laughs> 17 times. Let's be honest, you were just preparing for all the quizzes you of have course. this weekend. Preparing that was the only purpose of and this. And preparing to win the tournament, of course. Apparently. He, he beat me already. Let's see who his opponent in the finals is going to be. Let's go over to the playing action. Let's see how this Italian duel will turn out. I'm not going to lie. For a second, I forgot we were on camera there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is looking like a not that great hand from Alberto because he has the Storm Drake twice, and I think but that he, one cannot be normal. He has stopped. the Vortex Trooper, oh. which will allow him to shuffle two cards back into his deck. That's actually really good. That's what he's doing right there. The problem I have with this is there's old cards, so there's a good chance I might look at a card and think I know what it does, and then... <laughs> <laughs> but to be, be fair, he, he, he just did I think exactly that. Yeah. Shuffle back and draw two, and it might have an effect when it is uh, sent to the graveyard somehow. Oh, and he's drawing more Claudians, and there's, there's no spell or trap, so he's just passing on one monster in attack position. And with to be zero fair, with points? zero <laughs> attack points, so that's not that threatening for Marcello. But also a heads up play by Marcello, which I think is very popular in Speed Duel. He won the die roll and still let Alberto start. So I think with those slower formats, it's actually really advantageous yeah. to go second. And that's what Marcello did here. Yeah, because you get the extra card and yeah. you get to attack first. Uh, in some decks, some of these decks are actually really powerful in setting up bots and resources, like the Vampire deck, which I luckily got. Yeah, <laughs> that's and really good, let's be honest. I think there it makes sense to start. Marcello's having a good long think here. Let's see what's all oh, oh, the DD Survivor right away. This and is I'm, a classic. This card saw meta play back in the day. DD Survivor and Macro Cosmos is the most classic of combos, and I think it's probably going to, you know, trigger some powerful memories for players for <laughs> sure <laughs> who remember all of their Treeborn frogs being banished or something. Oh, yeah, and well, I mean, how how do Cloudians deal with Macro Cosmos? Is Macro Cosmos a problem for Cloudians? Uh, the good thing about Cloudians is they just don't get destroyed by battles, so they don't really interact. That's a fair with point. The graveyard. Yeah. yeah. Are they allowed to switch to defense mode, Cloudians? Is no. That something I, they yeah, get those... destroyed immediately. Ooh. Yeah, so that's probably nothing you want to do. I, I think one of your decks had a windstorm of attack in it. Was that, yeah. uh, was that intentional? <laughs> <laughs> to switch all of the Cloudians to defense mode? So Alberto for a second tried to activate the Cloudian aerosol in his hand, but then he realized, wait, no. Is it the Cloudian aerosol? Yeah, it is. Uh, it is a Cloudian aerosol. Oh, okay, it's in, it's in Marcello's hand. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And now he is actually activating it. Yeah. I, I think he was just trying to activate it, and Marcello was perhaps reading it. Yeah. And he is putting some cloud counters onto the DD survivors. Fog counters, I'm sorry. Fog counters, yeah. And if he's using the skill, the, I believe the, the skill of his player lets him put an extra counter, if that's the skill he's using. True, he had uh, two skills to choose from. But yeah, they're checking on the skill on the Adrian Gecko skill there. Yeah, there and we that go. exactly means that DD Survivor is now on five fog counters. Giving you one extra counter for every counter you put on. Sounds pretty great to me. Oh, Indeed it does. And there is, is the first oh, Balkan monster. Turbulence. Yeah. He's summoning. Turbulence lets you summon a bunch of little, little Cloudians from the deck. I remember this card uh, when I tried to use it to synchro summon a lot of monsters Ooh, yeah. back in the day. It was quite fun. Because you get a lot really of good. level one, so not quite tokens, but um, I don't know where you have to remove the counters from in order to summon them. And I mean, also on summon, apparently, it gets two more fuck counters, so there's a lot of fuck counters on the board already now. It has to remove from itself. It has to remove from itself. Maybe it, it gains one fog counter on it 
Each Cloudy and so yeah, that it gets one for counter because it's a Cloudy monster and then one extra for the skill, maybe? Probably, yeah. You, you know a happened. lot more about the Cloudian archetype. I'm, I'm surprising myself. <laughs> <laughs> but that was Book of Moon. Oh. That was one of the staples that Marcello yeah. got for his deck. Because we got like all the team-specific cards, and then we also got a little bit of some staples there before uh, building our decks here for this weekend. And Book of Moon was one of the staple cards. And I feel like Book of Moon was your favorite. And I to didn't pick get it. Didn't. <laughs> you shouldn't have said one. before that it was your favorite. <laughs> Also, this is absolutely crazy now because the Claudian monsters cannot be destroyed by a battle. However, if you attack over them and they are in face down defense position, they will destroy themselves by default because they are in defense position. Also, we have seen Marcello pick up the key card of his deck, Macrocosmos. Oh, yeah, and he also just activated his skill right there. And, yep, he's switching it over. I think he's going to show us the skill now that he's going to go for. Okay. <laughs> and there we are. We are using it as well. <laughs> None of us know what it does. <laughs> Can you recognize it? The pictures do look very similar for the skills because they're just like a slightly different art depending on which of the skill you're using for your, for your character. But do, do you remember the two? Oh, okay. We're apparently banishing DD Scout Plane from our hand, which is and a pretty good start. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I know what. Banish a monster and yep. summon a token, right? And the tokens can attack directly. Wow. But in this case, you can just use the token to attack the yeah. monster, and then the DD Survivor can attack directly. Exactly, but the trick is that you will special summon the Scout Plane in the end phase. So this is, this is very That's threatening, super because I think that DD Survivor is connected for 3,600 damage now. And oh, I mean, right. So that would leave Alberto on only 500, and Marcello with the ability oh, to make monsters that can attack directly. We see now it's updated, 400 life points for Alberto, and he keeps on drawing monsters, and I don't know whether monsters are going to bring him out of his situation right now. It's for sure a sticky one for the oh. Klaus, but now we can use the Aerosol to special summon a Claudian monster from the deck, and I think you can even go for the Eye of the Typhoon? Typhoon? Eye? Eye? Typhoon? Typhoon? Oh, Eye of the Typhoon? That one is already in the graveyard, so he has to go with... The Nimbus Man. I remember the Nimbus Man gets a lot of fog counters somehow. Yeah. Don't ask me how. He does get a lot of fog counters, though. We will find out in just a second. There you go. Time. That's five. He's, he's, that, that dice looks like it's got five. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this card gains 500 attack for each fog counter on the field. On this the is field, even? That's scary, then. Wait, is that game? That could actually be game right there. This is this is 5,000 extra attack on the Nimbus Man. Just attack over a token, plus the original 1,000 attack. This might actually just be game here. That would be such an epic comeback here from Alberto. Nobody really saw that coming. And he's not even done yet. He's bringing out another Volkian. This one was originally from um, Gladiator's Assault, if I remember. So also yeah. a very old card, the Storm Dragon coming down. So what else does it, does it do? It can special summon by banishing a Cloudy, and I remember that much. But yeah. maybe does it just place more fog counters in play? It yeah. does indeed. There is more fog counters on both monsters. So now there's seven fog counters on the Nimbus Man on yeah. both of them. The G Survivor as well. Oh so there's my goodness. Fourteen in total. And he hasn't even... Did he even That's, normal summon that sounds like no. a lot. Oh There's another <laughs> Nimbus Man! <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. This Alberto is madness. pulling off the comeback of the century. <laughs> we all thought he was down and out, but he's, absolutely. he's pulling out some major combos here. <laughs> With 400 life points, he's actually just accumulating so many fog counters, which is exactly what his deck is supposed to do. They almost go up to 10,000 attack points now per copy, so this is some sort of side quest that he's accomplishing <laughs> yes. here. Are you are you worried about this now? Maybe you'd ridden off the Cloudy <laughs> yes. deck before, but... It... <laughs> but now I also know why they gave us that many dices, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> they need it all. He's up to six. It's nine, nine, wow. and another nine, so that is 27. Mm. 27 times We're attacking 500. That is game. game indeed! What a game. Wow. That is, wait, 27 times 5. Help me out, guys. <laughs> Bro, you, you're, the, you're the math expert here. That I, is I will leave it up to 13, you. 13,500. We got there. Wow. wow. That's a, a lot. In a game where we only have 4,000 life points, that is incredible. So like, I think he knocked you out as well because he did 13,000. Yeah. So that's actually the next and what, he also three won rounds the next tournament. covered. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he also won the next tournament. So Alberto, he, I mean, he also had another one with 13,700 yeah. attack okay, points. Okay, so he's won field. tournaments for like, he's probably up to about the 300th YCS by now, I think. Yeah, of, I'm, uh, I was going to say. Of that tournaments. makes up for all the Caster tournaments that he already lost. So he, he just <laughs> got them all back now. <laughs> That is true. But, however, we are going to see Alberto play versus me in the finals. 
I think it's pretty pretty clear who's going to win this in the end. <laughs> Maybe it's clear to you. No, it's probably we going to be Alberto after this performance. This <laughs> is <laughs> not someone who I really want to face. But we are first going back to the next featured match. Don't go anywhere, guys. Another game world? Welcome back. We're now here with our sixth feature match for round six here at YCS London 2023. Very exciting. We're going to get straight into this match. So I'll introduce our duelists. We have Joseph Rothschild versus Philip Gasberger, and this is going to be a good one. Gentlemen, as usual, we will start by doing a high roll to see which one of you will be going first. Who would like to roll the dice first? Joseph's going to roll first. That is a 10, not a bad roll, and that is a 4. Who's going to go first? You're going to go first. Joseph is going to go first. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Alberto, Nadir and Marcello, who are going to be your commentators for our round six feature match here at YCS London. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Ed, and welcome everyone to round six of YCS London 2023. We witnessed uh, right before this uh, me losing yesterday to Alberto in speed dueling. And talking of me losing, the last time I've been playing competitively, I lost uh, last year in the finals of the Greek National Championship uh, to Heroes, uh, a deck which was definitely unseen at the time and that was realizing on uh, pretty much an Imperial Order like card uh, with the Dark Angel. And well, we decided to pick a player that is using the exact same strategy today and that is Joseph. Yeah, Joseph Rothschild here brought uh, heroes. Do you know who Joseph is? I've never heard of him much. No, I'm not sure who that is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we obviously joking around. But yeah, so heroes, yeah. Uh, I mean, shutting down spell cards. Spell cards is, I guess, yeah. a massive portion of his opponent's deck. 
Exactly. Do you know what deck relies on spell cards? Well, any runic <laughs> deck. And if we have seen uh, yet until now runic sprites being a very popular version of the deck, uh, we did mention that runic Naturia, which was played by Dean Kabuya in the last event, uh, is also really popular. And his opponent is on this specific deck. What do you guys think of it? I mean, honestly, uh, we, we talked about this before. I mean, if you're playing a deck which uh, most of the people would not expect, maybe uh, this, in this case, Philip, uh, when, when he's zero being played by Josef, will say, oh, maybe I'm in trouble, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I'm yeah. actually a fan of this deck. I think personally, if I was to enter this event, I actually would have considered Naturia Runic. You know, I mean, Naturia Beast locking down spell cards and the draw engine with uh, combining with the Runic cards, absolutely fantastic. The new Naturia cards, Mole Cricket yeah. with Chameleon yeah. Sunflower, incredible. So much uh, potential on their ends, but as we mentioned, both players uh, are actually on X1 record, so they really want to win this one out. But out of the shoe, as we were joking around, Joseph is actually a content creator, so he might have more experience being uh, on a stage like this. Uh, so we'll see whether he gets ahead in this match, but our players are ready, so let's jump into the table to find out the winner of round six. So Joseph is going to start us off here with the hero strategy. Very important dice roll. And I think if you uh, were to go first against any deck, man, you really want to go first <laughs> against a deck like Runic using heroes. Ooh, and I already see one of the free copies of Fusion Destiny, which obviously was brought back to free not that long ago. And it's a powerhouse in this specific deck. And that's what we start things off with. One of the few decks remaining that can still summon <laughs> yeah. Destroy oh. Phoenix Enforcer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, we, we saw in the previous years how powerful of a card that is and still holds uh, true. And that also a way in which you can get to this Dark Angel uh, uh, that really is powerful because it's, uh, it basically works similarly even better than Imperial Order. So essentially outside of Forbidden Droplet back in the day there were not many outs to it. And uh, Showing off the uh, Starlight Rare wow. Fusion Destiny there. Yeah. Bit of a flex on his opponent with the <laughs> combined <laughs> ultimate rare fusion destiny. But Hopefully uh, that isn't the end of the turn here. We did send Malicious combining with Denier, an absolutely yeah. incredible uh, card. Semi-recent, you know, kind of new. Allows you to recycle those not once per turn destiny hero Malicious, which Joseph is going to activate here. Nice. We have seen Malicious, of course, in some of our Time Wizard tournaments, especially the March 2010, but still, 2023, we see some Malicious action here. It's uh, an incredible card because it isn't once per turn. It gives you a level 6 body, a Dark Warrior, which is very usable in so many decks over the over the course of the last few years. I think I remember specifically playing it in uh, Burning Abyss once upon a time in 2018. <laughs> <Okay>. Weird. You know, <laughs> yeah. Able to use it for link climbing, but we're going to use it for what I suppose the real purpose of it exactly. is, and that's to uh, utilize a link summon of a hero. Yeah, essentially, I mean, Fusion Destiny was used by a lot of decks. Uh, prank hits I got on top of my mind, for example, uh, with obviously the Preda Plantana Conda. And uh, in those decks, it was pretty much the last card you would activate uh, because it locks you into dark hero monsters. But when you're playing an hero deck, obviously that restriction is uh, a lot less relevant. Yeah, he's uh, more than happy to just activate that Fusion Destiny as his first card because it's actually the deck it was made for. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And also having the, the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer on the field also, uh, I think, is usually one of these annoying cards to play around. Mm -hmm. It's really, really resilient because yeah. of the recursion effect that allows it to activate in the graveyard when it's destroyed to bring itself back on the following turn. It was a sort of a little debate, I suppose, a year ago or so when people were playing Anaconda. It's like, yeah. do you want to go Dragoon? Do you want to go Fusion Destiny? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it was a good argument, especially because, like, I think, yeah, I mean, in the hero deck, uh, having the fusion destiny gives you such a huge advantage, and uh, now we can see Philip maybe n might not be super familiar with the uh, hero, as we mentioned before, uh, might be not a popular There's position, and now <laughs> yeah, yeah, still got nightmares, honestly. <laughs> Thinking back at that car, yeah. yeah, there is the Dark Angel searched by Elemental Hero Stratos. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah, we're normal exactly. summoning Stratos. Stratos in 2023. Yeah. yeah. 
This deck has really yeah. gone through so many different iterations over the, over the years. Yeah. Is that a link summon? Ooh. Yeah. Because you need three exactly to get... Uh, no, I've, ah, okay, no. It seems as if it was a link summon, but he used the Enforcer to ah, just okay. pop itself in the link. Makes more sense. Right, right. Because you need three to activate the Dark Angel, mm -hmm. and now the lock is in play. So <laughs> his opponent uh, is in trouble. At the same time, though, this was really good against uh, the deck I was using back then, which was Despia, because you had no links. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In this deck, it's, you know, not as strong because maybe you can get to a monster, but then with the Phoenix, you can destroy the other monster, so you know where the idea comes from. But it's socially, uh, usually you would summon everything in defense, uh, otherwise they can just crush into the Stratos, so I want to see where the Stratos, uh, if he's going to stay on the field or, yeah, otherwise this lock is obviously less, uh, yeah, so it's going to stay on the field. Yeah, so I mean, uh, next standby phase, destroy Phoenix Enforcer comes back. If he tries yep. to go battle phase and lock, you yeah, can, he just can destroy, destroy his own. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. problem is that if he has a monster, then he can link summon potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. I do see three monsters in the end, uh, and uh, there are some of those uh, Camellias, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Camellia is yeah. the sort of the Armageddon Knight of the Naturia deck, allowing you to uh, send to the graveyard. Uh, and uh, it also has the really important replacement effect as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah so... Uh, it does all so much. The Naturia cards need to tribute in order to activate some of their effects, but you can actually mill two from the top of your deck. So you can actually end up with multiple negates using the Naturia Sunflower. And this, I think, was one of the main reasons why Dean Kabui was playing this deck also the past YCS, is because uh, most of our players were not so familiar with the deck, and uh, the Naturia cards themselves have so many interactions and... Uh, I mean, it's super difficult, as you mentioned before. Uh, I mean, the Sunflower itself, I think, is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Yeah. Here, we could have uh, seen uh, an interesting thing from Joseph, potentially, because the Cricket summons two if uh, your opponent controls the higher attack. He could have chained the Phoenix to pop both of his monsters, potentially, to shut down plays from, uh, uh, from Philip. But it seems like he's going to wait for now. And uh, here we see one of the locks. Uh, that is the Sunflower, as mentioned. Yeah. So this puts him in a bit of a precarious position here, because now that the Sunflower is here and online, the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer might not get as much value as he yeah. would hope. Especially because, as mentioned, Sunflower is essentially going to be able to negate twice, yeah. because you have the Camellia recurring effect. So let's see. Don't forget the Mole Cricket as well also works yeah. as a long-term resource. Whenever your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck, you can bring it back out from the graveyard. You can just see here as well like just yeah. how like formidable this combo is because uh, Philip is just sitting with multiple spells in his hand that he just can't use. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think the advantages are of the uh, Naturia version? specifically of Runic. We've seen so many people playing Sprite, massive synergy with the fact that they're all level 2. What is it that Naturio offers Runic? Uh, it's uh, definitely a different uh, deck. I would say uh, probably less powerful on the one hand. So Sprite alone has uh, a more powerful opening. But I think going second, the Naturio deck is better. So it, it has more, like Cricket alone going second is, uh, is really annoying. And I think most of all uh, the advantages, uh, your opponent is not as familiar with it, so that, that also pays uh, some considerations. But here we see Book of Moon, okay. It's crazy to think that Book of Moon, just such a simple, simple <laughs> yeah, card. For I years know. it's been around and people are main decking yeah. it again, you know? Yeah. I think the logic is like maybe the Cash Dira matchup is uh, where you're trying to stop your opponent yeah. from using their, uh, their special summons. Yeah. But that's one of the beauty of Yu-Gi-Oh! Probably the thing, if not one of the, by it's far the one of the things that I, yeah, that I like the most as well. You can just have these cars that have been sitting there for so many years and they just suddenly become really useful. Yeah. Minus one. Best minus one in the game, <laughs> exactly. some people say. Could be. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to chain a blessing, it seems. Uh, but yeah. there's the Dark yeah. Angel. Yeah. So, so it, is it just negated? Exactly. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, did Philip forget that there was Dark Angel on the yeah, field? Yeah, <laughs> I think so, so. Yeah. Very, very unfortunate. Yeah, I yeah. mean, sometimes you're just in the heat of the moment, you know, you can get yeah. a, a little ahead of yourself. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned how playing on stream uh, is never an easy task. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, but here, as mentioned, uh, you can link someone with the Dark Angel. Yep. So against some strategies, it's definitely less effective, and especially for the... How we <laughs> baptize it, the new Diamond Dire Wolf, uh, which is the Furrier. And yep. now, yeah, he's gonna try and activate it, maybe. Uh, not super effective, obviously, against the Phoenix Enforcer. This might be an opportunity to try and, you know, force out the last remaining... Uh Disruption from Joseph hit the destroy Phoenix and Force, potentially yeah. go for the back row. But most important of all, he has access to spells now. Yeah, exactly. And I think this may be a game changer for him because uh, without playing with the uh, runic cards, of course, uh, you're in trouble. But here with the four higher, let's see what he decides to do. He's just considering his options. I think he has at least a couple of spell cards in his hand. Yeah, he has a lot, yeah. and uh, obviously could have had the, the blessing as well, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame he's had to lose that. Yeah, especially because yeah. I think he has a second. Oh, and yet, yeah, Dark he has Dark Ruler and Book of Moon, Ooh. but chooses not to use it after the Link Summon. Yeah, so actually, not that many. He has no runic uh, cards at all. No so, access yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So that's one of like the deck building problems, isn't it? Because you need to. It's two separate engines that don't yeah. do anything directly together. You have to sort of draw an equal portion amount of each engine. I think he might be done on on this thing. Maybe <laughs> setting a book of moon and something and blessing if he wants. But like, if he already used the blessing, uh, yeah, let's see. Do you think that dark ruler definitely should have came down after the link summon? Possibly, but most most importantly, it was the blessing, which obviously should mm -hmm. have been kept and used now. And as mentioned, now he's done. So the phoenix will come back and uh, play is back to Joseph can actually have access to some pretty big damage if uh, allowed. Uh, so let's see. Well, if there's one deck in the game that can do a lot of damage, it is Heroes, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we saw it with Leonard in the Speed Duel tournament, so <laughs> you know, we can see it here as well. Double the life points to contend with in 8,000 rather than the Speed Duel yeah. here. But okay, we got a second Blessing, um, so I think we're probably going to try to go for a Mole Cricket play here. Okay, going to bring back the Camellia. Yeah, it makes sense. You want to summon first so that you can use the additional effects uh, potentially when uh, the Phoenix comes back. Uh, let's see. Sacred Tree, I think, is one of the older Naturia cards, yeah, right? Yeah. Which means it's absolutely. not once per turn. So you exactly. see people resolving it multiple times in a single turn here. It's absolutely incredible, especially with the Runic cards when you discard with your Hugin. It, it just it feels so good to discard a card that has a, re that has yeah. a, a trigger effect in the grave. Is he actually using uh, like Kalbeck or those kind of cards uh, even after one off? Because that was also uh, a tech card of the deck, uh, obviously in Philip deck. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, no, no Ishizu cards or Exchange of the Spirit yeah. um, in his deck. But yeah, I see what you mean. There's definitely a, a good way to, to utilize that across all three engines. Mm -hmm. So just double checking the. Uh, Cards here. Unfortunately, Joseph not acquainted with the German language. I <laughs> can't blame him. <laughs> Honestly, it's uh, even for us, it's uh, the worst uh, to understand because uh, it's obviously an not based. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, French, Italian, and Spanish are based off Latin. You know, it's it's somewhat doable to understand, but German is like a Germanic language, so it's like Yu-Gi-Oh Pro and history yeah. teacher Marcello. Exactly. You've exactly. got it all. You've got it all. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right, so Joseph just double checking all of the effects that are in the graveyard here, just in case there's. Oh, okay. all right. The infinite impermanence comes down on the Camellia. Good for Philip that he didn't uh, use the same column, <laughs> at least from <laughs> our last uh, last future match. Yeah. No column incidents this game, but uh, this <laughs> <Yet>. is the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the important turn three clapback for Heroes. Now, he achieved everything that he wanted to. Dark Angel Lockdown mm -hmm. on turn one, uh, be able to have just enough resources to survive, and now it really is just uh, Joseph's game to try and navigate to victory here. And there goes Malicious once again. Yeah, because I think now if I were Joseph, you just go and try to push enough damage, right? Mm-hmm, yep. Wonder if we'll be seeing Wake Up Your Hero in this match. He is indeed playing it in his <laughs> extra deck. Yeah, one of the few recent additions to the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a Denier in the graveyard? Uh, did he use think, that last think, turn? I think so. I think yeah. he already used yeah. it, yeah. It's uh, such a good card here. The uh, Cross Crusader, I think this is. Mm -hmm. He uh, allows you to bring back as well. 
So just trying to get as many possible monsters onto the yeah. Fusion. But this is where the Mole Cricket gets the trigger. Exactly, he has also a face down Book of Moon, I believe, of his own. So there is the Denier, yeah. And as you mentioned, the good thing is you get back this Malicious, which is not once per turn, so you can uh, mm. keep on using it potentially. So, what do you think uh, Mole Cricket gets to set up here? Because uh, the Sunflower mm. is gone and yeah. he's only playing one, I believe, right? Yeah, he's playing one. So. Yeah. It's tough uh, to actually do something. I don't think it achieves anything without no. the spell, right? No. Not really. You get the Camellias, more Camellias, but like, yeah. Not really in a pleasant spot at the moment. And yeah, it's gonna tribute it for the Crusader. And he gets one of his Vision Heroes, which he didn't yet access, but usually they are. Vision uh, Hero Vion. Yeah, key part of the combo. Yeah, so on summon, it does get to uh, send a monster from the deck to the graveyard. Gonna go for Shadow Mesh. Shadow Mesh triggers to add any <laughs> hero monster. Could go for Honest Neos if we're trying to uh, push damage. <laughs> and the secondary effect of Vision Hero uh, is the. Uh, oh, sorry, the Vion is yeah. Uh, yeah. adding a polymerization. And he does play polymerization. So yeah. maybe we could see, as you mentioned, uh, uh, some of these new fusion cars. I didn't quite catch what he added, but I think it was a plasma. Yeah. Could be. He's playing one yeah. copy of Plasma, Plasma as well. Yeah. Talking of uh, <laughs> old cards, yeah. Hero decks just uh, have so many ways to lock down your opponent in this day and age, you know? It's, it's mm -hmm. the deck that's been around for so long, and they've had support like... I mean, I wouldn't say Plasma support. That, that thing is ancient, but still yeah. being <laughs> relevant even until today. Just yeah. a very simple uh, simple effect. Negate your opponent's Absolutely. monsters. Yeah, because you have so many different solutions, no? You have the Absolute Zero, yeah. otherwise you have the AC to get rid of your opponent's Spell and Trap cards, then you have the Dark Law. Yeah. You have so many different options. I think Plasma was my first ever team, Yu-Gi-Oh! team, back in like 2009 <laughs> or something, <laughs> yeah. I still have it. So. I think my first tin was the Dragon Ruler tin. There was one for each attribute, okay. I think, wasn't there? Yeah. 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 Good one. Yeah. Better than the Plasma one, yeah. for sure. <laughs> but, I mean, you know. It Here's the uh, Destiny yeah. Hero Malicious being brought out for the third time in this match. Despite yep. it being limited to two, utilizing the combination with Denier. You don't need a third so one. Good. Yeah. <laughs> or a fourth one. Or a fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> or a fourth one. <laughs> Ooh, okay. There we go. Some damage. Is it the Tribute of Plasma? It is yeah. indeed. There he goes. Wow. Been a while. <laughs> Been so, a while, buddy. Yeah. Choosing to lock down with Plasma rather than attempting to try and go for some kind of game shot. It's not actually great because Book of Moon is amazing yeah. against Plasma. Yep. So yep. that's face down for Philip, who is going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Just making sure that it is yeah. possible to just simply book the uh, Plasma here. Yeah. 600 defense only, as you can see. So not a big threat. Mm -hmm. But again, the problem is just destroy Phoenix Enforcer. It's 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 you know going to yeah. be able to come back every single turn, and every single turn it's going to be able to just destroy a card. So yeah, with this flower being uh, gone previously, here I think you're forced to activate the Book of Moon on the mm. on the plasma. Yeah, yeah, not a surprise. Book of Moon great in this uh, spot, and uh, yeah, as uh, as you mentioned, Adir, I mean, uh, Enforcer technically is not even that good against this deck because of the Runic package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are no Rooney cards at all uh, <laughs> yet for Philip, so that's that's why it's being so great in this game one. Yeah, Philip basically just playing with a Naturia deck at this stage. <laughs> yeah. So how do you think you actually deal with the Ooh. Destroy Phoenix Enforcer in this situation? Uh, you, uh, you need to oh. get to the Runic cards, but we do see polymerization and actually uh, use the Sunrise. Potentially, I can't tell if he has any. No, he's probably top decking, right? Because yeah. he can use that to draw two and discard one or something like this. Yeah, but let's see. So uh, he goes for Sunrise. This one gets the Miracle Fusion out of yep. the deck here. There it is. And this is definitely a pretty simple way to try and Push. attack for game. Yeah. And as mentioned, yeah. Now he draws two because... Is it the Liquid? Yeah, I think yeah exactly. It's the Liquid. And now he gets rid of uh, Stratos. Declaration of attack of Vision Hero, uh, sorry, no, Vision Hero, uh, Elemental Hero Sunrise. Uh, destroying a card helps you clear the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Let's see if we can find 8,000 on this turn. No more disruptions left from Philip here. It really is just a case of, can we navigate through this? Because I think Philip is only left with the uh, Dark Ruler no more in end, or maybe another car. How many no, no, cars he, he, he has have? a few cars, but he has like another Blessing, which he couldn't oh. use, and uh, I think another Camellia, maybe. Yeah. So the Mole Cricket is activating its effect now. Okay. I think he might only have Camellia. Yeah, I think so. I think he's the only one remaining. I think yeah, he's, he's a, yeah. a follower in the graveyard. He's playing, oh, yeah. It can summon oh. itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, all right. Yeah, I mean, using this just to wall up, basically, trying to exactly. survive. Uh, there should be some piercing damage available somewhere from Joseph, I think, right? <laughs> if uh, I'm not mistaken, there might be a way to still plow through this Naturia wall here that we've created. And yeah. So I think that's a Destroy Phoenix Enforcer being used yeah. on the Sunrise. And here we see Miracle Fusion One, coming two, down. Three, three, four, yeah, that, that's five, what's coming. six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, oh, wow. ten, <laughs> eleven. <laughs> eleven Crazy. banishes from Miracle Fusion. Wow. And there it, there it is. is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get your game on. Wake up your elemental hero. There it is. It attacks equal to the number of materials used for its summon. Yeah, and it gains 300 for each. <laughs> so <laughs> it gains basically 3,300 and it becomes, uh, yeah, 5,800. Uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. Let's just wait till Philip to read the <laughs> this card, get to the end of the sentence here and realize yeah, what's going yeah. on. It's a pretty yeah. long text, to be fair, so yeah. Doesn't even need to yeah. wake up because it's not a dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> I feel you, Philip. I feel you. So are we just uh, double checking, I think, maybe the number of materials? Ah, yeah, I think he might have used plasma as well. Or not. Ah, well, used yeah. I think he used Plasma from Field as well, that's why it's gone banished, yeah. Mm, okay. So a 12 material just in case, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and now then it's gonna be a 6100 uh, attack monster, I believe, so... That attacks... The Camellia and the... Yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> enough. I mean, 20,000 attacks, they're gonna be there, and uh, Joseph, uh, wow, takes it with the Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. Convincing, convincing way to end it uh, for game one. And now, as mentioned, he's the winner. And uh, he's back to Philip, uh, who might have not prepared a side deck for Hero, I can bet. Uh, but he's going to have to improvise. And what do you guys think uh, his uh, best solution might be? Uh, I don't think you really need to change anything going first in the Turia, okay. right? Yeah, I mean, just maybe Ash Blossom goes in and Evenly Match goes out. Because mm. I think Philip will go first, most likely, yeah. if he really feels like, especially after what we saw and witnessed in game one. I mean, looking at his side deck, he has most of his cards for going second. A lot of options there, yeah. Uh, the thing is that if you are playing against Hero, how do you feel like? Well, uh, I think if you just set up Naturia Beast, is there a way to deal with that? Uh, I mean, just if he's playing the Dark... Yeah, exactly, the <laughs> Honest. honest but, Neos, yeah. uh, I mean, you might have a few because you have some extenders, but... The question is, uh, so we have seen, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of uh, old cards coming back uh, and one of them um, is actually in the side decks for a lot of players with uh, Weaken, which is uh, the Organism Continuous uh, Trap, so Grave of the uh, Organism, Ancient Organism, and that's usually for Kashtira. Mm -hmm. But I think it's actually really good against heroes if you think about it, because like the Fusion Destiny are all among you know, the, the Enforcer cannot come down. Yeah. And you can stop, you know, the Miracle Fusion target. So maybe if Philips, uh, you know, gets on my line of thought, he could even uh, see that card in action in this, uh, in this one. And uh, yeah, who knows, maybe. maybe. Not sure who popularized this trap card. You know, I wouldn't know anything about that. But <laughs> yeah, Grave of the Super Ancient Organism yeah. stops level six and above monsters from activating their effect or attacking. This means, uh, well, in a deck like Heroes, um, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a way to deal with your opponent's Absolutely. field when all of your best monsters are level 6 and above.
But as mentioned, uh, it's now back to him, uh, hopefully getting some of his runic cards, because for now he has been playing a straight up Naturia deck. <laughs> but we'll find out now in game two. Our players are ready, so let's go back to the table. Like I said at the start, I'm a massive fan of the uh, Naturia Runic deck, but unfortunately he just didn't see any Runic cards yeah. last game. And hopefully we can uh, change that up here as Philip tries to display for all of you at home just exactly what yeah. this deck can do. <laughs> I think now we have the opposite problem, <laughs> yeah. which is not much of a problem, honestly. I think he has four or three Runic cards, but no Naturias. And that's much better regardless, because you can obviously draw cards with the Runics into the Naturias, so... Yeah, that's typically the uh, game plan here is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you start doing your deck thinning, uh, gaining advantage with something like your uh, uh, your Hugin, and then you get to draw with the Fountain. Yep. And finally, hopefully, we can see a Camellia off the top. Also, because honestly, you only need one of your cards, and then yeah. they all get to each other. While Runix, uh, the more you have, the more you can draw with Fountain. So mm -hmm. you'll take a five of the Runic cards and... And yeah, that's exactly what's going on. He's, he's potentially able to draw three cards, or uh, let's see here. Yeah, the tip, nice one. So gonna draw three. Amazing opening. Yeah, these next three cards should hopefully try and get into one of those materials as mentioned. And I think we talked about it during the uh, side decking. I think he has a Grave of the Ancient Organism in his hand. Yeah, yeah, mm. absolutely. So well uh, spotted by Philip, uh, and uh, okay, he actually gets rid of a pretty useful card. Uh, but now, yeah, let's see these draws. Uh, does he pick up any Naturia card? Can't quite tell. Can't quite tell. Vanity Fiend would have been nice <laughs> as well in this, but he's not playing. Yeah, he does. He does pick up Camellia at least, I can tell. Yeah, so using the effect of Camellia gets you to the... Uh, one card combo that you yep. can do with the uh, Naturias here. Oh, well, Mulcrick, again, even Mulcrick. better. Yeah. Nice. So this gets to special summon a monster out of the deck here, and benefiting from your opponent controlling monster, you get to special summon two, uh, which we can use again on our opponent's turn. If Joseph goes into the extra deck, Mulcrick brings itself back. That can give you more access uh, to multiple disruptions in the shape of Sunflower. So the game plan is uh, with Naturia. What are you trying to do? You're trying to set up that Nat Beast and trying to set up that Sunflower, yeah? Pretty ah. much. Uh, probably Sunflower more than the yeah. Beast, depending on the matchup, of course. But yeah, the idea is just having uh, a lot of uh, resources uh, and pretty much playing a grand game where with Runix and Naturia, you usually plus. Uh, pretty much every card is at least a plus one. And then the idea is at some point your opponent should finish their resources and uh, you can take it slowly, essentially, yeah. But as you mentioned, he's gonna prioritize here going for a Synchro Summon, and that is exactly Naturia Beast, which is a lot of trouble for the Euro player. There's so many decks we've seen over the years utilizing the Naturia Beast. It's finally time that we saw it in an actual Naturia deck, but I mean, we've seen this <laughs> play that I wanna say, like maybe Ad Emancipator at some point in yeah, recent yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, you could sure. play that in there. You know, so there's definitely been. A lot of inclusion for Nat Beast over the course of the last uh, however many years he's been around. And it looks like that's going to be the end of the turn for Philip here. That's pretty solid yeah, opening. Yeah. Very good one. Probably the worst that could happen would be an evenly matched. I would say. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's see. I don't want to jinx it for Philip. Oh, Ooh. nice. That's a good start in Permon Naturia Beast. Yeah. So there is a way to bring back Naturia Beast uh, on your opponent's turn, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Potentially, yeah, but uh, I'm not sure if he has more copies of, uh, you know, the Blessing or cards like... Let's see. Mm. Looks like that is going to resolve now. The Infinite Impermanence deals with the Naturia Beast, so able to use his all-important spell card. That's a big wow. Cosmic Cyclone. Wow. This is big. Yeah. So, Hugin has an effect that you can uh, protect your cards from being destroyed by banishing itself for cost. And that's why I think people are opting to play Cosmic as their back row hate this format rather than Duster or Twister. Yeah. Circumventing that protection effect. And that is the two perfect answers to the uh, end field here. Yeah, but, as good as it gets for now. But do we have Engine to capitalize and take advantage of this? Let's find out. 
Probably want to use some runic cards from the hand, it looks like. Okay. Okay. I mean... I'm not sure if this really does it, because it's on the new chain, you know, it won't be on the field, yeah, you won't be able to yeah. draw. I mean, uh, probably he's praying that this uh, top card is something that he really needs uh, for engine and it's going to be relevant. He's going to pay the cost uh, for uh, an Arturia Beast, I believe, just to get more cards into the graveyard, maybe more runic spells. Ah, I and see. And the cricket, which actually it's there. So that's a good uh, potential hit. Oh. Okay, interesting. There's a Vion hit off the top there. Mm. Wonder if... Is he uh, playing? Yeah, let's see how many. I think he was playing Chu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... And he was playing, uh, yeah, three copies of the other. Oh, wow. Fusion Destiny. I mean, <laughs> really unfair opening for now. We saw in game one how Fusion Destiny alone uh, can give him so much uh, advantage. And there is a super polymerization in end as well. No, 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 that's ah, a mass change. change. Mass yeah, change, yeah. okay, for a moment it looked. As yeah. Philip has to think in response here because I believe we need to try and use the trap card uh, now if it is organism. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a super ancient organism. Yeah, you, you need so to, to use it, it now. Yeah, otherwise your opponent will simply, you know, chain the effect Ooh, and destroy the Oh, wow. okay. Okay, and he <laughs> scoops up. it up. Okay, All right. Uh, interesting, okay. Uh, that was pretty dominant. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Didn't want to risk it. I guess uh, he played around uh, a potential other Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, but yeah, this is 1-1, one, one, so we are going to game three. And uh, now it's back to Joseph. As mentioned, at the very end, he played it super safe because he could have flipped uh, the, uh, the trap card, but then if there is a Cosmic Cyclone, you cannot chain Ash Blossom. Well, the opposite is possible. If there is an out to Ash Blossom, you can always, you know, chain uh, the trap card That's afterwards. So maybe, yeah, he played it safe, but it makes sense. Uh, he knew that if he survives this turn, it's over. 1-1. One, one. So let's see what's going to happen. Who do you guys got? <laughs> <laughs> Even Steven here. Um, well, naturally going first with this Dark Angel lock is going to be really strong. But mm -hmm. like you mentioned, there's a lot of side deck options in Philip's deck, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun. Because on one side, Yosef uh, <laughs> will set it for sure the anti-spell fragrance alongside with the Pointer of the Red Lotus. And on the other side, I think that uh, Philip is super well prepared to go second against any kind of deck. Because he's playing three Gamma Seal, then he has the Ash Blossom, which, I mean, against the are good. Then there's also the Kori Kara, the Incarnate, which a lot of players are relying on this weekend. And also, just in case, also the Nibiru. Well, I was so, going to mention, sometimes people say that the best end field for Salmon Great and Heroes is a Primal Being token. <laughs> 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 and that's fair enough, uh, and uh, it's definitely one of the best cards, even in this matchup, uh, so he's going to bring those in. Uh, on the other hand, the Kaijus are uh, interesting, because obviously uh, they are great for dealing with the Phoenix, uh, but you cannot deal with the Dark Angel on your side of the field, so at the same time it's not an out to that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be an even one regardless. Uh, uh, we still have plenty of time on the round, so it shouldn't be an issue to end this one uh, before the 45 minutes end. Uh, and uh, it's still, as a reminder, a really important match because they are an X1. And with the amount of players that we have, you really don't want to go X2 this early on. Uh, it's still obviously not guaranteed that you're out, but being X1 or X11 is really where you want to be in at the end of day one, and they're going to try their best. Regardless, though, I think they are basically ready with their side deck, so let's jump back into the table to find out the winner of Game 3. All right, so... As mentioned, Joseph being the uh, victor in game one, losing game two, now gets to decide that all-important game three of who goes first. And very likely going to try and establish the same thing that we did on turn one of game one. And it really is just going to come down to playing this as optimally as you can, keeping your cool, and uh, trying to go for that combo. And <laughs> a little bit of hope that your opponent yeah. <laughs> does not have the all-important primal being token. I see a lot of traps. But I think again, Fusion Destiny. Yeah. Oh, it's Hero Lives. 
Okay, it's zero oh, leaves. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ooh, we're not on risk of wow. time, are we? No. No, no? Okay. No, 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the end, though, is really good because uh, mm -hmm. rivalry and a pointer, a pointer, but a lot of life points uh, down the line. So, as you mentioned, you really need to play this one quickly. 2,000 life points is what he yeah. could have just on the very next turn here. Yeah. What do you think of a pointer? I, I'm a huge fan of a pointer going first. You are a huge fan? Yeah, I love a pointer going first. I think it really depends on the deck. Uh, like, on the one end, I gotta say, I see a little bit of a trend. Like, by being a player that has been oh, pretty much uh, since the dawn of the game around, uh, a pointer was there. It was never used. Now that it's limited to one, a lot of players are catching up on it. So, were we sleeping all around throughout these years? Or, you know what I mean? Or is it more of a trend? But I do agree that in some decks it's really, really strong. So, definitely also a fan. And I think it's interesting with the triple tactic thrust. I like it in combination with the card. So. For uh, now, really good opening. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if it's a one-card combo, but, I mean, simply Hero Lives is definitely a lot for this deck. Yeah. I mean, back in uh, the Greek Championship, I mentioned, of course, Predator and Tanaconda was there. Yeah. So you could get to the Enforcer much uh, easier. Now it's probably changed a little bit the way you combo through, but it's still... Uh, Hero Lives is amazing, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, with the uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer versus Dragoon argument, kind of died with Verte Anaconda, didn't it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. I mean, to be fair, a lot of decks were even using uh, Anaconda to, to get to the Dragoon. So, like some yeah. terror or those kind of decks were still somewhat able to compete because of that, but I guess... Even today? Yeah, we had a sub terror in Lyon, uh, I think. Yeah, we had it right? in the top cut, absolutely. Well, in terms of the tier list of uh, fusion monsters that can be summoned by <laughs> sending materials directly from your deck, Fusion Destiny is up there with uh, probably branded fusion almost. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but you get the benefit of playing Dark Magician and flexing that you have topped with Dark Magician <laughs> in your deck. Like, yeah. All right, so Joseph, uh, well versed in this deck, going through the motions, and it looks like he is trying to play a little bit quick. He probably, you know, yeah. he's not super pressed for time, but you oh, are. Yeah down half of your life points uh, on turn one with Hero Lives. Yeah. So he needs to make sure that he has just enough to be able to go into the battle phase on turn three here. And here comes Denier recycling that malicious. Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is being set up. And now we're going to go into Dread Decimator. No, oh, actually, we're going to go into wow. the extra Change. hero. Interesting. The... Uh, I forgot his name, but it resets mass change from your uh, from your deck if oh, that comes the up. Wonder Driver. Wonder Driver, yeah. yeah. Yep. Adds back the uh, resets there the uh, polymerization or a mass card from your graveyard when the hero is special summon to a zone it points to. Mm -hmm. And now going to re uh, activate the polymerization here and use it to fuse with the malicious and the Stratos. And going for oh, 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 too early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go a little bit of a ahead of himself yeah. there. There's the sunrise gonna get the miracle fusion. All right, well, uh, I didn't get a chance to take a peep at Philip's hand. Same. You know, do you think it's one of those uh, mind games or mental sort of uh, states where you're just gonna you set your hand face yeah. down and you're just like I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do that a lot. I have uh, no response. <laughs> well, yeah, you wouldn't say that ahead. probably, but yeah. No, of course you can't say, say that. Here's, here's the uh, liquid soldier, and here comes the draw to and discard. And there it is. Yeah. Yeah, somebody wake up your elemental here, turn one. Yeah. Okay. Fair. E yeah, they're just gonna check whether the deck was cut uh, and gonna do it just in case. So this is what I love so much about cards like Liquid Soldier. It's like you resolve them near the end of your turn, and when you've been deck thinning so much, post siding, yeah. there's so many and good cards. Oh my god, oh, he, he, he picked up, well. yeah, the Fragrance. So he has Fragrance, Rivalry, and Lotus. What yeah. an opening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, this is wow. exactly what I mean, just being able to get those all-important side deck cards. Side deck, something that Yu-Gi-Oh! players, I feel like, don't really utilize to their best yeah, ability. You know, when it comes to deck I building, agree. sometimes people are just like, yeah, this seems good, I'll throw it in. But don't forget, at least 50% of your duels are played with a side deck. Oh, I agree. <laughs> oh, boy. What do you think is the correct order for these trap cards? Or at least, rather, for Fragrance and Lotus? Do you think it's better to use one before the other? 
you think maybe uh, anti-spell resolve is that okay? And then resolution. I will, go for, I will go for that. Yeah. yeah. yeah just seeing Either if my one. opponent has any response to that, and then activating the lotus. Yeah. This isn't during the draw phase, is it? Or, or no, no, we are still in the. We're still, yeah. we're still going for this. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna get dark law. Yeah. This Ooh, is wow. Uh, wow. Crazy. I don't crazy. think you can ask for a better <laughs> opening here from Joseph. Yeah. Wow. What an opening, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that, yep. that. If you ever needed a demonstration of how Hero works and what you're trying to do in this current format, you've seen it all in this game. This is absolutely incredible. Not going for the Dark Angels we did with game one, but those powerful continuous trap cards back there, backed up with the draw power of the Liquid Soldier, set up with the Dark Claw. This is, uh, this is rough. So we are in the draw phase. Yep, this is the draw phase. And for now, Anti Spell is still face down. Huh? But we move to the standby, and the Enforcer is going to come back. And then we are probably going to see the Anti-Spell, I would say. But I think I would have liked it before. In the draw phase? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, he's actually going for okay, a Hunter so first. So that, my question was then okay. relevant with this order. But yeah, I would have liked it before, because if they have a Runic Spell, like Freezing Course, that can negate the Enforcer you mm -hmm. wanted in you the graveyard. Yeah. Interesting now. Call by the Grave is usually one of the best outs to destroy Phoenix Enforcer, but that card has just kind of fallen yeah. off this format, hasn't it? And here we see it on the Dark Law, so it, it was a Freezing Curse, right? Or is it? It's Flashing Fire. Oh no, Flashing, flashing fire. fire, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean... So this is just sort of a back and forth of passing the priority? Yeah, exactly. So... No way. Wow. It doesn't change the anti-spell. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, That's yeah. strange. But this is still great news. Because unfortunately there is not much that can be done even after using the anti-spell afterwards. Because the fountain, yeah. you know, if there was a destruction there, that would have been nice. But yeah, it's going to reveal the, the Shadow Mist. But yeah, definitely uh, an interesting sequence there. From Joseph, and I think here we get rid of the uh, the spelling. I'm sure he'll shout at me after this, but I am really a little perplexed as to why <laughs> we aren't using anti-spell. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a plan. I mean, are we surely? <laughs> I mean, now that you have seen the end, I think you don't use it. Yeah, because now it's, yeah. they're all you plays. wait for the fountain. Mm -hmm. Because now you bait them, essentially. Even though the fountain doesn't do anything at the moment, because you have the same runic spell. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit of a weird uh, spot at the moment. But, yeah. Important interaction with runic fountain is uh, you can actually draw if you activate a runic on the same chain as the fountain. You have to activate the fountain, let it resolve. Yep. So, I suppose, in response to the activation of fountain, you could anti-spell, potentially? Unless we're just being no, really I silly. Think, Does we just, just not have an anti-spell or something? <laughs> no, no. the thing is, we, you wait for the Yugen. So they discard a card to get to the fountain, and then you flip yeah. the anti-spell. Okay. Yeah. So at least they commit the minus one uh, mm -hmm. from the Yugen. That's, that's oh. the idea. Which, now that the Lotus resolves makes sense, at the beginning of the turn, it's arguable. But mm -hmm. now it's where you flip the anti-spell. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Thank you. You read him like a book, Marcello. <laughs> All right, anti spell fragrance. Uh, we've seen this card in so many different formats, in so many different decks, against so many unfortunate souls. This card not allowing you to activate spell cards until you have set them for a complete turn. That is yep. absolutely debilitating against Runic, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah, now, <laughs> Philip, just... Because, uh... I mean, yeah, as you mentioned, it's true that every Runic, pretty much every Runic card is a quick spell, but the Fountain is the card that makes Runic really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you shut that down. And, yep. and here's the thing, even in a slow game where you'd have to set and then activate next turn, when you combine it with a card like Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, yeah. it can pop the cards that you set that you're trying to wait for. It's checkmate, essentially. And, yeah, it looks like we're going into the end phase, and Joseph is activating the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. 
destroys itself and the Hugin, I suppose just because, well, it's going to be forced out regardless. <laughs> there yeah. it is, checkmate, checkmate. Is it an Archfiend card? It is yeah. an Archfiend card. I, I know because I played it in Speed Duel. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. All right, and uh, you know, one of the worries we had potentially, maybe there was going to be a small problem with time, but yeah, not much to do under that anti-spell. Six minutes remaining. We just do at least 4,000 damage, yeah. and it should be in the bag for Joseph here. At this stage, uh, I mean, yeah, a trap yeah. card is the only thing that can really save you. I think there's the only Ash Blossom left, right? Yep. I think he discarded it, didn't he? Uh, no, no, he discarded no? the Blessing, yeah. Ash mm -hmm. Blossom is the last card in hand. So technically he could have said it. Just, but I mean, for six minutes it's too long, yeah. Yep. Uh, so, Naturia Rudik, I suppose having one of the um, biggest issues with the deck potentially, going second, not, not as great. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, uh, name me a deck that, like, it's met through a Phoenix Enforcer, Lotus, Anti-Spell, and by the way, Rivalry is face down, and like... Yeah, we forgot about the Rivalry, actually, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, there's <laughs> a Rivalry there, so... Uh, yeah. It's really tough for any deck to beat this. Maybe the evenly matched archetype? Yeah, that's a nice argument. <laughs> <deck, yeah. laughs> All right, Denier using the Malicious, able to bring it out once again for this duel here. And I don't know, I, I, are we just looking for style points at this point, maybe? You know, how, can we go wake up your hero for 15 <laughs> or something this time? Yeah. Ash Blossom comes down on the Cross Crusader to tribute and special summon. You need to be careful, though, huh? because I think you need to play this as fast as possible, because I'm not sure you can do 6,000 now. Yeah. And if you can't, uh, you probably win regardless, uh, but you need to play as fast as possible because yeah. then you risk it. Okay, but for now it seems all right. Uh, gonna... That's the Dread Decimator. Yeah. So this card is gain 100 for each hero in the graveyard, and if it attacks defense position monster, inflict piercing. So. Yeah, that's where your piercing damage comes from in Heroes. And is this enough to put him over the threshold? It is. This is 5,000 damage. Oh, actually, yeah, the Lotus Pay. He's still actually not ahead in life points. Yeah, yeah that's why, the Lotus, yeah. Oh, no. So this is actually quite risky because this is... Uh, I'm not sure how many Heroes he has in Grave, but let's see. This, that, it's all down to that. Does it boost all of your Heroes? No, it boosts uh, everything it points to, including itself, so yeah. It points both, basically. It boosts mm -hmm. both, which might make it enough, but I'm not sure. He needs at least five. Yeah, five engraved to be enough. Okay, it is enough. Yeah, okay, all yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Well, a uh, bit of a scare there, but yeah. he is now technically in the lead. So, provided that Joseph doesn't take yeah. any uh, further damage. This is really, yeah. really, really, really tough. Because now the Enforcer is going to come back once again, uh, and with the anti spell resolved, uh, yeah. Do you think you just immediately hit Fountain? Yep. But now any runic card is useless in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate. Just unfortunate. And here the you can see just how crazy of a combo <laughs> Enforcer <laughs> plus anti spell is. Yeah. Another runic spell hit. Anti spell take another victim in this duel. Draws for turn, and it really is just a case of going to the battle mm -hmm. and sealing this. Do we have anything to contend Ooh. with? Oh, Stratos Pop! Stratos Pop. <laughs> there, yeah. it is. there it is! <laughs> Stratos for game, Stratos for game. Wow. What a match, uh, and uh, yeah, well played by both, uh, but in the end, the uh, hero was the deck that got it. Uh, and uh, yeah, Joseph advancing with a 5-1 record. Uh, quite an impressive uh, feature with, uh, with a deck like Hero, yeah? I suppose we got to see the full spectrum of the hero exactly. plays, you know, we saw it going second, we saw it locking with Dark Angel, and that incredible duel that we saw there, being able to use the draw engine into multiple floodgates. Uh, yeah. Also, given the amount of runic players this week, and I think it will be super scary to play against this kind of deck, you know, not only for the Dark Angel, but also, you know, we have seen Antispell Fragrance being played, and... Uh, I mean, a lot of uh, different things, but it showcased us how powerful the deck is, especially in game one. It was, in, I think. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> saw the ending with the wake up uh, your elemental hero, which was great to witness. Uh, but as you mentioned, it's again one of those decks where usually you would focus on the monster package and the side deck would be focused on that. Well, then when they side, uh, both Fragrance and Rivalry, 
you kind of want to side the both eight for the back row removal and uh, it's tough it's tough to deal with it and uh, congratulations regardless to both uh, uh, to be fair it all came down i think to game one and no runic cards at all uh, for his opponent which made it too much on up upfield battle uh, and uh, yeah still fortune record is uh, not the end of the world you gotta keep your composure try your best uh, and uh, playing on stream we mentioned it is never easy we saw it once again with the Naturia blessing being activated with the dark angel on field unfortunately but it's uh, still a show of dominance from the hero deck so i'm sure hopefully we will see more of it we mentioned it we have uh, so many duelists this weekend from all over the world so many different decks and uh, who knows what will be in the top 64 only then we will find out but thank you guys for being with us this was round six of ycs london 2023 we have ed ready with joseph though thank you for being with us and let's hear it from the winner Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Joseph, the winner of round six feature match just there. Congratulations, Joseph. You were just telling me before we came on camera, this is your first YCS in the UK. You had a feature match and now you're 5-1. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very good. I mean, any day I get to normal summon Stratos is fantastic. A hero lives is truly my blood. Uh, but I'm very happy that uh, I was able to perform, um, and I'm very happy that I got to show off the list uh, against something really good, Runic Nateria. So, because you are 5-1, what were the decks you've gone up against? What were the wins against, and what was that one loss against? Uh, the loss was to Sprite. Uh, Sprite has been evolving so much in the last couple of weeks, it's been hard for me to get a handle on. I expected people to pivot to the uh, Lima version of the deck list, and I was sorely mistaken. People just playing a very heads-up, consistent variant. One person snuck a win off of me. Outside of that, it's been more Nateria, Sprite, or Nateria Runic, and I played against a Naturia 4 hire as well. It's an unbelievable deck. Uh, shouts out to Cursed Eyes for pioneering a lot of the theory with that. It's a wonderful list. That was a very concise answer, Joseph. We appreciate that. What is it about Hero that you like? As we were watching you play testing some of this last night, it's clearly been a favorite of yours. It's a very high value deck because I really like the alternative art, polymerization, and all the nice rarities you've got in there. What is it that you like about the Heroes? Very shiny, very shiny deck, love it a lot. Uh, no, um, I, I have for a long time been struck by just how powerful Stratos is and has remained for a, about a decade. It's just shocking, almost no other card has that type of longevity and you know I wanna take advantage of it while a card like that is legal, so very happy to be performing with it. Absolutely, so let's go through your performance in these games. So game one, we had the Dark Angel from you and there was a moment where Philip forgot about Dark Angel's effect and tried to activate the spell, but managed to link that away into the Donna. You built a really great field with the Phoenix Enforcer, the Cross Crusader, Plasma, Sunrise to Surge, Miracle Fusion, Wake Up. Just a huge field, and he had to scoop. So at that point, what are you feeling? Uh, so that hand I opened increase. Um, someone talked me into playing one, and for you who did that, how could you do this to me? Uh, but uh, board was still good. Um, Dark Angel is an FTK against a lot of the field. Unfortunately, not this deck, as it does have the Donner in the extra and ways to get monsters out. Um, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of the wins you get with the deck is unfamiliarity with that card in particular. It is worded so interestingly. Like Cerulean Skyfire, it negates at the point of resolution, which is hard for some players to grapple with. Interesting. So then we move on to our second game. This was a little bit difficult because there was the, the all of the Naturia stuff. Just and there was, you, I mean, you did manage to imperm the Naturia Beast at one point, but I think you just decided after that Fusion Destiny got ashed, you just was just wanting to get into game three at that point? Uh, no normal in that hand. I was staring daggers at my opponent. I was like, if you have Ash Blossom, I need to see it. We got to get to game three. I can't win a game in time when I'm going to a hero lives twice. Uh, but we did get to do so. And you did. And then we go into that game three. Just in another amazing, huge field to start off with from you. That anti-spell fragrance really crippling against the, you know, the runic decks. That's always good. It was quite difficult because obviously as time was ticking down, you had fewer and fewer life points because of some of your effects. And with only only three minutes to go was when you managed to get him down to 400 life points and then that was pretty much sealing the deal so even though you were feeling quite confident and you had the momentum were you feeling nervous about the risks with the life points at all horrified um, I don't think there was a line to the lethal that third game I'm sure someone on the internet will correct me uh, but there was a way to get him down to 400 which I was like okay that's probably good enough if time becomes an issue um, in game three hero really is a transformative deck it turns into rivalry and anti spell and a whole host of powerful cards that are great going first and much better with Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. They'll never get any of the quick play spells off to the races if you keep popping them before they're online. Well, fantastic. Congratulations again. A very eloquent interview from you, sir. Are there any decks that you're slightly nervous about going up against? You said you've had a lot of Naturias and things and Runics. 
But are you nervous about maybe Kashira or anything like that with your deck? Kashira is a very easy matchup for this deck uh, because of Dark Angel. Um, the decks that I am the most scared of are uh, Labyrinth. I have a very poor board plan against that, especially if they have Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Um, and sprite builds that are playing very close to the ground are an issue for me as well. But everything else I feel confident against. Well, best of luck with the rest of those Swiss matches. Maybe we'll see you in the top cup with this hero deck. It would be exciting to see heroes go that far. But once again, congratulations. Guys, don't go anywhere because we have another interview coming up for you in just a moment. But before that, we have a special announcement. Attention duelists. Check this out. Soon you too will be able to carry your cards like the CEO of a certain multi-billion dollar corporation with this beautiful KC briefcase, available for a limited time only and made to order. You cannot miss this. It's so much more than just a briefcase. There's all this great stuff inside as well that you need to take out first before you can fill it with your favorite cards. So let's take a look at that right now. First thing you're gonna see as you open it up will be three copies of the legendary Blue Eyes White Dragon. Of course, this is just a prototype. We don't have the blue eyes yet, but they're going to be the beautiful prismatic secret rare style blue eyes white dragons, the same as you saw in the Dark Duel Stories Game Boy game over 20 years ago. And of course, the sleek design isn't limited to the outside either. On the inside, we have this wonderful KC monogramming, and these bands here are so that you can bring your favorite game mat with you wherever you please. Just fold it in half, stick it in here, and it's secured and ready to go. Moving right along, there are even more cards in store in this box. You'll have this right here, which has 58 cards used by Kaiba in the TV series, as well as three new cards that he used that have never been released in the TCG before. The Attack Guidance Armor, Magical Trick Mirror, and Life Shaver. Now, where are we going to put all these cards? Well, we've got dividers here. We've got dividers here. And if we take out this foam right here, we can see that there are some slots right here and here for us to put these dividers in. So let's go ahead and put a couple of those in right now so you can see what that'll look like. There we go. We got rows like this and like that, and you can even further divide them with these as well. You get about seven rows across that way. And that is this incredible new briefcase. Now, it's limited time only, made to order. Orders will open up later this month, but you'll have to check out evo-card.com to make sure you don't miss it. Welcome back to the live coverage here of the 250th YCS in London. And I'm here with a very well-known face, Ding Kang Pham. You might remember him from getting top eight at YCS Lyon, our latest YCS. But that's not the only thing he has done recently. Was there something you lately have done as well? Yeah, I also won the Dutch uh, Open with 8-0, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Pretty, pretty good. And I mean, you played Sprite at YCS Lyon. And you played what we considered back in the day power spells, Bright, correct? Yeah. Pretty much. And now you came up with a new version of the deck, which you are piloting, and which is by now the most popular version of the deck, basically. So you somewhat invented that version, and now a lot of people in the room are actually on the deck. So what is that version? Yeah, so currently I'm playing the Melfi version. You got those Melfi cards in yeah. here as well. Like, Very nice. There are like only um, two uh, little Melfis, the cute ones in the main deck and then some in the extra deck. And the entire thing is all about um, having a compact engine. And that's what I, uh, what I think is making Sprite the best deck. It's just compact and strong and you don't need much space in your main deck. Yeah, that's the thing, it's only two main deck cards. So for the people that don't know, I mean by now a lot of people do know, uh, but I think the card that you're searching with Melfi of the Forest is like the most important part that gets you to Melfi Catty, correct? Yes, exactly. You are searching Melfi Catty, uh, this little guy, and then um, this guy will get you to the other one, which is basically a quick synchro summon in your opponent's turn, uh, where you can summon a bounce, 
or you can summon Omni Negate. That is really, really strong. So it's not only uh, very versatile because you have different options to go into, and it also is so good because it only needs two of your main deck spots. So that's really, really good. So you said two weeks ago you won the Dutch Open with that deck as well. And a lot of people are actually pro proclaiming you to be the Sprite God, really, because you are just bringing all the good Sprite lists. And you played a list two weeks ago, won with it, but still, you always work on your list and you found another list for this event so what's your score currently in the tournament um, right now I'm still 5-1 uh, so I hope this will continue and yeah I hope for the best I hope for the best. For sure. Is it sometimes funny because probably you sit down versus somebody and they probably already be like okay now I have to play versus Sprite. <laughs> yeah like every single opponent um, already know what I'm playing like exactly which version and so on and some even told me like I just looked up your list before the match and I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's how it is when you're just so popular. But I mean, that's also kind of cool because I think a lot of people are also approaching you and want to have help with a deck because you invented the deck basically. So is there a lot of people you talk to that want to have help by you because you are basically the grandmaster of the deck so you can teach them a lot as well? Yeah, um, today, like many players already ask me what to do in certain situations and yeah, I'm helping them gladly every time. So, I love to see that Sprite has been a very popular deck since its release, but still, you are the one that is still innovating it from event to event. You were at top 8 in YCS Lyon, and I can definitely see you being in the top cut of this event as well. Ding Kang Pham, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much for the short update on your end, and best of luck for the rest of the tournament. We will be soon back with more live coverage of the 250th YCS here in London. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome back to our Speed Duel tournament here amongst the coverage team here at YCS London. We've already seen two of the rounds, which means it's all down to this for our first Speed Duel tournament, the final between Leo and Alberto. So, gentlemen, can we roll, can we roll one dice this time, please? A single die. Okay, that's a two. And that is a three. So who's going to be going first? You're going to go first. Leo is going to start, so I'm going to hand you guys over to the wonderful coverage team. Again, this is quite nice because we get to have different people in every single one of these. So right now we've got Sebastian, we've got Tom, and we've got Marcello. You may never see this trio again. Take advantage of this now. Guys, take it away for the final. Thank you, Ed, and hi from Tom and the Losers uh, team of uh, commentators uh, as, uh, as we go and head into the first finals uh, of this exciting Speed Duel tournament. Uh, what a show-off we have seen yet. So. Absolutely, and I'm really interested because we saw both decks in action now. Do you think there's some kind of a matchup advantage now between Claudians and Vampires? Is there like something that obviously is good versus the other or something? Do well, you think? I mean, we, we saw sort of consistent looking strategy from Leo and For a very sure. explosive strategy on the other side so Absolutely. I guess it's anyone's game. 
Oh, Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, and uh, it's, uh, it's also the surprise factor, I gotta say. So, uh, Leo was obviously doing commentary, so he saw what the Alberto Deck is capable yep. of, and now maybe we'll plan his strategy more uh, uh, or less aggressively <laughs> than I did. So, <laughs> we'll see if that works for him. For but sure. I would say let's not wait too much. Uh, our duelists are ready. Let's find out who will be the winner of this first commentator's tournament. Also, I think this might be Alberto's first tournament of our Casas tournaments <laughs> that he could win, right? That he could. So, I mean, the pressure is even higher now oh, for him. Absolutely. He didn't look like he was feeling any pressure in that no, last round. No, he was looked good in the semis. Comboing. But to be fair, I think he did. Uh, yeah, he did make it to the finals, which was uh, uh, the 2005, I think, last yeah. time against me. So one final he did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, kudos, he, kudos he, he, his last final was in 2005. Is that? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> Not even. He never made it to the finals. Let's just focus on him being on the finals here, okay? And he has brought exactly. the Claudian strategy. <laughs> Absolutely. And it is Leo goes first, uh, so... Did Leo choose to go first? Yeah, interestingly yeah, he enough, he, he did. Okay. Yeah. okay. He's okay. not learned from you, although he did watch you. Maybe he did learn from you because Absolutely, you chose maybe. to go second yeah. and, and uh, didn't win, whereas he did manage to yeah. win going first. Okay, but it looks like Alberto is going to bring out a... Some Claudian are, card that he has not used in the semis the yet. The Claudian that has the ability to destroy monsters, I think? Yeah, is the... Oh, did he take it back or not? Okay, he's, uh, Leo's he's reading, reading I think, it. Yeah, is the Chino Stratos, I believe, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's Chino yeah. Stratos. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, uh, places two counters because of the skill. That makes this, the Claudian monsters a lot more powerful, because normally I remember you had to like have some other monsters in play before you could start using their yeah. effects, but now you can just... This is great, because you get two counters off and you pop a monster, so with the skill essentially it's free. So. I, th I think in general it's great, but versus vampires specifically, yeah. getting the retain in a graveyard honestly helps Leonard more than it hurts him, to be honest. I agree. It's more of a liability, but 900 damage. At least that, yeah. And I yep. mean, Leonard, in fact, they, they need life points to pay. So if you bring Leonard down on life points here early enough, he might not be able to perform his combos anymore. Yeah. So that could be the way. Zone of the Spirit, I think, was just sort of one of the, the staples. I don't think it's specific to vampires. It's yep. a, quite an old... Yep. Uh, it's kind of like a little... It's an 1800 monster, and it, if it gets destroyed by a battle, then it inflicts damage to equal your opponent, to the equal to the yep. attack of the monster that destroyed it, I want to say. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So, and, and um, there's Awakening now. Looks like Leonard is about to pop off here, because uh, that is the first the retainer, and now he's going to special summon out another one. Yeah, basically he pays 500. Ooh, Ooh and he has the Vampire Lord. Tribute summon for Vampire Lord. Old school Vampire Lord himself. And I mean, that's 18 and 2,000 now as well from the Vampire Lord, but yeah. maybe Alberto has a response to that here. You have to remember the Claudian can't Cannot be destroyed, be destroyed by yeah. battle. So it's 900 and then 1,100. Which is still but half still of his life yeah, points. It's most of it gone, so he can't take another another battle phase like that. So Alberto is considering whether to use one of his back row cards. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's, he's, he's no. putting it in the yeah, graveyard. That does. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard has to remind him. Look how Alberto is a master of the Claudian cards himself there. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think Leo seemed to know all of the cards yeah. before this now, weekend. I think he will activate the effect. So let's see what kind of card he declares. Because he oh. has to declare a card from the Vampire Lord, right? So. Oh, that that's a very old effect. Yeah. Sure. And I, I don't even know whether I have ever seen this actually being resolved. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I remember the, the sort of the important effect of Vampire Lord was obviously the, the you know, if it is destroyed by a card effect, then it comes back again. Um, I think what's, is, uh, what's scary is probably spell... Oh, he goes for a trap card. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't blame him, because actually, the I don't know if you catch it, but uh, the spell that Alberto used uh, yeah, the in the duel against me, you cannot use the both effect. effects in the same turn. Okay. That's why it's very slow at the moment. It wouldn't be a good draw, so it makes sense that he wouldn't call but it. But if he can put it straight in the graveyard, he could do this Sure, it would have been quite yeah, good. So that would be, yeah. sure. not that would be sure helping if, your opponent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So that would be yeah, really bad. He's got bad. a keen eye. He's not, <laughs> yeah. he's not sending any... So Alberto and Leonard both on their end doing the best for the opponent's strategy to evolve. So Alberto is getting the vampire monsters in the graveyard from Leonard okay. and so not Leonard the Selby. worst. He can normal summon the monster he used to pretty much destroy me, and he will get two tokens, essentially making it a two thousand. And this is probably what he's gonna go for. The problem is then exactly. the Zoma is a yeah. really really big threat because just 
running into that might just end the duel because Zoma is burning for 2k yeah. at that point. Leo can just crash and uh, it would end the duel and this is quite likely what we could see. Maybe Alberto is just running over it now and then Leonard's <laughs> like, okay, I will actually resolve the effect to burn you for 2,000 life points. Yeah, let's... Oh, uh, that he's, is he's actually oh, wow. what is happening. Oh, no and way. Leo, Leo, Leo cannot believe it. He's pointing towards it. <laughs> <laughs> and now Alberto picks up a card. You're in the finals. Oh, no. And that is the end what of this final. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Ay, 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 ay. What a way to end it. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I mean, he knew that he wasn't going to be able to stop it. Absolutely. Just going out in style. Let's, let's all say the truth. Alberto <laughs> knew it was over, yeah. but he didn't want Leo to be the one who would win the duel. He's going like, I'm going to lose this one. It was for entertainment purposes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think reading it was just for show. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. He just had to give a show, as I mentioned. He didn't want Leo to win. He wanted to be the one to lose. Exactly. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, and congratulations to Leo and Germany who takes uh, this vast uh, <laughs> tournament home. Uh, but again, uh, just as a reminder, before we add uh, to the winner interviews, uh, these uh, are some of the decks that you can find oh, in yeah. GX Shadows that was released just two days ago on March 30. So you can get it with your friends and just uh, do the same as we are having fun. But there are four decks remaining which we haven't shown. And that is because we are having a second speed duel commentators tournament coming up but now I think let's hear it from Leo and Ed well 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 that was a, a heck of an end game there so obviously congratulations Leo on your win but before we come to you talk to us a little bit Alberto what happened there uh, I should have read Leo's cars <laughs> So, <laughs> that's it. It, just, it, was, it was all down to that trap effect, was it? Yeah, I didn't read it. So basically, when it gets destroyed, I get the same amount of uh, the monster that destroyed it. So I got 2K and uh, that's it. Goodness me. Well, there was a moment where we thought you might have taken home your first commentator tournament title. But no, we come over to you, Leo, our champion. Not the first time you've won. You're doing well. How are you feeling? I think I only won the quizzes so far. So this is... Well, that's still a win. So how do you feel after winning this? I feel really special. I th I, I, this was meant to be, right? Like, nobody in their right mind <laughs> would attack over the Zoma with 2,000 life points left with the exact 2,000 attack point monster after considering to block my attacks with something before so it wouldn't take too much damage. So it, it was meant to be, and uh, I'm just grateful for it. Well, congratulations to you, Leo. It's a heck of a win. And I'm sorry, Alberto, that you got slightly embarrassed there on stream by <laughs> playing what you did. But like I said, congratulations to you, Leo. You've taken home the first of our two speed duel tournament titles. But don't go anywhere. We've got more feature matches coming your way from our main event here at YCS London. But also, we've got ourselves another speed duel tournament and also some Time Wizard formats coming your way. Don't go anywhere. Hi guys and welcome back to the coverage of the YCS London 2023. I'm here with another live interview while we wait for the start of the next round. And I'm here with Eleonora who got second place of the Master Duel Invitational in Paris later on last year. And is now actually at her first YCX experience. So how does it feel? How is it to play at a YCS finally? Well, it's a bit of uh, overwhelming because, you know, there's a lot of people and uh, I feel the pressure actually. But, you know, that's maybe because it's my first YCS, then I get a bit used of it. But for now, I, I mean, it's a really nice uh, experience. I'm starting to do the vlog, the videos, just about the experience. I'm really, really getting excited even for the top cut. I hope to, I get in the, the top cut, of course. And uh, uh, people uh, are nice. I'm, I'm actually really having fun. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you did have uh, some experience, as you mentioned, you're also a content creator, but you have been playing uh, at the regional and national level with uh, quite some success. Uh, obviously, you have been uh, pretty much uh, playing over and over the same deck, which was Virtual World for a long time. And now you have finally switched, it seems, to Sprite. So what do you think of this current meta and why did you decide to play this deck? Uh, first of all, I was really unsure of what to play, actually, because uh, the meta now is really, really uh, rich of variants 
and you know uh, it's difficult to actually catch the meta call but I was really really confident with Sprite and I was not uh, maybe I I'd like to play to play Despia right now because I feel it's the really best uh, deck right now but I felt more confident with the Sprite so I decided to bring it to the event makes sense and a lot of players are having success so we wish that you probably have some good luck as well for the event but going back into how it got you into Yu-Gi-Oh! Do you have uh, outside of a favorite deck which is probably have a really easy answer do you have a favorite card which obviously also has a you have a nickname in the community but let's hear it from you I guess. Well of course my nick is Colossa and it was even not one of my idea. It was uh, one of my friends that actually named me with this uh, cute and fine name, just like the car. Yeah, really fair, like <laughs> like Thunder Dragon Colossus, of course. So you know, that's my favorite car the uh, all time. Uh, not only because of the effect, but just because even uh, <laughs> for the for the artworks, I mean, it's dope. Absolutely, and uh, it's a fair choice, uh, definitely a powerful one, but uh, thank you again for being with us. Uh, it's uh, as just like her, you guys uh, can come to one of these YCSs just by getting a ticket online and showing up. It's a great experience, uh, and it's quite, quite different from your national ones. Uh, here you get to play against thousands of people from all over the world, uh, and I guess we'll see you probably at the Italian National Championship later on this year, but for now, let's take it to the press, and so good luck for the the rest of the tournament and you guys thank you for being with us we'll be on a brief short break and we will be back with round seven of YCS London
Another game world?
Today, I'll teach you the three steps to dueling greatness. Step one, obtain the Speed Duel GX Duelist of Shadow Spots. Step two, gather your allies and duel together. Step three, master the 20 new skill cards. And when you do, the Sacred Beast shall rise. Speed Duel GX, Duelist of Shadows. Available now. 200 cards per box, each box sold separately. Welcome back to your coverage here at YCS London here in 2023. So we've already had one tournament here with the speed duel format taken by Leo going home with that title. But who's going to win the second one? Well, it's time for us to find out between our coverage team who also is good at speed dueling. So in front of me, obviously, have Basti and Marcello, who are both ready to kick this off. Right, guys, we're going to do a high roll. Please only one or two dice this time. I can't count seven dice. Okay, that's six. Six for Marcello. Oh, 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 we've lost one. Oh, God. Okay, let's see. And, oh, it's six. Okay. This is now a duel. Oh, ten. Okay, this is now a duel of dice. Okay, and so are you going to go first? Basti, you're going to go first. Okay, so there we go. That's sportsmanship. We didn't see that in the last round, so now it's good to see some of that positive energy here. I'm going to hand you guys over to Alberto Nadir and Leo, who's just won the last round, to commentate on this next Speed Duel tournament. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much, Ed. I'm here with, of course, Nadia and former Speed Duel Caster Tournament finalist, Alberto. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> I still need to recover, Leo, I have to admit. But uh, next time, guys, be sure to check Zuma the Spirit out before attacking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super excited to see how uh, the speed duel unfolds. Uh, first time I've uh, been on the desk for speed duels, so um, yeah, it should be pretty interesting. Yeah, I it's going to be pretty fun, honestly. Yeah. yeah. And I think also these guys, uh, maybe they're going to play speed duels for the first time, because like last time you beat Sebastian and Marcello beat me, so I think this is the first time they're playing speed duels, right? Yeah, that is absolutely possible. And I got to say, I've, I've been in the lab with Sebastian about the deck, right? <laughs> we've, been, we've been building a bit, and this deck is really tough if he draws okay-ish. <laughs> As long as he draws okay, then he'll be okay. Right? Yeah, noted. So, so he is playing Amazonas versus the Archfiend guy from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. <laughs> <laughs> the chess pieces, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There, yeah. So why don't we just go over there and check out what these players have for us? Do you know, my favorite thing about Speed Duel is just the consistency of it, you know, just being able to have 20 cards. Yeah, and that's just, it. Yeah, yeah, just 20 cards and you can Basically, you're guaranteed to see like some form of uh, engine piece or combo that yeah. you're trying to establish. It was, oh yeah, that is the key card for Sebastian. The Amazonas Village makes every single Amazonas a floater. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. By, by the way, you were talking about consistency. I was able to put three foolish burials in my vampire deck, and that felt great. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, Marcello drawing off a turn here. Let's see uh, how this chess deck works. <laughs> Not happy with this. <laughs> Do you know, the uh, Amazonas deck is, um, I suppose, like, your main combo, does it still use the Prince, mm -hmm. prince thing for no. the, uh, the reflective yeah. damage, I suppose? So, but I think this is only the only thing that Marcello could do with this deck, because uh, it, it has a lot of monsters, but uh, being able to assemble them, it's, uh, com it's a complete another story. Here, with the Pandemonium being showed up on the screen, yeah, so it adds an Archfiend monster from the deck to the hand with a lower level than the Archfiend that destroys himself. So the sort of the, like the gimmick is um, Archfiends all destroy themselves for various powerful effects or just in the end phase. Uh, and then Pandemonium is a great way to sort of keep that recursion flowing so that you always have access to yeah. uh, another uh, piece of your Archfiend deck. Yeah, the Archfiend General is kind of comparable to Gravekeeper's Commander because that is basically a terraforming with legs. <laughs> yeah, so it, actually it's part of a series of another uh, set of uh, oh. those old uh, field spell searchers, you know, so there's one for Umi, um, I think there's like a wind one as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, so they all like can be summoned for like massive attack, 2100, uh, but they will destroy themselves if that corresponding field is not uh, on, on the field currently. That is true. And now the village just basically special summoned out after the paladin got destroyed by battle. The Amazon is sage, and that one is really interesting. It's not the strongest one on the field, but when it attacked, then it destroys a spell or trap card on the field, if it is still on the field as well. And now Sebastian is going to flip over the skill, or he is not, I don't really know. He has the Amazonas heirloom in his deck, and that is a crazy card. He's either flipping it or is leaving mid-round. 
Maybe it's had a judge call. <laughs> <laughs> so, Heirloom basically says, for the first time in a turn, if a monster is destroyed by battle, it's not destroyed by battle. And after it battles, the opposing monster will be destroyed. Yeah, so okay. this is sort of like the lock that you can establish yeah. with the uh, yeah. uh, princess, I think, as well. So they take damage, you destroy yeah. something, and your monster like survives every attack. Yeah. And there is a trap card that says every monster on the opposing field loses 500 attack points, and every monster will have to attack as well. <laughs> Welcome back, duelists, to more of your coverage here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live from London, the 250th YCS. So, in front of me, I have Marcel and Callum, who are ready to get Round 7's feature match underway. Neither have been a part of a feature before. This is an exciting time for them, if nerve-wracking. Gentlemen, the way we're going to decide this, could you do me a high roll to see which one of you are going to be going first? Callum's going to roll first. That is a 7 for Callum. You have 7 to beat, Marcel. That is a 3. Are you going to go first? Okay, Callum's going to be going first, so I'm going to hand you guys over to our wonderful trio. We have Tom, we have Basti, and we have Leo, who are going to be taking you guys through the commentary for this Round 7 feature match. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much, Ed. We appreciate it. So, we are absolutely amazed by this deck building I, I can already tell you that we are going to be a bit nostalgic both of these oh, players yeah. will have to put their headphones on for me to continue <laughs> that is something this. very very yeah. very important yeah. it's sure. good that i caught that because i was just about to announce the deck of one of those players but yeah, i'm yeah, going yeah, to continue sure. stalling <laughs> <laughs> well you could them notice them. Maybe i mean we can, we can talk quite about a large deck <laughs> we can talk start. a little bit more about general stuff going on at the moment in the event we are now in round number seven yeah so that is uh seven out of nine for today and honestly those guys are x1 at the moment yeah. winning this round is really crucial because you only have to win like one more after that to really secure your spot into day two to really That's have true. a shot of topping then tomorrow to get you into a good position preferably you will not be losing anymore today but you or know how it is sometimes one of them <laughs> will in here right now uh but now that the players have put on the headphones Leonard, you were already starting to talk about it, so I will give it back over to you. What are we about to see? We are going to see Goki. <laughs> and we have put our minds together. We have been looking <laughs> at the deck list. We have no idea what he wants to put up in his first turn, but it looks like the players are ready. Yeah, let's see in action. <laughs> yeah, let's just go over to the players. So here we are, and Callum has won the die roll. That means he will be going first with his 60 card, as you deck. just said, <laughs> Goki deck. deck. I mean, to be fair, calling it only a Goki deck maybe isn't yeah. really right because there's Phantom Knights in there. There's also a couple of uh, Infernoble Knights, Quantum. as you can see. Red there's layer. Warriors in there, Super Quantal, and there is the Goki Twin Cobra, a uh, Twin Cobra, Twist Cobra, right? Twist I want to say, if I'm, if I'm going second against a 60 card deck, I'm always a little bit yeah. scared. I always assume there's some absolutely crazy combo. For sure, for sure. I don't know if Marcel was playing when Goki was a popular deck, but he's probably going to be a bit concerned because everyone knows yeah. who was playing at the time just what the Goki deck was capable yeah. of. Tom, that's what I was about to ask you. When was the last time that Goki was really popular? Well, it was. A, I don't want to get the year wrong. <laughs> Eighteen. Just twenty eighteen at the 18, European probably. Championships. Yes. It just it run amok. It was Luke Parks. Luke Parks won. Won the whole thing. There with were it. a lot of Goki decks running around the top sixty-four. It was an insanely powerful deck. I was playing it myself. Oh yeah. Uh, Marcello also played it. I remember. So for sure, it it, it was wildly considered to be the best deck in the room yeah. for oh, sure definitely. back in the day. And uh, it is not. You're not able to play that deck in its uh, form from back in the day anymore. So we're really interested and excited to see what is the way to play this deck at the moment. I mean, it's back so in far, that day, we had a different combo, yeah. master rule, right? So yes. it was actually really strong to extra link your opponent and yes. take up both of the extra monster zones for... Ooh, and look at that. Over. We already have an Appaloosa set up. So even if Marcel has Nibiru, that is not going to be an issue anymore. And we are going to trigger two Goki effects in our graveyard. That's Hatbat. And what was the other one there? Uh, I think it's the new Goki Guts. Yeah, that looked like Guts for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's a newer one because originally there used to be six. 
Uh, so now, I guess there's a few more. Yeah, that is guts indeed. And look, we, <laughs> we do search for double Goki rematch. I there. love this Unfortunately, card Unfortunately, so you can only use one Goki uh, rematch now, but next turn, you can use it again. So, so he's already go, thinking about the next yeah, turn. Yeah, we go for the hat bat. That Appaloosa used to be a firewall dragon. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> Things have changed. Times have changed. Uh, so we are reviving two other Gokis, and I now... I think we are going to see the Codebreaker cards. Probably now. we're going to go into the Codebreaker cards. This yeah. Codebreaker Virus Swordsman actually was played in Sprite a couple of months ago, yeah. just as an out to Baguska, because that was a pretty good card versus that deck that Telemans could put up. But nowadays, here in this Goki deck, it's just part of the engine. Actually, a combo extender in this case. Yeah. Summoning... What did you summon out there? It's a the, main the deck Codebreaker. Code breaker. Zero Day. And oh, boy. Th those two can link into the Codebreaker Virus Virus Berserker that can now just summon Holy. back the Virus Swordsman and the Zero Day, and that's it for Codebreakers. But I mean, that's a pretty they impressive did their ball, thing. Right? Yeah. They did their thing All right of there. This so far, just from one Goki and one Super Quantum Red. Pretty Red, much, right? yeah. So it's already that should impressive. mean Callum has still like four cards left and in his hand, which they is crazy. Are all dark, you know which monster really likes dark monsters? Oh, go the ahead. Phantom Knight. Yes, Rusty. Badish. Rusty Bardish. Bardish. Something. So <laughs> we Rusty. <laughs> rusty. Yeah. Let's call him Rusty. So we added back the Phoenix Blade. We could do that back in the day already. That's like one of the best equipped spells you can play in this deck. That very you can powerful because you can keep bringing it back. And if you have an yeah. effect that needs to discard, you can discard it and then just bring it back to your hand For again. For sure. That's just so strong. And as an extra bonus, you know, you can give one of your monsters and 300. And the Rusty Badish. <laughs> and that, of course, tells us there has to be a small Phantom Knight yep. engine in there as well, and there we see it. And I know that this combo is going to be even bigger than I thought, because if he had taken the virus swordsman, the virus something, wait one second. There's a berserker the and the swordsman. virus berserker, exactly. Yeah. And the swordsman to uh, go into Bardish, he could have used the zero day and the trap to go for a time thief redoer attached with a trap, which is pretty strong already. So as he did not do that, I He's assume that there yet. is going to be much more to come here. I mean, Callum is I'm playing very quickly, so I assume he knows exactly what he is yeah. doing. And I'm, so, I'm so excited. At the moment, I feel like a kid that didn't wish anything for Christmas and now <laughs> will be surprised with something, but he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> and I, like, Callum, please surprise me. And I'm already quite surprised. So we are special summoning. Okay, and another, another oh, drink. that must be IP Mascarena then, right? That would be the only card I could see. Yeah, there is IP Mascarena. This is just like old school Goki. You just summon 100 Link monsters. Yeah. And, and maybe that... Silent Boots will be searching for a Fog Blade? Probably. I, I was kind of hoping for a Time T3 duo. I think that one can accomplish even more than IP, actually. Yeah. Because when you look through the extra deck, the cards you can summon out with the IP Masquerade are uh, like Unicorn Phoenix and maybe Nightmare Griffin. We saw Nightmare Griffin in the yeah. live stream already in round number one immediately in the hands of Pascal Keem. But it looks like this is the end board we were aiming for. We have one additional Fog Blade right under the IP Mascarina in the Pendulum Zone. Yeah, so indeed. What do you indeed. think of this as an end board? Do you like it? I don't know. Like, how much interaction do we have here? We have the one Fog Blade. I always like it when an end field has uh, monsters and back row. So a combination yeah. of both of good is good because a Dark Ruler doesn't end this end board. And also, uh, like, evenly matched, there's always going to be something left. That's really cool. Uh, but. I think I saw better uh, ending fields already. For example, the Rika endboard looked stronger to me. Honestly. Oh, the Rika endboard was absolutely crazy. Yeah, Can't that's what I thought. That. Are you checking if there's any secret yeah. effects of the Codebreaker virus? During your over? main phase, you can destroy spell trap cards. You control up to the number of linked Codebreaker monsters on the field. Oh, that's actually really what, good going. What sound. are we doing? Are we just? Oh, we, I think we, we just be will be going into the Nightmare Griffin here, right? No, we go into Avramax. Was there a, a call of battle phase? Perhaps, Probably. There Marcel? must be the call of battle phase. And I mean, that would only be one of the many trap cards in the deck of Marcel. Yeah. And of course, there could always be oh. evenly matched. And it is. And that end board is going to be gone so quickly. And only the Avermax that he just linked into via the effect of IP Mascarina is going to stick to the board. And uh, Marcel does look quite happy with that trade, it, it, you know? For sure. Avermax is really strong against this deck. It is very tricky, but if it's just by itself, you know, you can just keep putting monsters out. It's just going to attack one monster a turn. I don't think you're super worried. That is true. However, Ooh, I mean, you have 60 cards in your deck, so I think you're not the first one to deck up. <laughs> that's probably true. Not, that's probably true. Not. Do you think there's any answers then? 
in the deck or extra deck? I don't know. Basti has to check. Uh, I will have to have a look here. So, big welcome. Labyrinth is not the answer. Compose neither because both of, both of those are targeting. Is destructive the Ruma <laughs> Kama can at maybe that. an answer? I could see that because uh, that is changing as many monsters on the field as possible to the face down defense position. Then, if Eva player controls <gasps> a face up monster, they must send all of them to the graveyard. That so that would be an answer indeed that right this away. This actually just sounds like a specific out. <laughs> to yep. Abramax. Yep. And Abramax, just to clarify, it can't be destroyed by battle, can't be targeted by, uh, sorry, it can't be targeted by card, can't be targeted, can't be destroyed by card effects. Yep, And yep. if it battles any monster, it gains attack? Yep. Or is it a special summoned monster, perhaps? Um, let me double check. And also, I found another pretty convenient out in the main deck of Marcel, which is Skill Drain. Whenever oh, you find Skill course, Drain, yeah. that is a pretty <laughs> easy answer to it as well. By the uh, way, the but destruction let me check the protection of Avermax Avermax. comes from the IP effect. Yes. Yes. Yep. So it wouldn't be turned off by a Skill yep. Drain. But I mean, something else we have to consider. The Goki deck is incredibly good at keeping the resources. Goes match hurts a lot here, I think. Ooh, true. He knew about that Goki rematch in hand, and that's immediately preventing that. And also, just a little add-on, uh, Avermax has to battle a special summoned monster, okay. as ah, uh, okay. we were just talking he could about. Have, he could have waited, right? With the I was thinking match. about whether you could wait until your opponent activates Goki rematch. Oh, that's Maybe a direct attack with Avermax. So Callum is getting the first damage in here, bringing Marcel down to 5,000 life points. I think you're sitting very pretty if you're Marcel here. I think you're yeah. very happy with how this game has gone so far. I think it depends. You will need yeah. a way into a monster soon, because if you're not finding a monster for the next two turns... Okay, there's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me make that quick. He has a monster, so that's actually looking good for him. I agree. So, and that is the normal Welcome oh. Labyrinth, right? Yes. Yeah, so that is. will summon one, any Labyrinth monster from the deck. Yep. And you've got three options typically. There's the Ariana, which when it's summoned is level four and it can just search another Labyrinth card. You have the Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle, which can, can't be targeted and can't be destroyed while you control face down cards. And when you activate a normal trap, you can chain its effects at another normal trap. Yes. And then you have the lovely Labyrinth. Absolutely. Oh, okay, so we've gone for the Ariana here. Yeah, so that will just uh, keep our engine going. I like that. I mean, also the Lady of the Silver Castle will keep your engine going because that will always set another trap it's when lovely, you're activating yeah. a trap. So that's really lovely indeed, <laughs> just by its name already, but also by its effect. The that Lady is lovely. And you can also search the Lady now, and it has an effect to special summon itself if you used either a normal trap or a Labyrinth effect this turn. And you did both of in which that Marcel has just used two. <laughs> so, yeah. But he's adding the big welcome Labyrinth. Which is also good, because that will also give him access to that lovely lady of the labyrinth, but also <laughs> can get the Ariana back to hand so it could use its effect again. So. I, lo I love Big Welcome Labyrinth. It's a lot of fun bouncing your monster. Yeah. There's something about just bouncing a monster that has an effect that when you normal summon it and then just summoning it again. It just feels so satisfying. Yeah, for sure. The support wave uh, from Photon Hypernova for the Labyrinth deck was really strong and it really brought it into the top level of competition. And we definitely see that here with Marcel still being X1 in the tournament currently. Oh, and there's Prosperity. So we can search for our outs here directly, maybe picking up a skill drain or something. Or the Daruma Kama Cannon, which <laughs> would sure. actually be fantastic in this scenario as well. So what do you... Oh, Marcel didn't actually search the lady, so that's why he didn't summon it. I was thinking why he didn't summon it, and then it was because he didn't actually have one in his hand. Makes sense. That makes the most sense. So what do you think we're looking for? So we're looking for Skill Compose, Drain and Daruma in. Cannon. There's Daruma Cannon. He's playing it as a one-off, and he has found it if he wants to have it here. And I luckily, mean, you, can always, you can always search it with your trap engine. Yeah, true. Yeah, and also... Prosperity is basically like a tunneler, it really digs deep into the deck. For sure. You can go pot into pot. Pot of Duality does not draw a card either. I, so. I, I gotta be honest, something about an Avermax on the opposing board is just making me really nervous. So I would really appreciate him taking the Daruma Kamakan. He is picking up he the pick Compulse. Compulse. Masa, he's that keeping his cool. He is not at all nervous <laughs> of the Avermax, but maybe he's perhaps forgotten that it can't be targeted. I'm not sure, because it would be a very convenient out yeah. if it could be targeted. But I mean, I thought that he's just playing the Karma Cannon for cards like Avermax. Yeah, for sure. It also is a, a, is a sort of Book of Moon style effect yeah, setting monsters enough, face yeah. down. So it, it's, it's reasonable card against Cash Tiro's. Everyone's yeah. very hot on these types of effects while Cash Tiro's in the metagame. Yeah, but we see that uh, Callum actually has Nibiru in his hand, and that's maybe another reason why 
Labyrinth is so successful this weekend in the hands of Marcel because cards like Nibiru and also cards like Effect Veiler or something, they're really not that great versus the Labyrinth deck. You'd have to try extremely hard with the Labyrinth yeah. deck to allow your opponent to activate oh, Nibiru. Oh, but there is the reason he didn't I take the Daruma Cannon. We do have the Skill Drain right there. I think that Callum has seven cards in his hand. Does he? I mean, oh, he I just started yeah, his turn, one so that's fine. Oh, 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 right, okay, we're in his turn. I'm so sorry. We forgive you. Oh, okay, and Thank then you. now the compulsory makes total sense because yeah. indeed it can now out the Abramax. And that is happening right there. This is this is very rough. Does does Callum run any spell and trap removal in his main deck? Should we have a little look? I don't think so. See if Let there's me any look at it. ways out of this. Evenly matched is in there. So I mean now the the space is there for for evenly matched because we got rid of the only card in our field. Yeah. I mean, it, it, a, evenly matched is such a sort of meta-warping card at the moment because yeah. it yeah. makes you do things that would otherwise seem really weird. Oh, but we go for the rematch first. The thing, though, that has always been the case with Goki decks is you are investing a lot of your extra deck resources in your first turn, into your first turn board. And I think still that's the case for this deck because if I look for his extra deck, I don't even know what he's going to summon out here. Maybe Axis Code Talker. Well, keep in mind there's the Gozen match as yeah. well. Yeah, so that's not even the thing. Oh, Ooh. we go for the Durandal there. Equipping it to the Ariyama. So, that is interesting. <laughs> Marcel to, also has to double check there. You always have to be a little bit, you know, a bit suspicious if your opponent targets your monster with an equip spell. Ooh, and we go for oh, big Oh, that's a nice Labyrinth. change because now you can return the Ariyama to your hand and then the Infernal Arms, Dur Infernoble Arms Durandal will just fall off and not yep. be able to use its effect to search for a Fire Warrior monster. I mean, how would the Fire Warrior monster at this point even help him? But yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you don't well, want yeah. to give your opponent more resources than that. Exactly. Right? You were probably going to use the big but welcome labyrinth. Can, can one in of any you guys event. tell me why we did equip that Durandal to the opponent's monster? Because our monster would have been fine too, right? Our monster would have been fine. I think maybe you, you, you expect more often than not that your opponent will have an easier time destroying one of your monsters than theirs in Probably. response, yeah. but maybe he just overlooked the fact that his opponent had added a big welcome ladder. Fair enough. One Noble Arms equip spell would be really good, and it is <laughs> our foy Dutier. Which he's not running. Yeah. <laughs> but that one was used back in the day yeah, in Goki decks uh, to get rid of some spell trap cards. Yeah, it was one of, if you wanted to run lots of equip spells, I think yeah. that was one of the ones that you would pick. So we are searching now for Welcome Labyrinth again, and I mean... Callum still has a lot of cards in hand, but it doesn't really look like they do too much versus Ghost Match plus Skill Drain, so it definitely looks like Marcel is going into a good route here. He's going into a direction where he can maybe close this game out. Gotta be honest with you, there's not much that can do a lot versus Ghost Match and Skill Drain. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Evenly matched? <laughs> that would Fair be a good one. <laughs> the Big Welcome Labyrinth, how did that get banished already? Is there something I... I think he just used the effect. Oh no, is that... Is that Big Welcome? Yeah, Big, is Big welcome, welcome is banished. So Big Welcome has a useful effect. I'd rather it was in my graveyard, right? Because you can banish it I to activate he, the effect to return a monster. Yeah, but I think he returned the Ariana, right? Because Ariana is not let on, on the board anymore. So I think he just wants to normal summon Ariana over and over. Was, was that not with the effect of Big Welcome Labyrinth? It's got its other effect with the normal trap <laughs> effect, which is to special I summon think, when you activate I it as I a trap I think I saw card. him normal summoning it again, so we are just going to normal summon this thing endlessly, I think. Well, you don't get any value at the moment because of the skill drain, right? Oh, true. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Or maybe he normaled it and immediately chained the Big Welcome Labyrinth, so oh, he avoided his own skill drain. Probably that was the between plan Between us, there. we figured it out. Yeah, that's We're almost as smart as Marcel between both of us. True, <laughs> but that was a very heads up play, flying around his own skill drain there. That's, That's pretty cool. Yeah. It is annoying, obviously, having your own monster effect shut off, but if your monsters are bigger than your opponents, you don't need their effect. Yeah, and those Labyrinth monsters are pretty big. Absolutely. So what is Callum going to do here? Does he have an answer to all of that? He's holding a huge that hand must of cards. Be. But also there's something on top of Marcel's bo uh, field, so that must be Lord of the Heavenly Prison, right? Why would it be face up there otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> there would be no card that fits that description. Oh, and look at that. Oh. Big we Welcome Labyrinth, Chain Welcome Labyrinth. That's a pretty good one. We are welcoming so many monsters right here. There is just an armada of ladies that are ready to attack <laughs> Callum for so much damage. Callum is still at 8,000 healthy life points, but he, he has been trying to dig through his deck to find the evenly matched. But evenly so far, matched. 
Yeah, but I mean, we are now applying a lot of pressure because there's, this is going to be that lot of the Heavenly Prison now as well. And we just searched for another uh, Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle, which can also be summoned this turn. So that will be three monsters with 3,000 attack points. No, four even. Uh, uh, yeah, he's got another Lady already. in his hand, yeah. so you can special summon that during the end phase. But it's important to do it in the end phase because it has to come out in defense position. Yeah. But then during your turn, you can switch for sure. to attack And you mode. might as well then use again the effect of Big Welcome Labyrinth in the graveyard to then this time go after the opponent's monster. And then I think in combination with the Ariana, which is still in his hand, that should be enough Probably. to end the game on the next turn. Most likely. That's my, that's my bold prediction for today. <laughs> That's 12,000 points of attack <laughs> right there. It's really, really strong. Labyrinth doesn't look like the deck that would just casually uh, get an OTK in, but he, right here, I think we're about to see that. To be honest, we're not at the point where this is a casual OTK anymore, right? This, this, was, this was a good few turns in the making. Yeah, this was acquired over several turns, several but long turns. You can turns do it. Like, skill, you, right? you can, it's, it's not something you would think often if your opponent sets a couple of cards. But look at that, Marcel is throwing both four monsters onto Callum, and that means Marcel is going to take game number one. Labyrinth is defeating the Warrior deck by Callum, and that brings him up into this match. 1-0. Yeah, I mean, half of his setup in the first turn was basically monster negates. Yeah, but I think that even if the evenly didn't happen, Skill Drain and Goes Match would have been enough to out the entire field. I absolutely that agree. That was just an IP. I mean, IP could have done something. He's not running Trisbana, is he? Um, nope, he's not. Or Zero Boris? Neither. But at the, now do we think Callum, knowing what his opponent's running, might be able to tailor his end board? Yeah, time to free will, for really sure. He really seems good. Absolutely. And also, some of his cards in the side deck seem really good as well. He is bringing in the Cosmic Cyclone, which of course is just yeah. generally good for any back row deck, which yeah. Labyrinth certainly is. And then also there's the Harpy's Feather Duster. The only concern I have with those cards, because it's four cards in total, is that he's playing 60 cards in his main deck, so yeah. is he going to see those? That's pretty hard of a task. That is always the downside. It's great to run 60 cards yeah. for certain things, because if there's cards that you want in your deck but you don't want to draw, you can kind of bury them among the other 60. Yeah. So it's good to, you know, maybe that Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, which is perfect for sending for off sure. Azul, but not a card you want to draw, then you'll draw it less often with 60 cards. But the big downside is, even if you're running 60 cards, you only get 15 cards in your side deck. Absolutely. You don't get more cards. That would be funny, though, if you would have, like, 30 <laughs> cards in your side deck because because you are playing a 60 card <laughs> that would main deck. be really good. But also, you can still silent the ghost spells. Those are pretty good sure. against the uh, yeah. welcome cards. But I mean, they are not that impactful. They can buy you a few turns. But if you don't find an out to those big floodgates, to those heavy impact cards, you are still going to have the lower hand here. <laughs> but yeah, I think that maybe if he sets up a Time Thief Redoer and this one can come back and come back and come back because it just attaches traps and monsters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be great because yeah. the one of the, the powerful effects really of Time Thief Redoer are the, yeah, when sure. you attach a spell or a trap card from your opponent's deck and you're quite likely hit a trap card. Absolutely. Um, one thing that I can definitely see coming in for Marcel, on the other hand, going second now in this matchup, is Dimension Shifter, which is a card that is heavily featured in the Kashira yeah. deck, but also here in the Labyrinth deck of Marcel. And is Goki even able to combo off when they can't acquire their graveyard? No. It, it, the That's Goki effects answer, are right? like yeah. really great. To, you know, you get a lot of gas just from every time they're sent from the field to the graveyard, yeah. you get to search another one. But yeah. now, all of a sudden, it's no more searches. It's not only the Goki cards that really rely on the graveyard. It's also the Phantom Mai. It's Phantom all of them, and, pretty uh, much. Isolde as well. Isolde can't even activate because yeah. you have to send equip spells you can to search the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> you can, oh, yeah. Right. At least something. <laughs> you can search for the gear freed if At you want to. At least something. Absolutely. So, this will be very interesting to see. We will be seeing how it turns out. Once again, I am pretty certain that Callum is going to go first, but maybe game two is going to turn out in another way than game number one. Let's see it in action. Let's go for game number two. Let's go over to the table. Another fist bump before game number two. I love that. Yeah, they did seem, you know, even in the beginning, they seemed very friendly with each other, which is For great. Sure. Oh, I want to see that small word bridge. Oh, oh, small <laughs> world. Peeling <laughs> Pankratops. Okay, okay. That is I, fire. I love the small world challenge. Yes. Pankratops is Earth. 
Earth. Yep. Earth dinosaur. No, I'm joking. You just said that's right. fire. Okay. Effect <laughs> Baylor also has zero attack, po uh, zero Had defense to get one points. Back for you. Fair enough. Fair enough. So what are we getting? Just a light monster here, or something with zero attack or zero defense? Oh, Gookie zero sports. defense works. Gokey yeah, just super super X. Sure. The best Gookie monster next to the Hat Bat, both fulfill different purposes. You also you always need to check. With you, when your opponent activates Small World, just get your head around it that you've not accidentally missed something between you. For <laughs> yeah, sure, for sure. Because it can be very easy to accidentally like match two things or... So there is the Suprax. Suprax resolving. And that is Silver Claw. Iron yep. Claw. There is... Another one of the new Goki monsters, I believe. Yeah, th this one actually... <laughs> it is Iron Claw, works indeed. like Honest, but it just gives <laughs> 500 extra attack. Ooh, and there comes Isolde. <laughs> and does Marcel have an answer to Isolde? It doesn't look like it. But I mean, we are going to use the effect to special summon here. Isolde, definitely a card you would want to negate if yeah, you had an effect negation. Sure. Because it searches and summons. So it looks like the search is going to resolve. We are searching for Goki Guts. Oh, rematch already? Oh, and we're searching for a rematch as well. So we have the headband in hand, or do we not want the headband by now? I guess we have it in hand, that must be the answer. Yeah, and there is the Gearfried. Gearfried such a nice search from the Isolde, because this one, it can't be used now, it can't be used this turn, but it is a really good follow-up, because it is just a beater and a negate in the next turn, if you get to play one, and this can also really help against the Labyrinth deck. For sure, it seems like a good control card, and this is certainly a control matchup, so in the long run, this card could definitely be a card that helps him win this game here. It does have really lovely synergy with Isolde, doesn't it? Because Isolde yeah. puts the equips in your graveyard so that you can special summon it. Yeah, for sure. So we are now having our Phantom Knight engine again, sending one more to the graveyard and immediately banishing it again to get another search. So perhaps we'll see the Silent Boots to help you, well, just you can special summon it for free. Yep, there he is. Let's see whether he's going for another combo line. I think IP Mascarena is still a pretty good card to have on your end board, not gonna lie, because it yeah. gives you access to either Nightmare Unicorn or Nightmare Phoenix on your opponent's turn, so you can already get rid of one of the cards on their field. And that is another one of the Ooh. cards that I don't really understand. Yeah, we yet. were really confused about that card being in his deck, but that is Draco Masters of the Tanny. And this card cannot be destroyed by battle with an effect monster, which is actually kind of nice. <laughs> Amazing, Busty. That was really good in 2004. <laughs> but <laughs> no, the, the good part of this card is with the other Tenny cards, if you have effect uh, non-effect monsters on the field, you can pop monsters of your opponent. However, I don't see him going into, like, I don't see him getting any normal monsters on the field. The only one I could think of is the trap, the Phantom Knight's trap, yeah, presumably right. is a That's normal true. monster, but there's no effect monsters that Marcel has on the field. I so. mean, it That's is true. a really generic Link 3 that points down to two, three different yeah, I, I think I that, thinking, that yeah. seems like a really good use for it. So we are again going for our Code Breakers, searching for the Zero Day. Because as we see here, maybe it's just if you have a Link 3 rather than a Link 4 to make Appalooza, you, you still yeah. get the same arrows and you can do the same Code Breaker play where you get to special summon the two Code Breakers back from the graveyard. And I think Callum... Yeah, now we're going for it. Yeah, Callum just ruled out Nibiru because Labyrinth usually is not running that card, and therefore he maybe went for a little bit more of a green line, just going for the full combo, having three yeah. Link arrows there, and maybe we are going to see an <laughs> even bigger end field than in the last game. Do you think any of the lines that Callum could take could play around Nibiru? Um, I mean, he, he went into Appaloosa very early in the last yeah, game, that's so true, that yeah. actually played around Nibiru, but... Look, yeah. there is the redoer, Leo. You were seeing it almost uh, from the beginning of the match, but now it finally hits the field. If he now finds a way to get another an IP on the field, because right now he cannot summon it unless he links away the Time Thief redoer, which I wouldn't advise him to do. I mean, he could also link away the Draco Master of a Tanny. No, it, uh, IP is not summoned with Link. Oh, monsters. that's right, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. No worries, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to keep up with all this, but of oh, course, we go. the Torn yeah. Scales triggers in the graveyard, obviously, because there was a card being banished, and therefore it is on the field now, and we have access to... Oh, oh, oh we go Appaloosa. for Appaloosa! Oh, oh we really? go for Nightmare Griffin! That will be setting one card back to our back row, and he goes for DDR. And it searches another card, uh, draws another card, searches a card would be Yeah, that's very amazing. nice. I like the way, that this, this brings me back, because the use of the Phoenix Blade was to discard it for Nightmare Monsters. Yeah. So I really enjoy watching this happen again on the stream. And I mean, DDR is good follow-up. So he has the Gear Freed in hand, and he has DDR in hand as well, so that's pretty good. But he does not care about IP Masquerade now. 
Apparently not. He, he could have used the DDR. Yeah, he could have. Can you use oh, it the same time? And we get another trap card it? there with Welcome Labyrinth. Off of Nightmare Griffin? Sorry? Can you use the card that you set off of Nightmare Griffin on the same turn? I. Oh no, you absolutely cannot. <clears throat> that's a pretty good answer, then. I think that's a slightly unfortunate hit there, because obviously you want to no. hit trap cards so you can put cards on top of your opponent's deck with Redoer, but you don't really want to hit a trap card that you. you know, this has a powerful grave effect, yeah. the Welcome Labyrinth, so. For sure. Bit of a bad hit for Callum, but still a trap card, so still something you can use, and it's not yet in the graveyard, so. Oh, and another <laughs> evenly matched. Marcel with the back-to-back -back evenly matches here in game one and game number two. Wow, oh. and it's just resolving. He keeps the Redoer and banishes everything else. And this I find really interesting, because he could preserve the Redoer for the next turn, go for a little bit more grindish approach, but I do understand why you would want to keep the shuffle back effect of the Time Thief Redoer on the Yeah, field. for sure. The way yeah. Marcel put Pot of Prosperity onto the field there was almost like a magician. He was like flying it into the Spell and Trap zone there. That was kind of funny. But we are looking at the top six cards of our deck now. And what is he finding? Oh, oh there's okay. Golden Match yeah. again. Golden Match looks... This is actually not the best pickup here. I mean, Golden Match can work, but Time Thief Redua will always be there to respond to the card. For sure. So this is not the strongest of pickups. I mean, Skill Drain would have been fantastic. Yeah. So remind me, can Redua shuffle any card? Or does no, it have face to be up. a face-up card? Okay, Only so you can't use cards. it in the end phase to... But honestly, the reveals the were row. really unfortunate because there was Dimension Shifter, which yep. you cannot activate anymore. Two Pot of Prosperities, which you couldn't activate this <laughs> turn anymore either. So uh, it really wasn't that great. Had to he, be the Gozen match. Yeah, he had to end up with the Ghost match. And is that is just that a classic a set five? Compulsory? Do no. we just see double the classic compulsory. set five by Marcel there? That's strong stuff. And double compulsory is a really good feel for him right now because he can just actually target the Time Thief Redoer, Chain Redoer, and then just target it again with another Compulse and shuffle it back into the action. So, do you is think Callum free to go into main face here? Oh, wait, do you think you bother to? Attach another material from your opponent with the redo. Yeah, I mean, you want to fish for the stars. You want to get a spell. Yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. But how many spells are, are there in, in the deck? Do you think uh, you've pots. just seen two pros pot of prosperity on the bottom? All oh, right, that is actually <laughs> a good point. Yeah, there's two modularities in there, but yeah, all in all, there's not that big of a chance. But I, I don't think fish for the stars is an expression to be honest. Oh, <laughs> but there's Harpy's Feminister oh! by Callum! There's Harpy's Feminister and Callum is calming the crowd <laughs> down, being like, yeah, that is not going to help me because he has an answer. But what is the answer here? I think there is maybe a dimensional barrier set, but I don't know how that helps against the link deck. No, oh, is this big welcome there's labyrinth. big welcome labyrinth. But that means there is no solemn judgment or such things. So that will resolve. <laughs> the back row will be cleared here from Callum. That was a really interesting. I've never seen someone when they play a card and the crowd gets hyped, he says, no. Yeah. Calm down, everyone. <laughs> I mean, we know about the gear food in Hanstall, and that could, yeah. with a simplified game state, really be a yes. very strong card here. He also, I think, And goes back oh, wow. to the big welcome labyrinth as well. This is just really tough for Marcel oh. now. And he's just picking... Okay, no, he was just fixing his graveyard there. And now Callum is free to go. No cards in hand, no cards in the graveyard. We are at four cards. Time Thief Redo will return in the next step of And then go 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 And that is so many cards in itself. I think Callum is just a humble man because he wanted to calm down the crowd, being like, let me finish this game first because that's what he's about to do here. And we are picking up the cards. Harpy as Feather brings Callum into this game. Game. And a game that looked unwinnable to me for a second with five cards being set is now victorious for Callum. Wow. I that was some board breaks into some board wow. breaks. A board into a board breaker into a board breaker. And he managed to, drew, uh, to draw the one of Arby's <laughs> favorite just in 60 cards. Don't mind what I was saying before the game. <laughs> you Play always have the like. one-offs <laughs> in the 60 card decks. However, I would have liked to see this game grind out because that was still the Time Thief Redoer. It was just banished. He just didn't compose it again. Yeah. And he also had the Gearfried. So I think Gearfried could have done a lot of work potentially. Sure. And he also had the rematch. That was actually a lot that of stuff happening. Stuff. But I mean, you have to remember there also was Ghost Match. So yeah. Ghost Match would have prevented does, the does Gearfried maybe Gearfried from hitting the field. Destroy if it negates a card. I think it does. If I remember correctly, I would say it does. Because, if yeah, you, because if then you negate the effect of a continuous trap, I think it just goes to the graveyard anyway. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think that's no. the case. Is that no. wrong? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Gifford was just have been summoned before then, 
before the goals match could hit the field, and then you could just go goals and match. <laughs> so oh no, a rematch, and then goals and match, and all the matches. <laughs> all the matches, even the match also coming yeah, in, joining yeah, the party. All, all the matches, just <laughs> bring him in here. Leo, you were talking about dimensional barrier. I don't know for what reason, but last time uh, in the last game, you, uh, you you thought you saw it, but I see it here in the side deck of Marcel. Yeah, do it's you not think, coming in. Do you think that's a valid no, option? It's, not it's, at all, right? First of all, that was going second, so I just yeah. it, I just saw a card that kind of looked <laughs> like looks dimensional like it, barrier. Yeah. So I think it I, may have been the Big Welcome Labyrinth. I right. thought I just blur it out. It was the Big Welcome <laughs> Labyrinth. But the but thing is, it's, yeah. a, it's a Link deck, right? Yeah, it makes no sense. Probably Unfortunately, you can't call Links. Another, <laughs> card, no another card I have here, though, which is more interesting, is Imperial Iron Wall. This card is designed to be sided in against Kashira and versus Runic decks. But, I mean, there are a couple of cards that are yeah. banishing here in this matchup as well, so why Phantom not bring Knights it in? and uh, the best equipped spell of all yeah. time, the Phoenix Blade. The Gear Feet can't be summoned. The Gear Feet can't be summoned. I think evenly match is probably the critical that reason. That is also a really strong one, yeah. yeah. So probably we're going to bring that in, right? And, of course, the Solemn Judgments, the, the classic, yeah, for, oh, sure, I'm but... going first, I will put in some Solemn Judgments. Let's have some why safety, not? yeah. Let's <laughs> what have could some possibly safety, go wrong? For sure. I definitely, yeah, those are coming in 100%, no debate. Uh, and I'm really interested to see how this is going to turn out. And I think the players have already done the fist bump. So they are ready for game number three, as we are. I hope you at home are as well. So let's get into game number three here of round seven of YC at London. Opening hands of five drawn by both players. We still have comfortable 13 minutes on the clock, so this won't be a time issue probably. We're seeing two monsters in the hand of Marcel, which is not really what you are aiming for. Unless one of them is Dimension Shifter. That is a really good point. <laughs> for sure. Oh yeah, and it is. Okay, we have the Dimension Shifter there right away for Marcel. The thing that is a little bit critical for um, Marcel here is though, he's not like... Labyrinth is not the deck that can capitalize very quickly on that. Yeah. So even if Callum cannot play this turn, it's probably not going to be the last turn of the duel. And therefore, um, he may still have a chance, even though he's on the Dimension Shifter in this turn. So yeah. do you think if you're Callum, you just maybe pass without doing very much? Or no, just he just, do he just summons much? out the red layer there. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Well, uh, he's not done much so far. You know, he's just tentatively committing. There we go. Fair just enough, fair a enough. red layer and attack. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the fact, I was thinking about whether you're supposed to use a Dimension Shifter on your turn, because it lasts for like two full turns. Yeah. But does. I guess with Labyrinth, you'd rather your cards be able to go to the graveyard on the turn after. Probably, yeah. So there is the equipment of Durandal. Search a Fire Warrior. This is a Noble Arms card, so I'll forgive myself that I don't know what it does. <laughs> we are searching for... That's Renault, Renault. right? Yeah, yeah. that's Renault. I have to look up the artwork of Renaud as well again because, see, yeah, he's sitting on a horse. It, it, it looks really cool. <laughs> really like the artwork of this guy. Look For at sure, this steed so. is looking majestic. I mean, we were thinking that Dimension Shifter really is shutting this down very, very hard, but he's still going, and we are now resolving the search yes. effect of Isolde. You are actually right. He is just summoning Isolde under Shifter just to search out something like I a saw it coming. Poly. I saw it coming. I oh, think no, he makes, makes has sense. a second one in his extra deck, yeah. as we saw in the last game, so yeah. I think maybe this is just a very small turn one. He already used his battle phase this turn to attack, so I don't think he's going to have much oh, he to did. do You're right. Yeah. yeah, I saw him attack with the red layer. And yeah, Marcel true. On Marcel is on 6,000, indeed. And Marcel is not activating anything in the end phase, so we are just going That's to see a pass here. Always very promising, because as, as I was saying in the last game, normally, you know, if your opponent's set three, you think, I'm probably oh. going to be in this game for a few more turns. They're going to be doing slow. Oh, there's Ghost Bell right away on the first Labyrinth Trap card that's being activated. So we, Marcel, rather than activating in the end phase, decided to wait until his next turn because he was under the effect of Dimension Shifter. Yep. Absolutely. So and now Ghost Bell is apparently not banished, but in the field zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's because Callum is left-handed and his deck is on the yeah. left side. So. But I mean, the Renard is <laughs> also... <laughs> there is a banished zone. Yeah. True. So that was the Lord of the Heavenly Prison Oh, and Prison it goes back activated. over to Callum. So it seems like Marcel is struggling to get damage going and that is all they actually stayed on the field. Have you ever seen this happen before? Not really, <laughs> just a 1,600 attack monster just staying on the board. for a whole turn. Being able wow. to summon out Golden Gods. to be over the moon with this. And 
again, the, like, the more you play and your opponent hasn't responded, the more confident you feel. Because for if sure. there was a skill drain, if there was a Gozen match, it, it probably would be face up by now. Oh, sure. okay. Oh, <laughs> there's a Gozen match. Never mind, Dan. Never mind. So that means we got to... Oh! oh! The Cosmic Cyclone for the Gozen match, and the crowd goes wild about it. Callum just draws his back row removal, even though he's on 60 and he's playing four back row removals. Oh, Solemn judgment! Solemn judgment, oh. judgment and response! The oh back my. and forth is immaculate in this matchup, but this is just 3,000 life points for Marcel. If we Show. find another monster, he has the Suprex, Suprex is no, Earth. You have oh. to remember that he has the Lord of the Heavenly Prison revealed at the moment, right? Sorry, not to oh, burst your true. bubble. <laughs> yep. But he can just summon a 3,000 right monster. It is coming it's a big out. wall in the way of... Uh, yeah. Marcel's life points. He has enemy controller. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's in defense mode. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Also, it, it was so Tom. dramatic. <laughs> Please. It was so dramatic the way Marcel waited to activate the Solemn Judgment, right? We was, there is the Cosmic Cyclone and he held back for 10 seconds and then, no, that is not happening. He was doing it for the crowd. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Some showman here. Exactly. He also gets another trap from his deck. So what do you think he's going to go for here? I think... We may be even going for a spell instead. I think I can see you can uh, set a spell? of prosperity. That's yeah, great. you can, yeah. Okay. Absolutely, because that gives you access to like a lot of different options. On the other hand, the the yeah, the labyrinth traps I was about to say that are also a pretty decent pickup. I was thinking, like, what would you get off Pot of, Pot of Prosperity that what would you want off Pot of Prosperity that you couldn't just search directly? Yeah, for sure. Like in uh, in Eldritch decks, where you usually played a lot of the Heavenly Prison back in the day, you would go for Extravagance because that would just be a draw two, which I understand. But Prosperity is is, is right. Okay, okay oh, we're going to see. Oh, that's another Air of Monster. Double Suprex. So those look kind of threatening. I, I mean, love the speed and confidence with which oh. Callum plays. Is that, is that just going to be another result? So Cerberus. Oh, it's, it's going to be Cerberus. Cerberus. Well, this looks like it's Skein. This could be enough. This this actually looks like it's going to be enough right here. He's on 3,000 life points. Marcel is really sitting with his back against the wall. Is that going to be the last turn of this duel? Hatbat can even increase the attack points of the Suprex <laughs> if you special summon it out now. And this and is the game with both monsters for the game! And the crowd once again is going wild and loves it. Another underdog taking a match here at the 250 YCS in London. All the underdogs are going through, that's crazy. And both of the players were having so much fun oh, with it as well. It's good to see well. Marcel, uh, like, you know, he, he looks, he seems to be enjoying being in the feature match, even uh, if he didn't manage to take the win. Maybe he also was a Goki enjoyer back in the day, and he <laughs> also is enjoying that his Goki is having so much success right here. This is crazy. Super heavy Samurai's first, now Goki. Where are we going? I mean, are we going to see Insectors later? What, what is happening? I here? would love that, but I mean, I... I I gotta say, the Goki effect, resolving them, this, it, it's so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just link away into an Isolde for with sure. two monsters, and for summoning your Link 2, you get three cards if you summon Suprex before. And this is so strong absolutely for sure. insane. It's just like you're taking half of your deck and adding it to your hand because you did something good for yourself. It is super and good. 60 card deck, so half of it, that's 30. Normally you'd only get <laughs> yeah. 20, but 30. <laughs> <laughs> this is super, super Plus good. Plus 10, <laughs> really strong. And I gotta say, I don't even see this deck being super bad going second because he's featuring so many good yeah. cards going second as well. He's ha he's having space for Ash Blossom, there's Panker Tops, there's Effect Veiler, there's so much. Nibiru even, we saw the evenly matched. And I mean, so many extenders to push through boards yeah. as well. Like. Uh, you get to keep like all of the advantages. I like his chances for the event now being 6-1 and one in the tournament. Also, the format has become a bit slower. I mean, yeah. for decks like this, cards like Gozen Match and Skill Drain, they are really crucial because right. you have so many options to enhance your combo, which does not work if you're not allowed to play the cards. But right, if yeah. you are playing against decks that set up some interactions, then it's really good to have multiple extenders and then end on your big combo. However, the combo that he put out, it wasn't that impressive, I gotta be honest. <laughs> the, the, the first turn boards weren't too strong, but there is also one of our favorite cards. We have seen uh, Aqua Dolphin. Yes. There. I don't think it's in the graveyard. Oh, there it is, next to the Isolde. You can summon Neo Space Connector, go for the Aqua Dolphin, look at the opposing hand, take a card, and then later on tribute the Neo Space Connector again to summon back the Dolphin, and then hand loop your opponent again. So. And Play, this deck is place so we saw phenomenal. back in the day, yeah, place we saw back in the day.
that was really, really cool. I love to see that back in the day. I love to see it being back here, live yeah. in the featured match area, which is crazy. Everybody wants to hear from our Goki player in the field, so please add, talk to our winner of this match. <laughs> Thank you very much, Basti. Yes, I am here with Callum, who's just won that round seven feature match, much to the delight of the entire audience of people watching. The crowd were going wild during that. Callum's enjoying soaking up the atmosphere here. Callum, congratulations. That was your first feature match. As we got up there, you were telling me, my deck's crazy. And I'm going, shh, <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> you're not going to say anything to the others, but you're like, I might be the reason we're up here. And you kind of were. How are you feeling right now? Uh, yeah, so I'm feeling quite confident with my deck. I think it's really strong. I think the, the Goki cards are like really, really strong because of the grind game, right? Um, Cash Terra, um, all, the, all the meta decks sort of like, it just outgrinds them. Um, and yeah, I feel like that engine is the best part of the deck. Um, and then you've got other grind engines through the Reynold combo with adding back to Reynold and stuff. Uh, so would you consider it a warrior combo deck more than Goki or is it, would you consider it mostly Goki? So, obviously, my favorite aspect is the Goki cards, right? That, uh, yeah, I love them cards. Rematch is crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, what happened is, yeah, like, the deck is basically called Warrior Turbo, right? That's what I call it. And, obviously, I've got a Discord full of people, right, who basically play the deck and stuff. A shout out to them, guys. Like, work for them, like, the deck wouldn't be a thing. Uh, but I'm just a pilot, man. Shout out to them, guys, man. Well, that's good to hear. It's nice to hear a community of people coming up with Turbo Warrior Turbos. That sounds like a cool deck and one that not many people are playing. Although, by the sounds of it, after this, more people might. Let's go through the game that you've just had, because obviously we had several different, we had three whole games of that, and it was quite exciting. You had the full combo right at the start, but then got hit by the evenly, <laughs> there was the Avramax and things, and then Gozen Match and Skill Drain. So those continuous trap cards really do a lot of the holding of the control in those moments from Labyrinth. And then you had a huge field built against you. In fact, Leo was saying that you basically had an armada built against you. So when that happens, are you feeling nervous? Are you worried that that's going to happen in every game or were you feeling confident? I didn't, I didn't care because um, like, I know I'm confident about my deck and my play style. Um, when he killed me, I was like, ah, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, we'll just move on to the next game. We'll try and win there. And uh, yeah, I just don't let anything affect me. That's probably the best way to go through it. You've got to keep that composure when you're on those feature matches. So we'll talk about that game too that we went into. Straight off with a huge feel from you. You had Griffin, Bardish, Redoer. Why did you go Griffin instead of Appaloosa, out of curiosity? Uh, because I didn't think Appaloosa would get a lot of value from the trap card, because he has lots of trap cards. And it plays harder into uh, evenly matched and board breakers. So I was just like, well, why not just make Griffin so I can have more follow-up like DDR, which obviously, by the way, if you saw DDR resolve, Oh my god, man. <laughs> Crazy. So then the rest of that, there was uh, an evenly matched from Marcel again. Marcel then set five and then did the compulsory evacuation on Redoer. But then that was when you had the Harpies come out and the crowd went nuts. It was crazy. When you're sitting backstage and you're watching it on the screen and you hear the crowd go, you know something good is about to happen in the next few seconds on that stream. And it was great. And so that momentum just carried you to the whim. So now it's one game apiece. When you're going to that third game, are you still maintaining that confidence that's carried you through? 100%. I mean, you know, I believe in myself. Uh, I believe I'm capable of, you know, doing huge things. Um, I just think that sort of like I just need to obviously maintain calmness and mindset. And once I've done that, I feel like I'm fine. And that's where obviously the game action happened. Well, no kidding, because let's talk about this game three. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we had goes and match from Marcel. You tried to get rid of it with the Cosmic Cyclone, but then it got negated with the Solemn Judgment and all those kind of things. And then after a lot of interaction, there was that Cerberus and Suprex just going in for game. And like you said, you just maintained that composure. You knew what you were doing. You know your deck really well. So you were just getting ready to build those fields, do all your combos and just go in. So you're now, what's your score now? So I'm X1 at the minute. Um, I'm trying to sort of like, again, just not let that loss that I had, like, you know. What was the loss? It was to Marcus Patel, shout out to that guy. Wow, okay, against the, against the European champion. That's a fair one to lose. And what, what's he playing? I actually don't say in case someone goes oh, up against oh, it. But was it, was it a difficult match? It was, it was fine, but it was just like, sometimes a card, it just basically ruins you. Uh, it's just, it's what it is, right? It's variance. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. Exactly right. I wish it wasn't part of Yu-Gi-Oh, but it is what it is, right? So yeah. Um, other than that, again, I believe in my deck. You know, I feel like I can, I can achieve something here. Um, who knows how far I'll go? I'm just looking for fun, man. 
I mean, you guys need to channel this positivity from Callum when you guys ever make it to a YCS. And if you're here now, adopt this mindset. That's what's going to carry you all the way through to those top cuts. Congratulations again on your win and your first feature match. Very exciting. Wish you the best of luck with all of your upcoming Swiss rounds. I hope it goes well. Maybe we'll see you in the top cut with this deck. Who knows? I hope it carries you well through. Guys, don't go anywhere because before we jump into our next round with round eight, only two more rounds to go for today's coverage, round eight and then round nine, we're going to have a quick speed duel tournament, which you saw the start of earlier before our last game, but now we're going to carry it on. Take it away. Oh, yes. We, oh. Can, we can tell you started last night. Yeah. <laughs> Is that an Amazonist card? <laughs> <Yes. or? laughs> wow. Also, the village gives 200 extra attack points and now the Paladin Ooh. attacked for a 2100 crash and now is going to be able to special summon out another monster because of the floating effect. Uh, Sebastian's deck, honestly, it's, uh, it's scary. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Do you think it has a lot of uh, OTK potential, or is it you just trying to control by popping and destroying everything and then slowly controlling everything like that, or do you actually just go for like that one shot? Funny that you would ask, because this is actually a, basically a control deck. You don't have this one crazy combo, but the best thing about it is, you were talking about the consistency, you play triple reinforcement of the army. <laughs> so oh, wow. You can play a bunch of one-offs and a few more paladins, because that one has the highest attack set, and then for every situation you want, you will have the right Amazonas monster. So I think Marcello is being forced out to use the Roar here, which is not great because generally you want to use your Roar with an Archfiend that has a specific destruction effect and General doesn't really do that. So yeah. I, I think like, it's just basically to try and survive this yeah. attack by uh, Sebastian. And I think he just will, but there is... Marcello will have to find a way to basically out... Oh, Sebastian is maybe going for still an attack. I know that he has one really powerful trap card I keep forgetting the name of, but it says something like the opposing monster in a battle loses half the attack and you gain it? Well, listen, when Sebastian is like tapping the field like that with his fingers, you know he's like onto <laughs> some real science there. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're uh, destroying this general and yeah. um, it's a search in the end phase for Pandemonium, I think, that he's going to commit to there. So the battle phase was stopped successfully. But it was a nice attempt of Sebastian. Yes, we've got a Vile Pawn Archfiend that Marcello just added from his deck to his hand now. Right at it. So again, the gimmick of this deck is like they all have these powerful effects when they're uh, uh, destroyed, but also there's a bit of a dice roll component as well here, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. When resolving an opponent's card effect that targets this card, roll a six-sided die and negate the effect if you roll a three. <laughs> this has to like, specifically be three. <laughs> Maybe with speed duels you can have a dice that has three last numbers or something. <laughs> and you skip the first two, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't target this card. That's yeah. what we're trying to tell you. Uh, do you know anything about the skill that Marcello has? Absolutely no idea. He wouldn't let me read it after you got the cards. <laughs> oh yeah, he was lobbing this out like for all of this morning. Uh, is that the Archfiend General, I think that's on? No, that doesn't no, the, the General. The general was a searcher for the Pandemonium. I think it's the Queen, no? Might be. Queen Archfiend. We might... Oh, yeah. Imprisoned Queen Archfiend. Pay a thousand. This is not optional during your standby, or it's destroyed. And once per turn during your standby, target level four or lower fiend on the fiend. It gains for uh, a thousand until the end of this turn, and Pandemonium must be on the field to... Uh, and this card must be in your grave to activate and resolve it. Wow, I've never mm. seen a card with that type of text before. It must be in the grave to resolve this? Okay, interesting. What's the typical uh, speed duel meta looking like these days? I have no idea. <laughs> I think, um, at least in recent years, I remember ABC was extremely powerful. You know, imagine drawing Hanger in 20 cards. Like that's yeah, uh, very that's enough. very good. I can tell you something that still matters in 2023 is reading cards. <laughs> <laughs> that is the card I was talking about earlier. This is basically like a Ririoku as a trap. Uh, the half counter. Half counter. Half counter. Okay. But I think that the metagame is going to switch up with the new boxes that just came out, where these decks are from, because mm -hmm. all of those boxes, they always shake up the metagame quite nicely. And we have like crazy cards like Amazonas Village. The boxes are fantastic. They come with like pre-built decks. Yep. Yeah. You just pick up with a bunch of friends and you can just, you know, straight out of the box, you can just uh, sleeve up and you're basically ready to go with a little mini tournament between, uh, between your buddies and yourself. Yeah. And I think that's one of the advantages of Speed Duel is that you, it is just very simple to just pick up and just jump straight in, you know? 
Marcello is not looking too happy about the situation. He only has one card set left, and the Pandemonium on the field. Pandemonium not really doing anything right now. Yeah, sometimes it's really hard to get value out of the Pandemonium, because I think it's only yeah. from destruction by effect, I think. Yeah. 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 It worked once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder if he has the Archfiend Emperor, I think his name is. Uh, that's usually the... Um, I don't know if it's part of the Speed Dodet, but it's definitely part of the Archfiend archetype. And uh, he's, uh, you know, very, very good, as well as when you combine it with Archfiend Eris. But again, not 100% sure I, I if they're in the Speed Dodet box. No. But we are going to see... The skill card flipped up, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's not flipped up, it's flipped... Not, not up. Yeah. <laughs> it has been reflipped. <laughs> it has been received. Yeah, exactly. So the Paladin is attacking. Marcello is contemplating. Is the last card that he has set the card that saves him from the damage that Sebastian is going to deal. Now the big thing here is uh, <laughs> we're about to take fatal damage. It looks like. Yeah. So the third Paladin is supposed to do the trick. Third times the charm. We are going for the attack and. Marcello is just thinking really hard. He has to have something there. Do you know what the uh, skill effect of the Archfiend deck is? No. No. no <laughs> I assume it has some sort of uh, interaction with destroying and life points or potential some dice rolling here. Um, he's checking out this skill of the Amazonas card here, just making sure that whatever he does to try and prevent this fatal attack isn't going to actually go through here. So uh, just having a little think here before we establish that. I mean. Marcello is checking his graveyard, so I suppose he might have the same trap card as before. The yeah, maybe it's just uh, you know bringing back one of them and uh, survive. He also has this card in his deck. I've seen that earlier. Bark of Dark. By <laughs> a Bark of Dark. He didn't let me read it again, so I'm going <laughs> to just read it up now. So during the damage that pay life points in multiples of a hundred, and then you can target the opponent's battling monster, and it loses that much attack and defense. Very much uh, similar to Vampire Fraulein is kind of the vibes I'm getting yeah. from this in the trap card form, but uh, very much uh, designed to work with the Archfiend Fiend deck, because uh, all of your typings are part of that archetype. But you can't fiend that much if you don't have a fiend on the field. That is the problem. Yeah, he's going to be struggling to fiend right now. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, he's been griefing, right? <laughs> he's been griefing very hard right now, Marcello. <laughs> There's a lot to say in way of the uh, the uh, grave setup here as well. Please do not copy him when it comes to the way you shuffle your grave here. That that that's not something we uh, endorse or support. So all right, we got that roar out. Yeah, roar again. We should going to survive at least. And just double checking the field here to make sure that it doesn't do uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Damage the yeah. through this. Yeah. Doesn't want to pay 500 unnecessarily. Brings out the queen. Let's check the defense points of the queen again. It is 1,700. Quite so small. You can actually just run into it with the sage, take 100 damage, but destroy the pandemonium because mm. that's what the sage does. So. But the good thing with Sage, I suppose, good thing, quote unquote, is because it does destroy not by battle, by card effect, it does yeah. trigger the Pandemonium, I think. But and also, you know, you get to destroy the Pandemonium with the, um, yeah. what's her name, the uh, the Sage? No, the Paladin. Sage. Or is yeah. the Paladin that destroys spells and traps? No, oh, no, Sage. Sage, Sage. Yeah. okay. And the next good thing is that the effect of Imprisoned Queen Archfiend now doesn't trigger it to boost a monster on the field. Oh, and now we see Bark of Dark. Ruler. So, oh, <laughs> we are flipping up the skill, tributing. Okay, it looks like it on. destroys our tributes and then gets and tutors out of Queen yeah. from the deck. That's yeah. pretty yeah. good. That's really good. So we have 100 life points left from Marcello. Did you guys realize that? <laughs> he is <laughs> holding on to dear life right here. So he is attacking over the stage. Oh, and we have the Amazonas archers or something with archers set down there, reduces the attack points of 500. We're going to go down to 2,100. The Paladin should be at 2,100 as well. And this <laughs> is going to be a crash. Archers flipping up right here. And, uh, well, he's going to verify if this is actually going to be the end of the duel right now. I mean, we are just going to not take damage from this, but the set card is Bark of Dark Ruler, and this only works yep. if you have a Fiend on the field. Yeah. Now, Marcello is asking Sebastian a question. I wish we could just hear what they are saying right now. Probably ask him if he's sure he wants to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. 
<laughs> have mercy. <laughs> so this is a really critical situation right now. We are going to get this card up as well. Oh, we just ran over it, right? Oh, no! I explained ah, the card okay. to Sebastian in a wrong way. <laughs> Probably should have let him read the card. Himself. Because he doesn't have any monsters in defense position. That's I why I cannot activate it. Only the monsters in defense position lose the attack points. Yeah, Examachal only has a one yeah. monster in attack position. Yeah. Well. <laughs> ha! Nice playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not it. Yeah, but he can just summon out another Amazonas monster. Don't forget, there is village on the field. So I think one thing to uh, double check here is uh, this field spell as well, if we can bring that up in just a moment, because that is yes. a very extremely important key, po uh, key component of the Amazonas strategy here. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really amazing just how much this deck can flood. <laughs> So Special, an Amazonist from your deck with a level less than or equal to the Amazonist monster in, in the graveyard when it's destroyed by battle or oh. a card effect. Ah, he drew into the queen, though. And the queen is also a crucial part of the strategy. It says other Amazonist monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Mm. So, what we're trying to do here is, yeah, run over it and Sebastian <laughs> wins the game attacking with the Sage. I think another strategy that he had here, if he didn't run over for enough damage over the Queen, then he could have floated with the Queen into the one... I, I have no idea what the name of the card <laughs> is. So, Swordsmaster? You the, know what this reminds me of? It's very much like the uh, Sprite Mosquito OTK. Yes, yeah, you know, yes. that's, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking yeah. about here. Basically that, you... <laughs> Take damage, but you really don't because your opponent takes all the yeah, damage. Resembles and then you that. The so it's, uh, yeah, resembles that. So Sebastian is advancing. So now yeah. up to us, I guess. Yeah, or maybe just true. up to me because, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, I can't win <laughs> twice in a row, right? So, uh, but I gotta say, I think the deck that I'm playing now is even better than vampires. Mine, uh, mm, <laughs> I don't think so. I will find out soon. Now your Claudians yeah. look really threatening, but what's up with Marcello? He was winning all of the tournaments earlier in the other YCSs, but w what is happening with him? Washed? I don't uh, know. I mean, when you're using Vile Pawn to roll dice, <laughs> it's, uh, that, that sure is something to be questioned, I'm just saying. You've been playing Claudians? Yeah, no, it was nice. I mean, oh, nice. But then, uh, Claudians nice until nice? the point, and, uh, it was very nice, actually. Yeah, 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 until the point, you know, I just yeah. lost it myself. But uh, this yeah. is yeah. another point, guys. <laughs> Versus Marcello, he was attacking with 13,700 yeah. attack points, so okay. that was quite mm. a nice way to close the game. And we are going to close this match mm. as well. Now, we are going to have a lot more coverage, and of course, Alberto and me are going to play it in the finals, so stay tuned.
Welcome back. So we only have two more rounds of today's coverages here at the 250th Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live from London. Then tomorrow we've got the first three rounds, which are going to be the last three rounds of Swiss, followed by our top 64 cut as we move forward to the final. But before we get there, we've got to get through round seven. And if, or round eight, in front of me, I've got Alberto Hilario Guiot and also An Chi Shu. These guys have actually already done a roll, and you're going to be going first, that right? Okay, so An Chi Shu is going to be going first. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Alberto, Nadir, and Marcello, who are going to take you through this round seven. Guys, take it away. Thank you, Ed, and welcome to round eight of YCS London 2023. As he mentioned, we have two more rounds remaining for the day, and uh, we got to thank, of course, Seb, Leo, and Tom, who now are not going to be with you anymore for the day. We are going to handle the last two rounds, if you don't mind, and we have a really, really good one for you guys. Yeah, kind of do. Because <laughs> the highlight of the weekend was, of course, thousands of people traveling from all over the world, uh, and the diversity of the format, and now, after the these many rounds, seven rounds, we still have undefeated, uh, I think uh, more than 12 different decks, it's a lot of different decks around, uh, and here we decided to show you guys one of which we have yet not seen, uh, and that is Dark World. I'm a fan of the deck, what do you guys think? I love Dark World, it is the absolute gas deck, you're just yeah, going on and on with the trade in, the Dark true. World dealings, you're drawing. Uh, Giant Trainer is incorporated in recent years. Absolutely, you know, alongside absolutely. with the dangers as well. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the deck course. is insane, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he has a hard time against one of the most played deck this weekend, which is Kashtira. And uh, this is the case because yeah. Anchi is on Kashtira. I would guess, arguably, because at the same time as Nadir mentioned, it's really explosive combo decks uh, and potentially similarly to Wind Up back in the day. What a throwback! Uh, it can end loop, so pretty much in the first turn you can get potentially rid of all five cards from your opponent. And uh, that's not even good for Kashtir or any deck that exists in Yu-Gi-Oh! But honestly to me, even more surprising than having Dark World uh, being 7-0, it's uh, an Alberto being 7-0 with it. <laughs> and that's not something we had seen yet in the past. <laughs> that's why I don't play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Finally, about time that someone brought some... This, uh, the some honor to the name, honor Alberto. Honor to the name, exactly. But without <laughs> joking around anymore, our duelists are ready. Let's find out who will be the winner of round eight. So the structure deck just before Trap Tricks was Dark World, and uh, they had a lot of new cards and new support added to their arsenal. You're gonna see the Fusion Monster, the Dragon Lord of Dark World, uh, the uh, absolutely amazing effect here. And it's mostly because of the fact that the way you fuse into it is by discarding using yeah. the Dark World accession. Uh, and of course, you're incorporating the new cards, the new version of Rainbow, uh, and comboing that as well with Ceruli is how you get to that hand loop combo yep. that you mentioned, Marcello. But unfortunately, he did lose the die roll, and going second is uh, very hard for this deck, potentially. So, Anchi, on the other end, uh, is playing a very unique version of Kashtira, at least in the ratios. So he's playing three copies of Cross Out Designator, probably thinks the mirror match would have been the most popular deck, but to pair those with, yes, uh, yeah, uh, let's say a lot of one-offs which are very interesting. Uh, why don't we go through some of them, Alberto? Yeah, he has Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, John and Lockbird, evenly matched. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I love this because the idea here is that they're good cards to draw, you know, yeah. and you combo that with cross out if your opponent uses it against you. Uh, I guess it creates this sort of well-rounded offense and defense. We could say if you draw it, it's fine. If you don't, if you don't draw, draw it, it's, it's also, also fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely amazing. I, I've never like <laughs> some of these cards. It's uh, it's been a while. I think. I mean, Droll and Lockbird has been kind of in and out of the format, but you know yeah. that that's pretty good in the mirror match. Uh, what do you think about Tier Lament Kashtira? 
It's uh, ah, I, I don't mind it. I mean, I think uh, in uh, in general you can stick to just the scareclaw, or especially it depends whether you want to go all out. I think because we mentioned uh, Kashtira either go for like a five zone block, or it can go for a more of a just an ariser kind of deck, and that is because of the fact that you can play the trap card and you can play the ogre. So if you don't play the ogre, I think you have more space for the tier element. But here we see both, and here is exactly what we're gonna see. Uh, potentially, Anchi can uh, try is and go. Is this the five lock combo he's he going could, for? Right? He yeah. could, he uh, could, he could go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is uh, one of the best and most powerful plays that Kashtira has available to itself is being able to five zone lock like that. But you do put so many resources into it that if your opponent uh, has an answer, either like a tribute uh, or if you go for monster locks, you know, Book of Eclipse, but I think generally if you're going to do that, you probably go for the yeah, uh, spell and yeah. trap zone. But I think this is not the case because uh, in the main deck, Alberto is not playing uh, an interruption. So Yeah, we saw some Dark World players maining Lava Golem just because it has some application. Worst case, you can use trade in uh, uh, to discard it, but this is not the case for Alberto. It's really a, a deck that's focused on comboing off, uh, and uh, even to the extent that he's maining Cyberstein, which we haven't seen in a while. So. So you think the idea with Cyberstar, I don't think it's searchable, right? You just simply draw into yeah. it. Yeah, Yeah, because exactly. there's so much so much draw power in this deck. If you see it, then you just drop it on the field and summon exterior, which is uh, really hard to deal with. Yeah, and I mean, at some point you can get to the School Dread Saruya, so even if you have I normal summon. I think he's summon, doing it. Yeah? I, th yeah, I yeah. think he's going for it. <laughs> he's definitely trying to go for it. Yeah, yeah no, he is doing it. All right, OK. Uh, Anchi trying to go for that five lock. And uh, I haven't seen this personally yet on stream yet, so let's see. Uh, let's see if you can pull it Do off. Do you agree with uh, going for the spell and trap zones? Hey, oh, well, I mean, so the the idea here is that the spell and traps are uh, sort of the more powerful cards. You know, prosperity yeah. evenly matched, and if you simply can't use any of those, all you're dealing with is monsters. So sometimes just the rice heart on a monster is enough to I agree. To, to deal with that. I definitely agree with you. Maybe also at this point of the tournament, he might have seen uh, Alberto what he's playing, no? Sitting mm -hmm. at the high Could table. Could be. Yeah. Could very well be. And uh, yeah. when you get this deep in the tournament, you know, when you're uh, finishing around, maybe have a look around your table, and you probably notice, you know, oh, this is the only Dark World player yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, you would definitely notice something like this, uh, especially if maybe you went for like a natural exterior, and then you would hear, you know, some mumbling about it. So. I think we mentioned this just before, but the uh, Fossil Warrior Skull Knight was banished off of the Prosperity, and this card uh, you can reattach onto the Rise Heart, and what it does is you can banish it from the graveyard to destroy yep. a monster uh, your opponent controls. So uh, quite a popular card that some people have been utilizing. Yeah, uh, I can tell you, you I, I saw a lot of uh, players uh, looking for this card yesterday, but not many of them were successful, so it was one of the most looked for cards yesterday by far. And can't blame it. It's it's definitely interesting to to use instead of the Garura for many. All right, there's that Kashtira tier limit uh, coming down here, banishing Big Bang, and Big Bang is uh, is that how you get the special summon of the material? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. And here we see once again one of the future the YCS prize cards in our uh, playmat for the event. In Diablos, and I, I do like that sometimes these price cards are back as uh, you know being played actually competitively. Yeah, well, listen, uh, it's a good thing it was uh, reprinted, shall yeah, we say, because sure. uh, playing sure. this deck would be quite hard. Uh, so there it is, the double Shangri-Ra, meaning that because yeah. of its non once per turn effect, comboing that with Diablosis is going to be four more zones, and yeah. this is brutal. Yeah. Yeah, this is something that, uh, I mean, if you have the chance to do it, I think you just, uh, you know, go for that. And uh, if your opponent has any sort of interruption, just deal with this. But uh, what I will tell you is, Anchi, uh, I personally know that this is the type of uh, strategy that he would go with, you know, going <laughs> all in. Uh, fun little anecdote, he actually knocked me out of the European Championship <laughs> playing Drytron Turnskip with Armor Factor Pain. So in a way, I guess it's kind of <laughs> yeah. similar, you know, maybe he just likes playing those type of strategies. All right, so uh, now he gets to look through the extra deck. And I think maybe he was debating on whether or not he lets that resolve, just cover up the deck. But as we maybe mentioned yeah, earlier, he exactly. probably knows what he's playing at the stage. Exactly, yeah. He knows that from this point on, it's very tough to come back. Uh, 
to be fair, there is a very slim chance of something going in with like the dangers, depending on how this goes. But it's very difficult for this to, to go any other way around, especially because now you start to banish a lot of cars from the deck as well, from Alberto. Because uh, the Diabolosis keeps, you know, stacking uh, the, the amount of, of cars you banish. And, yeah. All right, there is the chain resolving here for the first effect of Diabolosis, removing a card from the extra yep. deck, and then on the new chain, banishing cards from the top of the deck, equal to the number of cards that are banished face down. Yep. And that is going to trigger both Shangri-Ras. He also has the Goliath underneath the Rise Heart now. And now, as you can see, One, this is two, it. Three, this four, is it. and five. <laughs> All yeah. Spell and Trap Zones have been locked up. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we, we saw this uh, in uh, YCS uh, Las Vegas uh, the last time. Uh, uh, in the finals, actually, so locking pretty much almost all of the zones, not just the uh, five spell and trap zones. But today, less so, more of a grind uh, version of Kashtira. And let's see if there is any hope uh, for Alberto. Well, if there is one way to try and deal with this, it is probably going to involve a lot of danger plays. I yeah, think it's their best chance here. Exactly. Mm, the, the problem is obviously also the effect of a rice art. It's not. I guess yeah. that, that alone, you know, <laughs> Dark World, ever since it was released, has been uh, dealing uh, with a huge issue. Uh, like dealing. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, step one, Kaiju. Okay, nice, nice, nice. All right, two zones unlocked. So if we have any good power spells and traps. Definitely the best way to start things off. Yeah. So oh. notice that he didn't Kaiju the Rise Heart. So he obviously values yeah. the zones more than the Macrocosmos effect. Don't you just love how Rise Heart just slowly turns into a binder? <laughs> <laughs> he has a stack of material down there. <laughs> yeah. But it's not easy to deal with the Rise Heart, though. I mean, even uh, if the Kajun was summoned... Yeah, uh, honestly, the Bigfoot might be one of the ways, because uh, if you discard it, it still uh, pops one. So Yeah, so dangers still resolve when uh, discarded, even if they are banished. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's just gonna do oh, the same. Interesting. Yeah, I do. I do like this. Could you explain what he's doing here? Essentially, now after the chain resolves, he's uh, using a riser on his own cards. So he's gonna lock again. Uh, two uh, more, more zones. Yeah, two more oh, zones. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. So, because he's yeah. gonna trigger exactly yeah. both uh, again the Shangri La and then the uh, the Ablosis. So. Yeah, no, I, I see. That's uh, that's pretty genius. I think uh, he's reading that his yep. opponent um, needed spells and traps more, otherwise they would have kaijued the Rise Heart. Exactly. All right. Well, he's making an effort here. You know, you'd think like once five of your zones are gone, you would uh, hit the go next. But it seems like uh, Alberto is trying to fight through this. And there you go. So now we are going to kind how many cars have been banished up until now? What do you think about playing something like Dark World in a meta that has Kashtira? Uh, I mean, I don't think it depends uh, solely on uh, on Kashtira. Okay. I have never been uh, too much of a fan of uh, discarding strategies. Similarly to like Light Swarm in the sense that sometimes you can get unlucky, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I, I think uh, if you play more cards like Kaiju's Lava Golem, something that allows you to have some hope going second, sure. Otherwise, it turns into a die roll uh, kind of game. So. Yeah. Uh, All right. Digging deeper through the deck with the Allure of Darkness this year, trying to find an answer to either the last Shangri La or I'd say probably at this point, definitely the Rise Heart. All right. We're going to activate some dangers here. And, well, this is always sometimes a uh, really. Yeah. Sort of frustrating time with that yeah. dangers, you know, you really need your opponent to hit the right ones. Yeah, unfortunately, basically what's going on, uh, if you were confused by the fourth zone going in back and forth, is that uh, Anchi thought that he could use the Shangri-La, but actually Shangri-La only activates if the card banished face down was owned and controlled by the opponent. Ah. So basically Anchi kind of... Wasted the Rise Heart, yeah, basically. Yeah, wasted the Rise Heart mm. and his own monster, but I mean... He's that far ahead that maybe that's fine. But definitely risking it now. 
All right, that's a Zeus eliminated out of the extra deck here. I think uh, he is actually on. No, he's actually only on one. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So now it's where he can finally use uh, his Shangri La, his cars potentially. Let's see. Gonna think about what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, Diablosis ripping cards out of the extra deck. What do you think that does for deck building? It's very tough, actually. And uh, that's where uh, these one offs with the cross out maybe are also a liability for Anchi in potentially a mirror match. But. Um, I mean, honestly, I think uh, a lot of duelists have been dealing with tier elements for the past months, where it was similar, like they would consistently mill you 10 cards off the top of the deck, and that's also a way of dealing with deck building, and uh, obviously getting them banished, it's even worse, but it's not that con as consistent as tier elements, so sometimes they just go at ice art, you know. So. Five and zones blocked again. Yep. You know, when Riseheart attaches Riseheart, do you think it makes a super Riseheart? <laughs> could be the case, could be the case. Uh, Another danger being rolled here. And uh, I think it was a Mothman he revealed, correct? Yeah, another one. Yeah. <laughs> How many sixes are we going to get here for? Yeah. There it is, all right. Snow. Unfortunately banished, and yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well. Because now with the Riser gone, is but he playing like Zeus? He has Accident Knight. Uh, he banished the Zeus. I only playing one. Yeah. Yeah, he plays one. One Zeus, one Exiton. Exiton hit previous yeah. turn. Yeah. So the answers are getting uh, quite thin now. Do Gareth draw two? Discard maybe? Very unfortunate, yeah. Yeah, he's going to skip yeah. it up. That's, it's too much to handle those five zones, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, so he, tried, uh, he tried his best, but in the end, the opening from Anchi was just too much, and it is. Uh, Instead, Anchi who takes uh, this game one, not Alberto. I mean, uh, it was about time we saw what uh, the Cash Zero deck can do and uh, is able to just lock everything up. Uh, and this is what went through. You mentioned it, Anchi, an expert of these kind of locking <laughs> strategies. You know it well yourself, and uh, we are seeing it in action again. But now, how the tables have turned. So let's see if Alberto is able to actually completely end loop him. Uh, going first, uh, based on what we said previously, I think he's not going to side that much, right? Yeah, I think Dark World is, uh, you know, just a turbo through your deck, try and resolve those combos, get to those Silva hand loops, I think is the key point yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, I see a Cold by the Grave that uh, will go in, just preventing a Dimension Shifter being activated that in case that... Or the we'll one draw and lock. Or the one. <laughs> Which is amazing, <laughs> yeah. by the way, against Dark World. So, <laughs> it is. Yeah, if that gets thrown, that, that's insane, yeah. But uh, at the same time, he does play three copies of Skill Drain. Yeah. So maybe it's what those out with the Kaiju, because similarly to Cyberstein, whenever you draw Skill Drain throughout the combo, why not? It's like decent enough. And uh, Anchi, yeah, what do you think he's gonna do? Uh, I mean, you need to stop the hand loop is the is most yeah. important thing. And it looks like his his list, his side deck, isn't really designed for dealing with such a sort of combo style deck like that other than the shifters. You know, he's playing Dark Ruler, he's playing Kurikara. These cards don't really deal with Dark World. Yeah, so it's probably shifter. One draw or bust, we could say, for this, <laughs> yeah, for this game too, but uh, definitely interesting. And it would be fair to be honest that they both combo through and then uh, they decided it out in game three. But uh, let's uh, go back to the table as our duelists are finishing signing up. So hopefully we get to demonstrate just exactly what Dart World is capable of going first. You know, we mentioned a lot about the uh, Silva hand loops, extremely powerful effect yep. that doesn't actually discard or banish me. It returns to the deck, which is probably the most powerful way to remove from the hands. Yeah. And uh, funnily enough, now I'm just thinking back to the events uh, we went through, uh, the 100th YCS, which was the largest by far and the largest TCG tournament ever, was won, won by, by Dark, Dark World. World. Well, YCS and this Long is Beach. right after. Yeah. This is the second oh, largest uh, right. tournament. So yeah. maybe we can get imagine. Uh, imagine after that many years again a win by Dark World. Yeah. The irony, it wasn't even a Dark World meta really back then. No, right? at all. <laughs> like, like today, you know. <laughs> yeah. so. All right, Bigfoot is being revealed here. Let's yeah. see if we can hit some good Dark Worlds out of the hand. 
Oh, oh that is the wow. worst situation. Oh, what a no. punish. Yeah. I know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. Okay, okay, Chupacabra comes next. Trying again. This time it wouldn't be as bad, but still, you really want to draw some cards. At least the good news is there is uh, no mm. shifter. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And on resolution here, Silva gets the special summon itself yep. as it was discarded. Is there gonna be a draw in lock? Yeah, uh, resolution. Nope. No. All right. It might be safe for Alberto to okay. do what he has to do here. All right. And this is one of the. Nice. Yeah. This is the new uh, support card for Dark World. A uh, discard. Simply add a copy of Gates of Dark World from deck. Oh, Ooh, plus. Okay. It's huge. Okay. okay. Pretty big. And another danger. Okay. Yeah. Jackalope. Let's see. All right. 50 50 here. Uh, okay. A rainbow. A rainbow. Okay. This is nice, actually. Not that bad. Uh, gonna trigger then uh, bounce back potentially the Silva to be special summoned. Yep. Gonna explain it again. A rainbow, one of the. Uh, new cars, if we can call them that, from the structure. So, really strong. Uh, you can get it back. It's similar to Grafa in the graveyard, as you can special summon mm -hmm. it. But then uh, again, if it's discarded, you can add one Dark World. Now, what I'm worried about here is Alberto, because of that hit on the uh, Bigfoot, potentially maybe running out of gas. Maybe, but at the same time, he still has, whenever he feels like, the potential option of going for a school dread uh, for four materials, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, uh, being able to uh, utilize that draw four and returning a card. Ooh, oh, and this is nice. World. Anyway, this banishing the Genta. And Genta, yeah. when banished, has an effect. Yeah. So uh, it combos really well with itself because you can discard it, add Gates of Dark World, then banish it for the effect of Gates of Dark World, discarding the Grafa and drawing a card with the Gates. No, no, this is totally fine, honestly. This is still really, really good. Uh, yep. Just explaining some of these effects to, obviously, Anchi, but he has a lot of options. Uh, rank 4s in this deck are uh, very Degaris. versatile. Yeah. The Garris is a good option. I love yep. that card. Uh, Sir Yuja, as you already mentioned. Sir Yuja is not typically in the meta, right? What was the last like good deck Sir Yuja used? It was a, another danger deck. They did yeah, pretty much. Feel. Yeah, with the Thunder Dragons or Dragon Link, you know those kind of decks where you turbo through. Mm -hmm. But he draws into. It's this. Okay, uh, yeah. Is this another Genta that's resolved? Oh, I just bounced it back. He, yeah, he uh, bounced it back and then yeah. used the effect. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. And this is nice because non pretty much no cars are once per turn, so you can do some uh, very sick uh, loops. Despite the fact that it's new, usually new support has the clause once per turn, but we yeah. had to keep the theme of Dark World, not once per turn, very important uh, for the lore. deck. Yeah. Lore, yeah, story lore. mode. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and well. Here we see... Normal summon? Another Genta. Yeah. And we might see yeah, the XYZ summon to just uh, draw two, discard one, and skip the next draw phase. Yeah, that's gonna be the play most likely. Uh, number 60, right? Yeah. Yep. I was, I was uh, learning this deck the other week and I was playing against my friend. And, uh, you know, activating all these dangers and resolving all these extra deck monsters. And then before I knew it, there's a Muckraker, a Fusion, <laughs> a guy in the field and like eight cards in hand. Like, how yeah. did this happen? It right, can here. be very complicated at times, yeah. Yeah, it's not a simple deck. And here is this Haruja. Yeah. It's four. Nice. All right. Now, will we be drawing a power spell? We have card destruction, which or, is extremely good in this deck. Or the Cyberstein. Or the Cyberstein, or yeah. The which Cyberstein. we can just special summon yeah. with the effect of Saryuja. Multiple effects on Saryuja. One effect per material used for its summon. Synergies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's almost as if it was designed for this deck. It True. works so well. And again, one of the prize cards, the OG, the original prize card from back in 2004. So. I thought you meant Sar Saruja for a second. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't mean, I mean 2004 Saruja. Uh, it was yeah. Like, it used, yeah, it used to be a ritual monster before it turned <laughs> exactly. into a different shade of blue. Okay, so bouncing the Silva to the hand here, recurring those resources to use the effect of Rainbow, as you mentioned, the very similar again, to yep. Grafa. Yeah, so adding two cards back to the hand, essentially. Yep. And. Cards in hand are important because either you want to be able to resolve as many dangers as possible or a potential card destruction. Here's the third Gates of Dark World being uh, searched for from, from the deck this turn. Yeah. Really trying to do 
the best of what he can with this end, and yeah, gonna go and activate again the fuel spell. So it's also nice to see the approach how it changed there, uh, because back then Dark Horse was played with a lot of traps, no? Yeah, so it was more a lot of, of virus. Control Honestly, deck. virus yeah. were probably popularized by Dark Horse decks. Yeah. Did you ever play Malefics and like the trade ins and uh, sending the Stardust? Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are uh, those are some old versions of Dark. Well, it's been through a couple of iterations here. Here's the uh, accession. It's uh, one of their newer cards here. It allows you to fusion summon uh, by actually discarding instead of uh, the sort of conventional yeah. uh, just sending the materials to the graveyard, which is very much on theme with how Dark World functions and also is a quick play. So what you can also do is fusion summon on your opponent's turn, trigger the Dark Worlds in your hand, disruption like Dark World allow you to fuse and pop in the process. Yeah. Does also allow you to uh, banish as well. And there he is. There is Gra the Grafa, yeah? Grafa's fusion form is here on the field. Threatening for sure. And he gets another Grafa from the deck. Suddenly, a Ash Blossom just does not feel like enough, does it? <laughs> no, for a brief <laughs> moment, just because of that Bigfoot uh, snipe, uh, it looked like, let's see if there is a cyber stein. I want to see the cyber Here's stein. Here's a special summon. Yes! There it is! There it is. <laughs> nice! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as mentioned, the Sir Yuja does allow you to special summon it from your hand, and cyber stein simply paying 5,000 life points. Uh, a little bit too much for speed duel, but there enough in this game here to bring out exterior, also boosted by the effect of the mandatory Sir Yuja, uh, bringing it up to 3,100. Iped. Honestly, <laughs> look at this. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as long as you have one card in graveyard, uh, you're able to just infinitely use exterior because you mill and banish a card from the grave to yeah. get a spell and trap. Well, I guess pretty totally. much giving back the five block uh, for a spell and trap to <laughs> his opponent. You know, another danger wow. coming down here. Yeah. Still has uh, some steam here. All right, it's the Grafa. Nice. Okay. Another Mothman, all right, okay. Uh, so typically what you want to do generally is uh, you want to get all of these extra deck monsters out onto the field as soon as, you po uh, as, soon as possible, like your Saryuja, your Exterio, uh, potentially things like Mascarena, and then you can go for Muckraker. Uh, and that card is uh, actually somehow a really good extender in Dark World. It's almost as if it was designed yeah. for it. It works so well with Fiends. Again, the same loop with uh, Grafa and Rainbow getting two cards back. This is really a convincing yeah. show from Alberto. 20 minutes on the clock, and we're still on turn one of game two here. So sometimes maybe you have to consider uh, time here if you're Anchi, but probably not quite at that point yet where, you know, I think like, oh, I'm going to yeah. lose this one. Let's go to game three, go first, try and do the zone lock again. But still has a, a chance here, like we said, a uh, couple of his Side deck options do have a lot of ways to contend with a uh, big field like this. Mm -hmm. Now a lure of darkness to even a turbo through more. It is literally possible to just see your whole deck in one turn. That's why uh, yeah. you know things it like wouldn't that be that so smart. <laughs> but it's possible. Yeah, yeah. It definitely works. All right, looks like we're going for a link. Someone here is it going to be Mask or Muckraker. It is. Yeah. The, it is Muckraker. Uh, shall we say a uh, a reference to the uh, tour guide from the underworld? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, Muckraker uh, allows you to target a fiend in your graveyard, except itself. You can discard a card and then special uh, that monster, and you can't special the rest of the turn except fiends. Um, so I'm not really sure what you would do after the Muckraker. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it, it also works as a protection, potentially. So mm -hmm. it protects all of your cars by just tributing it. So that's why we have been seeing it a little bit in Sprite as well. There's a way to use it twice, I think, right? Potentially, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's mainly another layer of protection. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see here if he's going to still continue. Well, bringing back any uh, Dart World from the graveyard means you can, again, go for that yeah. loop, as you mentioned. Discarding the snow wow, as well. Wow. wow. Stop. It's already there. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh no. All right, well, we're only playing one copy of Accession, so we're going to go for the continuous spell card now. This is Dark World Archives, which I yep. think uh, when you discard, you can draw two and discard again, I think? Let's have a no, basically, yeah, pretty much uh, is uh, when you discard once, then it activates, but you can potentially use it first to trigger itself then in a new chain. Mm. Uh, all right. Okay, so again, remember, uh, Fiend locked at this point, so I'm not too sure what kind of options are left here, but this is a big setup here, having removed the, uh, well, essentially forced your opponent out on the Ash Blossom. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Dragon Lord of Dark World and Exterio are extremely powerful cards uh, to, uh, to rely on. He's playing other XYZs outside of Exidon or...? No, he's playing Apollosa. Apollosa, yeah, yeah. Maybe Masquerade, Apollosa, yeah. you could go something along those lines. Well, he is field block, uh, Fiend Lock, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Kashtira going second into a field like this, it's... It's winnable. I think, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, it's doable. I mean, of course, you have to deal with a lot of stuff. Uh, it really depends also on uh, what your opponent is ending on, because uh, now we are seeing basically Alberto yeah, continuing. But I don't uh, think, yeah. Nightmare Cerberus here, just to use the effect of the uh, archives. Discard Silva. All right. Drawing two yeah, off the top of the deck drawing, here. Drawing, drawing, drawing. Because are you sure you actually used the effect yet of the Mac Cracker? That's my doubt. I don't know if he just summoned it and still hasn't activated the, the Reborn effect. No, I'm fairly certain he uh, okay. used Mac Cracker. Which is why I'm like wondering now, okay, where yeah. do we go from here? Okay. Okay. And he, uh... Wait, does play Nightmare Griffin? That's a fiend, isn't it? Yeah. Could maybe potentially try and lock with the yeah. Nightmare Griffin? Interesting, uh, yeah. Okay. Obviously, you have to be careful. You should put it in the middle because then otherwise you can get your own cards. But yeah. Looks like that might be the end board. Yeah. Probably a Griffin in the middle. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You okay there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, it, it looks like to be that that is going to be his last play, is going to go for the Nightmare yeah. Griffin, but he's just trying to debate on where oh, exactly he's okay. going to go. Never okay, no, mind. ending on this. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Um, I mean. It's not that impressive after all of that, I feel. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, the exterior is really yeah. nice, but I agree yeah. with you that maybe more could have been done, but... Uh, let's see. Plays back to his opponent, and uh, he goes for better. Okay. Well. What? All right. I think he forgot. Okay. No. Let's check exterior stacks. Yeah. Because you just banish one card from the graveyard to negate yeah, it, right? And banish one and mill one. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I was just checking whether it negates the. Yeah. Because otherwise. Uh, well, yeah. If it negates the effect right Yeah. Oh well. Exactly. He was one card away from drawing skill <laughs> drain. I suppose that would have been really, really good. Yeah. The nail in the coffin. But why would you use the birth? Um, is there Does an advantage to putting a cash tier in the grave in this situation? Maybe as the scarecrow, but I can't quite. Uh, Does banish the end. He needs it to. Yeah, exactly. It's not like he really needs to. Let's see. Ooh. Probably fairy unicorn. Yeah, that's a unicorn. Okay, let's see. He does have the Grafa, huh? potentially, as another layer of the yeah. disruption, but... Kurikara! Ooh, interesting. Okay. That's why he used that it. That makes sense. Now it makes yep. more sense. So, gonna get rid of the exterior because of the Kurikara, who gets to 3,000 attack. Oh, is it 3,000? Yeah. Against, okay. uh, yeah. It's 1,000 for... 1,500 for 15. each uh, tributed, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, don't forget as well, the uh, Fusion Dark World here, the Grafa, is uh, still yeah. boosted by Sir Yujo. And here we see... Okay, never mind. He was about to consider going for a Fusion there, yeah, yeah. into a second copy. And it looks like Battle Phase. Yeah, because I think we were already in the Battle Phase, and that can only be used in the main phase. So... Ah, yeah. He probably allowed his opponent to enter the Battle Phase. Yeah, slight then. oversight there. Yeah. 
and we must keep in mind he's only at 3,000 because of Cyberstein, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there was really a way to go for a game there. You really needed your battle phase to try and oh, force for things sure. out. Okay, now we are seeing the Grafa on the effect of Unicorn, it seems like. Yeah, so Grafa allows you to discard to negate. Does it destroy? No, essentially no, it yeah. turns uh, into discard a card from your opponent. Oh, okay. Yeah. <gasps> oh! Yeah. It's so, the it, so it comes with the Silva? Yep. Hey, so he just hand looped him for two? He will. <laughs> Exactly. So <laughs> now... So the thing with Dart Worlds, they all have great effects exactly. when you discard them. But if your opponent discards... They become your... insane. <laughs> yeah. They become insane. And that's the whole point of the combo, which we actually didn't see, which would have been using this Ruli, mm -hmm. which uh, kind of uh, abuses this uh, aspect of Dark Worlds, and then you get to cycle through, uh, basically looping for four, guaranteed at least. So Yeah, that is uh, one way to approach that going first, but... Uh, potentially that Ash Blossom was enough to stop the Dark World combo from getting really out of hand, but it looks like uh, we've done just enough here with our Kurikara and the battle phase of the Unicorn to uh, try and play in main phase two. No but probably he's only playing... I don't know why he wouldn't use then the Accession, because now he can't, obviously, but... Mm, why, why can't he use it now? No, I, no, 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 now he could have used it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, after he's playing two copies of the fusion, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He does. So, like, w because at the beginning of the main phase, your opponent has the priority to use the Unicorn, right? But when they get to the Theosis, you could have flipped the accession, make a second Grafa, and then negate the accession, I think. Mm. Uh, because it's not once, uh, an art once per turn, right? Oh, no, it is. It is. It's it a hard once per turn? Yeah, okay, no, never mind. So he couldn't actually go for it. So then, yeah, the opening was. Uh, not the greatest, but I mean, Kurikara definitely the MVP at the moment. So what can you really do with Kashtira to break a field like this after you've uh, used your battle phase? Because typically, you know, going second, the power play is like something like Zeus. Mm -hmm. You don't have too but much. What if you just go for Diabolosis and you mill their entire yeah. deck? Because that yeah. is <laughs> that yeah, that's that's an option. The option. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Like, um, I don't know how many cards are left, but it, it I don't shouldn't think there be are many. many right? It's not that yeah. many. Yeah, look, that's what he's doing. He's counting yeah. the number like of cards. Around 15, them. right? Okay, actually, yeah. more than expected, <laughs> but still possibly doable. All right, well, if there's anyone who can find a way to go into a alternate win condition, <laughs> okay. it's definitely Anchi. <laughs> the king of alternate win condition, yeah. Okay, Shangri-La's effect was activated this turn. That means that we can use uh, Rice Heart, almost like a Zodiac. Yep. But you need to get to the materials, so... Yeah, yeah, he does need to get three to be able to try and start picking apart this field here. Another... Okay, power. Dark Karn probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I asked the question earlier, uh, what tools do you have at your disposal to try and crack fields? And Dark Arm Dragon of Annihilation, a not once per turn effect to detach and destroy a card. Uh, yeah, that, that gets banished, right? Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, now he's gonna force out. So he knew this was accession. Why do you think he's targeting it anyway? Just to force out the. Uh, and uh, then try and yeah, hit the, dark, uh, the Grapha again? Essentially, yes, you also force out, uh, you know, some cards that should all get banished, exactly. And then you get more attachment from the Arise Art. Mm -hmm. And now the really nice synergy is that you can see that you get to banish one from the grave, which is the Theosis, that gets you back uh, a card for, uh, like in this case, the Big Bang. So, still counting, but only the face down really matters, so... Talked a little bit about time earlier, and we're mm. maybe approaching that stage of the duel where uh, you hit single digits. Yeah. Some strategy needs to come into play here. Yeah, especially because like Alberto comboed off for uh, at least 15 minutes, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 15 minute exterior. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and now again he goes for the Dark Armed. All right, well, Trying his hardest to uh, see if we can get. Ideally, you're trying to like end on maybe like six materials so that you can use it once on your turn, and then again on your opponent's. Yeah. If you can't go for like an alternate deck out. He's actually using the Nessie, okay. okay. 
because now, now the deck out is not an option anymore. Mm. He decided to just try and clear as much of this uh, field as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just uh, take a look at uh, whatever he gets. The Mothman. This could actually end up in a draw. That's also yeah, possible. Yeah, the, that's uh, what I'm worried about. Um, well, don't forget. There is a yeah, massive yeah. life <laughs> point deficit yeah. right now. I know, but... So, if Anchi can simply survive, he'll be ahead on life points. Yeah. But those monsters are big. Yeah, these are these are pretty and big. Also, the only thing I'm worried about, but I'm not going to pretend I remember, is <laughs> whichever of those have been summoned under Saruja to just get the boost, you know? I think at this point it's just the... Yeah, just the fusion. Just probably the fusion. just the yeah. fusion, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is at 31, and if we don't get rid of it now, when it goes back to Alberto's turn, it should be online again, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As well, I mean, it is online now, I think, right? As he's revealing this Mothman. Honestly, this seems doable. Yeah. On whose part? <laughs> no, no, from Alberto. Yeah. I mean, the, the only worry is, as I mentioned, uh, eight minutes. What? Kind of extra like uh, monster could be useful here. Is he playing? Because the Cerberus is gone, right? Cerberus is gone. So does he play Unicorn or I don't know? Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't play Unicorn. So anything useful at all? I don't know. Uh, he's got Akashic Magician that can bounce something. Um, okay. I don't think you want to go for Giant Trainer. That thing locks you out of your battle phase. Um, yeah, I mean, Dugaras gives you double attack, but that was already used. So. Okay, so we see the Arise art. Yeah. <laughs> I suddenly saw the exterior on the field. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. He, he resolved the Arise art on the fusion, apparently. And uh, now he's gonna get back uh, the rainbow. You know, situations like this, these are like very, very complicated game states. No, so I think this was still the, the turn. That's why yeah. we are a little confused. He's using the Kurikari effect, uh, but he couldn't special summon the exterior because Cyberstein does not fusion summon, it just special summons, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So he, he has to get back the rainbow from Kurikari. And now, finally, we are on Alberto's turn, who just immediately enters the battle phase. Yeah, nice. I think it makes sense, so at least he gets immediately rid of uh, yeah. the Rise Art. But he has to play super fast with just uh, a... Oh! Oh! Mm. Oh! Mm. Oh! Mm. Oh! Yeah. oh my! Uh, no! no. <laughs> Scoops it up, okay. recognizing that oh, oversight on the attack Why there. though? That was not enough, right? It was a 3,000. I, I, I think he probably just felt that he was yeah. in a losing situation. I and mean, you just get sometimes too old. that how it is. And uh, congratulations to both. They gave out uh, a really good show, nonetheless, for this round eight. Uh, but in the end, uh, unfortunately, yeah, Alberto, <laughs> the name, <laughs> the name is there. So he, he did lose. Uh, and uh, still, congratulations to both players. Uh, they are still perfectly able to make it to the top cut uh, and uh, they gotta keep their composure and play this one last round remaining for day one which is crucial at least uh, for Alberto I gotta say Anchi even if worst case scenario he loses here 8-1 is really good score tomorrow. yeah so at the same time uh, it's uh, it, I mean we just went through. They're both really powerful combo decks. When they go first, uh, they can pretty much lock out their opponents. Uh, but uh, maybe at the end there for Alberto, he got too excited on his opening. And uh, that was too much. But before we head out to the interviews, we can, guys, finally show you some additional information of YCS London 2023. So let's bring up on the screen the breakdown for the event. And as I was saying, not much of a surprise that Kashtira is the most represented deck, but it is a surprise that, as you can see, the top five decks are roughly around 50%, and everything else is composed, I can tell you, of three, two, even one percent of decks. And it's uh, what we have seen all day. A lot of different decks and a lot of different duelists from all over the world. Are you surprised by anything in specific? Maybe Labyrinth? Well. I think Kashtira, in my opinion, 
I would have expected to be a little bit higher in the representation. What I am surprised about is Branded being more popular than Sprite. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you with Kashtira, but I thought that Sprite players would have been, you know, highest in number, no? Rather than Branded yeah. players, but... Uh, also because we have we have seen a lot of different uh, variants of Sprite, no, this weekend. So it's... Yeah. Uh, I think absolutely. that's what boosts the numbers. Uh, yeah. you know, there's Naturia, there's just, yeah. there's like the Frog version, exactly. there's some Melfi, which I don't think we've seen yet. But here, maybe less surprising, <laughs> as you can see, Great Bridge and representing with 47% of players. That's incredible, wow. Yeah, this is YCS London celebrating the 250 of YCS. Uh, I naturally, think, yeah. the hometown advantage yeah. to the United Kingdom. Probably beating even the uh, UK National Championship, I gotta say, in numbers. So a really incredible uh, achievement. Uh, but right after there, there was uh, Italy, France, a lot of uh, other top countries. At the end of the day, for tonight, uh, we'll only see one more round. But then tomorrow, we'll find out the breakdown for top 64 and whoever will actually win YCS 250. But now we have Anchi, we've had the for the winner interview, so thank you guys for being with us for round eight, but let's hear it from them. Thank you very much, Marcello. I am joined by Anju, who's just won that round eight. I mistakenly said round seven at the start because my brain turned off for a second. But we are in round eight, only one more round to go later today. But I am here with our round eight winner. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Uh, nice. Yeah. I feel nice, yeah. Good. How many, have you, you haven't dropped any games yet, have you? No, it uh, doesn't drop. Well, there we go. That's what we want to hear. So, Kashtira, this is the first time we've had, you're the third Kashtira feature match that we've had today. But you're the first time that we've seen Shangri Era do a lot of the interactions with blocking out five or four or five of the zones. So let's go through some of the the moments that we had throughout each of those games. It was quite a long four battle. So you got full combo turn one. You locked out those five zones with the two Shangri Era. There was a moment where Kaiju'd one of the Shangri Era, so it was down to the four. You just dominated the field, and as the guys were saying, we just really got to see what Kashtera can do. So, are you quite experienced with Kashtera at this point? Were you feeling confident in game one? Uh, I doesn't feel confident, confident because I doesn't draw non engine cards. I draw only engine cards, and it, it has only one way to full lock zone the opponent. If you don't lock zone the opponent, a Rasa pass is not good. So then we move into the second game. So there was a moment where you ashed, you ashed him, but he managed to play around it a bit. There was then Cyberstein, Exterio, Saryu, just built this really huge field. But then we saw those life points ticking down. But like Cyberstein's a huge risk with the 5,000 life point thing. And then just as we got to the end, you managed to bait out the Exterio effect to then summon out the Curry Kara by tributing the Exterio. So talk to us about how you were trying to think about playing around Exterio. Yeah. Uh, my first way to play on X0 because I activate the buff. Uh, I have the, also the free spell, but I need a free spell for the later. And buff, I can search it with Unicorn. Um, I wanted to uh, first summon my Kurikara first, and I have summoned first Unicorn, then, then I summon Kurikara to. to um, to have some of those interactions. To, to, to uh, hit exterior. Yeah. And I don't want to active first uh, other cards because of the Dark Lord. I don't know the fusion name. One of the Dark Lords, yeah. 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 And if I active another card, like he can change the effect to I discard one card and uh, discard, uh, discard, he discard one, discard one card. And he still want to put back two cards from my hand. Uh, if he put back my Karukara, I'm gonna lost. So I need to first out his Hixer with my Karukara. I mean, let's talk about the end as well, because you built into a Rise Heart. There was um, a slight misplay with the exterior, because there was that point where we had to reverse the game state a little bit. But then at the end, when he only had a thousand life points left, I think there was a lot of calculations, and we were maybe wondering if the calculations were done wrong and that he just scooped. But what was happening from your perspective during the final moments of that game? I think my opponent forget uh, Kikuri Kaga had 3,000 attack, not 1,5, and he attacked it. Uh, maybe he had no odd versus um, uh, our Rise Heart. Uh, so he attacked, he attacked uh, my arrest and I don't know what's happened. And that was game. 
And that's what you won. So congratulations. You've done really well getting through this. There's only one more round of Swiss left for the day. Are you feeling confident? Are there any decks that you're nervous about going up against over the rest of the Swiss rounds? Uh, I was not nervous. I'm feeling confident. That's what we want to hear. We love confidence here at these YCS coverages. Congratulations again, Anchi. Best of luck in those next rounds, especially the one that we've got left. Guys, don't go anywhere because we've got that final round of today's coverage coming up very soon. Photon Hypernova, Chaos Monsters, Castira, Gold Pride. More cards for Fallen of Albaz and Dogmatica, plus many more with brand new Photon and Galaxy cards to make your deck out of this world. 100 cards in all, Photon Hypernova. Nine cards per pack, each pack sold separately. Welcome back. We're here with even more speed duel dueling fun here at YCS London 2023. Very, very excited to bring you even more coverage. Now, let's let's just come over to Leo for a second. Look, in your outro of the last round, you said you two were in the final. I know you've already won once, but slow your roll a little bit, OK? Because you haven't got there yet this time. Alberto, this may be your chance to get through to that final. Speaking of roll, it's time to do a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. Alberto, you can roll first. That's a six. Oh, there's such intensity in your eyes when you do that. That's an eight. So who's going to go first? You're going to go first. Alberto is going to go first. So I'm going to throw you guys over to Basti, Nadir, and Marcello, who are going to be another mix-up three for your commentators for this speed duel round. Guys, take it away. 
Thank you very much, Ed. After intense semi-final number one between Marcello and me, which I miraculously won um, against the, the legend of the game, Marcello himself, we are now going to see Alberto versus Leonard. And they have some very funny decks, as we already saw yesterday evening, right? What are they bringing? Yeah, absolutely. As uh, we were mentioning and uh, as we, we said at the beginning, uh, these are all decks uh, belonging to Spiel Due GX, yes. Duelist of Shadows, which just... And the way we did it was we just randomly uh, rolled for the decks themselves and we crowned Leo as the, uh, I guess, champion uh, of, uh, because he got two of the best decks by far, I think. That's what we thought, uh, but we were all sure that he was going to win a tournament with the second, with one, the now, second yeah. one. So now he could go two for two because he's playing evil hero oh, yeah. and it's, it seems like it's a really, really powerful deck. I mean, one card stands out to me in that deck. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Because like Miracle Fusion is good, but there's something for evil heroes very similar to it. Yeah, Dark Calling is how you're going to be able to uh, maximize that recursion. <laughs> well, rather not recursion, but once you've depleted and exhausted all of your resources, activate Dark Calling, banish and you're good to go with Get you another someone from your also. graveyard. Yeah. And Alberto, I think, is going to try to stand a chance against that with his Sacred Beast deck. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah, we're yeah. going to see Harmon, Uriah, Raviel, who knows? We will see which one he has decided to bring. Yeah. So let's go over to the playing table. Let's see what Leonard and Alberto are doing here in our second semi-final of this Speed Duel tournament. Here they are, and if Leo's deck is unique, because it's the only one with an extra deck, as you can see, Alberto oh, yeah. is also unique because his skill starts off as a continuous spell. So one of the free zones is there, and he gets to add one of the Sacred Beasts from deck directly. So very unique skill there. Which one uh, is your favorite uh, Sacred Beast, both of you? Go ahead, Nadia. Which one is Well, I think uh, summoning Raviel is really good offense, you know, being able to uh, yep. just turn after turn, destroy your opponent's monster, summon some recursion in, in the uh, follow-up there with the uh, uh, with the tokens that it gives you is, uh, I think, just a really good way to uh, put a lot of pressure early on, especially when, uh, I mean, you know, you connect with one direct attack with that guy and it's, yeah. uh, it's game over. What about I, you? I, I do really like Uria, to be honest. Uria yeah, has yeah. always been my favorite one. But it looks like Alberto just lost them all because, it, it, <laughs> like, yeah. but judging by his starting hand, he has just thrown all of them into his main deck there that he uh. built for this event. And we see something very rare. Leonard actually normal summoning Clayman and attacking. And one card Leonard is playing in his main deck is Super Polymerization. So maybe nice. he's trying to use that Clayman on the field as fusion material as well. Well, Cerulean Skyfire comes down here, which is a massive...
that, that Alberto picks up here. And that is a good way to be able to uh, get the sort of gimmick of rolling yep. for the Sacred Beast. You know, you get those continuous cards face up, and then you can, like, begin to actually, like, sort of unbrick this hand yeah. he's managed to draw here. For sure. And that's why the skill is also really nice. Not only does it give you a plus one, but it counts as one of the continuous cards you can send to the graveyard to summon the Sacred Beast. So now he technically has access to it already because he has a spell and uh, Cerulean allows you to use face down spells uh, instead. So he can technically go for uh, Amon uh, right away. So, so you think Amon is the one you'd go for in this situation? Uh, yes. He has access to all of them basically, right? So. So or I can you use the... Uh, I think you can only use them for Amon, but yeah. Let's oh, see. that's true. Yeah, Cerulean yeah. Skyfire is just for Amon yeah, 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 specifically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is he going for it here? <laughs> He's is he summoning out the Hamon? Is mean, he seeing the line that we yeah, are discussing here? I don't here? see many other options, to be fair. So, let's see. To be fair, the other option would just be to pass over turn, because I think the other mon like every single monster in his hand is a tribute monster. I think like, he just passed, right? I mean, uh, it looks like it, Leonard yeah. just uh, activated a skill there, I think. Leonard activating the wow. skill, indeed. Do you want to... Using the skill as well. So what is the hero skill? He's just searching for the card we were to... Oh no, that's Dark Fusion. So this is not the Miracle Fusion, but just a regular Fusion. So if he has the materials for a Fusion here, we could see the first uh, Dark Hero coming out here. And it could be the last, because uh, 3200 are oh, less for Oh, Dark Fusion coming yeah. down. But funnily enough, Leonard, he, Leonard started with two Claymans in his opening hand. Jiu -jitsu. Oh, wow. that's a rock! He drew yeah. into a rock, and that is the requirement for the evil Dark Hero, uh, Dark Gaia. Wow. And normal summon sand mob on top <laughs> that, of it. Wow, oh my that's God. so much. Honestly, I expected that to go exactly as I just kind of predict. I mean, Sacred Beasts, you know, when you have that many just essentially uh, yeah. raw vanilla monsters in your hand just sitting there requiring so much setup and tribute. It's, it's really hard to get that going, isn't it? Absolutely. At for the same sure. time, I thought Alberto might have missed uh, the Cerulean Sky to just go for an Ammon, because that was great. Might have been a little bit of an incident there. Yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, as mentioned, Leo's deck is incredible. He can even OTK, as yeah. uh, he pretty much managed to do here. And uh, are you afraid? I'm a little, but I think I can handle it, to be honest, because my Amazonas monsters, they are pretty strong as well, and I have pretty okay. good recursion with the field spell as well. The I thought only that field thing... spell was ridiculous in yeah. your day. It's very That's what yeah. I Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, I just realized it in the game, because before the game, I'm like, yeah, I think my deck is okay. Yeah. <laughs> we will do all right. At the, at the beginning, it was like, yeah, I don't think my deck is that great, <laughs> especially the skill. I'm never going to use it. I read the skill. I'm like, I have no outs to this skill. <laughs> <laughs> used it twice. It was like amazing. So yeah, yeah. maybe I was a little bit of an understatement there from my side. But uh, now we're going to see uh, Leonard versus me in the finals. Yeah. And I'm hyped about it because I, I can't let Leonard go two for two here. I'm, I'm going to hear about that all night, all weekend long if he goes two for two here. And I can't <laughs> let that happen. Definitely not. <laughs> Just as long as he doesn't get the dark calling, I think he'll be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Just draw the fuel spell and you're fine. So I will, I will try to. <laughs> Thank you.
and welcome back to your coverage here at the 250th YCS in London. This is the final round of the day, round nine of our feature matches here at YCS London. So allow me to introduce Aaron McInnes and Daniel Pauschek, who are going to be here for this final round of the coverage today. Gentlemen, we're going to do a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. Who would like to roll first? Daniel's going to roll first. That is a four, Aaron. That is an eight. Who's going to go first? You're going to go first. Aaron is going to go first. I'm going to hand you one more time over to our wonderful commentary trio, Alberto, Nadir, and Marcello. Take it away, guys, for this last round of today's coverage, round nine. Thank you, Ed, and welcome to round nine. As you mentioned, the last round for today. We have been through an incredible journey, a lot of different decks, a lot of different players from all over the world, but it comes down to this, at least for the day. And uh, as we have mentioned multiple times throughout the day, very wide, uh, and the variety of the decks uh, is incredible. So why not pick yet another deck, uh, as both of these duelists are standing on an X1 record, so very good chances of making it into the top 60 for tomorrow. Tomorrow. But the one who won the title, Aaron, is the one who is playing Dragon Link, a deck we have yet not seen, but definitely one of the uh, you know combo decks that is up there. What do you think of, of the deck? Well, it lost Magic Dragon, which was a huge component for the deck, but it gained Beast Deals in the process. Yeah. So you give and take. That's how life goes, <laughs> and uh, he's playing uh, a pretty heavy package, actually, with uh, uh, some of the unconventional ones. Of course, during tier elements, uh, you would prioritize using uh, uh, the bestials uh, that pretty much act as a DD Crow. Uh, in this case, he's actually playing some branded cards just to use uh, with the Lubellion. And uh, it seems like the strategy is working, uh, but to stop him from advancing to an 8 uh, and 1 record, it is Daniel, and once again, the Naturia Runic deck. Our players are ready, so let's just add into this round nine. So as you mentioned, Marcello, there's a wide array of different decks that have been played all throughout the weekend, and it was time that we saw Dragons. We saw Naturia Runic uh, earlier in the uh, in the uh, stream, but a little bit of a different take on this. He's playing the Ishizu cards, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing this match, because on one hand, Daniel is relying on one of the most seeing decks this, this weekend. I mean, I think uh, we talked about how consistent the Naturia Runic deck is. But also with this addition of the one-offs now, no? Yep. And uh, on the other side, though, we have seen, uh, I mean, Dragon Link over the past few years uh, competing again mm. and again. And here we see wow. here in action with the, the Brander regained. Branded, regained, hard drawn here. I in. think <laughs> I think Karen might have booked a, you know a restaurant reservation because he's going like, oh, <laughs> chill out. Come on, give us a moment. Yeah, it's like wow. Yeah, no, that is uh, as good as it gets as an opening, I think, for your starter. Regained plus a uh, plus the uh, red MD with the search off of the Black Meadow Dragon. Uh, typically, normal summon. I mean, you want to go for Seffert. Is he playing Seffert? Yeah, he is. He's, he's, playing he's also playing Seffert. Yeah. Is he playing 16? Um, I think he's playing. I think he uh, doesn't play 40. Hmm. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, well, I mean, typically, the higher the deck goes, the more normal summons you need. Yeah. So it makes sense yeah. where you want to play 3 and 3. And uh, yeah, Dragon Link. Well, I mean, what can we say? This deck has so much history, um, beginning somewhere probably around about the Guard Dragon. Ar 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 yeah, Pain? That's yeah, it. yeah exactly. I almost said it wrong. And the LP and coming so far since, losing so many tools in the process, losing Halka Fibrax, yeah. Link Cross, and more recently, Magical Dragon. So uh, incorporating a new engine, the Beast Deals. Yeah. Seems like Burning Abyss, I would say, no? Like, you're familiar <laughs> with sure. that. Sure! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Low blow, like, man. Low blow. pieces after yeah. one another, but still resist, no? <laughs> what you're telling him is that he should give up. No, I'm not saying this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, well, Heratic Dragon of Seals is made here, and uh, what an incredible card just by itself. So uh, the advantage of going with it uh, so early is that if your opponent is on Nibiru in the main deck, at the very least, you are going to be able to trigger the effect in the graveyard, which is when it's tributed, it special summons any dragon monster from your deck. And here we do see 
this bestials that we were talking about, both the Saronir and the Lebellion, which now will be activated to send yet the Magnum to the grave. So, and it's very nice to see, honestly, how the variant of Dragon Link have been evolving throughout this time. Yeah. No, and uh, here, um, I mean, once again, we have been having another different kind of matchup that we have seen uh, the past turns, and uh, here. Another Magnemus being sent to the graveyard. A very nice start from uh, Aaron. Yeah. And also at the same time, it is true that there is, as we saw in the previous round, 19% of cash tira, But the deck right after is branded, and Bestials are amazing in the main deck, uh, or in the side deck against branded. So I think uh, that's maybe why Aaron is doing well. Well, I will say that uh, Aaron has been playing Dragons and basically every iteration of Dragon for a long time now. I've uh, been following him quite a lot through his journeys in North America. He's topped innumerable amount of regionals with various Dragon decks, and uh, it's cool to see that he's evolved it to the modern stage it's at today. Yeah. So it doesn't look like much, but it's honest work, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And uh, okay, now finally the deck from his opponent is revealed to Aaron, and uh, it is Naturia Runic, as mentioned. And we do see a pretty good mixture, because I think he has five or four, no, four Runic cards and uh, a couple of Naturias, yeah. Good start for sure from both players here, opening uh, decently well, so hopefully get a uh, good little back and forth here as Camellia resolves sending the Naturia Sacred Tree, which adds any Naturia card going for the, uh, the Blessing. And that is going to be the uh, reborn theme style for the deck. So, trying to maybe see if we can pick apart some of this deck with uh, yeah. the uh, runic cards. Uh, it's gonna not. It's not gonna be easy because on one hand uh, there's the brander again that brings up on the field the magnum. Then in the end phase we'll search for another one. And then if he really wants to, there's also the beast that basically will uh, tribute one dragon to destroy one uh, face up monster of his opponent. But the sunflower is coming down. Yeah. All right, so does not use the Branded Beast immediately on the Sunflower. Looks like we're going to hold off a little bit as uh, yeah. he tries to... Uh, I think Aaron probably wants to use it as late as possible here. And if there's one way to force it out, it is Runic Tip. Wow, plus, uh, yeah, plus the Fountain Starlight, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, great, uh, great end from... Daniel. Do you think there was an argument just before activating a runic card it was maybe worth going into the battle phase before you get those skips to force out the seal? Potentially, yes. At the same time, uh, maybe uh, he, he's fine with this. Uh, the seal is not like he can do much uh, as he has double negation from the sunflower. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm more interested in is does Aaron have any, you know, weird targets for the sphere like we've seen in the past Kwaki Meru there's Drago. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different cards that you can summon off this Drago as you mentioned. I exactly. think Sloth as well is also yeah, popular. Sloth. Yeah. No, but he's not playing any actually. I mean he's, no? he's okay. playing the startled ones, okay. but uh personally my favorite has been uh um Albaz. Uh so special yeah. summon Albaz off the seal, make a mirror jade on your opponent's turn. But doesn't look like yeah, that would be cool. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't really use any of this, and then uh, it's up to Daniel, who is now in a really, really good spot. As we mentioned, uh, when you get both engines going, this deck uh, gets so many plus ones easily. Um, did he get to the destruction, maybe, as a way to get rid of uh, some of these spell traps? Let's see. So, the spelling might be what he's going for here? No, okay. Um, I think I would be tempted to try get Hugin up as quickly as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The protection effect. Okay, after thinking about it for a long time, he finally goes for the Flash of Fire on the Lubellion, it seems like. Why do you think that is? Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, not the greatest at the moment, uh, but... Uh, yeah. He's just going to try and force out this beast, but uh, you have another monster. That's, that's yeah. why I was concerned was, no. well, it doesn't really deal with the... It seems like he's getting a little greedy and just trying to draw some cards with this runic card, you know? <clears throat> um, the runic fountain can be uh, used at... Ooh. Oof, Ooh. and he does have the destruction, okay. wow. Uh, this is really strong. Uh, he gets to draw three cards at the end of this and... Uh, gonna keep on banishing some cards from the top of the deck and it's three copies of cow space already yeah. banished yeah 
Is there any synergy potentially with banishing bestials? No, not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah, not really. Yeah. But All right. yeah, no, we can get back five or yeah, four, but yeah, we can get back three, get three draws, and that's good enough to me. Here's the activation of Fountain, and uh, it does have to remain face up on the field in order to resolve. So if Aaron wants, he is. He has a couple of options here. You can go for the Heratic Dragon uh, to yeah. uh, return it to the hand so it won't resolve, although not super ideal because, you know, generally you want to. Uh, uh, use that. Wow. For, wait. Okay. Did we just negate and destroy? Yeah, but. Yeah. Okay. He didn't use the previous, did he? The uh, substitution yeah. of the uh, sunflower? I don't think so. No. He did not. So interesting. Yeah, so uh, sunflower has an effect that if your opponent activates Mulsifer, you can negate and destroy it. Mm -hmm. uh, while Camellia is on the field, you can actually substitute the tributing requirement of sunflower just by simply milling two. And just uh, it didn't look like he. Yeah, used didn't it. opt to use it. But mm -hmm. now, uh, press is on with this blessing. All right, Naturia blessing, bringing the camellia, the camellia back here. And uh, I don't think Aaron has too much here in way of resources to uh, disrupt this any further. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked as if it was a good opening, but Daniel really. Uh, efficient in breaking this field down so yeah i think he's playing out very well because here once again the sunflower comes back and uh, with the cards just being drawn from the fountain uh, also by the way the fountain is technically once okay. per turn but you can use yeah. it a second copy potentially if you want so yeah then you can use it again so let's see do you know the thing with dragon link that uh I suppose the only reason that would make me really scared to play at this format is striker dragons at one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, uh. when uh, when Rise Heart's running around, that's uh, it's very scary. There are a few. Re also, Nibiru might be scary if they are using it, you know, against a similar decks. Uh, then uh, it's tough. I don't know, but it's working out for him. And again, uh, surprise factor might uh, might pay its role. Uh, it has been a while, as we mentioned, since the last time this deck was really top tier, and uh, some players might have not even tested against at all. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, been talking to my friend Herman, who uh, swears by this deck and says, uh, honestly, every matchup is free except Cash Zero. So <laughs> as long as he wins the dice roll, um, he's pretty confident. And okay. uh, well, if that's any advice to go by, then. This should be, a, should be a good matchup for Aaron. Absolutely. <laughs> Aaron kind of rhymes with Herman. <laughs> Fair enough. But here we see the beauty of uh, Magna Mode in a deck like this. Uh, it searches any dragon. So that's why we got to the Levian here. And uh, yeah, it's always nice to see you know, this diversity. We saw it in uh, Pendulum, for example, searching Gluster. And now we see it with the Levian here. Levinier going to banish uh, a mixture of lights and darks, which allows it to use the effect to uh, destroy uh, up to two cards on yeah. the field here. But still have Hugin. Chaining the, hunic, uh, the runic destruction response so that the regain mm -hmm. doesn't uh, benefit from the banishing of the dragons here. And there's a... You know, a lot of resources that you lose yeah. against yeah. Runic sometimes. I don't think anything particularly important has been hit so far, but it is always really scary if an important engine piece has been removed. And now, as you can see, is debating whether to use Fountain. But the Levian here apparently is uh, using effect. Let's see. Yeah, so Levian here does not target. Uh, meaning yeah. that it actually gets to resolve. Oh, wait, oh. hang on. So, is it because when you destroy Hugin at the same time as Fountain, it's already marked for destruction, so you can't use the substitution effect to protect it? I think is what I happened. I think yeah. it should be exactly. Yeah. 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 So when Le basically, okay. So ju just to explain for everyone at home, uh, Levinier destroys on resolution. It doesn't target. And uh, when that happens, uh, you can generally, uh, against the typical destruction effect, Hugin can just simply banish itself um, to protect uh, from destruction. But because Levinier does so on resolution, while also selecting Hugin, you can't substitute a card that's already being destroyed. 
Yep, very well explained. And here we get to see the sunflower, but there is an infinite impermanence face down to shut it. Did he mill the Agido? Yes, he did, yeah. actually. Yeah, we, we mentioned it at the start. He is playing those Ashizu cards, isn't he? <laughs> exactly. The previous Naturia Runic player is not who, but we see a Book of Moon. Nice. To make it so that it re actually resolves. Interesting. And now we can get to actually mill five. Potentially, if he has it. Let's see. I mean, the only real synergy is um, milling Runics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he's playing also the Caldo Mudora. Yeah. He's playing all, all of the four copies you can now access. So. And also, Aaron uh, lost quite a few cards, I guess, right? Yeah, that's a lot yeah. off the top here. And uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Medora and Kelbeck, uh, absolutely amazing cards. Uh, just these quick play uh, effects from your graveyard that you can banish as cost. Mm -hmm. So it can't even uh, be hit by something like Call by the Grave to allow you to shuffle back three cards. Uh, from either graveyard as well, not just your opponent. Yeah. So if it ever comes up, you know, you can recycle your own resources, for example. Do you think he forgot about it, though? Or didn't use it on purpose? Oh, yeah, he didn't. He just okay. picks up his cards uh, and uh, yes, in enough. So Aaron, after a convincing turn one, but what it looked like uh, was uh, not enough uh, against the Daniel opening, uh, turned out to be in favor of Aaron, who takes this game one. And uh, now we are going to go to the side decks, and it's definitely a tough uh, position uh, for Daniel. See, I told you, it wasn't much, but it was honest for it. <laughs> exactly. Just a, a simple seal, a branded beast, somehow so Dragon just yeah, yeah, survived. Exactly. I mean, the Magnum was the MVP. Okay. Yeah. He got yeah. to the Levian here, and uh, I mean, uh, it's still, as you mentioned, banishing a mix of uh, light and dark monsters. Uh, it's always been good. Uh, we saw it in the Time Wizard tournaments, both with Tom and his Chaos Sorcerers, uh, and with you, and your Chaos Sorcerer against me. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Listen, as a, as a wise man <laughs> once said, I'm a banish a light and a dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, what the, now let's go back to the side deck. Uh, and uh, Daniel gonna go first, most likely, trying not to sap his board. Uh, maybe though, Naturia B is not the greatest against the Dragon Link. No, that's the point. It's okay. The, I mean, it's okay, but the thing is that by going first, uh, he has once again a lot of cards by going second, as we saw so far yeah. this weekend. And uh, I mean, against Dragon Link, Gamesiel, I think is a very good card, but I mean, I again, going first. Uh, he might not even considering not to say yeah. in. He has bestials, but I think he has 15 cards for going second. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, potentially. But yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, he can improvise. Obviously, the bestials are uh, pretty decent against uh, you know this matchup. Uh, impermanence always okay, yeah. but probably got to prioritize on just setting up his Rurik Naturia combos. Could also consider going second. I mean, looking at the side deck, but I mean, on the other side, Aaron uh, just. Uh, I mean. I think he's uh, more than prepared. He's curious. Never seen skill drain in the dragon deck before, I think. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. But, but yeah, as we mentioned, uh, you know, he is going to be going second, so yeah. unlikely for that to be the case. I think it, was, it would be nice, because basically in this deck with the regain, you just you know bring back on yeah. the field the, the, the bestials and... Uh... At the same time, what I don't like too much is that, as you mentioned, uh, it's not something we have seen yet. Uh, mm. And it would make sense in a traditional dragon link deck, because nobody's gonna side you know feather duster cosmic cyclone but when you play regain and beast uh, they're most likely gonna use those cards so like skill drain is not that great yeah, because so it conflicts you know, with the mind game aspect kinda. that you're trying to establish especially because if you play cards like feather duster then it gets rid of all of them not just one but regardless we'll see if that works uh, for now it's daniel who is gonna go first so let's go back to game two So going first with Naturia Runic, you know, uh, we discussed a little bit about it in the previous rounds here. You're trying to, uh, you know, resolve as many of those Runic cards as possible, uh, hopefully get into a Fountain for three, draw basically any of your Naturia cards and you can get into that portion of the engine, establish a Naturia Beast with multiple disruptions from your hand with the Runic cards. And uh, that is uh, sort of the ideal kind of game plan that you're going for, as well as the monster negates with the um, Sunflower. And we are discarding a Magnemut mm. here, which is uh, definitely a bold move. Uh, it's really strong in this matchup. Well. Yeah, so uh, the uh, deck list for Daniel doesn't actually have, you know, as, you, as we mentioned, uh, too many going first cards. So, you know, putting in a bunch of bestials, uh, DD Cruel effect style, you know, it's yeah. pretty okay yeah. against dragons. It's not terrible. 
Definitely not. And uh, we are also going uh, pretty fast here. Oh. Into a okay. coral dragon. Ooh, wow. Okay. Right. I, I love this, honestly, because uh, the, uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, sort of runic synchro deck that some people kind of played yeah, around with yeah, last absolutely. format. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of, you know, things like Fabled uh, Cerebral and stuff. Yeah. yeah things like, yeah. So uh, definitely Ooh, know what we're doing wow. here, but the uh, coral dragon is a tuner synchro, uh, which means that. What are you going to do here is special summon Jerry. He's a level exactly. four, returning back to the deck with the fountain and on resolution. Uh, you draw three and also get to make Baron. Or Chengying, potentially. Yeah, and draw one more. <laughs> yeah. So. Very good stuff from him, honestly, at a, at a full speed. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Uh, as you mentioned here, you can see one more synergy of this uh, specific uh, deck and uh, makes sense. And oh. wow! <laughs> Nice. Sometimes you just draw both the one and one together. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Keldo into Mudora. Uh, very powerful also because now he gets the Kel back. Yes, double shuffler essentially with the Baron plus the Kel back, which is also an interruption. That's absolutely incredible. Really strong start. Gonna draw a card for the Coral Dragon here. I mean, all that's left is the normal summon Chameleon. <laughs> which he did, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Long day. Uh, yeah, so uh, do you think we can establish a Nappies as well on top of all of this? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be too much. Let's be <laughs> humble. <laughs> yeah. This is fine. Be realistic here. Yeah. All right, so uh, Baron. Whoa! Uh, and okay. No, I mean, whoa. <laughs> wow. So Maybe. naturally forced out. Yeah. Versus the Baron, the floor. But remember, Baron is uh, not your typical uh, boss monster in the gate. It is once while this card is on the field. So, Nibiru kind of doing its job, I suppose. Yeah. Not e exactly what <laughs> his job usually is, but yeah, he is trying his best again. <laughs> you know. And actually, the Dark Ruler would have been a sick top deck if it wasn't banished by tip, so... Yeah. All right, so uh, going second into this field here, uh, Aaron is, um, well, he's down a card, and that is oh. permanent. Oh, he was thinking about tagging in. Yeah, but this, Baron yeah. is already used. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, so, th I think he yeah. was using the tag out effect, right, to bring okay. back. Oh, did he? Okay. I think that's Boss. what's going on here. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it looked like he was targeting the Chameleon in the standby phase. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So, but still... Still a lot to fight through here, yeah, especially after drawing so many cards here. Oh, wow. the question, yeah, what I was okay. thinking is, is it better? Or like, do you just allow the Baron and then use the Impermanence on the Camellia? Or like, even potentially just for the Sunflower? Yeah. When it comes out, I mean, you know? But yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying, just hold for it and... Because like, uh, he gets to it anyway. And the Blessing doesn't do anything by that. Like, if the face down is Blessing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're talking posteriors, but like, it's still, I think... Oh, is that it? And he picks up his cards. Wow. It's yeah. just too much. Wow, okay. I mean, we mentioned it. It was a really, really strong opening, but uh, kind of an underwhelming, uh, I guess, uh, course of action. It was just too much. He, he tried his best, uh, but the opening was very straightforward. I mean, it was strong. Uh, Camellia plus any runic card, though, pretty much does what we have seen. Uh, he needed uh, a few more to uh, go through the draws, but essentially he drew four cards on the very first turn, and then, uh, yeah, made the Baron and... Obviously, it helped that he had some shufflers, but yeah, really, really solid uh, stuff. And uh, I mean, bonus point, we're not going into timeout, most likely. But now we're going to get another game three yet again today. Uh, really back and forth one. Uh, honestly, I think we have seen mostly game threes throughout the day. And uh, what do you think Aaron is trying to do now? Well, I think he's definitely going to want to go first with his Dragon deck and uh, yep. do a little bit more of what he uh, started with, which was, uh, you know, setting up those bestial um, synergies as well as uh, the Heratic Dragon, uh, you know, really powerful cards like that. And Poseidon going first, maybe, maybe we're going to see those skill trades. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, and also on the other side, Daniel, I think potentially, as we mentioned, he has 15 cards. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, so he, he has a lot. He does. He does. Yeah, he I does. Mean, so he has a he lot does. of solutions, but... Uh, I mean, we we have to consider that, of course, you don't really want to overside decking, yeah, I mean, you know. So, so I think yeah, I mean, it's, do you, you think know. you take out the Ishizu engine for going second? Maybe you definitely can. Uh, yeah. It depends on the normal summons you have, but yeah, yeah, you, you take out the well. Book of Moons as well. I think yeah, it makes that's sense. definitely very weak for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, also these four, so you have seven spots potential. 
and uh, mm -hmm. and then you also have triage blossom in the main which already help you out and uh, kinda yeah i don't even know if you keep those technically like it's yeah it might not be the greatest in this matchup but yeah, it depends the way he wants to approach it. But regardless, uh, some of the impact cars like the RP Feather Duster, the Kaiju's evenly matched are coming in for Aaron. So let's see if he will be able once again to be on an X1 record. Who is gonna be? This is the last game for the day. You don't wanna miss it. Uh, we're going to game three in round nine. Well, going to go first here with Aaron. It wasn't uh, the most flashy or spectacular game one that he had previously, but is that Chaos Base Absurder? Yeah, yep, that yep, is yep. probably, you know, one of my favorite two-card interactions in this game. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, going to start with the Bestial Lebellion. I think he might have started things off very strong. Because, yeah, he yeah. has Chaos Base with Absurder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing feels better than that. <laughs> Especially if your opponent ashes you and you have a gamma. It's basically... Wow. wow. Ah, those were the, uh, my favorite <laughs> dragon plays. All right. And we are, are going to see the ash. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, typically, you know, when you discard for costs like that and your opponent ash blossoms you, it's very, very heavy. But Absolute triggers to get a rocket monster. At least. At least. Uh, Chaos Space, uh, honestly... I have to say, it's one of my more favorite recent cards. It's uh, this the synergy with the uh, Collapse Serpent and the Wyver Burster printed almost yeah, like 10 amazing. years ago. And yeah. still, yeah. those cards are phenomenal even until today. Yeah, it was back in Sh Shadow, right? They were played back mm, then, right? Yep. Yeah. The uh, 